Hanum circles through, Wembanyama pops out, turns, shoots, short, rebound, back to Wembanyama, buzzer sound, didn't matter, no good, ball game's over, and the Warriors will hang on to the number 10 spot. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Look, I know people want a longer version of oh, baby, but look, the Warriors go 4-1 and on this road trip. They're 22-15 on a road. They won four straight games. But really, we're going to see where they're at Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, when they take on Dallas, Houston, Dallas. And, of course, the Texas two-step there. But overall, the nice night, Draymond Green, I mean, uh, what can you say? He flipped the game in the third quarter. Warriors are down eight, sleepwalking through the first half. I thought Pods, Energy in the first quarter, Shasky really – Kind of kept the Warriors in the game. Steph got his 33, one of his best shooting performances in a while. But Draymond Green really flipped the game with 21, 11, and 6 in the uh, season high, six steals. But we're going to, it's tough for me to gauge this morning just how good they are. Just how, because, like, let's be real, folks. The Charlotte Hornets is one of the worst basketball games we watched all year. Let, let's just be real. I, 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 I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Not trying to be a heavy doubter at all. Just the Charlotte Hornets stink. The Orlando Magic, they, they went three for 22 in the first quarter. And you saw the San Antonio Spurs yesterday. That was like the Austin Spurs, the G League affiliate. The, honest to God, Keldon Johnson was out. Devin Vassell was out. Jeremy Sohan was out. They still almost stole the game. So, anyway, uh, Shasky's camera will be up. He'll be it, up. It's don't on. Worry, I don't know what Lubman's tripping on. Oh, you guys are, that's what's going on? No, yeah, he's, no, he's, he's going to come I guess, storming in I guess here. it was okay for me to be long with it right there yeah, to there. You know, maybe maybe I'll keep going. Maybe I'll keep going. Maybe I'll talk for 17 straight minutes. Uh, he, here's, 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 let me do it. Oh, baby. Look, look at this. Is that what people want? No, no, no. Look at this. 954. I knew this was going to happen. What's that? Podcast business sex line. Do you guys ever have anything positive to say? Like, ever? 954. No, we never have anything positive to say. It's all negative, 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 oh, no. negative. I, I, I do feel like you took a little something out of my NBA script about the season being too long and they get you get to the end and there are some ho-hum games. But here's what I would say to you. Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't going there. Oh. I was just saying, just, I mean, how much can you take away from a 4-1 road uh, trip? Here's what I think you could take away. I, I, I do believe that Andrew Wiggins is playing the best basketball Um of this year, I feel like right now. Now, maybe I'm wrong, and there's another one week or two week last period. Night, last night was a tough one for No, him. I know, but I'm just saying in general, it feels like the last, if you're asking me like the road right. trip as a whole, I do feel like he's played very good basketball right now. So that has me very encouraged. And so if you told me that Andrew Wiggins could sustain that for the rest of the year, then let's do it. I'm, I'm fired up. And then obviously Steph Curry, you know, scoring last night. But his legs look tired to me. I did see yeah. some carelessness in terms of offensive half court sets late in the game where it just it feels very Steph ISO reliant. And then you get to these these careless passes with the one hand over the shoulder. It's like, ah, I know that's always been baked into his game. Um, the other thing that I, I think is, is a good takeaway is when Clay Thompson sets his feet, he's been pretty good. He's been pretty good for three-point land over the totality of the last right. couple of weeks. Yeah. So those are things that I'm very excited. Right. The big thing for me is like, what is going on with Jonathan Kaminga's knee? Well, we'll see what happens there. No update there. He missed the last three games. Last three games, uh, Jonathan Kaminga. He's only missed four games all season long. So hopefully it's not too serious there. And they, they're going to need him. They are going to need him. Um, against the Dallas Mavericks, against the Lakers next Tuesday night. Uh, there's only eight games left, folks. Eight, eight games left. But you brought up Steph Curry. And we will focus on a positive. Draymond Green was excellent last night. Oh, right? he's amazing. Like, I, I don't care what anybody says. What I know what, what's going to happen when I bring up Draymond Green. I, already, I understand all that. But 21 points, 11 assists, six rebounds, six steals. And I thought in the third quarter, when they were down eight at the half, and they just did not. I mean, they were just sleepwalking. I just don't know. Like even even against Charlotte, they're only up five, and they needed a Steph Curry buzzer beater three at the end of the first half to go up five. <laughs> now they did flip it again in the third quarter, going on the twenty three seven run to take over that basketball game, which was good. Then yesterday, third quarter, you could sense that Wimby was doing whatever he wanted. He's uh, unbelievable. Seti Osman was hitting threes in that first half, scored fifteen in that first half. The former Cleveland Cavalier, but Draymond Green, his energy, his activity. 
deflections, steals. How about going at win before a couple of layups yeah. early in that quarter, taking it to the rack, going into his chest? Trey Buck Green was excellent yesterday. You got to give him credit. No, he absolutely was. The left-handed finish around the rim was absolutely beautiful. But I, I think the the bigger you know thing for me is I know a lot of people are like well, we don't need him to score on this team. You kind of do. do. You kind of do right now, and especially with Kaminga's absence, they need more buckets around the rim. And if Dre's going to play that small ball five for the majority of the time out there, they do need him to at least bounce for. No one is saying he has to lead them in scoring on every single night. That's not what we're saying. But like that 10 to 14 point mark, it really does change the offense for him. I think it opens up the floor for others, and I think it it enables him to be a better passer because he wants to right. force that backdoor cut. And you you see this, he gets a lot of those backdoor cuts picked. But when the floor opens up, when he is squared up to the hoop and being aggressive, it draws the defense at him. He can blow by. Yep. He, he it opens up the backdoor lanes. I I just think a couple of little floaters, and he he missed a floater early in the game. But right. I love him taking that floater. No, nah, well, I I just like him going to the rack and being aggressive offensively. He was eight and nine yesterday, and it's just shots that he took because those shots are going to be be available for him every single night. And if he can do that especially when Andrew Wiggins is having the off night where he mm -hmm. goes two for 12. And Steph Curry's trying to find his rhythm, but Clay Thompson's trying to find his rhythm for missing Friday night. And you don't have Jonathan Kamiga, who's good for 20 these days. I know he's averaging 16 on a season, but he's good for 20, at least since the All-Star break. Those are They're a different team when he's aggressive offensively yes. and being a threat as a scorer because guys going to keep on the paint. When we see the Lakers Tuesday night, next Tuesday, I'm already looking ahead to the L.A. Lakers, even though I'm the not Lakers. looking past this week. But Anthony Davis is going to camp out the paint. LeBron James is going to camp out the paint. So um, he's going to have to be aggressive here. Now, Steph Curry, you brought up Steph yesterday. That was his best shooting night. Heck, I don't know, since March 16th against the Lakers on that Saturday night where he went 12, 12 of 24 overall. Yesterday, Steph Curry, 12 of 23, 7 to 15 for the three-point line. Now, entry last night in 17 games since the All-Star break, Steph was shooting 34.5% from three and 40% from the floor. That's not Steph like. Mm. Now the 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 raw data: twenty two points, four assists, four rebounds. Those are all star numbers. But twenty two four and four is great numbers. But not for him. Not for, for Steph. It, on the on the Steph Curry. On the Steph am Curry I, am spectrum. Am I being too critical? On the Steph Curry spectrum before the All Star yeah. break, he was giving you twenty eight a game. Yeah, no doubt. It's shooting a higher percentage, so it was great to see him with that efficiency. Yeah. Uh, that efficiency yesterday. That's where he needs to get going. Okay, he hasn't been as efficient. You look at this road trip. 4 of 11, 3 of 8, 3 of 10, 5 of 11, 6 of 18. Like, he was just bricking. He is, but when I look at this team, and they are six games over 500. You hope that they can find this form going into the play-in or the playoffs, because right now they're three games up on the Rockets. I know it's two games in the loss column, but they own the tiebreaker, so essentially it's three games up it, yes. on the Houston Rockets. Yes. And they got blown out by the Mavericks Which, yesterday as Luka dropped 47. Thank you. Thank you, Houston. Thank you Dallas. Luka Doncic, 9 threes, 47 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists. He's playing like an MVP. Probably won't get it, but he's playing like one. Can this team, because I think the issue with this team, and we don't know how good they are, because they never clicked all at once. No. Steph Curry gets off to a hot start this season when well, Draymond's getting suspended. Yeah. Clay's off. Yeah. Wiggins is off. CP3's rolling. Now all of a sudden, CP3 gets hurt. Clay starts going. Then Wiggins is slumped. Like, it's just, this team just hasn't clicked as one yet. And I'm, I'm very eager to see if they can do that before the end of the regular season. You bring up CP3. He didn't score in the two games prior. It was nice to see him hit a couple of little yep. uh, baseline uh, shots yesterday. I, I I feel like CP3's been a really good addition. Um, On and off the floor. Oh, yes. I, I would, yes, absolutely. And you would know more of that than, than I would. It's just, I don't, I don't think we talk enough. Like, Steph did just roll his ankle. You know, and and I I I have that baked into what I'm watching. There are times though in the fourth quarter. Although I I have praised their fourth quarter offense, there's been times in the fourth quarter where I do believe the offense gets so stagnant. And I understand Steve Kerr has talked about this till I'm blue till he's blue in the face. At the end of an NBA game, you throw it to your best player, and everybody gets out of the way, and you say, "Go get us a bucket." Right. I I I get that. But they have taken some really bad shots late in the shot clock, yeah. forced runners, forced contested, you know, fadeaways, things like that. And and it's a byproduct of Steph having the ball and like, hey, make a play for us late in the shot clock. And I just, 
boy, I wish they would get a little more creative in, in the in the final four or five minutes yeah. of a game. I just I know that's more of a byproduct of the NBA than it is like the Warriors in particular. It just it frustrates me because when the ball hops just a little, they get clean looks. Yeah, no, they do. They get clean looks. And so last night, you know, Steph misses that runner and Draymond, you know, bats it back out to, to Clay Thompson. And thank goodness he hits that shot because yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know about you. They had a 12 point lead. and I'm thinking, are they really going to fumble this? Yeah, let's hope not. Yeah, I mean, Am I, was I the only one? No, I don't think you're the only. I, I mean, I don't. I didn't. I never felt like they were going to lose that game in no, the fourth quarter. No, not like that. But it but was definitely overtime was definitely an option in my <laughs> mind. I was like, damn, are we really going to go to overtime? Now you mentioned Steph Curry did right ankle sprain. He missed it's three games. It's just something I was thinking about. But he missed the right. He missed the three games, but he came back against the LA Lakers and he spoiled us like he always does. Thirty-one points, six rebounds, five assists. 12 of 24 from the floor. He shot 50% against the Lakers. We're like, oh, Steph is good as new. And he plays the Knicks, and they had that terrible game at home against the New York Knicks, and he wasn't able to find his rhythm. Now, hopefully this is a sign of things to come because Steph Curry doesn't slump often. Mm -hmm. When he does, he usually figures out a way to break out of it. So eight games left in the regular season. You hope yesterday was a step in the right direction for Steph and Curry, but just can they start the click all at once. That's all I'm looking for over the next eight games to see what this team can really do. Uh, Moses Moody, back in the rotation. He dropped the bar yesterday. Moses Moody, hell of a road trip. Yesterday, he entered the game 12 of 20 from the floor in the last three games yeah. after not playing against Minnesota. Six of 11 from the three-point line. Yesterday, Moses Moody, four of nine, but it's not just the points he scored. It's the hustle. Yes. It's the defense. Activity. It's knowing where to be. Being active here. And I don't know, you know, I don't know whether or not he's an NBA starter, but he's going to be in this league for a what long time. What do you time. do with him on this team? You got to figure out some minutes for him somewhere, well, somehow. Who does that come at the expense of? I don't know, Shasky. You got to fill the game out. Yeah. See, Kurt, this is the problem you. with having so many guys on the team. You got to fill out the game. Well, well I do believe he feels like with his shooting, Shasky, he can space the floor. Well, and, and now he's hitting. I know what he missed 14 in a row from three at one point. Right. Um, but now it feels hit. like he's been way more lethal with that three point shot. And he, he's got a quick little trigger. Yep. Um, he's hit a couple of late Two shot clock. three yesterday. Yeah, he's hit a couple of late shot clock threes at, from the corner. Uh, I do believe he spaces the floor. To me, seeing him play the last couple of we uh, games, it's a byproduct of not having Kaminga. Like no that, doubt. That's just my estimation yeah. of like, hey, nice. you're not having Kaminga, he gets an opportunity. Do, I mean, Pods brings a lot to the table, but do, do you take a little? Because Pods hit a 3-2 yesterday. Well, I thought Pods I thought Pods kept the Warriors in the game in me the first too. quarter. Me too. They were in the first quarter. San Antonio goes on a 22-5 run. They're like, damn. <laughs> this is how we go in the road trip? And then Pods comes in. And he's just, forget the plus minus, folks. Get, get rid of well, the, the plus minus for a second. Well, the game's deeper than that. Because, like, listen, Paz has the best plus minus on the basketball team right now. By, like, 100 points. Right, like, is he more it's valuable crazy. than Steph? No. Even Paz no. will tell you he's not. He knows that. But it's but also, Pons, like, who else you're playing right. with. Like, there's a lot it's of context a, yeah, that's missing. Yeah, I, I can't stand plus minus. But, you know what? But Paz yesterday, I thought, with his energy in the first quarter, he had that ball hopping. Yes. Hit a big three, was taking it to the rack. His energy, alongside Chris Paul in that first quarter, Kept the Warriors from getting blown out. All of a sudden, they were down seven in the first quarter, 34-27 going into the second quarter. It should have been down 15. I thought Pods helped with that energy to say, hey, we need to pick this up here and bring a little juice. It is kind of crazy. And, and not, not that they're the best players on the teams, but the consistent theme for me throughout this entire year Oh, wow, TJD is one of our top six players. Oh, wow, Pajemski is one of our top six or seven players. Oh, wow, Kaminga is one of our top six. Or seven. Wow, look at Moody. You know what I mean? Like, all these young guys who weren't contributing and weren't, you know, were, were seen as the ones right. that were anchoring down this team, that's that's not the case. I mean, I, B, if you didn't have these youngsters' contributions, you wouldn't even no. be in the box right now. No. And that now I get to the question that I think is the most the most fun question. Do you want to see the Lakers or the Phoenix Suns? Well, let's let's jump ahead of ourselves, I know. man. Let's take it a little game at a time, game at a time. And this team, this team, uh, Spadoni uh, is jacked up back there. Uh, LeBron James yesterday, 40 points, 9 and 10 from the three-point line, 13 to 17 overall. And then Still he's telling us, I don't know how many years I have yeah, left. Yeah, like yeah, LeBron, I mean, I mean, LeBron just, is doing what I call the Emmett Smith. Emmett yeah. Smith used to get up very slowly after every tackle. Like his whole body was hurt. Like, nah, dude, you're good. And then run right through you on the very next play. And you and you want him here Why, for all that controversy. Be, for all be, that controversy. Be, oh, that would be, be nauseating. He'd be the best or second best player on the team. Oh, my God. He, yeah, no doubt about that. But I'm <laughs> I'm talking about all the other stuff, man. <laughs> you guys see, you don't know, you don't understand how exhausting that would get. It's you exhausting to have one of the greatest players of all time dropping. What do you have? Forty? What else? Yeah, Give me the full it's, stat. It's line. not just stats, Shasky. Uh, Thirteen to seventeen overall from the floor. Nine to ten from the three point line. 
He well, it's not just that. You a know career that. high from three. You know that. Yeah, he is. He's play, He's shooting better than Steph from three he's this season. He's gotten better with age. He has. He offensively. Has. It's not, it's, it has nothing to do with basketball. Offensively. It has nothing to do Yeah, offensively. I want to make sure and I then, clarify and then, that. And then, it, defensively, but you're going to take a step back. He is. And then it's all the other stuff. You would really want to break down J.J. Redick and LeBron James' okay. podcast every single day? Did you hear J.J. Redick yesterday? No, I did not. J.J. Redick basically said that no NBA player will ever go broke again. I'm like, J.J., love you, pal. Don't know if you know this. People who make Wait. a lot of money will go broke right. no matter what industry what, they're in. What's the People context? People spend a lot of money. What's the context Oh, it was that? just a, one of these. J.J. Wait, wait, no, what's the, honestly, what's the context behind that? I'll send to the group thread. I, right, the the well, context was they were talking about NBA salaries and how they're, you know, all these young guys are stepping into the league and they're making generational wealth. And JJ's like, yeah, no basketball player will ever go broke ever yeah. again. And it's like, JJ, um, just because you've done very well with yourself financially on and off the floor, there are other people who get bamboozled, who spend money on, you know, irrational things. Like, Yes, the money is is incredible, but find me an industry, you know, rich dad, poor dad, great example, the farmer's the millionaire, the lawyer who's got five houses and two boats goes broke. You know, it, you, you do this in any industry. I just think it was funny that the first thing I pulled up there with his podcast and he says that, and then right after it, sponsored by DraftKings. Exa thank you. <laughs> and that is the way how you lose your money, by the way. Thank by gambling you. And well, Javante Porter, will, I think, will be never ever play again. I think they're, he's going to be the, they're going to, Turn him into an example of what yeah. not to do. He'll play overseas and then, you know, have a nice career and live off Michael Porter Jr.'s money. <laughs> I think he'll be fine in that department. <laughs> he won't be broke, that's for sure. And he'll probably bet on his brother hitting prop bets. He'll probably hit on his brother hitting three threes a game. Jante Porter will be all right. <laughs> May not play in the NBA, but he'll make some cash. <laughs> So anyway. I, I was real quick oh, on the DraftKings man. thing. I did see that they're gonna they're thinking about limiting the props to players who play a certain amount of minutes mm. per game or something like that, so that you don't have these fringe two way guys, right? You know, doing something like this. They're also trying to take away prop bets in college sports. Oh, so I interesting. Don't like, don't like that at all. Um, those are money makers. Those are money makers. Let me just tell you. The college props are... <laughs> anyway, shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Let me not get myself in trouble here. What about the prop bets for the Little League World Series? I don't know. Are they out yet? I'll be, definitely be all over Gotta that. Gotta ride Hawaii or whatever West Coast team it is. Or no, day. no. And then internationally, you go with uh, Taipei. Yeah. Chinese Taipei. Japan. Japan. Taiwan. Uh, hell, China. They're Curacao. Not oh, Curacao. Oh, boy, they got some ballers. Uh, shout out to YouTube and Twitch brought to you by First NorCal Credit guys. Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages. Pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. And shout out to the Comcast Business Text Line as well. You know, I, I, this is going to sound like loser talk, but we've been saying this for almost 30 years in the NBA. Look at the standings. Just look at them right now. 43 wins, you're in the box in the West. 43 wins, you're the five seed in the East. Yep. It's it's crazy. I don't know. I I, I do think we need to kind of revamp how we do these playoffs. Just go one, I don't just know. one through 16. I'm just more open. Like, it, clearly all the bottom. And it's, this is not a one-year trend. This isn't even a five-year trend. Like, for the majority of our adult lives, the East has been the weaker conference. Has we it just, not? We just saw Orlando. They're the fifth best team in the East. They went three for 32. That bugs three for you, 22 it? in the first quarter. It really bugs you. They have no shooting. That's the fifth place team in the East. I know. Fifth place team in the East. And now, I want to call them a good no, team, but, but then I look at like, I mean, are they? But at the same time, in the end, it just came here to Chase Center and blast the Warriors. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, the Knicks just came here to Chase Center. Well, I Center think the Knicks are a good team. And blasted the Warriors. Cleveland Cavaliers swept the Warriors. We saw what Boston did to the Warriors in Boston. Well, Boston's one of the best teams in the they're league. They're one of the best By teams. record, they're the best team in the league. But Miami's no joke. Yeah. When they have all their Boston guys. Boston lost a 30 point lead the other day. Right. Day, which <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't believe. Philadelphia, it. uh, when they get a B back, they you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but all the, I'm the West I, has always been the top conference. That's all. No doubt about that. No and, doubt. They, and I, been, I just look at it and I and I say to myself, like, the gauntlet of the playoffs and how these this new television deal, would they consider 
changing up either the playoff formats, you know, the way we do 16. standings. Yeah. I, I, don't, I do believe with this, you know, now you have the in-season tournament. I think something's on the table in terms of adjusting be. the playoffs. Yep, no, no doubt about that. Shout out to our friends at Floyd Water. Plug you get drained if you're going to call it to the roast. You better be, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Floyd Water. Plug you get drained. 888-957-9570. Warrior fans out there. We will touch on the Giants as they split oh. down to San Diego. Dalton Jeffries, uh, if you woke up and tuned into the game in the third inning, it was already over. It was already over. But they set up a, <laughs> they, they started a big time series against the Dodgers today down at Dodger Stadium as the Dodgers continue continue to hit the crap out the baseball. Um, they are so Mookie Betts, four home runs? I mean, it's just How? unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. 888-957-9570. Any major takeaways from this 4-1 road trip for the Golden State Warriors? Where are you at, Warrior fans? Are you feeling good about this team? Or a game behind the L.A. Lakers in the lost column? Three games behind the Kings and the Suns in the lost column? Y'all feeling good about the Warriors right now? 4-1 road trip. 22-15 on the road. Uh, on the road, 954, Cock has been sex. I says, we never said anything positive about them. Well, now's your chance to say something positive about them since we never do, apparently. All right, that's what's coming up on the game. Brought to you by the Alameda County Probation Department. I'm a Warriors fan.
four-point Warrior lead as Clay moves up the three-point ladder. Clay Thompson has tied Kyle Korver sixth all-time and made threes, 2,450. But he might have just given the Golden State Warriors a win off the offensive rebound by Draymond Green. This is Clay Thompson, and you are listening to the Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game. <laughs> Who'd he just tie? Kyle Corver. We should have a Kyle Corver jersey behind our glass here. What about Kyle Ray Corver. Allen? See, this is the part. This is we the should part have that Kyle Corver right here. I said the best version of Kyle Corver or some version of Ray Allen off the bench for the big three. And it just turned into this some slanderous well, the, thing. The Maybe I'm just higher on Kyle Corver yeah, than everyone. I, I and I apologize are. for that. I think you are. But why am I, why I are we stuck are. on Kyle Corver? I'm not going to lie. I brought that up to some NBA players a couple years ago. And they were like, what? What? Chasky got to be playing, man. Well, He's got to be Kyle trolling. Kyle Corver, most three-pointers <laughs> off the bench in NBA history. Okay, great. Good for him. Uh, you're complaining. You're comparing the best of Kyle Corver. <laughs> the best the version of Kyle Corver. one season he went to the All-Star no, game. No, no, I wasn't even going to go there. He was 25 years old. He averaged 14 points a game with the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, but the league would has he, changed would, dramatically would, since he... I okay, think if so, he had played in this era, I think he would be a... Well, he did be play a better, this era. No, he did play in this he, era. What did he get drafted? 2007? 2003. Okay, I'm, He played until 2020. Okay. He played 17 years in the league. Yeah, at 17. I'm saying if his if his prime was in this three-point era, I think we'd view him a little different. Well, listen, man. You know, just a little. Well, well nah, I don't know about that. He made the All-Star game after 12 points, 12 points a game. <laughs> it was like a sympathy package for the Atlanta Hawks. Hey, let's get four of your five starters in the All-Star game because you guys have the best record. We know you're not going to the NBA Finals. Let's just go ahead and get you in the All-Star game. Kyle Corbett made an all-star game. I value 12 shooting. 12 points a game, four rebounds, 12 and four, and he made an all-star game in the Eastern Conference. That is hilarious. I'm not even trying to slip. I, I like Kyle Corver. I do. No, I'm not mad at Kyle. No. When you, when you compare him to Killer Clay, that's that's what I, I'm like. Come on, man. Like, there's levels to this. Like, Clay is having a, a, a half our chat thinks Clay is washed. Half our chat thinks Clay can't play anymore. Well, Clay Thompson somehow, some way, is still averaging over 17 points a game. So even in his worst year, his worst year has been in Kyle Corver's best year by a long shot. By a long shot. Anyway, I don't know. It's just ironic, Kyle Corver. I'm not even mad at you, Shaska. I know what you're saying. No, you to are. Say. No, I don't I don't care. That's your opinion. You you put your name on that, not me. I do. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. Anyway, uh, looking for the best Giants talk out there. That's right. Best Giants. Talk. Some say it's the Kyle Corver of podcasts. No, nah, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. It's not even the Max Struce podcast. It's the best Giants talk out there. Make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys. You know they're fired up right now. Sam Love me, Joe Shasky, be the best damn Giants talk in the Bay Area all week. Or excuse me, every week, all season long, win or lose. Subscribe today on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you like your podcasts. <laughs> That's BS, man. David Twelve Twelve. I'm happy with Joe Shasky. So I says, "Hey, Bonte, you happy on the morning roast?" I'm happy with Shasky. Uh, you know, I'm actually that's... excited about the Giants. <laughs> I am excited about the Giants. Chuck, who, Lee? Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. I'm excited What's about the going Giants. What's with Kaminga's knee, Bonte? I, I don't Seriously, know. I don't know. If well, I knew, what are I people tell saying? You. If I do, I would tell you. I mean, I I, I saw him warming up pregame or whatever, yeah, or I, I guess going through some sort of a warm up in pregame. But he looked very slow. Not, I, it didn't look like he was trying to be not explosive. Not pushing it. Not pushing it. I don't think it's serious. If it was serious, they would say something about that. But it's been quiet on the set when it comes to Jonathan Kamiga's knee. I mean, even, three, even if I knew, I probably wouldn't. No, be, I know, uh, but it's three games in a row. Contract say anything about that. So three games in a row. Now, granted, you played the Charlotte Hornets and. and the San Antonio Spurs. So, if there's any games to sit out, I would say those would be games to sit out. I hear you. It's just you should it, have enough with Steph, Clay, Dre, or Wiggins to beat the Hornets in the San Antonio Spurs. I hear you again. A game, two game, three. I just I worry, and I don't. I mean, who knows? Like this is kind of. I mean, 
you, you see this in other sports where guy misses a couple of games, he thinks he can play through it, he's got some sort of quote-unquote tendonitis or whatever going on there, and maybe there's a slight tear, and then they need a meniscus cleanup. I just I worry about the young man. They He played great basketball this year, and, and I do feel like they need him, but it's given an opportunity to Moses Moody to step up and, and play good basketball. I just... For them to get out of this box, I I would like to have all my my players available. And I well, feel like no Kaminga is one of the most important. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, there's no doubt they need Jonathan Kaminga, and <laughs> I knew this would happen too. He missed three games. Willie and I were actually talking about it yesterday, and this is before I opened up social media. It automatically, I already know how this stuff works. I already know how it works. This Kaminga is going to be fine. Don't stress yourself, Shasky. Seriously, don't don't do that. He'll be fine. He'll be back this week. And if he doesn't, then I'll say I was wrong, and then you can stress. But <laughs> you already see it. This is how dumb people, not everybody, but it's how the world works, I guess, these days. Kamika misses three games, Moody comes in and plays, and all of a sudden, oh, man. They, Kamika kills the offense. Look at how well they're playing without Kamika. Yeah. Kamika this and Kamika that. And it's just like, here we go again. Here we go again. They need Kamika. He's one of their top defenders on the perimeter. He's one of your only guys who can go to the rim and attack the rim with reckless abandon. He has a mid-range jumper 10 feet out. He's getting better and better and better. So they need Kaminga if they want to make a run here in the Western Conference. To your point, is it, and I know it's not exclusive to just Warrior fans because the Giants fans do this and Niner fans do this. Is that just the, the new sports thing is to like constantly direct all of our blame toward one individual. Yeah, that's all it is. Like, an, if something goes wrong, we just have to blame one specific person? Yeah, all the time. All the time. We blame one guy. Like, it, it's we play the blame game on everything. It can't just be, hey, this team was better than you. Yeah. Or, hey, this guy didn't do this, or this guy didn't do that. It's always, let's point, 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 point. Point. It's always somebody's fault. Whether it's Steve Kerr's fault, Draymond's fault, Steph's. It's never really Steph's fault. But it's Clay's fault. It's Wiggins fault. It's. I mean, it's just I can't keep well, up these days. Well, the, the other one that I've seen, uh, I've noticed is that a lot of frustration with the officiating, and I'm I'm thinking to myself like, like if the officiating was horrific. During Nothing's changed much. Yeah, I know. So I don't I know. like. I don't really want. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not here caping up for officials because you know where I stand on officials. But we're acting like, like, like the Warriors got a good whistle when they were good, and now they're getting a bad whistle, and, and that's why they're bad. It's like no, nah, the whistle's been very consistent. Well, also when you rely heavily on three point shots, you're not going to get a lot of whistles. Th that I agree. With. Shooting team, you yes. got to get to the rack. And they, yesterday they didn't get a free throw in the first half. And really, I had no complaints about that. Well, see Kerr getting the tech. I mean, he was well, pretty. Well, Pods got hacked. That was a one miss yeah. call, and that's that's Mark Davis, who's again one of the worst refs in the league, and he's been there forever. But you well, know. they also called Pods. I guess they missed a call. On, at least this was the broadcast, and they missed a call on one end. And I don't know if it was Staff, I, I someone who was going in for a layup, and Pods was just like not blocking out, but I don't know. It looked yeah. like he was boxing out, or you know, trying to post up, and they called him on an offensive foul that was. Horrifically egregious. That was awful. That on was on Wemby, and I'm saying like, what are we doing? Why, why are why are there makeup calls? You know, that's an that's an interesting question. I want to throw it out there to the audience. It's a little different though. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. When did we start becoming a culture in which we just started pointing fingers at one individual or start playing the blame game? Like hey, Tyler Miller may be onto something here, and he's rarely right. I love you, Tyler, but you're rarely right about things. Ooh, this is the ghost of Trey Lance. But he, he may be right about this. That's sports culture. Blame first take. We're skipping Stephen A. Basically, just will blame one individual. LeBron this at the end of the game. Or Kobe this at the end of the game. Like, he doesn't have what, the clutch like, gene. Like, these games don't come down to the last possession. Have you ever coached? <laughs> what, what you say in coaching? Right. It's never one play. It's never one play. It's never ever. one play. Ever. 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 ever, ever. So, like, but we do this. We wait till the last five minutes of the game. We're like, ah, oh, he missed that shot. He stinks. He's a choke artist. No, this game may have been lost in the third quarter. Like, for example, Pacers game. We just brought up the Pacers, right? Chase Center. That game was basically lost in the second quarter. When they were up 12 and the Pacers cut the lead to one going into <laughs> halftime, that's the game. The three quarter the right before half. Right, right, I before, felt it right. before it even. In like, the third uh, quarter, they go on a run and boom, that's the game. But that happened. It was the start of the second quarter. That happened. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't know, man. But I don't, I don't know what it's it started. modern. Because, like, Bonte, if I polled 100 sports fans, 
Bill Buckner. They'd be like, blew the World Series for the right. Ma- uh, for the uh, uh, Boston Red Sox. People don't even realize that they were up 3 nothing in Game 7. 3 nothing, Game 7. And when did the Bill Buckner play happen? Game 6. Thank you. Okay, Felix Rodriguez. Oh, my gosh. That, what game was that? Game 6. Okay. And look, no, don't get me wrong. Like I, those guys choked on big right. stage, right? And, and we knew, we kind of knew that the series is over. Yeah, there are layers right. to why they lost. But you get where I'm going no, with this, absolutely. All right, you get where I'm going with this. So I don't think this is a relatively new phenomenon. I actually think that this is this has been around for a long, long, long time. I do believe it's because of the the sports culture that we're in now, where everyone can go to social media and pile on someone. Now it becomes over the top. Right. And instead of having, you know, really dynamic discourse and, and layered conversations, pie charts of culpability, if you will, right. when, when teams win and lose, we point at one person. Yeah, no doubt. No and, doubt. and now it's, I feel like it's just, we're just stoning someone in town circle on Twitter. All, all the time. All the time. It's, it's not everybody. I, which is why I've taken a step back from X. I, I really go on there during games now. I, I just... I may tweet some here and there, like I was tweeting about the women's basketball tournament, but I, I can't do it. Oh, we got a break here. Um, gosh, I, I was about to say something here. I was about to say something. Come on, now. On the other These side. guys can't get enough of blaming Jimmy G. <laughs> we did blame Jimmy G for everything. That's right. That's what I wanted to get to. I wanted to ask you about the TJD Draymond front court. Is that something Steve Kerr should stick with? Because Kaminga will come back. I want to get your answer on the other side. I know, Lemon. I was I was going to do that. You don't have to whisper in my ear, please. Don't do that. Because then, like, uh, who's this on the YouTube chat? Quinn Thompson. I hear Bonte's grumpy or something. You whisper in my ear about break will make me grumpy. I well, promise if you hit you. the break, then we don't have to get grumpy. Well, break then. Break then. You you make the, you make do the read, and then you break. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. It's a mystery where Old Spice from.
The Morning Roast is live on YouTube right now. Take it away, Bonte. All right, this segment is sponsored by Go to State Lumber, serving the Bay Area for three generations. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit GoToStateLumber.com. Hey, Lumber, you checked that off? We got that redid. There you go. Did we come back on time? It's the most important part. Gosh, I swear. I went to church yesterday. It was beautiful and yeah, nice. I, you guys are going to start making me go to church. Maybe God can help me not worry about so many irrelevant things on this show. <laughs> Gosh. God hits his brakes. <laughs> no, God doesn't. God's That's dead. not true. <laughs> Trust me. Mass yesterday did not go the right. appropriate amount of time God, it was supposed to. God is never on time, and God never lets you out on church on time. No. Let you out of church on time. I love Father Rene, but he, he was waxing poetically at the end, leaning into it. We I were mean, thanking everyone. I mean, my, it felt like a Grammy acceptance speech. My, my, at my cousin's funeral, I told you, man, the preacher went on and started talking about God knows what. It went on and on and on and on and on. God. It's like, damn. <laughs> Dude, you want to wrap this up so we get to the cemetery, get to the repast and eat? Good oh Lord. So, no, you're wrong, loving. God is never on time. Was your Easter good yesterday? My Easter was great. Oh, good. I always had, you know, I, my days have been fine. I, I Life is good. AFC game Saturday. Yeah, Easter how was, was that? solid. AFC was sick. Yeah? That was a sick game. They lost 3 2. Yeah. Uh, Houston Dash scored a goal in the last minute. It, hit, it was nine minutes of extra time. Now, I wasn't there. Baby Chaz was going down for the count, so we missed yeah, yeah. a lot of action there late in the second half. But the environment, 18,000 strong. Uh, shout out to Emily, who works with Bay FC, formerly of ESP, uh, NBC Sports Bay Area. Oh, nice. Hooked us all up, man. It was a great time. Alex the Bunny. Uh, Is that the, the therapy ser- bunny? That's the therapy buddy. Oh. Was in our suite, and Baby Chaz couldn't get enough of the buddy. Oh, so you were in a suite. Well, it was like a little, like, they got like the little... I'll, yeah, I guess it was a sweet. Well, yeah, yeah, don't backpedal. Yeah. I just yeah, it was a little sweet. good for you. That yeah, sounds like an awesome time. That was great. I'm jealous. Was in there. Yeah. I, I didn't know Red you would... carpet gets rolled out for the king. I mean, you don't like soccer, so <laughs> let's bring bunnies from far and wide <laughs> to see the king. You're not a big soccer fan, not, so you I'm know not, what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I saw Dave Stewart. Uh, Chris Mullen and yeah. Ronnie Lott. Did you see the coats that Ronnie oh. Lott and yeah. Mullen oh, had? Yeah, that was so sick. So that was sick. a sweet. I was there. Fezzi was there. Oh, uh, well, that was the sweet you were that in. Was the sweet I was in. Did Christy, you get one of those Christy, Letterman jackets? No, I, I'm working on that. Chrissy Yamaguchi. Chrissy Yamaguchi was in the building as well with the Letterman jacket. Now, that's that's a name I haven't heard. Chrissy Yamaguchi in is in the building. A long time. She was big chilling. The Stewart San um, Jose, uh, correct? Yeah, San Jose. San yes. Jose. PayPal Stadium. PayPal Park is no, what no. They but call I'm it. saying she was from San Jose. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, obviously, figure skater. Yep. No, she was doing. And I didn't go. It was free. I wanted to go. I wanted to go. Like, <laughs> Rocco I, I like wants going. to bring his girls down there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll hook Rocco up. I'll yeah. get him down there. I'll get Rocco down there. No problem. Now, I will say this, Mr. Bay Area. We're in a position to where we don't have to pay for a lot of games anymore. You know what? Uh, I'm going to milk that cow. <laughs> are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, or you, on uh, you know, all of us. Because oh. you say, hey, Bounty, you only go I didn't to places know who Mr. where you're Bay free. Area was. Yeah, he was, he was, uh, he was oh. on YouTube. Say, we only go places where it's free. Well, you know what? We do go places where it's free. Well, I Why wish. not? I wish. Oh, stop it, Chasky. You got credentials everywhere. You haven't paid for a game in a long time. Except for Niner games, which we B, both I pay can't for. Argue I am, we I'm both pay for Paying a games. pretty penny for opening day. Yeah, All right. Well, yeah, I'm not doing that. Sorry. I'll pay I'll spend some money on some food. But tickets, we're in a position we worked hard. Might as well get some well, type of perk for it. But before we're gonna get back into the Warriors, and there's some a lot of Giants thoughts today. Um what was the vibe like going in? Was it families? Was it What's that? AFC? This, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of families out there. A okay. lot of but it was just a lot of support for our new professional women's soccer team. Were they selling like, a lot of merch? Dude. So I went, the line was long. I mean, the and logo's I, so cool. Dude. So I I was like, all right, they had this little scanner because obviously it was getting a little cold. I was like, man, I need my gear. They didn't have anything there. They sold out of everything. Really? I mean, before the game, everything was clear. I was talking to them because the, one of the spots where they were selling the gear was right behind the suite. Uh-huh. So I was like, hey, any hats, anything? And he was like, dude, look at this place. Because we had to get something from the vendor That's really outside. Cool. And I was like, and, and their gear was so cool. So is it all navy blue or do they have no, other? No, they got the orange, the white, the blue, the orange, a little bit of orange. Oh, okay. So I, it's pretty I hadn't sweet. seen that Gray. stuff yet. Okay. Because um, it's like old English. Old English, it yeah. It looks really cool. Beat. It reminds yeah. me of like a Detroit Tiger vintage yeah, logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really cool. I yeah, like it's it. It's cool. Oh, there it is right there. Oh, oh wow. wow. There it is right oh, there. Look at the, oh, There's a hat oh, right there. Oh, must There's a hat be right nice. There. Right there. What? Look at our, the boss man. We better get back to talk about something important. Hey, can I wear that? I'm going to take this. Is that okay? Yeah, can I take, take this? It. Yeah, take it. Take it. So, so I've got it right now. So what does this say? Thing. I can't read it, B. Uh, lift it up. It says Bay FC. 
Bay FC. Oh, it just says Bay FC. Yeah, okay, Bay cool. FC. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking this. Yeah, yeah I got so the, the T-shirt job. right now. Perks Go to YouTube job. to check it out. That's Perks cool. The job. I yeah. like it. But but you know when people say, oh man, you guys only go somewhere for free. You know how many road games I've paid for? Top dollar. Stop it, man. Stop pocket watching, Mr. Bay Area. Anyway, uh, it was a great environment. <laughs> Fireworks went off. Baby Chaz had a great time. It's great to chop it up with Bully Stew. Talking to Roddy Lot. Talking to Roddy. Roddy is Roddy's off the hook, man. He's off the chain. What's up with Ronnie? Oh, uh, he's just big chilling. He's big chilling. Yeah, he's loving life. Do you have any thoughts on that Super Bowl? That's all I want to know. Dude, what would he would have done to exactly. Patrick Mahomes? Just shook his head. He just shook his head. What does he think about Jed saying that Brock's going to reset the quarterback market? We did not get into that. <laughs> does he want to keep Ayuk? I did not bring that up. Well, I mean, come on. Yeah, I was just talking. To you. you know, you kind of when you meet these people, Shasky, you got to like just talk to them. You can't just like. It takes her. You're not doing an interview right on the spot. You're well, just no, like, you treat him like a, no, 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 no. I'm just chilling. I'm like, because I I expect to see Roddy down the line. I expect to see more of him. So this is what I know. Honest to God. Honest to God. I'm not even trying to be funny here. I learned at Cobb's Comedy Club. And, I, and this this helped me out in my entire career. I swear to God. Cobb's would bring in all the top comics. You know, whether it's Dave Chappelle, John Oliver. I guess Joe Rogan's a comic, I guess. I don't know. He would do shows and he would sell them out, but I didn't think it was that funny. But like Richard Lewis, rest in peace, did a lot of shows there. So I learned from these comics and just interacted with them. The more normal, the better. Not just, hey, what do you think about this joke? Hey, what do you think about this comedian? Hey, what do you think about this? You're not doing a Q&A. You're just talking like we are in the green room. We're just chopping it up. And that's the same thing with Roddy and these players. They just want to chop it up and just talk and laugh and talk about life and not pepper them because they do a bunch of interviews, right? They do all these radio hits where they're, hey, what do you think about Purdy resetting the quarterback market? Hey, what do you think? I, I was doing a bit. Yeah, I know you were, but I'm just explaining to the people. <laughs> well, I don't know if you were doing a bit or not because I know you, Shasky. You get around these people, you start peppering them with those questions. Well, you do seven in. minutes of material, yeah. and then you, you pop in a question well, back to seven minutes of material. But I had to explain that. I had to explain that. I'd explain that. That's all. You know. Sounds like a good time was had at, at the Bay FC. It was here. fine. It was fine. It was more so uh, getting baby Chaz out there, seeing some girls play soccer. Yeah. She went crazy when they scored the first oh, goal. Oh, very cool. Uh, Cassianos, who was on our pregame show, scored the first goal. Oh. I was like, look. I was like, Bully was like, is that Super Z with the pink hair? I was like, that's Super Z. Baby Chaz is when they scored. Like, ah! It was fun. It was just good. That's very Good cool. to get her out there in the environment. A lot of people are down there that we do. A lot of roasters are down there. Uh, hey man, listen every day, listen every. I was like, right on, man. I appreciate it. So great time out. You got to support the Bay Area and support women's sports, man. Like the the women's basketball tournament has been so much better than the men's tournament. It's not even funny. You know what we're getting? What we're getting today? The mashup of matchups. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark and Bo Body made a great point about that. This is like the UNLV Duke game back in '91. Ooh, I love that call. That's a good call. I love that call. That's a good call. I like that. But a lot. I, I, but I, I do think it's a little messy what's going on. Like, Kim Mulkey is one thing, but leave the girls alone. Like, calling them evil and oh, there was some terminology that they use. I don't even want to repeat it on these airways. It's just nasty work. Let these girls have fun. And I love Adrian Reese saying, look, I don't hate Caitlin Clark. I love Caitlin Clark. I love what she's doing for the game, but we get between the lines. Yeah, it's competition. We're going to trash talk. That's what we're going to do. Have so, it, have, like, yes, that's it, as they should. It's always fun, Gary. And I think that's what makes it great. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, what is this? All right. Warriors. 888-957-9570. You asked me a question. Yeah, I asked you a question about the front court. Like, eight, well, that was before I loved it, told me to go to break a minute early. Um, TJD, Joy Marguerite front court. What do you think about that? Well, I think it works against certain matchups, you know, uh, I do like the high low uh, matchup when, when, when offensively. Let's go offensively. You're going to have Draymond Green at the top of the key. Okay. So who are the other guys that are going to be with them? Is it going to be Wiggins, Clay, yeah. Steph? Because I think that that works against some lineups. Where it gets a little clunky for me is when teams sag off of Draymond and they're sagging off of TJD mm. and you don't have TJD as a high pick and roller. I, I do believe that that lane can get very, very, very clogged. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it allows that free runner who's not guarding Draymond to right. be able to double and sag off of things. So now all those guys coming off of screens, you're not getting clean looks off those screens, off those those staggers. Guys are already hedging and jumping them. So it really is matchup dependent for me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. But I like it. I mean, like, th there are points in the game where I like what I'm seeing. I think TJD's hands have been the biggest revelation for me watching him this year. 
I think, and it's, it's funny you bring up his hands. We mentioned this on the post game show, and I asked Fezzi this. Said his hands for a rookie. Now I know he played four years in Indiana, but I, I don't ever see him like bumble the ball, or fumble mm -mm. the ball, or lose a ball. Like his hands are like vice grips. He gets his hands on that basketball. He catches it, and he knows what to do with it. It's rare that you see him drop a pass. And he finishes around the rim with both hands yep. really well. Um, for a guy that's not huge, I mean, he's tall relative to the NBA, but like relative to his position, he's not a large guy. Yeah. But he finishes with both hands very well around no, the rim. Does. And I, I, I like him. I, I think TJD's a keeper. There's no question about yeah. it. Is that something you can do against the Lakers? Like, like, hypothetically, you're right. playing the Lakers, okay? And they've got Anthony Davis. No, I don't think that that works against yeah. Anthony Davis. That's up dependent. Yeah. Yeah, I think against Anthony Davis, you want to spread them you. out and you want Anthony Davis to have to move more. And this is where it's really incumbent on Draymond to have a game like he had last night against a team like the Lakers because then that forces Anthony yep. Davis out from the key. You, you, you saw it last year. When he's able to pack into the paint and he doesn't have to move, it allows him to help everyone. He can right. shot uh, defend around the rim. He can block guys like... You have to draw him away from the hoop. And I think yeah. having TJD and Draymond against that right. team in particular, yeah. I don't think that's I love point. that. That's but maybe I'm wrong. No, 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 no. That's a good point. It's not about being right or wrong, Shasky. Always remember that. But, uh, I'm, but I'm open no, to no, being but, but, like, but, but, but no, that's wrong. A, that's, a, that's a fair take because I, I think I'm with you there. Um, because TJD right now, the next step for him, we always talk about the next step for Pods yeah. and the next step for Kaminga. The next step for TJD is to develop a nice little 10, 15 foot little mid-range jumper if he can because people are going to sag off him yeah. and try to play him going to the rack. He does have a soft touch around the rim, but against Anthony Davis, because I think about the Lakers, you may have to see them at some point. And we all remember that second-round series last year where Looney and whether it was Looney mm -hmm. or Draymond or Jermichael Green, who Jermichael Green had the one game and then flamed out there. Remember him? But Where's he spaced he it. He spaced the floor. You had to guard him. But... That is a fair quote. Like, AD will sag off in the paint but that's, and just play them. So that's that's tough. And then Draymond to play the other guy, that is a little tough. So here's where I, I'm, I'm going with this. If they play the Suns, though, in this one-game scenario, I might be more inclined to, to try that lineup out. It gets Nurkic. Yeah. yeah. The Suns will start. Who will they start? Beal, Booker, Even though Durant. Nurkic is not the greatest defender and maybe having more shooting on the floor provides more space, but, like, where's Kaminga at at that point, yeah. you know, health-wise? This is why I think they're all interconnected. I, B, the more and more I think about it, look, the Suns present their own unique set of problems. But if you're asking me, Lakers or Suns in a one-game scenario, I think I'm leaning Suns. Yeah. I hear you. Suns are struggling though, man. That's I, I, I don't yeah. look. I don't want to see. I, I, I would rather be in a position where I wouldn't have to have yeah. the season on the line in a one game scenario. But it feels like that's the only opportunity they're going to have right now. And so I'm looking at it and I'm saying, boy, the Lakers would be just the worst possible matchup because of AD. Well, yeah, AD is a problem. AD is a problem. By and the then way, like LeBron, by like, the way. you know, look at the LeBron numbers the last couple of years against the Warriors. They're not the, the Warriors have not slowed him down. You see what's on our uh, television screen? Why are you doing that to me? <laughs> it's the Super Bowl. Wait, did we change uh, text lines? We did. Oh, it's the Xfinity mobile text line. Oh, it's not the Comcast that. business text line no more. Yeah, it changed really quickly. When? Uh, over the weekend. Really? Yeah. I didn't get an alert for that. Shout out to the Xfinity mobile text line. Say it like th we're, we're five cooking. times today. Yay! Say it like five times today. Thanks for the reminder, guys. Uh, I'm throwing everybody under the bus. We thought today. the legal is the perfect time to do that. All so right, you you're go. listening to 9570 KGMZ FM and AC1 San Francisco. Don't forget that you can also watch us every single day. It's time for you to do the legal. Uh, I love that. On YouTube and Twitch. God, I love that. Just log on and search 9570 Gay. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class. Money market today, and you can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. So now I'm curious. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile yeah. text line. Maybe I'm alone in this, but when I log off Friday from the station, I don't look at the emails until maybe Monday afternoon. Yeah. You're not alone. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, you're not all alone. Right. I, didn't, I don't. I, but I was looking at my Gmail. I didn't see Xfinity anywhere. It's okay. Uh, right. I, I'm I'm looking at just the you know the seven, eight, nine, ten, and obviously eleven Houston Rockets who lost, which was thank goodness. Um, the Kings losing Malik Monk is huge, right? They they to me feel like a vulnerable team. 
Uh, all these teams feel very vulnerable. So let me just preface that. Like, there's a reason all these teams are in the box. But like losing Malik Monk, you're losing a big spark off the bench for that team. He has been he, and he's he's a warrior killer. Like he's crushed the Warriors at times. I look at the Suns. I don't know what to make of them. I, I really don't. I don't. I don't want to face Booker and KD in a one game scenario. But at the same time, like they feel very vulnerable. Like I don't have a lot of faith in them. Uh, and they've only been together for a short period of time. Like just look at the games logged between Beal and and KD and Booker. And like they don't have a lot of synergy. And then I look at the Lakers. And it's like. <sighs> I think they're very flawed, but I've seen them play this Warrior team and they present a certain set of problems in terms of their size. The only time the Warriors have really, like, there's that one game that they went off. They should have won the game. They ended up losing. But, like, when AD went off the floor, totally different game. Felt like a totally different game for the they, Warriors. They beat the Lakers one time without LeBron James. Um, that one feels too- like I have to throw that out the window. So Am we'll I wrong? Next, well, we'll see next Tuesday. We'll see next Tuesday. Um, when the Warriors and, and I'm not dismissing the Rockets right now because like the Rockets, well, I'm could... gonna I'm gonna dismiss the Rockets. Um, I'm gonna dismiss them. You think so? Yeah, I am. I, I think so. I'm, I mean, not, the... I'm not worried about the Rockets at all. Uh, yeah. I'm, all right. I'm well, sure. I, I still I'm actually have a with Draymond. Of... I'm there with Draymond. I'm, I'm not worried about the Rockets. Well, I have they, a little bit of, know, of worry. They, they they played their hot streak. They had their hot streak. They won 11 in a row. They got humble. Yeah. I, I just look at it like they the got, Warriors are one. They got you know, blown turned ankle out. away from oh. being in a tough spot. <laughs> Did you guys see the shot Luca had yesterday at the, yes. at the three point line? Yes. The underhanded, like, are you the kidding under, me? The underheaded. Lucas had a great roll. week. No, he's having Lucas a tremendous a week. Year. He's seen the no, I know, twice but his week, week when he was like, he should have drafted me against oh, the yeah, Kings, yeah. Well, and now this. I mean, no doubt, he's having a hell but of a week. He's had a hell of a year, Shasky. He's having a hell of a year. Yeah. This guy is unbelievable. Hey, I, I mean, he's probably going to come in second place in the MVP voting. Look at Doncic. What? Are you crazy? Steiny says I'm having a hell of a year. Is that what that was you're saying to me, Spadoni? That's no. That's, 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 that's a hell of a year for. Um, real quick, you're talking about like the Suns, and you'd rather face them and stuff like that. I, I, right, Their today, schedule right now today. it might not be the craziest thing. If you look at all the that's schedules, what I'm saying. Kings, Lakers, Suns. That's what the Suns have coming up at New Orleans, home to the Cavs. They just got Donovan Mitchell back. Then they're home against the Timberwolves, Pelicans, Clippers, at Clippers, Kings, Timberwolves. And then I look at the Kings. That's, that's well, a tough oh, Hold on, hold on. Right let's there. stick on the Suns for a second before we move yeah. on to the Kings. Okay, yeah. I got the Kings schedule up, but just on the, on the Suns. Now, yeah, on paper, it looks tough. OKC has to play for the number one seed, so that's going to be a tough yeah, game. And I feel like Shea yeah. is trying to go for the MVP as well. No doubt. Maybe I'm, but, but I don't the know. Clippers, maybe they, they do something different. But the Clippers, I think they're vulnerable. They, they, it feels like they played their best basketball. Second worst defensive rating since the All Star. Yep. They, it feels like they played their best basketball. And right now, Dallas is five. Just think about that. Dallas is just in the playing box. In the box, they're now five. Clippers have. If they played the Clippers. Row. They played the Clippers in a series. I'm taking the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, in a series, yes. But That's you, what I'm saying. You're going through the schedule. I'm correct? going to go, go, just take this the way they're playing, yeah. the form that they're playing with. I, yeah, I, I just don't I, believe. I've never believed in the Clippers, but keep going. Yeah, so that's that's all I was gonna say. Like I know, I know they're winning a couple games here and there, and they're trying to get healthy, but something's something's amiss with the Clippers. Something's off, very off. So I wouldn't just and, and look who they, they got. Podcast, they just, they just, yeah, they do have podcast itis. But number one, they beat the Sixers by one point. No Embiid, and we know the Sixers have been struggling. Embiid coming back, coming this back week, this per week. Loge. Yep, it gets OKC. They beat the Magic by three. That's a good win. We all saw Orlando, though they can't shoot. They're they're shooters. It really is away. incredible how poorly they shoot. When, uh, you, they, when they, you watch it, you're like, wow. Yeah, three for twenty. I mean, no, it's bad. It's bad, bad. And they're all trying to get and, into the, to the lane. And they played the Walgreens Hornets. Like he, Willie and I started calling. So why are you calling them the Walgreens so, Hornets? So, so when Tell the Warriors me this joke. So here's Maybe the joke. The Memphis Grizzlies. When the Warriors last played the Memphis Grizzlies, the Grizzlies had eleven players on their injury report. <laughs> Their injury report was longer than the CVS receipt. So therefore, we started calling them the CVS Grizzlies. Well, the, <laughs> the Charlotte Hornets, they weren't much better. There's no LaMelo. They, were missing. they had like eight dudes on the bench. I mean, it was a joke. Bridges, so they're like, he's having a career year. It's like, yeah, there's Please. no one on the team <laughs> who's going to take shots from him. We're going to be getting to Grant Williams and him and Draymond late in the fourth quarter or what happened there. Uh, uh, dude, wait, can we get into that? <laughs> so so the, Walgreens, the Walgreens Hornets is what we were calling them. So the Clippers really uh, not filling them. Well, the, the, my biggest takeaway after this weekend of Warrior basketball, it's not so much about the game yesterday. It's like... There's so many woulda, coulda, shouldas 
before we even got to this weekend, they, they should be five games clear of, of where they're at in the standings. They should be in that four, five, six spot with relative ease. Like, honestly. Yeah, no and it's frustrating as a Warrior fan. Blown leads, self-inflicted wounds with suspensions, um, you know, not coming around to specific lineup changes early in the year. Whatever the hell is happening at home, Steph Curry is is basically alluding, like, in a joking way, hey, maybe we should stay in a hotel right. for our home games. Like, they've totally flipped what happened last year on the road and this year, and then at home, I don't even I don't even know what to describe but what's happened. Nah, I don't know. And, and so, like, I'm looking at the Warriors right now, and I'm saying to myself, like, if you had just won, and, and I don't think this is a, a hot take by any stretch. Like, you should be five games better than where you're at. No, Just the, watching the year play out and, and your lack of cohesion, some of the, the bad possessions late in games, the situational fouling, missing free throws, again, guys getting themselves suspended. I think there are a lot of reasons like why the Warriors should be kicking themselves for even being in this position. Now... There are in this position. There's nothing you could do about it. You could flip it, though, with eight games left. Now, I'm looking at the Kings here. They're up three games on the Warriors in the loss column. Kings play the Clippers tomorrow night. Let's see how that goes. I'll be tuning in. Oh, Warriors will be playing the Mavericks, so I can't watch that game. But they'll play the Clippers Tuesday night. Then they'll go on the road for four games. Late season East Coast trip, starting in New York City Thursday. Then they play the Celtics on Friday. And they play the Brooklyn Nets, who, by the way, the Brooklyn Nets, Spinoni, you watch, you watch the Lakers. They are <laughs> 17 and nothing in the first I mean, quarter. it was a joke. What's going on so, in Brooklyn? Okay, so I mean, it was a, but Once again, this NBA season's a little too long. I don't think it's just, I don't think it's that. I just think there's some crappy teams. Like, it just, I, mean, I, I don't know. How many people do they have injured right now? It's just, no, well, people are fraudulating the injury report at this point of the season. You think, there's you think eight games Kelly, left. If that was a, if that was a play, like San Antonio, for example, Kelly Johnson's on his bench laughing the whole time. Yeah, but, but it, Victor's playing, so. They're missing Sohead, Kelly hey, Johnson, no. and Vassell. I, I hear you. I mean, and, and the Those Warriors. Those are double digit scores. And the Warriors. Sohead's, still, Vassell still scored damn near, oh, Vassell damn near 20 a game. Last time, yeah. Scored 20 a game. Killed them last so game. So teams are taking. They're in full take mode. The Blazers have lost two games by 60 plus points. They're f All these teams are taking. But then the, the Kings on this road trip, think about their four the next five. Clippers, uh, Knicks, Celtics, OKC. Then they come back home against the Pelicans. Then they play Phoenix, and then they end the city season with Portland. It, what if they go two and six? That's see what if they go two and six? Well, I, I said there's about five games that look very losable for them. I mean, but again, it's easy for me to say that, but it, they look losable for them. Like And that game against the Suns, I... That could be a huge game. That's why the Warriors have to continue to yeah. hold serve and keep surging here because I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, what if the Suns fall down? What if the Kings fall down? Lakers go up and you get Suns, Kings, or Kings nine, and ten. Suns. 9-10 game and then the Warriors in a 7-8. I'd love that. I, like, I, 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 I want to avoid love, the Lakers. I think we'd all love the 7-8 seed. We'd all love the 7-8 game. And even if you lost that game, you wouldn't be eliminated. You'll have one more game and you'll have that game at home. So... Uh, anyway, but I did it, see them lose that same way in the 2021 season. Oh, they, yeah, that was, they yeah, lost both the 7-8 plan I, and I they lost the 9-10 plan. I think this team is so much better, though. This team is so much better. That team was completely different. They were basically seven players by the end of the season. They had nobody. Like, nobody was playing in that. And that I, I, I would mean, agree with yeah, you there. So I mean, I, Damian I Lee was a massive yeah, part of they, that they team. Won a, they won a championship the year after. So, uh, right now, OKC is number one. Denver's number two. Minnesota's number three. Great race in the Western Conference. At 888-957-9570. We'll also touch on the Giants coming up here in this next segment. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time, my parents had to...
Hey Dub Nation, it's Brandon Wajemski, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Let's have some fun here. Uh, Warriors do go 4-1 and one on this road trip. Eight games left in the regular season. Wow, season's almost over. Season is almost over. You got the Giants back in business, splitting with the Padres. We'll touch on the Giants at some point today. I know Jung Hoo Lee and Lubman's ready to do a dance. Maybe that'll make them happy. Maybe that'll make them happy. I'm always happy. No, you're not. Yeah, no, it's, that's totally I got a lot of Giants thoughts. You just let me know. I can't even you're... back that up. <laughs> uh, download the free Odyssey app and listen to 95.7 the game wherever you go. You catch every Warriors game live on the app 
Along with all the music and news the Bay Area needs, catch amazing interviews you missed too, like Steve Kerr last week when he joined Willard and Dibs. All right, let's, you know what? Let's go into Giants and then let's pivot back to the Warriors in about 10 minutes. Let's go. Shoot, Shasky. Well, yesterday they DFA'd Joey Bart for a guy that most people have no idea who he is. And he's coming off of two Tommy Johns and they brought him up. Uh, to pitch in a game. And I'm not triggered about what ended up happening yesterday, but I think that the Joey Bart microcosm, to me, is one of the more frustrating things as a fan, just in general. Like, you take somebody very high in the draft, you never really give that guy a long runway to succeed or fail. You don't trade him away and be bold if you knew all along you didn't want to keep him. And then you suppress his value to where he's worth nothing, and now you're trying to get him back on the Sacramento roster by having him clear waivers. I, I mean, they spent all the last season, and I'm not I'm not triggered by this. It's just it's frustrating. They spent all the last season because they claim Blake Sable, and they, and they they tried to play that guy you don't like at Blake catcher. Sable? Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. Blake I, Sable had more at bats last year than Joey Bart ever had in one season. It, it's kind of unfair, to and he wasn't good. Yeah. Blake Sable, by the metrics, StatCast does this, the worst defensive catcher in the last decade in baseball. Wow. Wow. Okay? So wow. you want to know why the pitching staff and the defense fell off? Well, a large part, the guy had six pass balls, 28 wild pitches, and was the worst framer in baseball, and also had the worst throwout rate, held on to the ball longer than anyone on a throwdown. Like, he wasn't good. Then they played him in left field. He was worse out there. And it's not like his bat made up for it. Really, Joey Bart's career averages, his OPP, you know, OPS, all the different ways that you measure it, they're very in line. Like, they're very close, Blake Sable and Joey Bart. Neither is a great player. But it's more frustrating than, like, I got more of Blake Sable to look at than Joey Bart over his career and you just give up on him? By the uh, way, it's just like frustrating. Like, why didn't you trade the, the guy way, away two years by ago? By the way, Blake Sable uh, is in AAA Sacramento. <laughs> I had no idea. He was and up I don't there mean to Sacramento. crush Blake Sable. It's uh, more like, like if you have a guy who's number your number two overall pick, and you kind of knew he wasn't the guy, and you drafted another catcher the very next year, why didn't you move that guy in a deal to get you something back of of value? So. I ask this question, and maybe it'll light up the lines here. 888 I have an interesting question. Who fumbled with their top three pick more? Was it the Warriors with James Wiseman? Was it the Niners with Trey Lance? Or was it the Giants with Joey Bart? <laughs> Who fumbled their pick more? I, think now I want people to marinate on that. 888-957-9570. We had just had top three picks in the Bay Area. Trey Lance, James Wiseman, Joey Bart. All three, no longer here. Wiseman, number two overall pick. Joey Bart, number two overall pick. Trey Lance, number three overall pick. Barely got to know him. Barely got to see him. You can make the argument for, so let's just start with the 49ers first, right? Because football is always king. You can make the argument that finding Brock Purdy completely eliminates the entire Trey Lance conversation, wipes it off the map. And I'm listening to that. For now. But there's another part of me that says, yeah, but you could have really used one of those first-round picks in the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes. Now, all right, look, to me, I think the Trey Lance pick was evaporated the second they found Brock Purdy, but I will listen to it was still a horrible trade. Oh, actually, I mean, yeah, they found Brock Purdy, but they brought back Jimmy Garoppolo as well. If Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't get hurt against the Dolphins, oh no, they lucked into we it. We don't, I, we don't see Brock. It Purdy. wasn't by grand, by right. grand design. Like they, they, in part, they lucked into it. But here's what I'll give them credit: they had the conviction to move off that guy, and they just had the greatest quarterback season a Niner quarterback right. has had, no doubt, twenty five years, no doubt. But we barely got to see Trey Lance, no doubt. Like we, he did you know, get hurt. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of people. When he, I bring up the Texas game, I know ad nauseum. But if you look at that stat line against the Houston Texans. If Jimmy Garoppolo produced that same stat line, we'd be like, man, Jimmy, all he does is win games. All he does is win games. That's what we would have said. I, I, so I so it you. felt like we barely even got to see Trey Lance, and the book is still still not written about him. But when you say that in terms of fumbling the bag, it means you totally botched everything, and the situation was made worse because of it, right? That's the yeah. way I'm viewing it. Oh, that's how you're viewing it? So okay. I would say right. the Niners are not I'm just, worse off because they found Purdy. The way, the way I'm viewing it is... It's just pretty simple. It's just who fumbled their pick. 
Who, who oh, which, didn't get which their isolated pick was the worst? Yeah, I mean, basically, which team fumbled their top three draft pick instead of you know? Because Joey Bart, we saw a lot more Joey Bart, and I still don't think he got a great chance I, to with, succeed. I'm with you. Um, every time it felt like he turned something around, he got bent. He didn't have a rapport with the pitcher, with the pitching staff. Whatever that that wouldn't feel. That one feels like it was fumble more so. But this was Farhan. That wasn't a Farhan pick. That was a Bobby no, Evans pick. No. So maybe Farhan just he didn't fit his style. We'll see about Joey Bart. Trey Lance, it's to me that's the biggest fumble. And they traded two picks. You can't trade picks. You can't baseball. trade picks. You can't trade picks like they did for Trey Lance and not and see three games and say, yeah, he's not good enough. And then move him like three games. Like three games in, you moved him for what a fourth or fifth round yeah. pick to Dallas. No, yeah, basically. So now James Wiseman, we get to James Wiseman. Well, this is where I think this is the biggest one, and the reason why I say that it's it's not just the selection. To me, it's what the selection represented in terms of the fountain of youth and where the organization was going as you're clinging to a dynasty and you're trying to, you know squeeze out the last embers of great years from the franchise's greatest player. So to to me, the Warrior pick is is sadly the worst one of them all because it was meant to extend the dynasty. Right. Whereas these other ones were like, hey, start your dynasty or revamp your organization or whatever. I, I maybe I'm reading it wrong. I, I see it as the Warrior one was the worst one. All right. Um, and because of the financial fallout of yeah. trading him away for and having GP2, to get some back, yeah, like no, the whole no, thing the was whole just thing kind was of a nightmare. Working. And you could use, but now TJD has alleviated some of that, right? TJD has better hands than James Wiseman did as a member to go to State Warriors, and he's doing basically what they wanted James Wiseman to do. However, we saw flashes of brilliance from James Wiseman. Here's Anthony Slater a couple weeks ago yeah. about the Warriors filling the with pick on James Wiseman. I think the the sting of the James Wiseman with pick you're feeling more now mm -hmm. because James Wiseman uh, this is this would have been what year four year, year three four, four. it is yep. I mean um, that's when he was supposed to matter and not only was he supposed to matter as as their starting center but a shooter right you remember yep. when he came in the league his rookie year he was hitting threes I can yep. remember one game against Minnesota he was hitting like pin down like yep. coming off screens like in Clay Thompson type of actions mm -hmm. and it was like oh man this is the perfect center to have next to Draymond. Because he can space the floor, but also rim protect, as you mentioned. Um, you know, and it's the modern way, right? How would Chet Holmgren, for example, who was also right. like Wiseman, a second overall pick, look? Uh, why did they look at Kelly Olynyk at the trade deadline? Why were they interested in him? I think they do want a center that can shoot next to Draymond. Uh, I think that's what Dario Sarge, you know, theoretically was supposed to be at times this season. That's what Jermichael Green uh, was supposed to be last season. Neither of those two free agent signings worked quite as good as Otto Porter did. Well, and w what if I also said to you, B, like, if I was breaking these down, does it matter? I'm asking you, does it matter who else was drafted around that player? Absolutely it matters. Okay, because like, when I, I look at the Joey Bart draft, when I look at the Joey Bart draft, Alec Bohm went right after to the Philadelphia Phillies. Really good player. I don't know if he's it's a not bad. I don't know if he's a franchise altering player for the Giants. Like he's a good player. I think he's a solid player. He looks a lot better in that stacked Philly lineup than he would in in the Giants lineup the last couple of years. Jonathan India has been a, a solid player. Nick Madrigal has been okay. And then you look a little lo farther down, Logan Gilbert. When I look at the NBA draft, I, I say, wow, Halliburton went again ten picks later, he but he 12. went later. And Anthony Edwards went ahead of him. You can't control that. But you did have LaMelo Ball go right after him. Like, does that one... And then I look at the football one. You could have had Micah Parsons. But that was like 10 picks later. So I kind of view that similar to the Halliburton. Really, nobody was pounding the table for that player. And all the other quarterbacks busted out. Meaning, weren't good. Like, I'm still not even sure if, if Trevor Lawrence is good. So I look at the Wiseman one, and I feel like there are some... Solid players that they not, that the Warriors could have taken, though nobody wanted them at the time, and I guess that that kind of weighs me back to the Warrior being the biggest mistake. Now, Anthony mentioned how Wiseman was getting better his rookie year as a 19 year old who played three college games. Now, Lamelo Ball is interesting, right? Lamelo Ball, everybody's Lamelo Ball, but I just don't know how it works in the I, system. I, I don't know how it works with Stephen Curry, and then you look at the last two seasons. Hurt. LaMelo Ball's played 36 games and exactly. 22 games, right? He's played 58 games over the last two NBA seasons. 58 games. Now, the numbers are impressive. There's no doubt. His numbers, he's a 24-point-per-game score. 
shooting 35% from three, 36% from three, uh, lifetime 37% shooter from three. LaMelo's good, but can he stay on the floor? Lonzo Ball has not been able to stay on the floor. Uh -uh. There's something up with the Ball brothers. Maybe it's all the AAU games they played. Maybe all the wear and tear on their leg. I have no idea. But LaMelo Ball has played 58 games over the course of the last two seasons. All right? He's played a lot of basketball. Now, James Wiseman, that rookie year, he got hurt, right, with the knee. He was inactive, got hurt with the knee. It felt like he was starting to figure things out slowly, but surely now he's had all kinds of setbacks. Now he's in Detroit. He's lost. He, I mean, Detroit's a joke. Like, they, their coaching staff, everything up there in Detroit. I know Kay Cunningham can't wait to get out of there. I know he's dying to get up out of there. So Wiseman, that was a tough pick, but I understand how you can whiff on a pick like that with the COVID protocols. And maybe the COVID protocols is what hurt the Niners with Trey Lance because Trey Lance didn't play that season. You played the one game against what? Central Arkansas in the mm, scrimmage? It was a, like a simulated game. Right, it was a simulated game. It. Yeah, whatever they So the it. pandemic really destroyed what you maybe could have evaluated with James Wiseman with him only playing three games at Memphis and then working out and, you, you know, you got to do the whole social distancing or whatnot. I think COVID really hurt those two picks. Now, I'm not saying that's the end-all, be-all. But the code of protocol is not being able to scout the way you wanted yeah. to scout. Or Trey Lance not being able to play real live football games that season in 2019. What if he does play that season and you're like, oh, Trey's a third round pick, not a number two overall pick or a number three overall pick. When did the hype started building and building and building and building and building? So I don't think we saw enough for Trey Lance. Wiseman, I, I think maybe Joey Bart was the biggest whiff because you just held on to him for so damn long. And it's like you went through catcher after catcher after catcher after catcher. The alternatives weren't great. <laughs> like that's you know, like that that's the thing I, I, I bring up Blake Sable. Blake Sable is I don't I still it just doesn't make sense to me. Like and I don't you had no attachment to Blake Sable whatsoever. You swooped him up, you played him at first base, you played him in left field, you played him at catcher. He had three hundred and ten at bats. Right. That's more than the four full seasons that he was I mean he was up and down. Four mm -hmm. full seasons of at bats for Joey Bart. You saw more in one year from Blake Sable, just in terms of at-bats. And the numbers were almost identical. I mean, Blake yep. Sable was slightly better on offense. I think Joey Bart is better on defense overall. Yeah. It It's honestly a head-scratcher on a team that I thought was rebuilding. We all thought was rebuilding. Right. And they were fooling themselves like, we're competing, we're competing, you're not. Now, the Giants would tell you, Bonte, in, to the same way like that Brock Purdy, oh, we found Brock Purdy and it negated the Lance pick. And we found TJD, so it kind of negated the Wiseman pick. We found Patrick Bailey. That negated the 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 Joey Bart pick. I'm still jury out on on you know Patrick Bailey. I don't think he's done enough to prove to me that he's the you know next five year catcher. But early returns are he's been better than Joey Bart. Yeah, no doubt. A lot better. No doubt. So Joey Bart to me, I mean, you could eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. It is fascinating that the top three picks from when was Joey Bart drafted? 18, 2018. 2018. So you had Trey Lance in 2020, basically, after the pandemic season to James Wiseman. They all came basically together. All around the same time. All around the same and time. COVID, could, you could also point to COVID for Joey Bart. There was no minor leagues. That's true. That's a good there point. There was no minor leagues. And remember, Buster sat the year yep. out, yep. and they they like haphazardly added him to the team toward the end, which to me, he should have played the whole year at the big no league level. If there's no development, develop. I, look, let him struggle. Let him go out there. You had nothing to lose. Uh, I don't know why they were trying to, this goes back to the, there. they find nobility in being 500, and mm -hmm. I didn't. Which team fumbled their top three draft pick the most? Was it the Warriors and James Wiseman? Was it the Niners and Trey Lance? Was it the Giants and Joey Bart? 888-957-9570. Uh, so far, the vote is the votes are going as a court as the votes right now. 46% Warriors and James Wiseman. 46% Niners and Trey Lance. Just 7% it, for the Giants and Joey Bart. So when you think about Joey Bart, I just look at the lineup, right? With the Giants lineup and what they trotted out over the last few years. And it was not entertaining. We talked that nauseum about it. It was not sexy. As you mentioned, Blake Sable. Uh, 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 who they had somebody else as well, Blake Sable. Who else was oh, playing? They had, they had, the, uh, who, who's the other Trump, guy? They had Chadwick Trump. Chadwick Trump is who I'm thinking <laughs> was about. Not good. Chadwick Trump. So, was not so, good. so you like out of all the teams <laughs> that could have really just said, you That's know what, what? I'm we're not going anywhere, play Joey Bart. The Giants did fumble that, and then you DFA him for a pitcher yesterday who goes two innings and gives up nine runs. Poor Dalton Jeffries probably won't start again this season. Well, maybe he will, who knows, but. Joey Bart just never got that shake. Now, James Wiseman, 
He's playing in Detroit. I still think there's something there. Is he going to be an all-star, an MVP type player? I have no idea. It doesn't look like no. it. doesn't look like it. But yeah. I can see why the Warriors took a chance on the big. Now, mind you, the Warriors did win the championship the year James Wiseman was out. Wiseman was out. So it didn't kill them in the short term. Long term now, when you look at some of the spacing and what they could use, yeah, maybe it's hurting them today more so than two years ago. But the Warriors didn't win a championship. They didn't win a championship with James Wiseman being hurt, coming off a knee injury. So that's a big thing. And as you mentioned, Brock Purdy, they got the 49ers looked at the Brock Purdy. So the Trey Lance hasn't destroyed you. You see a pick like that when you trade up in the first round and you take Trey Lance number three overall, that's the type of pick that could destroy a franchise. Like, look at the Jets. They had to pivot to Aaron Rodgers in a heartbeat. The Bears just traded Justin Fields. Matt Jones is on a different team. Four of those players in that draft, the four, four of the top five quarterbacks selected, are going to be a new teams next season. It's kind of fascinating. And and I don't know about Trevor Lawrence. Like, we'll see. Like, we, we will see with him. Uh, getting back to Joey Barr, it's just, it to me, that team, more than any other, you were like you were faking it. You were not a competitive team. You were not some team that was going to win the division. I know 2021 happened. Buster retired. So they they tried to give Joey Bart some opportunities the very next year. And and look, he had, he did get injured. They they wasted 270 at bats on Austin Wins and Kirk Casale. Mm -hmm. Kirk Casale and Austin Wins. Like, at least the Niners and the Warriors. They did have Kirk Casale. I know. Austin at least the Niners oh and the Warriors. You should play Joey Bard. That, I, that's, that's the part that, that's like. Why, that's why I have the Giants fumbling Joey Bard as the biggest miss. Well, and, and That's, to me, that's the biggest fumble right now. Look at but Kirk Casale. Where's Kirk Casale at right now? I don't, even, I don't even know. Look, man, where's Kirk Casale at? Kirk Casale, Chadwick Trump, Austin Wynn. Where are these guys at? Kirk Casale's in Cincinnati. Okay. He's 34. Mm. Chadwick Trump. Where's Chadwick <laughs> Trump at? I have no I idea. I believe he is with the Braves right now. Is he really? Not playing? Uh, let's see if he's on the active roster right now. Give me a second. But I, I can make the argument for both the Niners and the Warriors. Like, you had generational players on your team, right? So when the rookie isn't ready to go and you have gener generational players, think of the Niners roster. There are like four guys that'll be all-time Niners, right? Look at the Warriors. Steph, Clay, Dre, all-time Warriors, right? So, hey, the rookie's not ready to go. Like, I'll listen to that argument. Chadwick Trump, Kirk Casale. Austin wins. Are really? Yeah, that's the biggest fumble to me. Oh, and, and and a year when like let's call it what it is. Like you got lucky in 2021. Nobody thought you were going to replicate it in 2022 or 2023. Give the guy the runway. Now he did get hurt, so that's that that's an element of this. But I remember very specifically, he rips two doubles. Okay, and then lines out in his third at bat. Fourth at bat's coming up, and they're going to pinch hit Kirk Sally for him. Yeah, in in a game against the Diamondbacks in August. And he's 23 years old. And I'm thinking to myself, what are we doing, Kapler? Yeah. Like, what? what you, you, you're, is it all on Kapler? Is it on Farhan? That's on I the mean, whole thing. Look know. at their development in general. Their development in general is not good. Like the kid Miller that we saw over the weekend, the lefty, he's their 30th ranked prospect. I'm like, no, he's a lot better than that. Yeah, Who's I, doing the rankings well, here? Well, I, that's why I, we always have this discussion about farm system rankings or whatnot. I don't, I don't buy into them. The Trey Lance thing is fascinating because, you know, Brock Purdy according to Jed York, is going to reset the quarterback market. And Trey Lance, I people could say, oh, he's an all-time bust and he's so bad. And we didn't, My problem is I don't think we've seen enough of him. His first game, he went against Arizona, an undefeated Arizona Cardinals team, and they lost 17-10, to 10, and they moved the ball all game long. They couldn't convert on fourth down, couldn't score in the red zone. All right, it's his first ever football game. A lot of guys struggle on their first ever football game. It's rare that you get a guy just lighting it up out of nowhere. I remember, I they, they ran him a lot that day. Oh, too, they did. Oh, my gosh. So if you knew that he wasn't ready to throw, why'd you draft him in the first place? That, which is fascinating to me. So then he finally does throw, and the Texas game happens in a do-or-die game where if you lose, you do not go to the playoffs. You lose, you do not go well, to the playoffs. Do, you, do people understand the enormity of that game? A rookie quarterback playing in a do-or-die game at home and it's like, yo, you lose, we're not going to the playoffs. <laughs> like, 
that set up the Rams game for Week 18. It, it does feel like when it comes to Wiseman and Trey Lance, there's so much more anger wrapped into the fan discourse. Yeah. And what frustrates me is, is like, like uh, for Trey, I'll start with him. Like, oh my God, how could they? What were they thinking? They're idiots. So dumb. Kyle's a genius. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Everyone pumped the brakes. Kyle's the one who picked them. Kyle wanted them. And it, look, these guys make mistakes. And why are we so angry at Trey Lance? Kyle and John were the ones that picked them. And they missed. And it happens. I mean, I, they, I think they missed on McGlinchey, right? They, they, I thought they missed on Reuben Foster. They, they're going to miss again. Solomon Thomas. They, they, they've gonna, they're going to miss again. They, they, teams miss. But there's so much vitriol because of the draft capital that they traded right. to go up to get the guy. Look, man. It happens. People miss him. I don't know why we're so angry at the kid. Same thing with James Wiseman. Why are we like losing our mind? Bob is an idiot for drafting James Wiseman. How could they do it? Wasn't Draymond a part of the entire draft process? Remember, he was the one texting Bob right. back and forth. So I, I just I feel like there's so much you know, anger toward these young I athletes know. that don't I, succeed. And I, it's like, dude, back up off them. Well, it's funny because <laughs> in Seattle, when Trey Lance replaced Jimmy Garoppolo when he got hurt. Everybody's like, wow, you see the potential? 9 of 18, 157, two touchdowns, ran for 41. You're like, wow. So then he gets the first start against Arizona. He runs a lot. He no ran kittle. the ball that game. No, no kittle. kittle. Yeah, no kittle. Trey Lance ran the ball. 17 he times? He hit 16 times yeah. for 89 yards. Doesn't surprise me. 16 times for 89 yards. Now he's 15 to 29, just 51% completion percentage. First ever start. All right, I'm going to give him a pass for that. Why not? We gave everybody else passes for their first start if they struggle. You understand why he was a struggle. Now he doesn't play. Doesn't play for basically 11 weeks. He does have that start against the Texas. He goes 16 to 23, 249, two touchdowns and a pick. Eight rushes, 31 yards. Threw for 249, 16 to 23. And he threw the deep shot to Debo Samuel. Again, if that was Jimmy Garoppolo, would have been saying that's our quarterback. What a win. Jimmy Garoppolo, all he does is win. But Trey... In a game of that magnitude, again, the 49ers lose that game. You're done. And you can say, oh, it's just the Texans. These players in the league are playing for jobs, future jobs, future money. They ain't going out there laying down, not in the NFL. They got to play for They got to play for jobs. They got to play for their families, all that stuff. 16 to 23, 249, and we just scoff at it. When that's a typical Jimmy Garoppolo game. Well, do the fans get the cue from the players? Because the players, it did feel like when it comes to the Warriors um, and the Niners, there was um, this young guy is not one of us. He's not good enough yet. Maybe. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I got that with James Wiseman. It was like, oh, he represents something that's going to change within this organization. He's not, He he's nowhere near that yet. Yeah. And I do believe like there was um, well, almost people, like a clicking up amongst athletes. Well, early on, people loved, room. loved James Wiseman. Early on, people loved him. Had a lot of hope for him. But it did feel like the tolerance for his mistakes just started to amp. Like but, it, it, it was, it was thinner, and thinner and thinner and thinner right. and thinner and thinner. Well, people re wanted him to be ready to play at a championship level right away. <laughs> I had to play three college games. Really, two and a half. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then coming straight from high school, you got to want these kids to play the championship. Think about the patience. And we really weren't patient with Jonathan Kamiga as a fan base. Some still aren't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he you has know? a bad game, it's like, and he scores 12 points. Everyone's like, see, he stinks. It took a disagreement in the athletic where Kamiga was basically like, yeah, I don't trust Curry anymore. He lost my trust. And then, as you know, they had to sit down like professionals one on one and they worked it out. My, I wish Kaminga never went out to the papers and went out to the media to express yeah. to express his displeasure. But it is what it is. They worked it out like professionals. Now he's dropping twenty a night. <laughs> but we needed we didn't have the patience. If we were running a team as a fan base, Kaminga would have been out of here a year and a half ago. Now how bad we would be looking right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, the when I just look at the different deals that the teams have made, like the Niners got the best return for that draft capital that they possibly could. It's not a lot, but you look at what Justin Fields went for. You look at what Mac Jones went for. You look at what's going to happen with Zach Wilson. He's going to get released. Like I think the Niners were the smartest in terms of pivoting and getting whatever they could back for that guy, mm -hmm. knowing that they had brought Purdy in the holster. I look at the Warriors, like the acquisition for GP2, 
I mean, how how great of an acquisition was that? GP two is a better basketball player right now than James Wise. You want to hear this long with the story from Adam Schefter about how they got Brock Purdy? Listen to the mental gymnastics on this one. This is what the the, the Giants are getting uh, nothing for Bart. Yeah, they're getting nothing for Bart. I mean, they're they literally nothing. getting nothing they for him. Nothing. So they depreciated their own asset with zero runway. Part my take, the bar stool guys. Here's Adam Schefter. The draft where the 49ers in 2017 had the second overall pick. Patrick Mahomes was in that draft. Okay. They didn't, this is, they didn't even this do, over. They didn't do any work on him. Yeah. Because they thought the following offseason, Kirk Cousins was leaving Washington. Oh, right? okay. Hold on, hold on. This gets better and better. So Kirk Cousins is leaving Washington. They thought that he would want to be there. They would want him there. And it's a layup. So there's no reason to do any real work on the quarterbacks in the 2017 draft. So why do you need to work on Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson when you know you're going to get Kirk Cousins? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is New England calls up San Francisco that Halloween. And it's like, hey, we got to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. Just give us a two. Really? Well, they do that. So that blows up the Kirk Cousins plan. But back to that draft in 2017, the only quarterback that they did extensive work on, that they wound up trading up for, in the third round, they moved up to take C.J. Beathard. Mm. And when C.J. Beathard left after four years and signed with Jacksonville, the 49ers got a compensatory seventh-round draft pick. Oh. And with that compensatory seventh-round draft pick that they got from the draft in which they bypassed Patrick Mahomes, they took Brock Purdy. Who that's such better a, than Patrick wow. Mahomes. That's such a beautiful story. That is a great story. <laughs> so... Who we lost to in the Super Bowl? <laughs> I saw that line. That's better than Patrick Mahomes. Like yeah. what? <laughs> they, they were just they were joking there. They were they were, they were being that sarcastic. is inc incredible though. But you passed up Patrick Mahomes. You, you didn't take even scout CJ him. Beth. I mean that you didn't even scout him or Watson because you were banking on Kirk Cousins. You were banking on Kirk Cousins. It is funny how we 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 do this in sports sometimes. Like the 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 divine fortitude to understand to draft that person right then and there. Like, we're talking about the Giants, you know. Cody Ross doesn't go on to the postseason roster if Jose Guillen doesn't get popped for right. PEDs. Right. And you never get the Cody Ross moments. Now, maybe maybe everything plays out differently, but, like, there was there was no divine insight by the Giants. Like, Jose Guillen got popped for roids. And you had to stick Cody Ross on there. I've also heard David Sampson talk about they put David Ross, uh, Cody Ross, Cody on Ross. on waivers, and they were going to pull him back off of waivers. No, the Giants had to have him. And they're like, it's just a wild sequence there where the, the Giants were actually not going to get him. Thanks, David Sampson. So thank you, David Sampson, for gifting us the World Series. But just tells you how terrible David Sampson was at his job. Th this thing that like the, the Niners knew all along that Brock <laughs> Purdy would be Brock Purdy, they wouldn't have waited to like. And look, they get credit for pivoting once they realized he was that good. But like, it's one of the luckiest things. And look, you need luck, but it's one of the luckiest sports finds of all time. It is. I mean, it's I got mean, Mike Piazza written all over it. So my, my thing is with the whole fumbling, we are asking the question, who fumbled their, with their player more? The Warriors with James Wiseman, the Niners with Trey Lance, or the Giants with Joey Bart after Joey Bart was DFA yesterday before the game against San Diego, and Dalton Jeffries was the one who was called up. He started the game, gave up nine runs in two innings, just did not look good, was not pretty. Poor guy. Um... But I, I, the reason why I don't say the Niners fumbled it more, well, maybe they did. I, I don't, I'll be back and forth. I, right now, I feel like the Giants and Joey Bart, they fumbled that situation. But then I look at Trey Lance, it's like, we don't even really know what he is. We didn't know what he could be. I mean, he played the monsoon game against Chicago, and everybody knew in the fourth quarter he could do nothing. Who's the best pick of the three? That's a that's probably a better question. Like, um, who's the best pick of the three? I thought Trey Lance was the best pick. I thought Trey, through, through, through three quarters against Chicago, I didn't see a guy that was overwhelmed. I specifically, like, Mark Willer was at the game. I remember we came in for cross talk the next day. Mark Willer said, yeah, that game's not on Trey Lance. And then all of a sudden, Mark Martz came on these airways talking about, that was the worst quarterback game I've ever seen in my life. And the narrative started to shift. It started to shift just like that. And I was at that monsoon game at Soldier Field. He missed a throw to uh, Ross Dwelly on, his, on the seam route. But I also wondered, what if that was George Kittle running down, running that route? Ross Dwelly's running that route. Or no, was it Croft or was it Ross Tyler Dwelly? Tyler Croft. Was it Tyler Croft running yeah. that route? George Kittle wasn't playing. 
Also, what happens if Debo doesn't fumble on the first possession of that football game? There's just a lot of things yeah. going on in that game where I was like, that's not, a, all right, whatever. Well, I, I just look at it th this simplistically in terms of like who was the best pick. Wiseman was the best pick. Wiseman is a bench player who gets run in the NBA. I don't know if Joey Bart's a major league baseball player. Yeah. I don't know if Trey Lance is even a backup quarterback. Like he was QB three for the majority of last year, la last year. So like, I do know Wiseman can play. Now that's the byproduct of the position of quarterback is you, you can't be a rotational guy. Solomon Thomas was a horrible pick. One of the worst picks. Horrible pick, yeah. horrible. but he was a rotational D tackle. So like that's Wiseman's in that zone. Wiseman. What Wiseman was ascending man. Again, Anthony Slater said it. He said it. Then he had to set back with the knee injury. He got COVID a couple times. He had the wrist injury. Remember the wrist injury he suffered against the Pistons? They had 11 and 9 in 17 minutes. 17 minutes. Five, I remember that game. He went up for a dunk, fell on his wrist. Boom, he's out. He's out for about a week and a half. Damn, what could have been with James Wiseman? What could have been? And I know Joe Lakeham did not. He was not thrilled to trade James Wiseman. That's for sure. He loved him some J uh, James Wiseman. He did. Uh, 2018, the Joey Bart draft. Does anyone help? This is a guess. Who went ninth overall to the Oakland A's? Anyone? To the Oakland A's? Kyler Murray? Yes. You went nine out overall? Ninth overall. I actually wasn't mad at that because they, they swung on it and no one expected him to have that season that he yeah. had. And then he did. So you know what? It is what it is. That's one of the ones that I'm actually, yeah. Like Grant Green over Mike Trout. That's another conversation. <laughs> Grant Green, I actually thought he was going to be good. I did, too. I thought Grant Green was going to be good. Didn't they end up trading Grant Green to yes. the Angels? Yes. Do yes. <laughs> uh, you think got Alberto Callespo back? Oh, Alberto boy. Alberto. Hey, he was clutch in that 2014 wildcard hey, game. Unfortunately, way, the pitchers weren't. Shout out to the Oakland A's getting that dub yesterday. First dub. Walk, walk off win. Off, walk off. Hey, boy, they blew a 3 nothing lead in the eighth inning. Danny Jimenez, let's go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm happy for the A's. See, J.D. Davis a couple of uh, big flies Friday night. J.D. Davis, Davis hit some bombs. And did you hear what he said? He said, yeah, that, that's not gone at Oracle. Yeah. Him, watching him and Matt Chapman at the plate this year is going to be very interesting. Hey, Chapman, if I said to you, and I'm dead serious when I say this, in terms of where he's at in his career, not like the resume, where he is today, is Matt Chapman the best San Francisco Giant everyday player since Buster Posey when he retired in 2021. He just retired two years ago. The last two years, I mean, they have I, not had... I mean, yeah, how many everyday that, players have they right, had in the last not, two years? That's not, that's not saying much. Okay. That's not saying much. I mean, so like jung Hoo Lee him is and Estrada? a... Yeah, jung Hoo Lee's a better everyday player than they've had the last two years. Yeah, Tyro Estrada's good. Wilbur Flores doesn't play every day. I would say Chapman's Wilmer. pretty established. Uh, yeah, he's but, a, but that's not... He's 150 the, days. That's not, that's not saying no, much, I, I see where you're coming from. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Parade. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, like, yeah, yeah. Chapman's yeah. a really good ball player. No, he is. He's a really good ball player. haven't had any good players. Well, that's... But that's how low the bar is. And then I look at jung Lee. That's why I'm not saying much. I look at jung Lee. I'm like, this is a classic leadoff guy. He's going to go deep in the count. He He's got really nice speed. Defensively, he's excellent. I love the way he approaches his at bats. Jung Hu Lee is excellent, and I can Jorge, already see swag. Jorge Soler's done nothing. He's already a better everyday player than what well, they've gonna, had the last couple he's years. He's going to strike out like 400 times. Yeah, they got to well, move we him already, down in the order. We already do that. Right, yeah. I told you this on opening day. Get him down from two, I know. get him to three or four. I would rather have put Chapman at three, put Soler at four, and give me more speed at the top of the damn lineup. Give me Estrada or Luis Matos. Get him up here and put him in the two hole right now and get uh, Jung Hu Lee leading off. I. I for day, the first day of the lineup, when I told you, yeah. I said, it's like, get Solaire down on the lineup. He should not be batting second. The the other takeaway from that series is, my God, the Padres have offensive talent. I mean, Kim, Choi, uh, they, they got uh, Cronenworth. Fernando Tatis Jr. was hitting laces every single, I mean, lasers all over the field. Yeah. And then Manny Machado, I don't. I can't believe he's already DHing at this point in his career. I thought he was going to be able to play third base for at least another well, five years. Yeah, they just gave him a day off. He's hitting bombs. No, he's played DH it, for like three straight days. Yeah, they, they try to give him give him some rest off I, the field. He hits bombs too. He just looks like he doesn't they'll, care. They'll get him. They'll get him out there in the field because he's still a very good defender. That that team um, has talent. And they've always had talent. Talent the last three years. You surprised? Say no, it's not that I'm surprised. I think that right. nationally we sleep on them. No, uh, they are they, loaded. They were hyped to go I to the World bring Series. Bring up Bogarts, Shasky. They were hyped to go to the World Series last yeah, year. Yeah, but Where I feel like been? people dismiss them because they've fallen short in the playoffs. Well, no, we dismissed them because they didn't make the playoffs last season. Yeah, the year before they, they were made a big the disappointment. The year, the year before they made the NLCS. The year before that, they lost to the Dodgers well, in the playoffs. 
That was. I mean, they've been in the playoffs a lot. Now people know how good San Diego They're is. Excellent. It's no surprise. Well, and they lost. They, and they lost bats. Soto. They got bats, no doubt. But you know, something's amiss down there. Let's go to. Uh, they don't have pitching. Let's go to BPA real quick uh, before we hit the injury report. BPA, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. How you doing? Uh, not morning. bad. Not bad. Hey, Monte, I respect the uh, relitigation of Trey Lance's uh, Chicago game <laughs> from a few years ago. Um, mad respect. We never lose an argument. We just put it away. <laughs> well, I was at the um, game. I was at the game. I watched the entire game. I, know. I was there. Tenth row. <laughs> I saw everything. I, I respect. I was there. Hey, I, 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 I was respect, there. I, mean, I respect it. Well, it would give you a take it. on the Houston Texas game then. Because if that was Jimmy Garoppolo, you would have been kissing his ass. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wow, we're relapsing. Hey. Um, no, Kuminga we're not relapsing. We're just keeping it real, BPA. Kaminga missed, what, four? I think four, lost four games, right? There last four three. In those last games. three. Last three. Oh, come last on. Three. Don't, don't do it. this. Be- so, go ahead. No, no, I'm just, hey. No, 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 no. No, I'm not, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm saying, would you agree that he's kind of been backsliding for a while or no? Would you not agree with that? And maybe that's his knee, um, but it's going to come up at some point in the off season, right? If he continues to backslide, which he has been, if anyone wants to be honest, for about ten games, he's been going the other way, not been reliable at all. Get out of here! Uh, we're going to have to flush him today. It's just terrible, BPA. It's a matter dude, of time before dude, you flush dude, BPA. No, no, no. That was a terrible take, Shasky. Come on. Hey, that was brought to you by Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. Shout out to Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. We had to, we had to, hey, the YouTube, YouTube even agrees. We had to flush what it. What kind of work do you think BPA does? <laughs> Who cares? Finance? I mean, tech? I mean, Very important work. Hopefully I'm he doesn't scared. work with me. Is he a security guard? <laughs> I'm not scared. <laughs> does he drive a truck? Hi, how are you? Could be his backsliding. Like it's no coincidence there, 3 0 without him. They just played the Charlotte Hornets and the San Antonio Spurs, for crying out loud. He he did get um, out-athleted in a couple of games where it, it just felt like he was doing a little too much. But, I, you know, I mean, I could go around the whole entire roster and find a two- or three-game you know, slide for every player. I say in the first hour. It's just a matter of time for somebody says, oh, well, you know, they don't really need Kaminga. He's holding the team back. Not like victories against the Charlotte Hornets and the San Antonio Spurs. How do you guys like this for a comp from the 415 on the Xfinity mobile text line? The Padres are the Clippers of Major League Baseball. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Wow. Are they more fun, though, than the Clippers? Clippers can be fun with all their star can power, they? but then they fade out. I just don't believe in the Clippers at all. Like the Padres, I saw them win, to your point, I saw them win a big time series in the playoffs. They're not well, bad. The name of the game for the Clippers is injury time in the playoffs. <laughs> Uh, the Clippers have only advanced to one Western Conference final in their franchise history. The Padres at least made a couple World Series. Made the NLCS. Kevin Brown on line yeah. one. Beat the Dodgers in that series and advanced to the NLCS. They should have won in the NLCS, but Bob Melvin, for some reason, threw in Sean Manaya, and Sean Manaya got rocked by Bryce Harper. Lefty on lefty crime. That's BS, man. I do love their jerseys. God, I love the Padre uniforms. I did bring us sea legs on pre-post last night. Shout out to Danker. We're talking about sea legs and Clay Thompson. Anyway, uh, Wilbur Flores is forced to lead Sunday's game between the Giants and Padres in the top of the second inning. He got to fall head first into the dugout, trying to catch a foul ball. Flores is diagnosed with a shoulder contusion and luckily avoided any injury to his head. He's currently listed as dead dead as the Giants get ready to take on the Dodgers for the first time this season in L.A. Three games set down at Dodger Stadium before the Giants have their home opener Friday. The injury report brought to you by Boxer and Girls in Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's well, coming up on the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service bank. You know, compromises. Get back into the Warriors, and we'll continue to ask the question. Who fumbled with their player more? Was it the Warriors or James Wiseman? The Niners with Trey Lance or the Giants with Joey Bart. Plus, we'll break down Giants, Dodgers. Maybe talk a little tournament. Warriors 4 1 road trip. They come back home tomorrow. It's the Dallas Mavericks. All that coming up here on the Morning Rose on 95 7 the game.
네. 볼 수밖에 없거든요. 자, 자, 자 오른쪽, 이정 오른쪽, 오른쪽, 갑자기! 쇼핑 cart getting sprayed with beer. Fra- was it Friday night or Saturday night? Uh, uh, I mean, it was Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night. night. Saturday I was night. like, oh my God, we're here. Oh, we got the sound right here? It happened quicker than I thought. I love you. Hey! 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 Now, B, I'm a traditionalist. I'm a traditionalist. Are you? I love I don't the way Jung Hoo Lee plays baseball. He's old school. He's going up there. He's going to take pitches. He sits on breaking balls down in the zone. He has no problem swinging with two strikes and fouling off until he gets what he's what he's looking for. What's he got? Four walks in in, in four games. Um, he will hit the ball hard. He goes the other way. Like he he is a classic leadoff man, and it's refreshing that the Giants finally have an in his prime young center fielder who is a traditional leadoff guy. Like, it, it's, it, he is a great acquisition. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like for the body of the of, of the career here, but already he looks like well, he's showing he can make the adjustment from the KBO to what we have I, in the bigs. I don't want to say it's a great acquisition yet, four games into the season, but I will say so far, so good. I will say so far, so good. He did sign for $100 million. Um Whatever. Well, how much was it? Uh, total, it was total close contract. To that. It, it was a lot of money. And there was probably a forty million dollar Giants tax on there, there. There you go. Um, but he's got the one home run. He's got the four RBIs. He's got the three walks on the season. Elite. Spent two eighty six. I like his defense in center field. I'm not mad at him. He's a communicator. Yeah, I'm not mad at him. But just the fans are gonna love this guy. The uh, the man, the Korean community is gonna be out there in full effect at Oracle Park for Jung Hoo Lee. There's no doubt about that. The Asian community is going to be out there for Jung Hoo Lee. So that was a good sign for the Giants. What do you think of his swagger at the plate with the orange oh, Adidas the sw- shoes? I, I've been begging for swagger for three years. And all of the accessories? I, I've been begging for swagger for three years, man. I need swag. <laughs> I need swagger. So we got some swagger there with Jung Hoo Lee. Just let Solaire start popping the ball out. You know what Matt Chapman's going to do? Matt Chapman reminds me so much of Matt Williams. Just his whole demeanor. Did you see Matty Williams at third base oh, rocking number nine? I did see that. I love that. You know, that. all you Brandon Belt guys like Sam Lubman, you, number nine is Brandon Belt. No, number uh, nine is Matt Williams. By the way, did you see uh, Brandon Belt basically saying he's flabbergasted that he's not getting any offers? Yeah, well, you need to hang around people that have a more, you know, two feet into reality there, Brandon. Oh, don't do that. What? Don't do that. It's a World Series chat. His knee gave out multiple years ago. <laughs> I, I mean, like, what are we, who are I, we kidding? I do like the advice of Jung Hoo Lee. He's got a little Panda vibe, got a little uh, Hunter Pence vibe. He's got some energy, man. There's I mean, they something need that. to him. They need that in that dugout, so he definitely has swagger. We'll get to David Frizzo in just a second as we say good morning to everybody out there getting off the graveyard shift. If you're at work, what is happening? All the overnight dancers. Shout out to sh- uh, YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile Text Line. New text line. Xfinity Xfinity Mobile Text Line is what it's called now. Shout out to our friends at Floyd Water, Plumbing, and Drain. If you're going to call it to the roast, you better bring it because if you don't, you will get flushed like BPA just did. Brought to you by Floyd Water, Plumbing, and Drain. So that's right. Yesterday, everybody lost their mind over Jeffries getting the start, Dalton Jeffries. But I want to go back Friday night, Kyle Harrison getting the start. Um, Kyle Harrison looked excellent. Excellent. And this is a young guy who still, like, clearly has a, has a lot of room to grow. I, I think he's still got to get command of the secondary and third pitches. But the fastball just jumps on people. And the way that he effortlessly slings it, he's got a lot of lower body in there with the high leg kick. There's a lot to really like about Kyle Harrison and his prospects to be a stud. He's clearly a competitor. Uh, that is a he's really a good lineup. And I thought he stifled them on Friday night. He was excellent. He's a competitor. Um, five strikeouts for Kyle Harrison Friday night, six innings. 
Uh, six hits, two runs, no walks is what's important for me. No walks. He gave out no free passes. Just gave up the bomb to Manny Machado. Which is fine. He gave, and he gave up a bomb to yeah, Tatis Jr., okay but they were all solo shots. But I thought just a command, hitting the black. The, the, the biggest development to me. What's that? Uh, it's not just Jung Hoo Lee, and we're going to get to the calls in just Chapman a second. Chapman as well was exciting. They, they, Chapman, I, I'm telling you, he reminds me of Matt Williams with his demeanor. I like that. Just quiet. He's very, chill. like, no nonsense. I'm just going to, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's Matt Williams. Way that's it. Matt Williams. Yeah. Matt Williams is just like that. But the biggest develop to, development to me is not only is Logan Webb going to be your ace, Blake yes. Snell's going to come in, uh, Kyle Harrison is dealing, but Jordan Hicks. <laughs> Jordan Hicks. Can we have a Saturday night. I the first thing I thought of when he threw the he threw the uh, backdoor sink ninety seven on the black. I said that just with the way he was throwing reminded me of Jason Schmidt. Ooh, it, it just I, I just got Jason. I was like, damn, it's, it's the way he was just throwing it. It just hitting hitting the black, hitting the paint low. The backdoor sink. I was just like, that that's filthy. And they and, and and you know talking about guy Uncle Marty, uh, I won't say his last name, uh, but Uncle Marty, he's telling me all spring he goes Jordan Hicks has been the best pitcher all spring long, all spring long. I was like I'm eager to see how it translates in the he, regular season. He was electric. He was dynamic Saturday <laughs> he was night. Electric. That was my big. I was my big. I was like whoa. Now if this guy pops, now you're telling me you got Webb, uh -huh, Snell, uh -huh, Harrison, uh -huh. Hicks, whatever I get, Alex Cobb, great. Oh, it's got, maybe he's a trade candidate. I don't know if you uh, want to start they, trade they, pitchers. Right now, right. They're, they're starting Dalton Jeffries. Yeah, I know. You got to keep and what I I'm don't saying. know who they're going to start tonight. Well, but later down the line, later down the line, you get you Robbie Ray. And I'm saying, oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now you got a staff. I mean, like, so you got in my ear. What would you say? Keaton Wynn? Keaton Wynn starting yeah, today. So Ke I mean, that just tells you how thin their yeah. rotation let me, is. Let me get our prize picks right now. Take some total bases for some of these But Dodgers. no, your okay. point about Jordan Hicks is well taken. You, you referencing him to Jason Schmidt. I believe Jason Schmidt is one of the more underrated giant starters of the last 30 years. He was not just good. He wasn't even just great. He was dominant for multiple seasons. Uh, B, he was... If they had won a World Series, I think we look at Jason Schmidt completely different yeah, well, in a Giants uniform. Well, we look at him differently because he signed with the Dodgers. No doubt. But you know, he it, was great. He, he was one of the better Giants acquisitions. I mean, I, I he was great. I, I have that's flashed a good back. call. In my, in my that's mind, a really good call. When Hicks was painting, and he went five innings, gave up only three hits, only one walk, six strikeouts. I think eighty-one the, pitches. The lack of walks was the big like big of development. The, the, the Harrison, first Harrison of and Hicks, yes. One walk between the two. Yes. Take that all day. No Throw free strikes. passes. And you can't walk today against the Dodgers. You can't walk these guys. You're going to get burned if Keith Wynn starts being around the plate and dancing on the black. All right, you can't do that. But James Paxson on the other side for the Dodgers. Um, I, I just I, I couldn't believe how well Jordan I, I'm really intrigued with Jordan Hicks because if he can pitch like he did on Saturday, and we're not just talking about a one, one no. two, three combination. We're talking about one, two, three, four. And then if you get Robbie Ray back at some point in July or August, I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, just get a couple bats here. We're way far away. But just in general, the best Giants rotation of the last 30 years was? I mean, it had to be 2010, right? So you got Prime Lincecum, Matt Cain, Jonathan, Jonathan Sanchez, Sanchez, a young Matt Bum. Who was the fifth starter there? I don't even remember. Well, it wasn't Vogie yet. Yeah, Vogie no, came No, Vogie was 2012. Vogie came 2012. Who's and the Lipsicum, fifth starter? And it kind of faded in 2012. Matt Cain was their ace right. in 2012. Uh, Lipsicum, remember, come out of the mm -hmm. bullpen in that mm -hmm. swing role. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Zito was one of the five, but yeah. Zito got, yeah, got kind of left yeah, off the roster. Yeah, I mean, this has a chance to be one of the better rotations <laughs> of Giants. I, I, in, in the last 30 I, years. I don't think that's hyperbolic. No, it's not. Uh, no, we, we just got through a series against San Diego, so I don't want to go crazy here. But I mean, Yeah, we're one weekend. It's and now you paper, see why they got Snell. On paper, it looks a hell of a lot better. A hell of a lot better than, um, than what they had last season. That's for sure. That is for sure. Let's go to uh, Adam in the city. Deal with the day for Fresno. Adam, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to say just like what an exciting weekend for opening weekend. You know, obviously yesterday happened, but you know, I'll take, you know, what the Giants showed me this weekend for a full, you know, well, yeah, 158 games left. Uh, Chapman is an exciting bat, really good glove behind third. I want to watch every at bat Jung Hoo Lee takes. Like every single time he, he just has a great approach to the plate. I'm, I'm super impressed. Um, I uh, no, I just I'm excited for what's about to happen this season. It's a it's an exciting team. I think 
some, I don't know, like lineup adjustments need to, I, I, Chowski, you tweeted over the weekend. Yeah. I don't like Soler hitting second. I just, I don't really get it. It's like he's a, and he's not hitting well to start, but he's also, he's a power hitter. He shouldn't be your number two. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, who knows how good the, uh, how, how good the Cardinals are going to be down the line. Is Paul Goldschmidt maybe a trade candidate? Mm. Because I, I still think our first date Ooh. is kind of right now. And I like, like where your head's at, Paul yeah, you put Goldschmidt in this lineup. Oh boy! Um, really quickly too, just to answer your guys' poll question, and I'll, and I'll get off the air. But I, uh, uh, in sense of who fumbled their pick the most, I definitely say it'd still be the Niners because of how much they invested in getting mm. Trey Lance. Like mm-hmm. the Warriors, you know, happen to just you know have really bad luck, and then we got the second pick, Joey Bart. I, th- I still feel like baseball is is so hard when drafting. So, but. You gave up three first rounders for trade. Like that's that's got to be worse. That, that that's a good call. That's a good call, and that's fair. Right now, our poll question: Which team fumbled their top three pick the most? Was it the Warriors and James Wiseman, the Niners and Trey Lance, the Giants and Joey Bart, who was DFA yesterday before the San Diego game? Right now, forty six percent of the vote going to the Warriors and James Wiseman, forty five percent of the vote going to the Niners and Trey Lance. So it's fair. It's fair. Uh, so I I, I want to get into the lineup thing. Jung Hoo Lee, traditional leadoff man. Okay. We all agree, right? The guy's going to take a lot of pitches. He'll swing with two strikes, contact hitter, speed at the top of the line. Not a base stealer per se, but they did try to put him in motion multiple times. Now, I don't think Solaire's a prototypical number two hitter because of who your leadoff hitter is. I'll explain. I, it. I just, I just don't think he's your prototypical number two hitter now, because he strikes out a lot th- and his numbers in his career, doesn't scream number two hitter. Well, the first day they trotted out the lineup, opening day, yeah. it's the Padres. I told you right away. I told I know, you guys right away with, you. with the lineup. I don't like Solori batting numbers two. So, but here's what the, the data heads will tell you. They're like, and I don't agree with this, but I'm going to tell you what they, well, he did bat lead off for the Braves and blah, blah. All right, look, every lineup is different and you yeah. have to go with your roster and, and how to elongate it and what complements who. If you're going to go Jung Hoo Lee, okay, at the top of the order, I want this number two hitter to be a guy who puts the ball in play all around the diamond, a more of a spray hitter, because you're going to have to hold Jung Hoo yeah. Lee on. That opens up the gaps on the on the right side. Solaire, I want jumping on first and second pitches. My yeah. power hitters, I want jumping all over. Yeah. So if if you have a guy who's going to take a couple pitches in this in the two hole, that's not Solaire. Yeah. That doesn't fit what he does. No. Drop him to three or he sh- four. He should be four. He okay, should be four. I'm, I'm convinced but he should be four. Drop him to three or four. Let's just say he grounded at two double plays the other day because he's jumping right. on the first, which is fine. I want him being aggressive. But in the four spot, not yes, in the two in hole. the four or yes, yeah, not so in the two hole. My number two hitter, whether it's Estrada, maybe it's it's Wade who likes to see more pitches for now. Like I, I'm open to whoever in the two hole. And then I look at Chapman and Solaire. Like, I do want Solaire, Chapman batting boom, boom, right behind each other. Chapman gives me a professional at bat. He's another guy. He's going to be patient, but he's barreling the ball right now. Even the ones he, he misses off the it. end of the bat. Now, he does have hard. slumps where he'll go through extended Absolutely. slumps and strike out a lot, and you may have to dump him down the in the lineup. Well. This is why I think at the deadline, the Niners, and I like Adams, I like his process, his stall process here, Adam at SF, because there may be a hole at first base. And the Cardinals, they do not look good right now. They're one and three. Their bullpen is in shambles. They don't have good starting pitching. Maybe Goldschmidt's like, you know what? Maybe it's good that you deal me. And maybe you can bring him out back west to the NL West where he knows his division inside and out. I'm good with a flyer on Paul Goldschmidt. You jump him to three yeah. behind Estrada or Montos well, behind Jung Huli. And now you got Solaire, Chapman, four or five. Now all of a sudden you got more depth in the lineup. I would love that. But let's just go with what we have now. I think Conforto is a guy I moved to the three hole. And like yet to me, the Yaz spot, Yaz and Matos should be platooning that spot. Yeah. I want to see Matos. I, I'm Conforto yeah, I'm looks I'm, really good right now. Yeah, I, I, you could put and Conforto's used to batting three, four, five. That's he what did I'm that saying. with the Mets a lot. He yeah. did that with the Mets. So, he knows he knows about those spots. So let's say you go Jung Hu Lee, and I'm just gonna throw out Estrada for now. Estrada goes two, and then maybe I go Conforto Solaire Chapman. I like that. And now my, I go back to my question to that we were talking about last week. Watchability. Athletes we like to watch. Right now, for me, and I want to hear from you, when I tuned into the games over the weekend, I wanted to see the pitchers, and I saw, ooh, Harrison, the watchability's through the charts. I look at Jordan Hicks, to your point, He's a watchable player. It's just a more watchable team. We don't have to go down this. and Soler yeah, we, and Chapman. I'm all in. I can't miss their at bats. They're intriguing. They're intriguing. Who's the guy? Who's the most well, watchable? Well, I don't. I don't. 
they're all watchable to me. I, it depends on the day. I, I'm I'm enjoying watching Giants baseball again. Oh, I don't want to. I don't because okay. we always do this with same thing with the blame game, right? We got to blame somebody. Well, who's the most watchable? Well, who's on the pecking fun. order? I just I, the team's more fun. At the same time, they're two and two, and I want to see them against the Dodgers. I want to see this baby play out um, with the lineup. But I, I'm, I'm day one. I, I don't get the Soler batting. Batting second. As soon as they trotted out the opening day line, I said, no. I'd, and we were, we were going back you and said, forth with yeah, this. Yaz yeah, batting yeah. fifth. Get Yaz in six, seven, or eight and, and and call it the day. Get Conforto up in the lineup because he is seeing the ball very well at the plate. And he's playing for a contract. So you're going to get the best out of Michael Conforto. He's, he's, I think he's going to get the swing best. Of, yeah, I think he you're looks gonna, good. I think you're going to get the best, the You've best season. You've always been a Conforto I, I do like Conforto. When he's healthy, he's on. He is. Conforto's a good player, man. He was I'm a good player at the Mets. Him. No, I like I, because I, I had him in fantasy a yeah. long time. and. Uh, watch you know watching and I just like watching baseball. That's a beautiful thing yeah. about baseball. You can watch eight games at once. You can watch four games at once. Baseball's fun like that. And then you get the prize picks. I love it to it. You can track these guys. Pretty fun. I am addicted to prize picks. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I they got to tweak tinker their lineup here. They yes, tinker their I would lineup agree with quick. that. Um, let's get to Dave. He's been on hold for a while. Let's get to hey, Dave, Dave. first. No, what's up, man? Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I love the passion this morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I'm here to answer the poll question. I think it's uh, Trey Lance as the biggest bust. Uh, now, I don't really think it's close, to be honest. Uh, I just think all the variables are stacked uh, in that direction, just based on the fact that, yeah, like the last caller said, all the stuff he gave up to get him, but also he missed that, you know, just by Wiseman, he missed that last year of eligibility, so he didn't even play. So when he drafted him, the learning curve, he was already behind that. So his timeline never matched the Niners' timeline, the Niners, they were ready to win right now. And the only f- way for his situation to work was to be patient and, and see it through. And, you know, obviously the injuries happened and, you know, we never got to actually see how he, what kind of player he is. And, you know, it's just unfortunate because when he did play the limited time, like you said, the Chicago game, it was rainy. And then the other games, he's a lot of quarterback runs. So we didn't really get to see him play quarterback. So all those variables added up. It just it, it was a bad idea just from the jump, just from the simple fact that he couldn't help you right away. And this team has been so close. Who knows? One of these first round picks or one of these, you know, moves that they gave up maybe could have helped us get over the hump. You know, yeah. so you know, it's just like all these variables just just point to the fact just it was just bad move from the jump. Yeah, it, that, it, I hear you, it's Dave. Fortunate I, for both sides, and you know, and yep. I just I feel bad for Trey. You know, I know we're still talking about it, but I just don't think his timeline matched not his timeline. And, and we're only talking about it, folks, because Joey Bart was DFA yesterday, and we just had top three picks in the Bay Area with James Wiseman, Trey Lance, it's and Joey crazy. Bart, and they're all gone. And they're all gone. So we're we're just asking the question: Which team fumbled their top three pick the most? You know, who's the better player out of the three guys? Now, it's and Brock Purdy's a much better quarterback than Trey Lance. There's no doubt about it. Brock Purdy was special last season. He played like an MVP. I'm not disputing that. I'm not going to knock him. You know, our first text of the day on the Xfinity Bubble text line was, you guys say anything positive? We've been spraying positivity about Brock Purdy all season long. How can you He's, he's been better. But yeah. it is pretty funny to me. It is pretty funny to me that when he struggled in some light rain in Cleveland, it was, oh, he's it's raining. You got to. But it was a literal monsoon, literal monsoon in Chicago. And we don't, we just kind of ignore that. So it's just, it's funny how we kind of switch our narratives up with certain players or certain people. And we just kind of, we try to just taper the conversation towards what we want or what we think is right. That's all. It's look, quarterbacks struggle in the rain. They all do. It's rain. They're not used to throwing a wet football. It happens. It, it is crazy to me how very little tolerance we have for young players struggling even a little bit. Just in general, it feels like the 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 level of patience is just is non-existent. I look at someone, and it's a different sport, but I look at football. Jordan Love. If you'd have asked the majority of football fans after eight weeks, is Jordan Love any good? I think the majority of them would have said, "Hell no." And then eight weeks later, you ask the same group of people, is Jordan Love any good? And they're like, yeah, oh yeah. It's just, it's crazy how quickly we're ready to write people off in sports. Now, nah, I'm eager to see where Jordan Love gets taken in fantasy drives. I'm Why are eager you smiling to see. When, I, when I bring him up? No, no, I'm just, because patience, we don't have it anymore Zero. sports fans. 
We just don't care. Like, even Pajemski. Like, let's talk about Pajemski. Right. Like, I like Pajemski. Do I think he's a finished product? No. Not even close. I think he's got a lot to work on. But, boy, he's been a great little warrior this year. And there are people that get into our chat, and they're like, Pajemski was the worst right. plus minus of the team last night. Right. Pajemski can't shoot. Pajemski. Are you watching all the positive things right. that he's bringing exactly. to the table? Not only that, though. <laughs> The same people will be bragging about Pajemski has a best having the best plus minus on the team this season. <laughs> I just so I, I just say watch the game. The first quarter, Pajemski was flipped that game with his energy and his hustle. He had that ball hopping around. I saw a different dude last night, Brady Pajemski, dude. He was balling yesterday. So I don't care about plus minus. It, it's so overrated. Well, and Giants fans, to your point, like. There's a guy, he's a journeyman, Dalton Jeffries, who's getting the start yesterday. Right. And they didn't have anybody because Snell's not ready. Right. And because Cobb's still hurt, they, they just don't have better options. And Tristan Beck got hurt. Like, so this is what you're forced to do. All right. And I'm not mad at the guy, but like we can all see he's a journeyman coming off of multiple yep. armored injuries. Yep. It's okay. Everyone take a deep breath. Right. It's Season's, one game. It's, it's, Season is very long. Right. It's game four, 162. But, Somebody came at me yesterday. I said, dude, relax. Like, like, stop. But like, <laughs> at the same time, I watched that kid Miller who they acquired, the 26-year-old lefty, right. and I'm telling you, that guy's a player. He's not bad. I really like Miller. That was a nice acquisition. Yep. Now, it's a long season. He's a rookie. Let's see where he's at in the middle of July when, when teams figure him out a little. I'm seeing Jordan Love overrated talk. He choked. Jordan Love this. Jordan we don't Love even that. know what Jordan Love so, is. He's right, played man. a full season. Let's go, see go, two seasons. Let's see three last, seasons. The last two months, they were three and six at one point, the Green Bay Packers. Go look at his last two months and tell me he's overrated. Please. Please. Uh, let's go to, uh, we'll, we'll hold on tight. Daryl and Robin. What's up, T. Robin? Uh, Daryl and local. We'll get you on the other side about <laughs> Jung Hoo Lee. <laughs> I missed that joke. Oh, there it is. Uh, Daryl and local. we get you on the side alongside Robin. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. Get your spring centerpiece at Whole Foods Market. Save 30% on...
This is Steve Kerr, and you're listening to The Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game. We're not hard on Brock. <laughs> We're not hard on Brock. Until he, uh, <laughs> until he uh, signs that quarterback deal, which resets the market. Then we'll go hard on Brock. So we've had a weekend of baseball games, and I want to ask you a random question. Okay. Is this baseball, no March Madness? Uh, we could, we could talk nah, March okay, Madness just, and the just, evolution of the big man coming back chop. into the game. I'm busting your chops. Um, what did you think of the uniform nameplates on the back? Like, the Giants clearly doesn't look like we're accustomed to. A lot of the teams don't. Uh, does it trigger you? Does it disappoint you? No, nah, it doesn't. Does not matter at all? Hey. I mean... I did notice him, but I actually started to warm up to him. I started to warm up to him. I don't think it's as bad as what people made about to be. Like, I'm on my television, like, I'm looking at the highlights right now. Yeah. Those names on the back don't look bad, do they? No, they're fine. They're yeah, fine. I don't, I don't, I'm not triggered by these uniform changes. I, I think they're fine. The jerseys for the Giants do look, uh, how do I put this? Less embroidered. Like, the yeah. old one had the gold trim that was a little more popped. I don't even know if this has it, but, like, the gold trim kind of popped on it. The, those ones look a little more, like, replica-like, when, especially when they zoom in. Yeah. But, like, whatever. My bigger takeaway was that much ado about nothing regarding the uniforms. But I'm the best you. development regarding uniforms over the weekend, I haven't seen anybody bring up. The Yankees, for about 40 or 50 years, had white outline on their road jerseys. Yeah. And they did away with it, and they went to the retro where it's just navy blue. Ooh, I like that. And I'm telling you yeah, right now, they look phenomenal. Well, I tell you who looks phenomenal in that jersey. Oh, Juan Soto. Did you see that at bat in the ninth? <laughs> did I watch all those against at bat. Josh Hader? They just swept the Astros four games. All four games they swept. They won every single game. They swept look, Houston. In and they, Houston. In yeah. Houston, and they, Houston's been kind of the thorn in their butt. Absolutely. Over the last five to seven years, Juan Soto. Makes that lineup just a look. I mean, <laughs> this guy's a stud, man. He's going to be a free agent. That's target number one, two, and three. <laughs> All right. Now you got you got Chuck Huli. You got, do you, hey, hey, Juan Soto, you love the Bay Area, man. We got great seafood. We got great Chinese food. Got great Mexican food. Got it. Whatever you want, Juan Soto. You want season tickets to the Warriors game courtside? We got you covered. Well, Shaska and I don't. Love it, don't. But the Giants do. We'll spend our money for them. Larry Bear, you listening? Hey, Larry. This guy, whatever he wants. You know what a Juan Soto home run means in a Yankees uniform, don't you? John Sterling. And the pitch hit in the air okay. down the left field line toward the wall. It's gone! It went over the high wall. Juan Soto's first home run as a Yankee. A fly ball down the left field line. There is a Soto photo. A home run in the left field seats. <laughs> He's wonderful. <laughs> Marvelous. And the Yankees have now taken a 4-3 lead. Oh, I love that. All time. Can I hear that again? One more time. One more time. One, one more time. Just the part where he gets his I wonderful. Tell, I listen to the whole one. I listen to the whole thing. A thing. Soto photo. And the pitch hit in the air down the left field line toward the wall. It's gone. It went over the high wall. Juan Soto's first home run as a Yankee. A fly ball down the left field line. There is a Soto photo. A home run in the left field seats. He's wonderful. <laughs> Marvelous. And the Yankees have now taken a 4-3 lead. So the, the ninth inning, uh, yesterday's game, uh, there's runners on, oh, haters up. Josh Hader, one of the better closers of the last five years. And... It was a master class in plate discipline. Juan Soto taking pitches, taking pitches, and then going the other way with two strikes. It was a thing of beauty. Uh, Juan Soto's an excellent player. Takes forever to get in the batter's box, but man, oh, there's I a reason that. why this guy is going to get $500 million. Uh, Dude, this guy's special. He's special. The plate discipline, his eye, I mean, hand-eye coordination, power to all fields. You go Oppo Taco, he goes pull it. I mean, this guy's just, he's the perfect, he, he's honestly the perfect Yankee. He looks perfect in that Yankee uniform. Wait till he puts on the pinstripes for the first time at Yankee Stadium. Juan Soto may hit 45 home runs this year. He's 
wonderful. I mean, marvelous. Is that the best duo in sports? Because I, I thought Stanton and Judge would be, but it feels because Stanton's had some injuries yeah. and whatnot. It sure feels like Judge Soto at the top of a lineup is about as good as you can get in this day and age. And there are some great com I mean, Freddie Friedman, Mookie Betts is a great I mean, combo. Yeah. And Shohei Otani. I forgot about Shohei. Yeah, what, what about uh, Ronald Acuna and Ozzy Albies and Matt Olson and Austin Riley? You see what they did to Philadelphia? Did, They've been beating up on them. Martin, this is 40-40 potential but, for both who, guys. Who? S Judge and Soto. Yeah. I think those other guys got 40, 40 potential too. I mean, Betts, Shohei, Acuna, that's and Olsen. true. I mean, Ozzy Abbey's could hit you could 30. Machado, I mean, not take away from your point, Shasky, but no, like, I just it's, said, yeah. like, that, it's stacked up there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like, some of these combos, and, and, you know, that's why the Giants went out and did what they did to go get Matt Chapman, and he's not even on their level not as a hitter. Close. But he's a great, he's a great defensive player. But, like, the, there are some teams with some thump. I mean, the Padres, we don't even bring it up. Machado Tatis no. is as dynamic you as you can get. You don't bring it up. We've been talking about the Padres for years. But if I said the great one-two punches, how long do you think we'd well, we get to Well, we don't think of baseball like that because it's a nine-man lineup. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not just two guys. If you get two guys hitting, great. I mean, but Kent the difference, Bonds, but the difference Bash between Bros. But the difference between today's game is you look at all these lineups here, whether it's the Astros, whether yeah. it's the Phillies, whether it's the Diamondbacks or the Rangers. They got depth in those lines. Yeah. Like, the Rangers have depth. Marcus Sibian, Corey Seager. Who's this rookie? Wyatt Langford. Evan Carter's batting eighth. Josh That's Hunt. how good they are. Evan Carter's batting eighth. Well, He should. He will be batting fourth in the Giants lineup. I, yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Josh Heim. Josh Young at third base. I mean, this team is, was it Jonas Heim? Heim the catcher. Yeah. Jonah Heim. Jonah Heim. Jonah, Jonah Heim. Jonah, Jonah Heim. Josh Young at third base. All the, It's not just one-two punches. You got to have depth in these no lineups. Doubt. No doubt. I just I, I look at it right now and I and I say that like baseball's in a really good spot. There are a lot of stars. There are a lot of stars. And I I, I was I mean this is obviously a long year and guys can get hurt. But I'm looking around like again the Pirates again starting off hot this year. This this kid O'Neill Cruz is a superstar. I mean, he's not just a good player. He's a superstar. He's six seven and swings well, the bat. He's a star. He you to be a superstar you got to be a household name. So, hey, Otani, he got hurt Mookie last Betts. year. He no, got I, hurt I, last I year. I know who O'Neal Sliding into home. He, he uh, has uh, superstar potential. Yeah, uh, superstar potential. But it's premature to say he's a superstar right uh, now. I think Let's, if, let him, let him, let him, I, I let, him okay. let it come to fruition. You know what I mean? I, That's I, all. I hear you. I'm just like, saying, like, this is this is a kid that, like, everyone like, in baseball would does, want. Does does anybody in San Francisco know who O'Neal Cruz is? Probably not. But That's they what will by the end of the summer. I hope so. You know? I hope so. I just look around. Baseball's in a really good spot right now. And I look at the Giants. Like, they don't have a quote unquote superstar. But they put together a, like just from two years ago, a year ago, to where they're at now. John Lee is a good everyday ball player, and and obviously he's got to play a full season. Matt Chapman is a good everyday ball player. Soler is a good everyday ball player. Conforto, I believe, when healthy, is a really good everyday ball player. Right? They've got a they've got a team here, and they've got elite pitching. That's one thing I do think they have. Once they get Snell back into their rotation, once they get Cobb back in, you're looking at Webb. Snell, Harrison, and if if your boy Jordan Hicks can continue to do what he's doing, that's how you negate these great lineups. Let's go to uh, Daryl and Milken. Daryl, what's happening? Hey, what's up, you guys? Thanks for taking my call. Great show. Thank you. I, I, I want to talk about Jung Ho Lee and the fact that I, I'm like you, Bonte. I'm a fantasy dork, and I, I yeah. do fantasy baseball. And uh, I researched things because I don't know anything about this guy, and I researched him, and I found out that his dad was the best player – one of the best players in Korean history is his dad. And so here's this guy that was the rookie of the year in 2017, and he was the MVP last year. His dad was the best player, one of the best players in Korean baseball history. And so I'm pretty confident that this guy is not only going to be the best player in the Giants, but he is all, he's a star, period, end of story. And, and uh, if you look at his statistics in the Korean League, it's like he's kind of like Tony Gwynn. Yes. And so I'm seeing this guy, and I'm like, wow, uh, uh, we got something here. And one more thing about the biggest buffs, it's by far James Wiseman. He changed the trajectory of the Warriors with his failure, so it's James Wiseman. Anyway, that's all I got, guys. Uh, well, real quick, real quick. Daryl, Daryl, how do you think he changed the trajectory of the Warriors? They won a title with him on the roster. Oh, he was so dynamic on that roster. I mean, it was just, wow, he was dunking. It was amazing. Um, James Wiseman uh, was the second overall pick. Last night, I watched Wemby back down TJD and do this dunk, and I was like, wow, what if we had him? What if he was the second pick? 
and obviously he's the first pick, but uh, what I'm saying is we swung and we missed. And by the way, James Wiseman, his floor was Hassan Whiteside. That's what I was reading. Uh, Hassan Whiteside is way better than James Wiseman will ever be, so... Uh, that's the biggest problem. Yeah, that does suck. Well, that one thing that it, sports has taught me in recent memory is that there's no such thing as a high floor. Mac Jones had a high floor. Remember that? Mac Jones, his floor no, is really high. I, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if I ever heard high floor. Anyone could bust like is what I'm getting yeah, at. Like, every, like, yeah, every, I, I, the, the, but that's something you that know, you're going to hear. You're going to hear that in the draft this year. Like Certain positions, like, well, he... He's got a high floor, as in mean, meaning he doesn't have the all the crazy upside. He's a more finished product. And it's like, that guy could still suck. Well, it's all what I'm learning here is I get older and I get a little wiser. I think I'm getting a little wiser. But ever since I started doing this thing, this media thing, and started writing and understanding sports and the business of sports and draft picks and all that stuff, most of it has to do with the situation you're drafted into. If you're drafted into a situation like Mac Jones was with the Patriots, all right, you make the playoffs the first time, first year, your rookie season, great year for you. Rookie season, you go to the wild card game, you lose the Buffalo, fine. That's no, no <laughs> kudos. I saw Peyton Manning break the interception. He throws for the most interceptions a rookie has ever thrown. It's also 25 right? years ago. It, it, it was, but I'm just saying, for yeah. context yeah. matters. Um, so you can't, you don't get a pass for that. Brendan Roethlisberger, they didn't let him throw the ball. They didn't let him throw the ball at Pittsburgh his first year. They made the AFC Championship game, leaning on their run game and their defense. But the next year, you hire Joe Judge and you hire Matt Patricia to call plays. That was a recipe for disaster. Zach Wilson was drafted to the best situation with the New York Jets. Now, then he finally got a shot with Robert Sala, but said, you know, this didn't work out. I mean, he's going to be gone. They did draft pretty well around him. They drafted pretty well around him. I mean, Garrett Wilson and him. Bryce Hall, so many teams would die to yeah, have. Now, that offensive they, line's not that's great. That's what I'm saying. But, the but, but they, they do have weapons, and yeah, their defense but, is but really if good. You could have all the weapons in the world. If you got nobody blocking for you, what good are those weapons? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm watching. I'm, like your Justin point, Fields. CJ Tra- Stroud looked like, pretty like, damn good like, with an offensive line that nobody well, can they, name. They, well, Larry Tunsil's pretty good, and they got some guys there in Houston, and they built around him. They did start to build around him, and he's good. Now, you get the chances to the role here and there. But the situation matters. Like, the situation with D'Amico Ryans is a lot better than any situation Justin Fields was in in Chicago. Now, Justin Fields may not even be good. He may not be good. He may be a bust. But you can't tell me that situation was good for him. No offensive line. You had to go trade for DJ Moore a couple years in. You got Cole Clement. You got a... You can't name a running back in Chicago outside of Khalil Herbert. You know what I'm saying? You lost David Montgomery. So, what I'm learning is, basically, I'm saying all that to say, sometimes it's just about the situation you're drafted into. And sometimes the situation you drafted into doesn't help you re- you realize your potential. So, Andrew Wiggins going to Minnesota, we thought he was a joke. So, so then what are the what's the excuse then for James Wiseman and Trey Lance? Because aren't those good situations? It's a different. Isn't situation. that more of an indictment on those individuals? It, it's, it's a it's a t- it's a tough situation for a young guy like James Wiseman, for example, to go to a team that's ready to win the championship. When you have players like Steph and Draymond and mm-hmm. Clay, now. Mind you, that first year James Wiseman played, there was no Clay Thompson. Yeah. You're playing with the ball stopper and Kelly Oubre Jr. He's not passing you the ball. It's basically the black hole of basketball. You go to Kelly Oubre Jr., nobody see it. How many times did we see Kelly Oubre Jr. running to Steph Curry not knowing when to screen? You know what I'm saying? So that situation for James Wiseman wasn't as conducive because Steve Kerr's like, wait a minute, we got to develop here? We're trying to win and get back to the NBA Finals. So that's a tough situation for a young man. Not everybody's going to thrive in that situation. So that's why, and I'm not, and Trey, James Wiseman has to wear some of that. There's no doubt he has to wear some of that. But the patience for him to rise and become a key contributor to a championship team just wasn't fair. wasn't there for him. He wasn't ready for that. So, you know, football is so different from basketball. But let's say hypothetically, James Wiseman gets drafted to an also-ran team that is a perennial 15-win loss, uh, 15 win team every year. Would that have been a better situation for him? Because he could play out through the mistakes. He could play through the mistakes. You come here. Would you, you say the, the same thing about Trey? Uh, yeah, Trey too. Trey okay. too would have probably been able to play through the mistakes. Now, Trey coming to a team like this, I thought Shanahan should have just started him from day one. If you knew, if you knew that Jimmy Garoppolo was in the near long-term plans and you knew that you didn't really like Jimmy Garoppolo running your offense, why not just hand the keys to Trey Lance? Now, it's unfair to guys like Debo mm-hmm. and Kittle and Trent Williams or Fred Warner. They're like, yo, come on, coach. This guy ain't ready to roll. He's not. So I see that's it a goes tough both situation. Ways. Yeah, I, I just because like Bryce Young right now, like if I were to put Trey in Carolina, 
in the same situation that Bryce Young's in, I don't think any quarterback would no, have a lot of success. Nobody, nobody. I mean is. that, like, because like that's situation. What we're yeah, I know, but that's what we're talking about. And like, if I would have put Bryce Young on the Niners, I don't know how much well, tolerance there would be for his mistakes. Well, I don't know, and I don't know how good he would be. Football is also I, a lot different. It's right? very different. very different. You know, it's very different playing a rookie quarterback. Now we're seeing more guys have more success as younger players in the league because the NFL has adopted a lot of college concepts yeah. with the spread game. With the jet motions and all the sweeps and everything like that. So you got a lot more of the college game implemented to the NFL where it didn't used to be like that. You know, the college game was doing their own thing with the option and power eye and all that stuff. No, the college game is more spread out wide open. And now you're seeing that in the NFL game. You see that a lot with Andy Reid. You see that a lot with all these teams over league. Green Bay, Philadelphia, you name it. Shanahan's running some college stuff there. Those college concepts have now been adopted by the NFL. Where the NBA, you're a young guy. You get, you know... Unless you were a star like James Worthy going to the Lakers, James Worthy was a great, great I mean, he's amazing. North Carolina Tar Heel. Yeah. So you go play with Magic and Kareem. First year, you go through some rookie blues. You kind of fall short in the NBA Finals. Second year, James Worthy, big game James. All of a sudden, he's big game James, right? A little different with the Warriors, man. It was a little different uh, with a young player playing on a team. And, and we all admit this, too. Steph Curry is such a unique player. It's not easy for a young player to play with Stephen Curry. Think how long it's taken Jonathan Kaminga to finally adapt to well, the way Seth Curry plays. it's not just Steph. It's also the way Clay plays, the way Draymond plays. You know, it, it's a very particular system that is unique to the rest of the league. I mean, how many teams, their primary player plays off-ball yep. significant portions of the saying. game? Yeah, so, yes, it's a very unique situation here for the Warriors. It's just... I don't know, man. I, I I think you know when you when you get one of those high draft picks, you want the highest possible ceiling. That's what most people want, right? And so you swing high, and then because of the specific setting, you can actually be doing yourself a disservice by swinging high and not getting the most seasoned player. Like I learned this year with TJD, if he's not a four year player, I don't think he's ready to contribute on this team right now. I mean, I just don't think and, he and, is. And he's and he's playing a role, and he mastered his role. They're looking for James Wiseman to be an all star. You know what I'm saying? But it didn't happen. So, like, let's go back to the tray then, real, just real quick, because I know we're probably beating a dead horse here. But, like, let's say they take Mac Jones. I just don't think Mac Jones is good. I don't know yet. And I don't I think don't, his I, setting I don't think his setting was great in New England. I but year one, it was decent, and they went to the playoffs. And then he took a big step back because they didn't have the appropriate offensive coordinator. I don't think they had good weapons I don't at think all. They, that's what I'm saying. The but, situation was horrible. But I don't think Mac Jones is good either. He's a turnover machine. Maybe. Maybe. You know, now, it's, now it's, would Brock Purdy look like Mac Jones in New England? He'd probably look closer to Mac see, Jones. That's what I'm saying. Like, but I don't think Mac Jones would look anything like Brock Purdy here. That's the other part. So, I, we, I, I feel about, like I'm talking in circles. Yeah, I don't know about Mac Jones yet. And now he's going to play a backup role in Jacksonville. He will resurface as a starter somewhere at some point in his career. But you look at his rookie year, 67% completion percentage. Yeah, he was all right. 3,800 yards passing, and they run first offense as a rookie. So had two touchdown passes. He did throw the 13 picks. He was sacked 28 times. Passer rating, which I don't buy, but 92 and a half passer rating, which is okay, right? But they go to the playoffs. Second year, Kendrick Board is your top dog at wide receiver. It's kind of tough. We saw Kendrick Bourne out here. No disrespect to Kendrick Bourne. That was Jimmy's leading receiver. That's in the what playoffs. I'm saying. Which is why, which is why I had a hard time blaming Jimmy for everything when you look at the weapons. I don't know. I think the situation matters. Let's go to the well, lines no, here. Of course it matters. I just, I think that I'm just learning that sometimes it's more so about the situation than maybe the player. Sometimes the player well, can't happens, drive no in the situation. No doubt, no doubt. But you know also, you, like, Solomon Thomas just isn't good enough. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes that I happens. agree with that. You know that what happens. I mean? Like, sometimes, sometimes that happens. Sometimes the player's just not good. Exactly. I agree with that. Sometimes you know what I mean? the player's like, just Gary not good. Like, Gary Brown just wasn't good enough. No, he wasn't. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just plucking names. But also, but also Gary Brown, but also Gary Brown uh, never really got a shot. Also, the same thing we talked about with Joey Bart. How many games did Gary Brown play? He didn't, he didn't even he didn't even deserve to come up. I would have just at least gave him a shot. Like Christian Arroyo was a name that Giants fans brought up for years, right? And we've come to find out, like, yeah, he's a platoon DH. Did he help the Red Sox win the World Series though? As a platoon DH, yeah, but the, but I just wanted to see it. Part yeah. of the problem with buying young, let the young player play. Yeah, but they, uh, like who are the Giants in that situation? Like, ah, oh, we're not going to play Gary Brown. 
Well, so yeah. Gary Gary Brown had seven plate appearances in the big leagues, but in three seasons in AAA, he hit two forty eight. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, Thirty home runs. So I just yeah, he just never really had the numbers get out yeah. of the Maybe never had, who, What year was Gary Brown? What years were those? They drafted him. I oh, believe it was two thousand nine. Yeah, is when oh, they drafted nine. him. So they were winning World Series from Bochy and stuff like that. So it kind of made. But sense he was there. a college guy, with Cal State Fullerton. Uh, correct. Yeah. See, he was a college guy. He was supposed to be more pro ready. Like Will Bednard is the guy that they drafted a couple years ago, and like we he hasn't even gotten out of single A. Yeah. Like, he just might not be good. You know what I mean? That that happens. Kyle Harrison, first round pick, rising like a comet. You know, sometimes those things happen as yeah, well. Yeah. Sometimes it's the player. Sometimes the situation. You can never. But I remember for but, the longest time it was Tim Alderson or Madison Bumgarner. Right. Which are they going to keep? Remember yeah. that? No, oh, I do. I do. We go crazy. There were legitimate arguments for Tim Alderson back then, too. Yeah, which was it's silly. a wild time. And Tommy silly. Joseph, do you remember that it's, name? Yeah, which is silly as hell to be. Yeah, I, I didn't waste my time. He's going to be the catcher of the future, not this buster I guy. left the back door during those arguments. I'm not arguing over Tim Alderson. That's what I told myself back in those days. Not going to do it. Uh, let's go to uh, the Dex in the town. The Dex in the town. What's happening, What's up, man? Dex? The Dubs fumbled the Wiseman pick. To me, it's easy. If you recall, the Bulls had the, I want to say the number seventh pick, and were looking to move up, and they had Wendell Carter on the table for the Warriors. So you get a quality center. Not only in that, you move back, and you're able to draft Tyrese Hallenburton at seven. Joe, you said it earlier. It was hard watching Steph this weekend play hero ball. So imagine having Tyrese Hallenburton there. Steph is not only one of the best point guards, but in most of the GM draft or the GM uh, polls, Steph is also one of the best off guards that the NBA has to offer. So you have that ability to move Steph to the off guard while having Tyrese Hallenburton, a budding superstar there, to really usher you into a whole new but can, generation. Can we acknowledge something just real quick? I'll let you finish. Believe me, I want I want you to finish. Jordan Poole did start to flash the year prior down the stretch. Remember, he was taking big shots in both playing games. And simultaneously, if we're going to talk about what Tyrese Halliburton has become now, we also have to look at the first couple of years in Sacramento where he showed promise, but it wasn't. it's nowhere near what we've seen the last couple of years. Tyrese Halliburton was good in Sacramento. It's not a lot of people who can say Tyrese or, or someone is good in Sacramento. Tyrese Hallenburton was also, or, or is also an all-star in Indy. You, you're telling me that Tyrese Hallenburton couldn't figure it out within this system? I think Tyrese Hallenburton would be, he, he's someone who is a high assist, low turnover guy. That's exactly what we need right now. JP, JP has played his best ball with the Warriors, Easily, Tyrese Highland Burton could have done the same. Maybe, but, but again, Dex, I want to keep you on the line because this is a good conversation. You no, know, it here. is. And this I, was a reasonable conversation at that time. Well, and, and Tyrese Halliburton is special right now, but it didn't, you know, Sacramento had to make a pivot. They decided to go with De'Aaron Dar Fox, and he is an all star now. I just don't think with Clay coming back and you had Andrew Wiggins there, and again, Jordan Poole was ascending. Were they just going to punt on Jordan Poole at that point after? Spend it all the time in developing with him. Tyrese Halliburton needs a ball in his hands. So does Draymond Green in the half court. He needs a ball in his hands. That's, that's I just that's don't. I, I don't know. I don't know how it would have worked out. It here. sounds good though. What right. he's saying makes a lot of sense. Keep Go going. Ahead. Tyrese Halliburton is pretty much a 50 40 90 guy. Pretty close to a 50 40 90 guy. I think yes, he needs the ball in his hands. But also putting him off ball with Steph on the court, he's still going to be able to hit a jump shot. I think he's a quality player. He would have thrived in our system. And then Bob said it on the radio. He regrets not picking that guy. He understands what it was. Yeah, I, it's interesting. There's a uh, good call, Dex. I, I'm not. I'm not mad at that call. I just don't remember around the time a lot of people clamoring for Halliburton. Well, it's it's because it's, of the shot. Because we were worried about the way he released the ball. Now remember. Now, he is a 40% three-point shooter. It, it, His shot works been, now. It, it, it's been working his entire NBA career. But there was the Jordan Poole ascension. And when the Warriors won that championship a couple seasons ago, I don't think anybody was bringing up Tyrese Halliburton because we all were having pool parties. We, we, we did six months of COVID radio, and we heard maybe one or two sparse callers or texts right. bring up Halliburton, but and, no one wanted him at two. And we had Anthony Slater on maybe that day at the draft, or I, maybe text Slater about the Wendell Carter stuff. That was all a rumor. That was all a smokescreen. People were trying to make something happen there. That was a smokescreen. 
for for whatever was happening there in that draft. But that Wendell Carter thing was a smoke screen. Halliburton, by the way, nobody was talking about him when the Warriors beat Look, the Celtics in, in six games. But we're in, all again, we're all having pool parties. But, right? but but in retrospect, you know, a year and a half removed from all of that, yeah, it, it looks really bad. <laughs> I mean, there's just no denying it. But go back in real time. And I think that's the hard part is that you look on paper and things, you know, in retrospect look bad, but then you go back in real time and you remember the tenor of where the team was at and the, the situations and where players were in their ascension. I just, I don't know, man. I, I Yeah, of course Halliburton would look great now, but I don't remember anybody saying that back then. Nah. Uh, let's go to... Let's go to Coach Chaz in Chile. Chili? Wait. Chili, Chili? Oh, yeah, man. The country. Chile, man. How are you guys Chile, doing? Chile, man. Country, man. Man, Coach Chaz, what's up? Hey, buddy. Oh, oh yeah, baby. I'm go to Chile you know, one I day. listen to you down here, man. Oh, that's oh, you amazing. you got to come down to Chile. Uh, it's one underrated country. Oh, I heard so one many great things country. about it. Uh, you listen on the Odyssey <laughs> app or YouTube? I listen on the Odyssey app. Wow, Absolutely. that's that's amazing. That's amazing yeah. right there. Thank you. Hey, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. I spread the word down here. We got some gringos down here, man. You know, oh. <laughs> so uh, you know, we got our, we got our. I coach baseball down here, man. I teach kids to play the game. Really cool stuff down here going on, man. Um, but uh, hey, great to have me on. Uh, thanks for having me on, man. Anytime. This is a fascinating conversation, man. Yeah, I, I mean, you want to talk about Chile? I could do it, but I know we're I got some limited time on. Man, the I, I, I've so, been trying uh, to get down to South America for a long time, Coach Jazz. Oh man, you might not come back, man. You yeah, might I, not I, go back. I, I, that's what so, I, that's uh, what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new way of hospitality down here, man. It's, it's very cool. People are cool. All right. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the last caller was really good talking about Wiseman, and I wanted to kind of second that notion, but for a different reason. You know, this was the time that the Warriors, you know, they got that, they got that, you know, they had that terrible season. They got that that pick number two. This was the time for them to stay light years ahead, in my opinion, of uh, the competition. Because they can see that their brand of basketball was going to change eventually. And now it has. And, and to me, not having a big man right now is where they thought Wiseman was going to be with them as, you know, Curry gets older, Thompson gets older, Drew, Draymond's older, everyone's older. We're all older. But the point is, is that, you know, this is why I think it was such a bad, bad pick in the way that it just wasn't his time. I hope he matures. I really do. I can see some maturity happening in Detroit for him. But, you know, at, a, at age 19, 20 years old, yeah. trying to get into that mix, yeah. you know, it was just a really hard one. So that's why I think we're seeing Wiseman as the biggest of the three, even though all three are pretty good. But, you know, you know, the drafts are crap shoots, guys. Yep. You know, they no are. doubt. No doubt. But yep. it also does seem that yep. the last and great call. We really appreciate the support. So I got to go down to Chile. Man. Damn, Coach Chaz, listen to that. Doesn't that make you feel good? We're that gonna, so that's, you know, Spinotti's always like, hey, we're international. And it's like he's taking a call from Arkansas or something. No, I got Bangkok, the first person from Thailand this morning is what wow. I got. Yeah. Wow. You know, greetings wow. from Bangkok. There you greetings go. from Bangkok. The show that was in place before us what they used to say the millions the billions and the billions interesting we get the trillions here i mean well we're I, would just, no, I don't even i don't know if we get billions thousands we're millions, international trillions, but, but what i would say to you that it, feels a lot better it billions. does feel like in the last couple of years so, things have accelerated so, so much when it comes to these draft picks and the ability to move off money like I, i've referenced this multiple times in the last couple of weeks like russell wilson would have at least played one or two more years in denver before they bid adieu to him you know, but there are so the money is astronomical for all of these teams. The patience is almost non-existent yep. for a quarterback. Right. For example, I guarantee you by November of this year, if Bryce Young still doesn't show a lot of improvement, we're going to be talking about them moving off him because they're going to have a high pick. They'll have their pick back again. And, and we'll be thinking about that. And I look at all of these. These different Halliburton was traded with one one year. He played like one year. What was it two years? Two with the years Kings? in sack. What was it? Year and a half inside. Year and a half. Okay. And like, they had a, a log jam at guard. So I, I get that. But right. They had it, to figure out, it, which is crazy because Sacramento right now needs a two guard. <laughs> They're, Kevin Horder's out for the season. I know. Malik, Malik Monk, Monk now out, out four to six weeks. And they've been playing that two guard spot. Now, they did get Demonis a bonus. It was has, a great trade for them. And, and look, they, he has teams. 57 double doubles. No, it was a great but, trade for you know, both the teams. empty calorie hoodies. You better bring them back out because. <laughs> 
Sacramento might not be in the playoffs. I'm just going to keep quiet on Sacramento until we end up playing them and hopefully winning, and then I'll do my talk. Hopefully talking. winning? No, I'm going to talk <laughs> before the game, after the game, right now. By the way, uh, Kitty Caraway, Kitty Caraway, ESPN 1320, just changed his Instagram name. I noticed that this morning. What, what did he change it to? King KC 916. King KC. <laughs> hey, King KC. We coming for that beam, homie. Bate, it's time for you to do the legal. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ, FM, and AC1, San Francisco. Don't forget, you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on and search 95.7 The Game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. So, Upgrade your savings. You know, this is Long Reese asking. Open the First it. NorCal First Class Money Market today. And you can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Also, shout out to the Xfinity Mobile Text line, the Xfinity Mobile I text line. I do love First NorCal Credit Union. Yeah, I do too. And the Xfinity Mobile text yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And better. I love downloading the Odyssey app because of the go. QR code. There you go. I love all those things. Yeah. What I don't love is how quickly sports is like, we, we, we've moved. Like, Mac Jones got, what, three years of starting with the New England? Gone. It went to the playoffs. What's, that's what I've just said. Right? So, but I'm just, you know. But, but the patient Fields, teams. The patients, no, but there are there is no, no patients. No, there's one patient team. Who? The Green Bay Packers. Yeah, but they also had a Hall but, of Fame yeah, quarterback. But they, but they were patient. They could have moved out Aaron Rodgers. All the stuff he was doing. Uh, all the shenanigans. They stayed patient with Jordan Love. It's a very unique situation. We, they, they did it twice in a row now. Different head coaches. They were patient with Aaron Rodgers. Where Brett Favre was doing whatever he was doing. Uh, they sat him. They stashed him. They said, we're going to keep this young guy. We're going to develop him behind the scenes. Stash them, stash them. Hell, even Patrick Mahomes sat for one year, played the next season yeah. when he traded Alex Smith. But even I heard people say, you should have just played Mahomes this rookie season. No, the best thing for him was to sit behind Alex and learn how to be a professional. Watch, learn how to watch film, learn how to practice, learn from Andy Reid, watch the game live. Patience helps. Patience for Brock Purdy. Hell, if Shanahan knew in trading camp, as Bill Romanowski told us, he met Mike Shanahan in trading camp, and Mike said, he told Brock Purdy, be ready. Be ready. Your time is coming. Don't know when, but be ready. But I'm, if, if if Kyle Shanahan truly believed that Brock Purdy was the best quarterback the first week of trading camp, he could have just played it right there. But patience helped. Patience helped. Patience helped. I don't know how you you strung that into Shanahan being patient. Two guys got hurt in front of him, but it was beautiful. It was a, no, he, it well, was it was a tapestry of BS. I, well, I loved how you put well, it no, together. No, 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 it wasn't BS. These are their Flowing words. Flowing water, plumbing, and drain really appreciated that tapestry uh, of I'm just saying, toilet water. These are their words, not mine. <laughs> you got the shit. You got Romanowski. You got Shanahan. Where's the article where Shanahan said, "Yeah, the first week of the training camp, I was like, I talked to Jed York, and he told me, and Jed, Jed said it." Chad said that Kyle told him after the first week in the training camp, I think our third stringer is the best quarterback on the team. Now, th there's layers to this, right, conversation. Uh, you know, I look at someone like uh, uh, Javon Kinlaw as an example. Like, we kind of knew right, right away, like, oh, he can't stay healthy. He's not that good. Even when he is out there, he could be a rotational piece. No one is saying that, oh, you got to run him out of town. He's got to leave. And he ends up signing with the Jets, and good luck for him. But, like, he's still allowed to, to stick around. But because of certain positions and certain money allocated to certain people in, in sports, you do have to make hard, difficult decisions quicker than ever. James Wiseman was one of those, and it was partially financially motivated, and it was partially to get something back that can help you for the now. I think Trey Lance's dealt was was partially money motivated, wasn't it? To move off of some of that Trey Lance Absolutely. money. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I don't know, man. I just Or, or maybe just giving Trey Lance a change of scenery. They were like, you want to be here third stringer? Trey Lance was disheveled. They had to send him home for practice. Uh, and it was like, you know what? Just trade me. I need a new situation. I can't be sitting behind Sam Darnold. <laughs> it just feels like we have pride. a lack of patience in sports. No, we do. That's that's huge. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse. The few people who have patience, they seem to thrive. Let's go to uh, Joe in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's up, Joe? Hey, guys. How are you? Good, good. How are you, man? You a Thunder fan? What you doing in OKC these days? No, no. I grew up in Fairfield. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's a it. long drive. Yeah, and I'm also in my 70s. But uh, I'm not mad at that. Anyway. You sound healthy Trey as hell. Thing, on this Trey Lance deal, that goes to show you he should be the poster child for one and done. Oh, I really believe that that kid had stayed at North Dakota for three years. I think we would have seen a much, much different outcome for the young man. Well, what really about Joe do. Burrow? I really think that Joe Burrow played one well, year for know, LSU. Two, right? I thought he played two right, years. But he, I it was didn't one. he also play at Ohio State? He was a backup. 
Yeah, but the point is that experience was very important. And I really think Trey suffered from that. Mm. And by the way, I was in Chicago, that rainstorm where he got his first start. Yep. And that interception, he just got duped. Yeah. That that safety duped him. He did. Into thinking the guy was wide open. And I said right then and there, man, that lack of experience from college really hurt. Mm. But one more thing I want to say. The Giants' biggest acquisition in the offseason was Melvin. They finally got a great manager, I think. I really do. All right. So, let, let, let's but see. anyway. Joe, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. We'll see about Melvin. Joe Burrow played the two years. The first year, he struggled. He did struggle the first year, played 13 games, but two years did matter. He got two years of experience, and he just wasn't one done. Deshaun Watson got plenty of experience. Patrick Mahomes got plenty of experience at uh, Texas Tech. Who else was the top quarterback? Like, that was the thing with Zach Wilson. He didn't have a ton of experience, and he struggled up until that last season, which was a COVID well, kind of related I mean, season. Kyler so. Murray had the one year, really. I mean, if we're being honest, like, there are other guys, and there are outliers. Like, I don't think that that's exclusive to just. No, but that's an just exception. Trailers. The rules, usually, you got to play at least two years to have some type of experience, right? And even then, it may not help you. How many times do you see a guy really light it up for one season and then come into the league and just light it up? Who was uh, Tannehill was one year, right? He played yeah, wide he was a different position, too. Yeah. He played wide receiver yeah, was, at, at Texas A&M. You know, he wasn't. And they went 6-6 six and six when he was their quarterback. Yeah, he was. I mean, it's pretty impressive, though, that he played one year no as doubt. a college quarterback and he's been in the league this long. That's well, pretty I mean, impressive. No doubt. I mean, I would also argue that he should have been not quarterbacking for quite some time. He had a run there with the Titans, though. Uh oh, this is a great question, Lubman. Wow, you're finally doing some work around here. Uh, who was hurt more by the lack of college experience? Do you think between Chase Wiseman and Trey Lance? I think Trey, easily Trey, easily Trey Lance, in my opinion. Vic- Victor had played how many years of pro ball? Victor who? When by Anna. Of pro ball in Europe, oh, what was it? What, like four, I don't years? know. I'm at, I, I'm I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't even know. I'm not a hundred percent. Like Luca played, clearly, Luka he played looks a like lot he, of pro yeah. ball out there and stuff yeah. like that. But also and in that the did NBA, help. it is a league where we do see young players. There's exceptions. LeBron, um, Zion Williamson when he's healthy. Carmelo came in right away. Was balling. Yeah, he so the it, one year you know, Syracuse. You know, he had the one year Syracuse, which was very rare. Where you see a freshman. And he was lead a team to an NCAA championship. That was crazy. That was insane. But there's exceptions to the rules. But no doubt, I think Trey Lance is definitely hurt by the lack of experience. He had one full year, which he led North Dakota State to a national championship. But Wiseman only had the three games, though. So, I mean, that's... But now Lance, he's, in that sense, still had a little bit more than right. Wiseman. Though. But now he's playing a lot more. He played. He did play a lot as a rookie with the Warriors. He got a lot of reps in Santa Cruz. Problem with Trey Lance is why I brought up the crazy. You can't practice. Yeah, you yeah, can't you practice. Can't pra- football. Yeah, you can't practice. I mean, football. you you can practice, but like game reps like, are so different. When you're when you can get hit, like practice, you can't get hit. There, it's just different. Right, it's different. I mean, Baker Mayfield talked about this. Like, oh, I thought I was a good athlete at practice, and then the NFL game started happening. And I realized, oh, I, I I can't run around like I think I can. And it was an adjustment for him. So that's why Trey Lance, that whole CFL concept, hell, why not go to the UFL play? Trey Lance needs to play. Like, he just simply flat out needs to play. At least Wiseman was able to go to Santa Cruz. And he was able to come back up and sleep in a big-ass bed, as he mentioned. Oh, it's just good to be back up. I can sleep in a big-ass bed again. Oh, I had someone. <laughs> Even he was laughing about that. We had him at the gate house. It's like, James Wiseman, it's good to, I know you got to be back and sleep in a big-ass bed. He's, come on, man. He loved it. But I ain't mad at him. And he's playing in Detroit. Trey Lance is not playing at all. <laughs> at all. So, you know. That's what it is with Trey, man. I feel bad for him, man. Because <laughs> the Fed, because like you, you're right about something. The anger towards Trey Lance is wild to me. He was fan friendly. Oh, why? He was great at the podium. We all hated. A lot of people hated Jimmy Garoppolo at the podium for being short and cliche. I have all these cliches. Jay, Trey Lance was personable, and he just gets so much vitriol. It's so crazy. People are angry. Angry. Like yesterday, Dalton Jeffries has his first start in a Giants uniform. And like, uh, you know, whatever. Like he gets shelled. Let's just call it what it is. The shortstop booted the ball in the first play of the game. I mean, Tyler Fitzgerald, make a play for crying out loud. And then uh, the Whoa. Patrick Bailey. Cost him the whole game. Well, no. Look, if you've ever been pitching on the mound and you give up two errors, your, your defense gives up two errors in the first inning, that is tough. Right, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not caping up the guy. He did get shelled after that, but like shortstop, make a play, doggy. Come on, man, like make a play. 
But like everyone's losing their minds. I'm like, guys, he just came back from two Tommy Johns. Our other pitchers aren't ready to go. Like, yeah, it sucks that we're getting shelled. This is a good Padre lineup. Can we all take a deep breath? It's game four. Well, you brought up uh, Fitzgerald at shortstop. Here's my problem. Why can't that be uh, Marco Luciano right now? Because he needs to play every day, to your point. All right. To your point, like they want him getting at bats every single day. Well, Great is example. That, is that going to happen? Luis Matos does not play if Wilmer Flores doesn't fall into the into the dugout yesterday. They were going to go Lamont Wade Jr. in in right field and Wilmer at first base, but, but because Wilmer gets hurt, Lamont moves over to first and Matos finally goes out there. But if Marco Luciano is going to be that player, Nick Ahmed's not going anywhere this year, right? Nick Nick Ahmed's making plays, and he had two. Two so, big RBIs so, so, in the wins. So there's no avenue for consistent play time for Marco Luciano? At the big league level, just right now. Let's see what happens a month from now. Nick Ahmed might play himself out of favor. All right. You got to kind of let it play out. It's a long baseball season. Like, think about it. They had Benji Molina, the Giants. I, this is the, the high end. Okay, this is the high end. They had Benji Molina, who was a fan favorite, who was still solid enough to get the Texas Rangers after being dealt to the World Series, as well as other players. And then Buster came in. It was like, all right. We got to make the switch, take a hike, yeah. Benji, and it's Buster's job. So maybe they do something like that. Or maybe it's a little more delicate and it's something where, you know, he, Luciano comes up yeah. and he's playing three out of five games. It's just Fitzgerald does not seem like he's ready. Well, he's a platoon guy. Level. Yeah, I mean, he, he just pitched yesterday, Bonte. He just, yeah, I know, but he, he seems like a 4A guy to me. Maybe I'm wrong there. I just don't see it with Fitzgerald. He, he's this year's Mark, uh, uh, was it uh, Dubon? He's going to play a lot of positions. He's center field. Right. They don't have a backup second baseman. They don't have a backup shortstop. They don't really have any like backup center fielders. Luciano may be the one exception where I'm like, you know what? You might not play today, but I just want you to pick Lee Ross. I get that. I, 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 I don't know. I get it. I don't know. I hear you. All right. What's coming up with the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank Full Service Banking. No compromises. More of your phone calls. We're talking about who fumbled their player more. Warriors and Wiseman, Niners and Lance, Giants and Bart. We'll also, uh, get back into the Warriors. They went 4-1 and one on this road trip. Jermont Green was exceptional last night. What a game for him as they beat the San Antonio Spurs. But are you back on board with the Warriors? Do you still believe they could make a deep run after that road trip? Or are you still like, you know what? They just beat Charlotte and San Antonio. Are you pessimistic about it? Uh, also, the Giants, big weekend, big series coming up against the Dodgers. Plus, I do want to touch on what we're going to see today in the NCAA Women's Tournament. LSU? Iowa? UConn, USC, Juju, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. It's going down in the women's tournament today. More coming up here on the roast. When I seen him throw that ball, I was like, oh my.
Hill and Joe Shasky. Wow, I forgot we had that. Little James. Little Drake and some headlines. Look at Juan Soto go oppo taco the ninth inning against Josh Hader. Don't those Yankee jerseys look better without well, the white? Cruz right? is yellow and he hates the font. Oh, I love them. It's old school. It's the 1960s. Wow, look at Joe Madden now doing podcast. Uh, download the free Odyssey app and listen to 95.7 game wherever you go. Catch every Warriors game live on the app and catch amazing interviews you missed on 95.7 game. Sam Gordon, new writer for the Chronicle, covered to go to State Warriors as I was tidy guru last week. He's full of energy. Full with energy. Uh, full of energy, I should say. Um, 888-957-9570. We've been having fun kicking He's this around. We've been, have, we've been having fun kicking this around. Who fumbled their player with their player the most? Warriors are Wiseman. Niners are Trey Lance. Giants are Joey Bart. They're all top three picks. Of course, Jay's Wiseman, number two overall. Trey Lance, number three overall. Joey Bart, number two overall. They're all gone, as Joey Bart was DFA yesterday. But more importantly, I guess, as we move forward here, Warriors have eight regular season games left. They're 22 and 15 on the road. Just completed a 4 and 1 road trip. And really, some Warrior fans ticked off at Steve Kerr for not, for Steph Curry sitting all those minutes against Minnesota. Hey, you're four points away from having a perfect road trip. And I think it would have looked, I think people would feel a lot differently about the road trip had they beat Minnesota. Say if the Warriors hypothetically were 4 and 1 on this road trip, but they beat Minnesota and say maybe lost to Orlando, I think a lot of people will feel better about this road trip. Right now, I feel like. Maybe Dub Nation is a little iffy on the Warriors because of the teams they played on the road trip and the form that they played with. They play like they did in the first half against San Antonio yesterday. They play like that against Dallas. They're going to get blown out. They know that. We all know that. I don't... Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think the opponents have much to do with it. I just think it's the totality of the year. Like, I, that's what I feel like. I just think, like, a lot of Warrior fans are like, ah, it's just a down year. Like, so, like, I, I don't think Minnesota is one of those teams like, oh... Even though they're, they're they're been amazing this year, like most casual fans, are like that that's a quality win, you know. Like they they know that they're a good team, but they're not some great team. Laker games, even though the Lakers aren't good in the standings, for some reason resonate with fans. There's like a brand, and you're you're shaking your head, it's but you sad. know it's true. Well, the casuals, I mean, like like a Bucks win, even though I don't think the Bucks are that great, even though the record yeah, says they I'm are. With you. Like, but like a Bucks was like, yeah, you but, beat the Bucks. But you know what though? It's the way they beat the Bucks. They beat the Bucks by thirty five points. All right, if they beat, let's just say the right. Knicks, I think that that actually crazily like has a little more resonance. But they did beat the Knicks about a Square Garden. I I know, and I feel like people were had a little more swagger. All right, I, I, I B, there's no rhyme or reason to any no no. Of this. I'm just I'm I, interested I, because Minnesota. A lot of hoop fans know that Minnesota's been ascending for the last three years. They're a really good you team. Know, when I was sitting on these other ways saying, look out for Minnesota in a few years. And OKC, okay, people are laughing. And now you look at them, and they're playing well without Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> without they, Carl Anthony Towns, you know what I'm saying? So I, I hear you. I hear you. But they did just beat Charlotte and San Antonio. And the Wolves are real. The, the Wolves are good. Wolves are really good. Um, Milwaukee, we'll see if Chris Middleton gets back. The East, I don't think it's as strong as we all think it is. We'll see about the Bucks. Beat the Mavericks, and I think people are back on board because we see what the Mavericks are doing. And I think even the casuals know who Kyrie Irving is. Well, and Luca. 2016 has not left the minds of Warrior fans when it comes to Kyrie Irving. And right now, or Luca, but they beat Luca. A lot of I people, know, a lot of people think Luca's a ball hog. I think a lot of warrior, like like I hear you for years, but it. I hear you for years saying I don't like Luca. I think he's a no. Blinder, but I also yada, yada, yada. how great he is. All right, okay, all right. It's Good like enough. with James Harden. Like I didn't like James Harden. I also acknowledge how good he is. You know what I mean? Like it. it I just but, do. But who in the playoffs do you believe in more, James Harden or Luka Doncic? We see Luca win series by himself. We see, like, like, the, like Luke A. Flaming out in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? James Harden, take it for what it's worth. I was scared to death in that Rockets Warriors series a couple years back when they had Chris Paul and Chris Paul got hurt. Like, I don't know about other Warrior fans. I was pretty worried. I was pretty worried they were going to lose that series. Maybe I'm alone in that. You're, you're always worried, though. So it's not saying I mean, beat. <laughs> if Chris Paul doesn't pop his hammy, I, they might be going home. <laughs> We all forget Iguodala popped his heavy in game four. I, no, it's not about we forgetting. I'm saying. But, but though he was just as. I a, was worried. You're always worried. You're always worried, Shasky. They missed 20. Shasky. 8,000 shots 20, in a row. Shasky, you're always worried, though. Can we at least acknowledge that? You're always worried. I, yeah. You're I worried respect about the everything. opponent. <laughs> 
Little LJ slips and falls. They're going to be worried that they can nah, broke his neck. That I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, I wrestle with him. We're, we're good. Michelle is way more like, worried about him getting. Maybe Chaz yesterday was climbing up this seven foot like little jungle gym thing. You know what I'm talking about, Spadoni. And she climbs up it all the time. So and it's a video of it. She lets go, slips down, and falls on her butt six feet. And looks up. It was like, oh, she didn't cry. She got back up and did it again. So like, you can't get worried. You can't get worried. It's pro sports. Nigga Dollar did pop his head, string a game four, they would have went up three one and ended that series in six games. Maybe it ended in five. But nobody wants to talk about that. Just like nobody wants to talk about Boca getting hurt in twenty sixteen. Or Jeremiah getting popped in twenty sixteen. Or Iggy Dollar getting popped with a back injury in twenty sixteen. We don't talk about those things. But you, but the truth. The is, question actually, was, did I fear the, James Harden? And I said yes. You, in that you, year, I, I did. Said, uh, I should ask you. Yeah, that. I mean, that was the I question. Said, you know what? I should ask you. And you went on that. this long tangent. I said, no, no, no. I said, who do you fear more, Luca or James Harden? And you were talking about how you fear James at Harden. At one point in time, point. I did fear James Harden. But but that time is coming gone. But I made a mistake. That was a terrible question because of this. <laughs> You're always worried. <laughs> You're always worried. Uh, it was just okay. That's why I love you because you're always worried. Somebody's got to be worried. I'm the cocky one. I think we could beat anybody in the world. I want, once the Warriors, if they sneak into the first round, I'm going to be sitting there. All these airways said, they could go on a run. Nobody wants worried. to play them. It's asking who would be worried. Can you play that drop again? I talked right over it. And I was worried. <laughs> you're always worried. <laughs> it's okay. You know it. <laughs> I mean, I just we act like we weren't scared to death no, of that Rockets team. We were not for scared a to moment death. in time. We we're not scared. Oh, to death. okay. On the brink of elimination, I was not scared. Uh -huh, to death. All right, I was. I was at the game with Guru and I did the pregame show. We did the pregame show. It's like Warriors are winning this game. They went up twenty two. Didn't matter. <laughs> Come on, KD Clay. I wasn't worried about the Rockets, man. I would have been stunned if they lost that series in Houston. Maybe I'm alone in that one. Maybe I'm alone there. Maybe I'm alone. But I was not petrified by the Houston Rockets and Chris Paul and James Harden and P.J. Tucker. <laughs> P.J. Tucker. And don't the forget fella. the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, Daryl Moore the banker. <laughs> I swear to God, after game one of the second round series in 2019, Rockets come in on the Saturday. Oh, that was different. By Sunday. then, we I had dismissed them. No, but you know what was funny? is I go into visiting locker room. I had to visit the locker room duties. So I'm in the visiting locker room, and Mike D'Antoni is sitting there in the bathroom with James Harden on his cell phone looking at Twitter messages about how referees miss certain fouls in that no, basketball game. Not. Remember the audit came out the next day. The audit came out the next day where they said the referees missed 81 calls against the Golden State Warriors. Pull it up, London. Swear to God. Pull up. You remember that? They came out with the audit. I do remember that. I remember laughing really loudly at it. So can we can we all acknowledge? And I actually started the show this morning. I don't ever want to hear like. And yes, there are bad calls in every game. But like, there's been this tenor about the Warriors not getting calls. It's like they're just not. This team's not as good as they were in years prior. Every team gets bad calls. It, I'm not saying it always evens out because there are times yeah. in one game or another where a possession here and there they do make a big a big deal. But like. The crying about officials this year has just been a little much for me. I mean, look, they're all time bad. I've acknowledged that earlier in the season. I, my philosophy is when it comes to sports, or my theory when it comes to sports is it should never come down to the referees. At the end of the day, you can control how that game is played. You can dictate pace. You control yes. the shots you take. Control your defensive assignments, your communication. At the end of the day, it's not going to come down to referees. Our referees going to make bad calls. But you got to watch the totality of the game. Referee, you got into my equation. My theory is mm -hmm. referees are all time bad. They're going to make back calls. You're going to get some back calls called against you. Maybe you go on the road, you get more back calls called against you. Like I'm watching, I watched Tennessee Purdue yesterday, Elite Eight. Very good game. But going into that, Tennessee's playing in Detroit. That's Big Ten country. It's a home game for Purdue. You think Tennessee got any calls yesterday? Rick Barnes is about to have him. He, he was sitting there on the sideline, veins popping out of his neck, irate over the call Zach Eady was getting. Got to happen. Zach Eady. What would you think of that performance? It was ballsy. 40 plus, but then he's out here. Look, Zach Eady could have waited. He started popping off yesterday. You know what it reminded me of? What? I'm going to say a name, and I don't know how many people are going to remember it. His performance has reminded me of Omar Samhan. Oh my God! Now that's a name. Remember I've him? Not heard in a, long time. a guy that's 
perfect for college basketball and has very little chance to succeed at the next wow. level. He but, balled out on that Sweet 16 Do run, you remember though. that? He was, Oh, he was insane on that run. He was yeah, unbelievable. He was very fun to watch. But didn't that remind you of it? Not if Omar Sanhan. Sanhan. Do I, I, you I get mean, where I'm going? I get where you go where a college player balls out and then once he gets to the pros, he's not going to do anything. It's Adam Morrison, right? Well, Adam Morrison Jimmer Fredette. was actually Jimmer a top Fredette. five pick. I sort of said, Zach Eady, I don't know where he's going to go in the draft. Look, but he he started talking after the game, and maybe I should. But you I'll, usually you know love what? when players talk. No, no, but you know he started popping off after when because last year Purdue was a number one seed. They lost to a sixteen, so he came back and after he had two interviews, one on the court, <laughs> and he's like, you know, I'm a bleeping winner. But he starts talking like he was an underdog. It's like he went to IG Academy. <laughs> it's one of the best high school programs in the country. Everybody knew who you were before you went to Purdue. Everybody knew. And then after the game, he's talking about, you know, all these teams passed me up, even Tennessee and Rick Barnes. So now you're popping off. You haven't got to the final. Does. But you haven't got to the final four yet, dude. You saved that for the championship. Because now if you lose in the final four, whether it's the DJ Burns Jr. or North Carolina State, who's a flavor of the week, or if you lose a national championship to either UConn or Alabama, guess what people are going to say? Huh? Look at Zach Eadie. He's popping off after the Elite Eight. Popping off. I let him have his moment. I mean, I, I just don't think that he's going to have a long basketball moment. I just let him have his well, moment. Well, I don't think he's going to be like a Jokic or anything no. like that, a true number one, but he could be like a Zubots, a guy like that. Can he not? Uh, Look, like, Zubots isn't huge, like big out athletic. I mean, he's well, big, but he's not like super, like his his game's not predicated on like super high athleticism. I, I just don't know. Center. Like, I want to see the, it's always difficult to, does the speed of a post player right. translate to the next level? Like yeah, we underrate, know. we just underrate how ridiculously athletic some of these guys are in the league. Totally. I'm just saying he's, I don't think he's needs to be a ridiculously athletic is try, what I'm like trying Kelly to Like Kelly Olnick, I, again, this is going to sound Smaller, ridiculous. Smaller, but yeah. Kelly Olnick is, compared to normal human beings, significantly more athletic than you give him credit for. On an NBA court, you're like, ah, oh, he doesn't pop off. If he went to your local Y, he'd be one of the greatest players you've ever oh, seen. Oh yeah, it was like the, the Brian Scalabrini yes, thing from a few years ago. Exactly. punked all those kids at the gym because Brian Scalabrini is better than 99.9% of everyone exactly. else. Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, Zach Eady, he said he's been doubted his whole life. I, I'm he attended skeptical. ING Academy, got offers from Purdue and Baylor. Those are two big boy well, programs. Baylor's always been a big program. <laughs> well, it's always not lately. always. But lately. Lately. Yeah, 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 lately. Like, National player of the year last year. Nobody's doubting you, dog. <laughs> you were number one seed the last two years. You guys lost to a 16 seed. Now, Dalton Connect, that was the first time I watched him play. I know Stein oh, has been talking Stein's about him. boy text me like boy. once a week. Stein's been him. down on him as of late, but I yeah. think he might be back on him. Look. He could be a solid pro. I don't know about an all star, but he's got some game. I was in Brent, like, that was the first time I watched him. First time I watched him yesterday. Took a lot of shots, but he was the only one creating it. They had no low post presence whatsoever in Tennessee. Their point guard was struggling. I think his name was Ziegler. Hey, connect, not bad. He's not bad. I think he'll be a solid pro. Nice little rotational piece for many, many years to come. He can rise up on that three point shot. He'll play with better athletes, which would create more. Uh, or I guess to say better shots for him. He wasn't bad. I'm trying to find his Zach Eady self because he was really popping off after the game. Really popping off. Yeah, I'm surprised it bugs you. You usually like a little bravado. No, I do like some. But, but dude, like you're the national player of the year. You just got to the fight. You got to the Elite Eight. You had a home game in Detroit. Basically a home game. Oh no! It's just like, he's like, yo, we're effing winners. This is what we do. Can we, can we, uh, we're all diehard sports fans. Weakest tournament in our lifetime. Oh, mid tournament is pretty bad. I oh, mean, like bad. it's it's been pretty poor. Like North Carolina State's a really cool story, and like I feel like no one really cares. Like Duke getting bounced is not great for television, right? No, and this it was a terrible be. Duke team, but they got school. They they're trying to turn UConn into like the Duke now. Like when I hear people, they're trying to make Danny Hurley like the villain and stuff. Like I was like, I don't really hate them. Like, no, I, don't, I just I. Well, eh. I mean, they played Illinois, and Illinois wasn't getting any calls in the first half because that game was in Boston. I feel like I know more in, in the Caitlin Clark versus uh, LSU game today. I feel like I know more players on both Iowa and LSU than I do yeah. in the men's college game. Oh, I game. do. I do, too. I think everybody does. The name it's recognition. It's kind of crazy, the isn't it? Juju Watkins at USC is... Oh, huh. How about her having to take the, the nose ring out? What was that whole thing? That was ridiculous. She's worn it all year, and now they're going to make a big deal out of it? Yeah, whatever. I, uh, you know, Some it, of these officiatings at the college well, level is fishy. The three-point Line oh, Portland. they weren't even equal. It wasn't. <laughs> what the heck? How does that happen? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Check your phone for Zach Eady. We'll get to that in just a second. 888-957-9570. Draymond Green, the star of the show yesterday. There's no doubt about that. Eight of nine from the floor, 21 points, 11 assists, six rebounds, season high, six steals. 
First time he's had 20 and 10 since January 8th of 2018 when he did that against the Denver Nuggets. I thought he flipped the game in the third quarter. Warriors are down eight at the half. They're down eight. No rhythm whatsoever. They were down. Well, they were minus 10 on fast break points, I believe, in the first half. I mean, they were losing all the winning categories. All they, the winning they categories. They looked like they didn't care. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I'm just calling it what it is. Like, they look like they were going through the motions for a team that understands every game is a must win. Yeah. The Rockets are on your heels. It's just it was a it was a frustrating watch. Uh, minus twelve in the first half points in the paint, minus ten fast break points in the first half. Uh, you look at the turnovers; they committed ten turnovers. Uh, gave up eight points off those turnovers, but San Antonio turns it over as well. They gave up fourteen points, so you won that category there. But they were out rebounded by eight. San Antonio had more assists than the Golden State Warriors at the half. They had no free throw attempts at the half, and then the third quarter happened where the Warriors outscored the Spurs thirty-seven to twenty-one. It was the only quarter the Warriors outscored the Spurs in. Spurs outscored them in the first, second, and fourth quarter. But the difference was that third quarter. It was a pivotal point. It was a turning point. And Draymond Green was on top of it. He had his fingerprints all over that frame. 11 points, 3 assists, 4-4. Four, four. I thought his deflections, his activity, pushing the pace, which was the most important thing to me. He was getting up and down. The Warriors were getting up and down mm -hmm. in that third quarter. They really just punched that, uh, San Antonio in the mouth there. That was the game. That was the game. But well, boy, is that enough to make you feel like the Warriors are back? Four one road trip. They are. That's a good thing, though. They are playing well away from home. That's a positive sign. They are. I just don't know what's going on at home, um, and so they're going to obviously have to shore that up. It, it just be right now. I, I I think I just want to see them play a consistent, good brand of basketball as best they can. Get as many wins as they possibly can, and put themselves in a position where they don't have to face the Lakers. And, and hopefully some some stuff works out for them. Like, that's really the only team I don't want to see. And, Lakers? And, yeah, I just don't want to see them. You don't want to play your... Uh, no. The Lakers! No. You don't want to no. play LeBron? I mean, right now, if you're asking me, and I, I'm telling you, I want Suns, I want the Kings, I don't want the Lakers. Not that the not that the Warriors have any choice in the matter, because they'll be lucky to get the 10 seed at this point, if they can just hang on. But if you're well, asking... The Warriors would be lucky to get the 10 seed? Yeah. Why would they be lucky? Rockets are three games behind them. Well, uh, two games are lost, got them in the tiebreaker. They got a nice what are they, 10 and 1, 9 and 1. What is their record over they, the last they 11? 11? They won 11 straight. They got, they got humbled yesterday. Okay. Okay. So they're they 11 out of 12. They got, I mean, they got, they got humbled they're on yesterday. Fire. They and got it feels humbled like yesterday. We're getting Jalen, a, a whole different version of him <laughs> that we've never seen. <laughs> They play Minnesota tomorrow in Minnesota. I mean, who knows? Maybe Minnie lays down. Who knows? Minnie's, Minnie's trying to get. They're trying to get the number one seed. Hey, B, I don't. They I need can't home court advantage. Lineups. They need home court advantage, right? Then they play the Warriors Thursday. Then they play the Heat Friday. Then they go to Dallas again on Sunday. Then they play Orlando at home. So they're, you're dismissing the Rockets. I, I I mean, come on, man. You think the Warriors really going to fade out of the tip spot? You think the Rockets really going to catch up? After everything I've seen the last couple of years, anything's on the table. Oh, my gosh. This is a team that could beat anyone and lose to anyone at any moment. If they, the Warriors, that is, fall out of 10 and go to 11. Hey, it, well, I will I will do something for this show. I, I, will do, I don't know what it <laughs> what is. I don't know what it is. Here, I, I'll, I'll get you in a suite at Bay SC. How about that? Uh -huh. You go watch a women's soccer game. You want to go do that? Yes, Monte, go support I would love Bay to do SC. that. Go support I mean, women's I, I, I thought it would be something a little more, you know. Juicy? Well, I, what is Bay SC? Now you're making it out like I, like I don't want to go to a women's no, soccer no, game. No, 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 I mean, no, no, no. I mean, you're putting me in a poor position No, no, here. no, no, I'm not doing that at all. I mean. Not doing that at all. I'm saying it's sweet. The sweet life in Bay SC is hell of a, what? Sweet, dog. We're talking sweet. Can't do that at a Warriors game. Oh, here, how about this? I'll do this. The Warriors fall out of 10. I don't even know where I'll get you're going. You, you're just talking. I'll get you, Lumpman, and Stephen Langford. Nice guy, Stephen, because I know Spinotti don't give a damn about the Giants. And I don't blame him for that. I'll get you, nice guy, Stephen, and Lumpman, some great seats at Oracle Park for a Giants I don't game. need that from you. I can get that on my no, own. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, so I'm trying to do so. Well, do, what do you want? Mr. Two Houses, what do you want? <laughs> Since you can do that on your own, I try to I try to tell you. I mean, I'm just basically unnecessary saying, pops. I'm basically saying. I'm basically saying. And no, I'm not getting you a Chai's pre post or Warriors pre post. <laughs> no, you know what I'll do? If the Warriors fall out of the ten spot, I'll get you our Warriors post game, the last show of the season. How about that? They fall out of ten. You make your debut on Warriors. It'll be post a picture game. of me from my own Instagram account where he's making fun of me as they're fading to commercial. I'll make that happen. A full segment, a full right now. Book it.
a full segment for Joe Shasky on Warriors Post Game Live if the Warriors don't hold on to the 10 spot. I think Shasky's now secretly rooting for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they win, I lose. They lose, I win. I mean, what There's would you pick? ball. Even when you lose, I win. <laughs> Look, man, I want this team to go on a run. Like, Somebody said, let Shasky interview Trey Pop post game. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going there. But you talking to me? I, I would say this. Like, <laughs> I want this team desperately to just get into the first round. If you told me, like, that if you could bake it in right now, I, say, Joe, if you if they could, they'll just get to the first round. I know for a lot of people it would be a failure of a season just getting to the first round. For me, given the whole up and down of this year, I take it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, just give me a swinger's chance against somebody. Even the Lakers. I was listening to an argument how the Lakers want the Denver Nuggets early because Denver will have taken their foot off the throttle, oh and then God. the Lakers would have oh to God. just play a seven-game series <laughs> that front end. And I was listening to this whole argument. I was like, the same applies to the Warriors. Oh my God. They're the most dangerous in that first round. What, 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 and then every subsequent round after, they become infinitely where, less where dangerous. Where did you hear this at? Where did you hear? I this was from? like Chris Mannix or somebody like that. Oh gosh, Chris Mannix, basketball. Dave takes. McMenamin, somebody who's oh, you know part of Clutch secretly. Oh, oh my god! Sudoni so loved that. He got so excited as I was talking about how they they want Denver no, early, not Spadoni late. I think both that. the Lakers and the the Warriors would want Denver. Exactly. What you, would you rather face the defending champs? In round one or the yes, Western Conference round Western one. Conference Finals? No, because would. You, they would. No, they're, they're younger. Much I would. No, because they're they're be much, uh, nope, because you nope. have three, two and three days off in between games in round one. By the time you get to the Western Conference Finals, it's every other day. That's fine. Your for old me. legs. I don't know. Jamal Murray's banged up right now. And the altitude in Denver. Exactly. Uh, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray's banged up right now. I'm gonna catch them early, and I want them catch off of like a four or five day layoff. That first quarter, nah. game one, they're gonna be a little off. No, exactly. You just said it, Bonte. You want to catch them early? Yeah, no, right no, now. I want to catch them later. I want Jamal well, Murray. Jamal Murray might have, be healthier as the, no, it goes he, on. Maybe they blow out these people tenor. in round one. Maybe he may not be available for the West Finals. Might get hurt. Might get hurt. But that's a deal, right? Do you want the Warriors fall out of ten? All right, we would do a segment with Joe Shasko, Warriors post game live. I, 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 I don't know if I had the juice to do that, but I just put it out there, and I'm sure the execs at NBC are the highest rated segment doing. you'll ever have. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Molly sure. knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Ain't boy. that right, Mole? <laughs> the, the minute, the second Shasky Festus cuts off like, Molly. Joey Joe! <laughs> the minute, the second Shasky cuts off Molly. Try to break down some basketball would be hilarious. Nah, bro. It, the segment will literally, if you were to just close your eyes and think about it, it would be like the Dwayne Wade. To LeBron James, where he just throws it up in the air and takes the picture. It's one of the greatest photos in sports history. Now, you know what this there's outside a risk. of Shohei now, Otani Betts. You, you know there's a risk that I may bring up Kyle Corver and Max Struess and then Bully will have your head. Oh, then I'll just laugh. Oh. I'll pull a Bonte. Really? <laughs> Veggie Delight on YouTube is saying, Shasky will talk Giants on Dubs post game. Molly, you wait till you see Blake Snell pitch next week. Uh, Giants Dodgers, does that do anything for you tonight? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I, You know what? Tonight's a tough night. Why? It's a two TV night. And I'm not sure where the Giants are going to be. I know it's Giants Dodgers first time in 2024. Mm-hmm. Paige Beckers, UConn, Juju Watkins, mm, USC. Mm. They may be on a big screen, homie. <laughs> Kayla Clark, Angel Reese, that's the early game. That's going to be busty TV. I don't know. I don't know. But I it, I mean, I want to see Logan Webb tomorrow. Today is Keaton Wynn. I feel bad for him <laughs> going Why? to Dodger Stadium. Why? Because <laughs> he's got to go see Mookie Betts. And he's got to go see Shohei. Maybe Mookie gets a day off. What if they give Mookie the day off? This is a winnable game. Paxton, he's okay. This is a winnable game. It is a winnable All game. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. I'm not mad at it. Uh, no, especially when you know you got Logan tomorrow. No, we keep talking about litmus tests, right? Uh-huh. Well, I'm eager to see what this litmus test does for the Giants. How far away? What if they go into Dodger Stadium just sweep them? Oh, that would be awesome. Well, because Tyler Glass now is probably going to start on Tuesday. That would be, I mean... You want to talk about just <clears throat> bow, shot right across the bow. That would be the one. And I believe Bo Miller in the third game. So you'd have Kyle Harrison going up there. 
I, I Bobby, would love that. I like Bobby Miller, though. He's, do you? Do you? He's solid. He's good. You like him? You, know, you like him, too, don't you? Well, I mean, the Dodgers are, you know, they're like an all-star team. Right. <laughs> Is he really got by Bo Miller? You call him that? Well, I, that's what I thought. I thought he went by Bo. Oh, I just call him Bobby, Bobby. Miller. Oh. Yeah. Well, I've heard him. I, I was listening to the Dodger. Was it Hairston? I mean, when you got Bo Miller, oh, he's you got Clay Oh, yeah that's, yeah, that's what you mean. He's on the team. Like Molly. Wee, wee, wee. He's wee, 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 wee. <laughs> wee, wee. It's a pot. Wee, 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 wee. Like, like my boy Kyle Draper, man, up there in Sacramento. Friday night, they lost to the Mavericks. The pregame show, <laughs> Kyle Draper literally wore a De'Ara Fox jersey with a headband on. <laughs> <laughs> for the entirety of the pregame show. And I love Draper. Every game the Kings lose, somehow, some way. And you know, I got to just say this, Mo. Or I got to say this, baby. The fans deserve better. <laughs> he said that like 30 times in Super Saiyan Little Man. <laughs> the fans just deserve better. <laughs> Draper. He's up there sweating right now, baby. They sweating up in Sacramento. I'll tell you that much. I don't like injuries. Malik Monk is great. I like Malik Monk. I love him on my team any day of the week. I don't go to say Warriors, but boy, they sweating up there. And he feels like every time they need him against the Warriors, he comes through. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that it, and no Kevin Herter. That's those are big losses. I'm telling you, man. This Suns, Lakers, Kings. I think it could switch around. I think you're yeah. going to see the Lakers jump up a little. I think the Suns might stay up, stay in pat. Maybe the Kings fall all the way down. All right. Something's up. Let me ask you this now, Tim. Do later. I want Kevin Durant or LeBron James in a one on uh, like a one off game? Give me KD. Damn. <laughs> disrespect. No, it's not disrespect. <laughs> I mean, you got the Booker Clay. You get Steph versus Durant. You get well, you're getting Draymond Wiggins. versus... You're getting Wiggins Booker. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I hear you. Clay and, and Book, you know, they got on each other's skin. No, I mean, yeah, but they're cool, though. Clay apologized, and Book said, look, uh, I looked up to Clay Thompson. On, on court. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nurkic... Dray That's what I'm saying. So you want the drama? That's what I'm saying. There's trouble with the Lakers Warriors, right? Yeah. Not with Draymond. Yeah. Draymond's so too tight with them. Are you more worried about playing the Lakers or more worried about losing out the tip spot to the Rockets? Or is it both? No, it's Lakers. The Rockets are there in the rearview mirror, but not not necessarily. Having that extra game because of the tiebreaker means, means a lot. I don't know why. I Plus, they play against each other. I don't know why I put that in the stratosphere. Warriors, head or your business. I don't know if we can ask Shasky up post <laughs> Do you fear the Suns more than the Lakers? Uh, yeah. I, nah, I mean, I do fear the Lakers a little more than the Suns. It's just some stylistic. That's what I'm saying. Stylistically, the Lakers yeah. match up better than against the Warriors. Um, AD, AD's a difference maker. When he got poked in the eye, they were dominating points in the paint. It was 14-4. I was like, damn, you can't get anything inside. You're getting any shot that they want, the L.A. Lakers. Just a, it's a tough matchup for the Warriors. They're bigger at every s spot. D'Angelo Russell plays well against his former team. You know what the league wants? The league wants Lakers, Suns in that first playing yep. game. And, then and they Suns, want Warriors. Kings, Warriors in the second yep. one. And they want the Warriors to win so that they go up against either LeBron or Kevin Durant in that other one. I can see that. I can see that. Well, they, they want both of them in the playoffs. That's, yeah, that's what they really sure. want. Absolutely. Yeah, they would love all three of the playoffs. They do KD. not want a Lakers-Warriors 9-10 matchup because you're losing one of those fan bases, and that would hurt. They get they get Rockets and Kings oh. entering into the playoffs. Oh, my gosh. And KD, LeBron, and Steph are out. Dylan Brooks would get the last laugh. He got cooked yesterday, by the way. He didn't score. Rockets fans are already over Dylan Brooks. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. All right, Zach Eady. Listen to this guy after the game. <laughs> you just don't like this guy. No, I no, no, don't say that. Don't do that. I like Zach Eady. I like Zach Eady. I like Listen Zach Eady. Listen to him. Zach, an unbelievable performance by this team, but by you specifically. What was your mentality in this game? They thought they knew us, man. They thought they knew we had in our hearts. I promise you they did. We're fing winners. That's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do. So that's Evan Wasburn, CBS Sports. Then later on after the game. He went to the podium, but here's Zach Eady again. I get to I get to pay him back. Like there was there were so many coaches that that looked over me. Um, like you could name a program, I can name a coach that looked over me. The Tennessee Greg Barnes is a great coach, but he he was in a bunch of our practice, looked over me. Like it's kind of been the story of my life. People have doubted me. People look past me and can't do that anymore. Why are we mad at that? Not mad at it, but I think I kept a record of, that, of who that, passed him that, up. That that. that. It could probably save that because if you lose a fight of four, 
This is going to come back on you. Well, he beat the guy who the, was looking at him. You've got to win. Overlooked him. All these, overlooked apparently, all these teams overlooked him. Did UConn overlook you? You sure you want to see UConn, Zach Eady? You sure you want those problems? Well, why Why is the chip on the shoulder for him? Why does that bug you? Does it, it's just like, you're the national player of the year. Uh, okay, I get that. You know, you with the IMG Academy. You were on people's radar. I get where you were ranked in the rankings, high school-wise, but Baylor did look at you. You know, I'm sure Baylor wasn't the only program looking at you. I'm not mad as heck. He's a good story, man. He seems like a good kid. And he did what he had to do yesterday. He hit his free throws. He had a soft touch around the basket. He is ref, but the officiating, man, when it comes to Zach Eady, I don't know, man. I, I'll be your, DJ Burns versus Zach Eady. Is that fun? It, DJ Burns is fun. For he's college, fun he is fun. He is fun, right? No. Little baby Zach Randolph? I mean, I was going to say big baby Davis on roids, oh, but, boy. you know, I mean, that's fine. Little Zach Randolph, little, I like that. Little Zach Randolph? He's fun. I, I, I enjoy it. All right. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. No, no, nothing's more fun than watching like a hefty athlete go out there and, right. and excel, it's, right? And there's just something dude. about it. I, it's not fat shaming. To me, it's just I, I get a lot of joy out of that. He's getting some NFL buzz reportedly too. Really? Yeah, people are like looking into him and uh, hit him up. Uh, some NFL people. Yeah. Oh yeah, they want to move him to left tackle. Yep. Oh, I. He's I mean, big Tom and Tom shifty. Was yeah. like, Tom Pelissero was like, "How did we not get this guy ready for? Uh, how did we not get him in the pros? How does he not play football?" That's a good question. But you know what else he did too? He signed a deal with. Uh, he signed four deals. He's got one. Gosh, who are the deals? Uh, I'll look it up as we get to Fast Five. Oh, beep, 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 beep. he's got Adidas, Raising Canes, and TurboTax. How about that? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Raising Canes is. You like Raising Canes? I don't think I've ever had it. You've never had it. Anybody have Raising Canes around here? Yeah, they're good. Where is the nearest they're one? Chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. I think there's one in Oakland. Is there? Okay, yeah. Yeah, they just opened one up Popeyes in Oakland not too long ago. For me yeah, and, you no, know, little that, Chick Fil A. It's the sauce. Yeah, you get like sauce, a cup okay. of that sauce. It's a sauce. Mm -hmm. As the I'm sauce starving right now. My final thoughts are, you know. I don't know who he needs to play in front of. I, I don't know whose minutes are going to get restricted. But because of John the Kaminga's absence, I've really enjoyed watching Moses Moody play the last couple of games and excel and take the most of his opportunities. I think in general, yeah. he's done a good job. Me wanting more of Moses Moody on the floor when he plays. Problem is, is like given the pecking order of this team, I just don't know who it comes at the expense of. I think it's easy to be like, play Moses Moody! Play Moses Moody! Then who's hits? Who sits? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, love it. What's your, what's your final thoughts? Go ahead. Give give us a Giants final thought. Um, actually, yeah, I got a little bit of a, a slight career update. I'm going to share today. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Don't worry. Uh, just adding on a little side gig. I joined this app called Pro Sports Focus. Basically, it's this. Uh, what you do is you you kind of stream and kind of provide commentary on games as you're watching them. People can kind of join in and, and comment, watch, watch with us. Uh, it's a very uh, Manning cast vibe is what the app goes for. Uh, goes for. So I'm going to tweet this all out so you guys can follow along. But tonight, 7 o'clock, me and my guy Steven Ruderman uh, will be commenting on tonight's Giants-Dodgers game, and I'll be doing that uh, throughout the year to try and uh, get a couple extra bucks. So, uh, yeah, tune on what, in. What was the guy in Bad News Bears? Rudebaker? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I thought, you, I thought you were retiring on us right there on the spot. Oh, yeah. I, that would, yeah, imagine dropping it that way. I really did. They're like, hey, guys, I love you. Were this you is my last day. I'm walking out of here. Yep. Peace. Sassy was about to be hey, really Sassy would have caught me at 10 20. Oh, I'm so relieved. Love <laughs> that God. is so unfair. You guys would be in shambles without me. <laughs> that is so unfair. I mean, who would it's I the, get to co host Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys? <laughs> this is the roast for a reason. Spinoni, what you got? <laughs> I wonder what the next big rivalry in the NBA is going to be. I wonder. I wonder what it's going to be. I was, I was touching about that on the uh, pregame show, 5 huh. to 6, Monday through Friday. Teams or players? Both. Mm. I don't think there's a really big rivalry between players right now because we, we're seeing the fade out of Steph, LeBron, and KD. I, I feel like they carried the last decade. Who's taking over there? And what teams? Like the Celtics? Ant Edwards versus uh, SGA? Yeah. And Edwards against Luka? I don't know. I'm just I'm throwing it. versus Luka? One of these teams, okay. these young teams, either Thunder yeah. or the uh, right. Timberwolves have to go on a run. Chet for that versus Victor. Could it be Carl Anthony Towns versus Jokic? Maybe, Maybe. not. Maybe. <sighs> Chet, Chet versus Wemby? Or, yeah, Wemby I was the guy thinking of. Paulo Bancaro versus Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown? 
Very uh, interested in these playoffs to see what of these yeah. young teams are really going to start pushing through here because one of them, one of them is going to happen with. No, nah, I'm I, that's that's a good call, Spadoni. We were doing that on pregame live a few weeks ago. What's the next rivalry in the NBA? Because you start got to start looking forward. Uh, final thoughts is women's tournaments on fire. Be locked into that Giants Dodgers as well. I'm happy with the Giants getting a split in San Diego. Let's see it. But I'm also where are the Warriors at over the last eight games? How is this going to play out? Can they play their best ball over the last eight games? Because they haven't clicked as one yet. One guy gets hot, one guy slumps. One guy gets hot, one guy slumps. Can they start to put it all together as a team over the next eight games? Let's see it happen tomorrow night against the Dallas Mavericks. That's it for us. Dallas Fast Five brought to you by Xfinity. At home or on the go, you get the fastest internet to all of your devices. Steiny Guru up next. Have a good Monday, everybody. I do fear the Lakers. Business. It's all the things that keep this world turning. And behind.
right now. I'm, I'm mentally invested. Don't tell me to pray and you don't say what for. He brings the perspective. Yeah, I, I think they both have a great point. Get off me, text line. Uh, he's truly one of a kind. That is wild. Oh, my God. Oh. And he's doing a great job. I okay. need you to man up and say what you really want to say. Simon, you're doing a great job. And together, they are Steiny and Guru. Yeah. On 95.7 The Game. Tell you what, I don't... I don't even want to start off the show today. I want Guru to start off the show. I really do. I just want to give you the floor because I want you to set the tone. What for this for the show today? I every time I think I know you, I get a good read on Evan. That's my little bro, bro, little bro, bro. But uh, you just shock me because you're in a good mood. You've been like you're like Wiggins from three the last twenty seven days. You're over forty five percent. But Stani, Not yesterday. The war. I mean, I, I'm worried about Jonathan Kaminga. Yeah. I feel like I'm the only one. I am not ignoring what we saw Friday night in Charlotte. Uh, what we saw Why in Orlando. We? It was a win. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I tweeted. You would know. I tweeted last night. It's not what it looks like. Um, doesn't matter. You were down to San Antonio by eight at half, and they're missing all their wings. It was like three wing players, but you got the dub. But for me, team. If you look at the team component of it, they're still sitting in that damn 10th spot. And, Stani, I believe we'll find out if anything has changed uh, come tomorrow when Luka and Kyrie and the Mavs come in because they owe them. But I'll just, I'm not a doctor. Jonathan Kaminga, to me, has taken steps, leaps and bounds. And I feel like I'm the only one concerned about the bilateral knee tendonitis in both knees. And the most positive person I know in the Bay is Dr. Pangia. And I got his assessment on Twitter yesterday, Stani, like it's just something to watch. But a 21-year-old with tendonitis and two knees to miss three games, and they want them, but you're going to need them. That's my biggest concern today. And that was a big win. Draymond was fantastic. It's the Draymond Green experience. Uh, two big offensive rebounds yesterday. Made the free throw to put it up four. So I guess I'm feeling good, but no different, but more worried about Kaminga. So let me give you some facts. Okay. The Warriors right now are a season high, six games over. I don't 500. care about that. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You okay. gave me the floor. So you don't care. It doesn't matter at You're all. You're the 10th seed. Okay. okay. So, so it doesn't matter that they just played a five-game road trip. They lost a heartbreaker at Minnesota a week ago. A lot of people said they should have won that game. They they had a shot at it. That was a good team. Then they come back and they beat Miami, Orlando, Charlotte, San Antonio to go 4-1 and on the trip. Like, if, if you can't be excited about that, Why, I, I don't, uh, I don't well, know. I'm asking okay, you. Yeah. So then, so then, What's to no. be excited about? Okay, fine. Miami had no. nobody. That's, okay. Tomorrow, like, so, give me so the record. This is why I teams. wanted you to okay. set the tone. No, I, but you, you okay. tricked me because now it feels like I'm being negative. Well, you are. I'm not. Okay. I know. You're the 10th seed, Steiny. Okay. And you beat some, some downtrodden teams. You were down eight against San Antonio. I'm supposed to come in and throw confetti? I, I, I Like, I don't understand. And, and I get well, what, what you're saying. I guess what hey, you you're a season high over. I get that. But what does it mean well, you're clearly, in, the, in the wash? Well, you're, t you're still 10th, and your your young phenom is hasn't played in three games, and we don't know if he's going to be out there tomorrow. All right. Like, are you really telling me that was a great win yesterday? I'm saying they went 4-1 and one on the road. Yeah, they did. Okay, I'm saying now they put two games between themselves and the Houston Rockets, and they're like – the state there are things outside of this there are things that they can't control right now and that is what happens above them in the standings so because you still put 10. yourself in that situation right. so i'm not going to i can't hold it against them for stuff that happened in november Does it and december sound like i am yes hmm. yeah no but, they, but, they need but, to win but listen what about the kaminga part of it that doesn't concern me at all he's 21 he's been playing more than he's ever played in his entire life i'm sure he's got some soreness I'm not concerned about right. it. But I guess what I'm saying is, is like the only, this is the kind of the, uh, I guess the incongruity that I don't, I don't understand. It's like it, the only way you can be not, 
I don't know. They just they just won four or five on the road. So clearly, if that's not enough for anybody, or if that's not, huh, okay, let's see. We rallied from the Draymond thing. Okay, so then like it almost feels like you're still under the belief that you're kind of viewing this team as a team that can make a deep, deep run. So we're still like using that criteria. Because if we're not using that criteria, why wouldn't you be a little optimistic about Pajemski and, and Trace Jackson Davis, who were good on the trip. Steph shot the ball pretty well the last two games. He'd been in a slump. Clay was terrible yesterday, but he makes the big shot. I mean, yeah. there's a lot like to, I don't know, feel pretty good about. They won four or five on the road. I don't know. Is it that Warrior fans, 888-957-9570. What, is it the nature of the season that you just... That doesn't do anything for you right now. It's I, the quality just of teams they play. They okay, should well, if you want to do teams. that, Miami and Orlando are playoff teams. They're 40-win teams right now. They're both eight games right. over. One's like four, one, one's five. I mean, they beat two playoff teams. And if you want, like, I, I'll... i San Antonio won three in a row coming into that game. Now, they, they rested everybody, yeah. so obviously that's something. But... Um, I don't know. I, I was just, I came in today. I'm like, oh, there's six games over 500. We came in here last week after the Draymond thing and thought, man, something has, you know, they're they're in trouble. Well, but, I never took that as they're going to lose to Charlotte or they're going to lose to, you know, even with the Draymond thing going on, Stani, because they, they've dealt with it before. But, you know, I'm just, again, I'm not being negative. I'm like, show me. Uh, against good teams, what you're going to do. And why I brought up the Kaminga thing is how can you be excited if, and I get, again, you said it's Well, nothing, you worry about this more nothing. than anybody on planet Earth. I mean, three just games, did. three crucial games, even though they got him without him. Like, Stani, that, like, what if he comes back for two games and then next okay. week the season's over and they're in LA for the playing game and Kaminga's not, Kaminga's not available? Well, the worst part would be Kaminga not getting that kind of experience. But I mean, Town A on the YouTube chat telling me, Guru, just be happy they won. I am. No, but you're I, not, I can't. You're not. You're I, can't not like, I don't feel like they're going to beat the Lakers or whoever they play in the plan because of what I've seen the last three games. And the rat on the table is you said it, San Antonio rested everybody, and your ass is down eight at halftime with a full, well, not a full squad without Jonathan Kaminga. And you got the dub. Let's go. <laughs> That's why I wanted Goo to set the tone because I think he is. He's like tomorrow is it for me? Like Dallas and you all well, play him twice this week. Well, but yeah, and you got the Rockets. I think the Rock Rockets they emptied the tanks. Tiny great run eleven, but they're essentially three ahead of the Rockets because they got the tiebreaker. So the Warriors would really have to falter these last eight, right? So tenth, maybe you get ninth if Sack falters and the Lakers catch Sack. I just don't see the Warriors. <laughs> I don't see the Warriors catching sack, but maybe that's we'll see. Warriors are a uh, season high six over five hundred, and they've won six and nine. Ninth is still on the table, and it feels like there's absolutely no enthusiasm for this team. Like that's kind of what I what I was coming in right. thinking. So you today. have that enthusiasm that you feel like you don't or not here. I mean, from a practical I'm asking. from a practical standpoint, from where they were after Draymond got ejected, I'd probably be feeling pretty good right now. I mean, if it's solely the standings, then I get it because well, you're well, still in like tenth. Well, but right. but the reality is, you could be in eleventh right now if. You don't get a game or two on that trip. So, but uh, you know, the other thing is the Kaminga thing. Man, I, I hope. Yeah, I got they're you. Three and oh, look, yeah. and say what you want. But, they're three and zero oh without him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but you're gonna need him against Dallas. You might let him be missing. You might, but the reality of the situation is this, and you know, I don't really want to get into. I'm not going to get into it if if people interpret it wrong. Because I'm not saying the Warriors are better without Kaminga. Right, right. That, cause that's but, not the true. Bot, but the bottom line is, when Kaminga isn't in the lineup, then who do they have? They have Steph. They have Clay. They got Draymond. They got Wiggins. Looney plays. Like, they have... They can just go back to the way they've always played with their five, like, championship players. And even if those championship players aren't as good as they were two years ago... 
they've got a way to play where even though he's not in the lineup, it doesn't really impact him because they've played five years with the same lineup they had when he doesn't play. All right, my theory, and then you throw yeah. Chris Paul in there, and he knows what he's doing. So the, the, like, there are some things that happen when Kaminga is out of the lineup that aren't all detrimental. Yeah. I, I would just say to that, Snotty, I think you're being unfair to Jonathan Kaminga and his impact because you can do what they did, and they got the dubs. That's the most important against again, dump again, truck teams. That, that's right. And Orlando is the worst offensive team in the league. Okay, so and that was the Draymond game. And I feel like the Draymond game, I feel like the rest of the gang, including Dre, Donnie, they, they're they they're at attention. Like they, they're not going south. They they got something to prove with or without Dre. So that's what got them through these three games. But to say, you know, it's nothing to see here if they got to play Dallas or better Western Conference teams without Kaminga after what we've seen from them this season is that that's why I'm nervous. Okay. I guess, and maybe that's why I'm I'm not sour why, at all. Why would you be nervous if if you're not ex- like the only way you could be nervous is if you don't have expectations for this team. Or if you do have expectations for and this team. And that's been, all year I've been consistent. They can make a run if they get in. Right. And so they just starts, won four in a row on the road. But, like, that's not, it's. How like, many good teams? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, listen. You, and and listen, I, you can play that game if you want. And I get it. They beat two playoff teams in, from the Eastern Conference. They beat Miami yeah. and they beat Orlando. Then they went into Charlotte and it, they took care of business. Yeah. I, the minus eight, down eight points at half, and then what happened? They came out and they scored 14 straight to start. The and then quarter, what happened at they, the end of the game? Yeah, they, they held a 12-point lead. They held Guru, on. Guru, they're so to the Spurs they're G tw- League okay. almost. They're 22 and 15 on the road. What, do, what are you saying about the Warriors? You said you they were dead. I'm, now you come in right. and they beat three measly ass teams, and you're you're tricking me into acting Dude, like Guru. I'm supposed to throw. I'm a not parade. tricking you. Nobody, I don't care about the record. Nobody from Miami even okay. showed up. Butler wasn't there. Duncan okay. Robinson wasn't there. Hero wasn't there. So shame on you saying that's okay. a quality win. Okay. So what you're telling me not to do, you're doing because of the Eastern Conference and the state. I'm Bottom t- line is, that was lightweight t- embarrassing yesterday to have to hold on to that game against San Antonio. And you got the benefit of a bad call on Wimby over the back. Yeah. That's what I'm focused on. And then you okay. want to come in here and say, nothing right. to see here when Kaminga's not playing. That's not fair, Steiny. They just won That's three not games. fair to Jonathan, man. Let me tell you what's not fair is it's not fair to the Warriors to be judging them like this when they were a 500 team four games ago. They won four games on the road. I'm just saying, like, if we can't, like, if we're not going to, that's, you kind of prove, like, you're not proving yeah. my point, but you're. What would you're, you like for me to say, you're, I guess? Didn't, you're, I'm not saying you're wrong. Okay. All right. What I, I'm saying is, right, clearly we've ahead. reached the point at the Warrior season where they've just ripped off four games on the road, and it doesn't really matter because of what? Is it because they've had fits and starts all season long? Is it because you're still not sold on them? Is it because they haven't moved up in the standings? The, I'm saying, like, my point's been proven. They've, they've, they've won four straight on the road. If this were another argument, you and other people would be saying, well, you can only play who's in front of you, Steiny, yeah. so let's not pick Which apart the opponents. Right. My point is, is they've just won four in, the, four, in, four in a row on the road, and to me, it feels like there's no enthusiasm about this team. It feels like, even though... When they beat the Bucks almost a month ago, they were only five games over yeah. 500. So now they're a season high six games over 500. And what I'm realizing is like it, it's not going to matter. It doesn't matter until the postseason, I guess, or until the play in game. All right, let me run the, okay, this. This isn't yeah. like nobody is like, I, you're right. Nobody's really happy about this. And I'm just wondering why. That's all. all right. I'm gonna take they were 36 and 34. I, They've won four in a row on the road. I, I'm gonna and take nobody cares. Out. Okay, that's fine. I don't. I'm not asking no, we, people we to care, care. Donnie, because they, they got the wins. But there's a problem here. You mentioned the ninth seed. I don't know if I want the Warriors to host that playing game at the ninth seed. And the reason that is the byproduct of their home record. They got a pretty good Dallas team coming in here tomorrow. And I just feel like at home, if something shifted or changed, and you had mentioned the Draymond. You know, fiasco. If they come in and beat Dallas, I guess t- Tuesday, Steiny, I'll be, I'll feel better. Like that's tangible. You, that was a good Dallas team with Luke and Kyrie. They were all, you took care of them and you put your stuff or problems. We don't know why they're not playing better basketball at home, but that's a test to me. And they're all tests. You're right. Cause I use that against you. You got to play who's on your, 
on the uh, schedule. But man, that game got close again, and you know that I I didn't see it happening. And San Antonio, you know, everybody can beat them damn near, but they're down three wings, and where did the comeback come from? So, I mean, I like I think what it is is that Warrior fans, some of them, like okay. Do I think the Warriors are going anywhere this year? Not really. But, okay, they're not. I don't think they're going anywhere this year. But they just won four games on the road. They're going to be a play-in team. And that's better than if they'd gone 2-2 two and two on the road and fallen to 11. That's a fact. And so, the fact, and, and like, and I guess I'm the taking bottom line is granted. if you're taking 4-0 oh on the road, four straight road wins for granted, then, you know what? Admit it, you still think like this team can make a deep run because that's what teams that win four games on the road this late in the season look like. But that's what I mean. I mean, to me, clearly what's going on is the Warriors haven't sold anybody on anything, mm. even in this road, even wow. on this road trip. 888-957-9570. And what that tells me is there's still the expectations are super high for this team. Even now, I, which I, I guess is a good, is a, it should, it's a good thing. Uh, why? I mean, am I right or am I wrong when I say it doesn't feel like? Here's what I I came yeah. in after the Warriors beat Milwaukee, and we were talking about this team making a run. You're right, a deep run. I was one of them. Okay, now they're six games over 500. All right, since that point, they're entrenched in tenth. Why is the enthusiasm not there? Is it just because they beat Milwaukee? No, it's all right. All right. to me, it's you allowed Houston to even get as close as they did. And I need to be careful because I don't want to jinx them. It looks like they got the 10th locked up, Stani, but you play Houston Wednesday and you got Dallas two times in the next three games. Again, I guess I'm operating from negativity, but the bottom line is if you were to slip up, then it's not just a given that you got the 10th seed. And I guess that's that's the prism I'm looking through. Like, the Warriors played some bad basketball and you allowed Houston to get on your bumper. When we came in here, we had a discussion like, yeah, ain't enough time for the Rockets. But again, they won 11 in a row and got within one game. 888-957-9570 is the number. I'm trying to gauge the uh, enthusiasm level for the Warriors right now because it just... You know, came in, listened, listened uh, this weekend uh, to the weekend show, listened in the morning, and it just, it, it, and I just looked at the standings. Uh, the 30 and, they're, what are they, 40 and 34? 38 and 32? I don't know what it is. 40 and 34. Yeah. Six, Six over. Right. Tells me that, uh, I don't know what it tells me. I don't know what it tells me, to tell you the truth. Uh, yes, fans have had enough of this up and down, according to the 510. And the drama and blah, blah, blah. We know we are champions. To time to, uh, we know we are champions, but that's talk. Time to get out of the show. Okay. All right. Well, maybe that's what they're doing right now. 888 957 9570 is the number. Uh, what about Steph? Last two, sh last two games, he shot the ball better than he shot it in the previous month and a half. So maybe he's getting a, a second wind. No doubt, and it starts with him. If they're going to do anything, if they solidify this 10th or 9th seed, Stiney, it starts with him. So it's always good to see the ball go through the basket for Steph because it starts and ends with him. And you you called me Bob Hope all season, and I'm not ashamed of it because I guess I hold this team to standards that they hadn't met throughout the season. So, you know, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of assumptions, assuming, and asses assume, you know what that means. So... I'm just here, like, beat Dallas tomorrow, you take care of Houston, put the nail in their coffin, and then we find out if we get ninth or 10th. But, man, this Kaminga thing, it could be nothing. You could be totally right. But for me, this team and Steph needs him. Like, does it, does, does it, did it register to anybody out there? Because I guess it doesn't. And, it, like, this is kind of what I mean. I mean, people, are, people still think this team – can win a title because that's the only way you don't look at the silver linings of that road. Mm, like, mm. okay, Kaminga didn't play. You know who did? Pajemski, Trace Jackson Davis, and Moody. And you can tell me that 
San Antonio stinks and Charlotte stinks. But the reality of the situation is your young players helped you win that game. Like, Pajemski was terrific yesterday. Trace Jackson Davis has been really, really good. Like, one of the reasons the Warriors have won on the road is because their young players give them energy and have been productive on the road. Moody was really good again yesterday. Like, but, th- again, talking about the growth of young players doesn't matter. And that, I, guess, I guess it yeah. doesn't matter to... People are fixated on this team making, making a run, run and upsetting the Denver Nuggets. Well, you hit the nail for me with that. And well, that, that's, you're right. Those that's youngsters a shame. have been like, That's a disservice yeah. to the youngsters. No, no, because I'm going to sit here and follow that up with what you said is they have played their ass off. They have. I, I just want you to know I do see that. But what have you tried to instill in me and beat me over the head with is goo. This team goes is the big three are going to go and the no, rest of the game. I, that's not how. That's not what I'm about. No, when they lose, you say put the onus at the doorstep of the big dudes. Don't what, put it no, at the what doorstep I'm saying is of the, the big, youngsters. What I'm saying is the big dudes can't play 35 minutes a night anymore. The only way this team's going to reach their potential is if Curry, Stat, Curry, Clay, and Draymond play like 30 to 32 minutes. Well, Curry played the 34 young guys, yesterday. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, I got that wrong. The wrong one. So the no, I'm not. Yes, as they go, if you're going to play the big guys 35 minutes, yeah, you ain't going anywhere. I don't think with this team. Well, you may not be going anywhere anyway. So I'd rather go somewhere and get the young guys important playing time, because that's the other thing. If if the d- does it look like the Warriors are engaged right now? Does it look like they're playing like there's something at stake? Like. I can't give anybody a doggy treat for that, but yes. Okay, well then to me it's important, and I get it's not the playoffs, but to me it's important that if they have eight games left and they need to win five or six of them to maintain the last spot, then I want the youngsters to play in those games because they're more important and the stakes are higher. Mm. Like, I want Pajemski and I want Trace Jackson Davis and I want... Moody, and if Kaminga comes back, he comes back. I want them to be a factor as the Warriors win five of their last eight or six of their last eight and go into the postseason. Because I, I, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think they can do it with their old guys and Chris Paul and bringing Looney back into the mix and hoping Wiggins can produce and relying more heavily on Gary Payton. That's just the one thing I don't. I don't I'd rather see the younger guys continue to play a consistent role on this team, Goo. Yeah, and we'll we'll see it all come come out in the wash, and I'm doing my best, partner. I swear I am. Everybody listening, Dub Nation, of what's going to happen once this season is over. And I, I just can't, I'm being honest, I can't stop thinking about it. So, hey, did they need those road wins, Donnie? Yes, they did. And they needed them in a major way. But the reason they're 10th is for whatever reason, they can't get it going at home. What do we got tomorrow? Now you got momentum. You talked about it. 4 and one road trip. You just feel like, okay, if something has changed and a switch has been hit, you should be able to take care of the Mavs tomorrow at home. Well, they've won seven in a row. What are they, 21 and four in their last E? They're like, they've won seven in a row, I think 11 of 12, the Mavericks. Um, 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, Warriors, they're thirty and they're forty and thirty four right now. They win four or five on the road. Now they play Dallas at home, and then they go on the road against Dallas and against the Houston Rockets uh, this week. Yeah. Are, you, are you waiting to see what they do against the Rockets this week? Uh, are you worried about Kaminga? Uh, are you encouraged by anything that you've seen in the last week? And now, where does the whole Draymond Green thing fit in? He was terrific yesterday. Man, he, Stein, he was. <laughs> like, we've never talked about his play. It's just the antics. But they don't win that game without him. But I don't know if you looked at the schedule. We talked about it the last couple of weeks. The games are coming fast and in a hurry. Stein, this season's about to be over, man. Well, that's why That's Damn. why if you look at, if you look at the, their schedule, it is jam-packed with games. Yes. The worst thing they can do right now is think that the big guys by themselves. Got to bring us home. Yes. I mean, to think, they, they, like, that's my contention. If this team has any kind of run in them, it's going to be because of Kaminga, Pajemski, Moody, and Trace Jackson Davis. Mm. 
You have eight games in the next 13 or 14 days. You cannot rely, you cannot think you're going to rely on Steph, Clay, and Dre to take it from here on out, win two road play in games, and then win a series and like in the first round. They're going to, they're going to, they won't pass the eye test fatigue wise, I don't think. Uh, 888 957 9570 is the number. Where are you at, Warrior fans? Are you uh, encouraged by the road trip at 4-1, and one, or is it something where you're going to need to see more, and ideally it's going to have to be this week when you have two against Dallas and two against Houston? Yeah. Starting, one, one last thing about the yep. game yesterday is San Antonio, and you're going to be like, goo, it doesn't matter, they won. My point is they outscored the Warriors three of the four quarters, but yet the one quarter of the third, you mentioned it, the Warriors outscored them 16, and that got you the game, but... I guess I'm going style points, and who am I to do that with this know. version of the Warriors? And maybe that's where I'm going wrong. And missing their second best player yeah. on the fifth game of a road trip in seven days? We begging? And 32 minutes Friday, like, how are you going to curtail Curry's minutes? Like, that to me was a blowout, right? What, 1597, and yet he played Magic Johnson. A reminder, you can catch all four hours of Stein and Goo on the free Odyssey app. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our QR code on both YouTube and Twitch, brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first-class money market today. 888-957-9570 is the number if you want to jump into the conversation. Am I mistaken by detecting that there isn't a lot of enthusiasm over that road trip from the Golden State Warriors? And if not, how come? How come? That segment was also brought to you by the Alameda County Probation Department. Want a career with purpose? Great.
He's wonderful. <laughs> Marvelous. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Don't ever forget. Sterling! Don't ever forget the announcers are the most important part of an event. They are. What did I see wrong? Yeah. I told you they make my experience better. Yeah. He no, was they, in no, his they bag are the experience. On that. He, he was in his bag. Yeah, he thinks he is the experience. Wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> real. That's <laughs> oh, just great. On that's a home run clever. call. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's more important than the home run. The call. Warrior fans, where have you gone? Oh, a couple is people saying gonna... we're fired up on the text lines, Donnie. Are I'm they... not telling you not to be. By the way, how about uh, what you got? How about this guy? Man, Draymond was incredible tonight. That was a uh, defensive masterpiece. The offensive board at the end with the clay three, probably play of the game. But you can see, I mean, you watch that game. Draymond is a—he's a genius defensively. Yeah, he was. He was t- Steiny, He was like a bear down there taking that ball away from four Wendy more and years. Four more years. Only three. Well, th- I was just a about three to plus. Say. We add up. We round up. Because the most, impo- most important games have yet to be played this year. He year deserved one. it. What about Friday? He got away with a kick in the groin area on uh, Grant Williams. Well, they played, didn't they? Didn't make contact. They played. Meaning they played. So something probably happened involving oh, Draymond Green. Thank you, too. Uh, by the way, Tim Kawakami of The Athletic. See okay. his story on Draymond Green today in The Athletic? The story was about how the, you know they they still need him and still but he had one line in here one line in his story that seems to be very definitive and it was this line give it to us you can decide whether the warriors have already kept Draymond Green too long but no the warriors stakeholders mm. they are not ready to give up on Draymond Green. Well, that he's going nowhere. Okay. All right. All right. And he calls wow, the stakeholders, damn. Lacob and yeah. Dunleavy and still Steph and whoever else carries weight. Now, but, if this uh, thing, Cal I would Connie ask him. He's not TK, going anywhere. I don't if, think he means, I, I think he means longer than the last eight games. Yeah. Well, I'm just going on uh, uh, Joe Lacob's comments to Kawakami about big changes. And that, again, there could be big changes and that not be Draymond Green. I mean, he was fantastic yesterday, Stein. He was. I mean, to me, when you talk like that's and that is one thing that I've I've been thinking about. What what would classify as a big change? To me, it would be Draymond. It would be Clay. To me, when Chris Paul walks, that's not a big change. A Kaminga trade to me is big change. To me, Kaminga slash Wiggins. I guess if they if if they re-signed Clay Thompson and traded Andrew Wiggins for somebody, is that? You know what? That kind of wouldn't be a big change to me. That would be the obvious change at this point. So I to me the big a big change would be it has to be the big the big three. Yeah. Which would only be two, which would be Clay resigning him, because Steph's not going anywhere, and Draymond. Yeah. What like, about what you, the oh go ahead. I don't know. I'm just I'm just listen, it's just because I had a flashback when Dre got that offensive board that they needed him. Threw it back out to Clay, and he just banged that three, Stoney. That was like, God, that, you know, that was the old formula. I mean, to me, and it's just semantics, it's just stupid semantics, but what is a big change? Big change. We're going to, we might have to make some big change. Big change is. To me, moving Wiggins, no, that doesn't do it for me. No, oh, man. I mean, if Chris Paul walks, they re-sign Clay Thompson, and they move Wiggins for I don't know, and a pick. That's damn near to be expected. I hear you. That wouldn't be yeah. big. I don't know. What do Warriors think at 888-957-9570? But Clay no longer in a Warrior uniform. That's that's, that's big already. No, no doubt. Okay. Clay or Draymond not in a Warrior uniform. And a Kaminga trade, let's just say. Yeah, I would ah, say Kaminga right. getting traded. Obviously, anything with Steph. Well, let's hope we don't see it. Well, I mean, TK's also, saying it ain't going to be Dre right now. It's funny that yeah. article didn't come out went Thursday morning. He didn't have twenty one on oh, Thursday right. morning. He had twenty one yesterday. Yeah, no, that he was, was a, take his hand. I mean, he's got some strong mitts, man. Uh, him and Kawhi. Who else got some not just hands, Donnie? Get not Wembenyama. 
Go ahead. He's, I got he's, it. He's gonna be really, he's gonna be good. He's gonna but, be really good, but he's gotta get strong. Is it bench press or just? Well, he can't. Bench? He cannot come down with a ball that, in traffic. Man. Is it because he's not like ZD? <laughs> I mean, ED. Hey, he, hey, Purdue, I got him. I'm in first in the KPIX bracket. Congrats, you sure. do not want to talk about this. Well, the boss sent me the an one email. Pool you're in with no money involved. I got a bone Congratulations. to pick. Well, that too. I got a bone to pick with the boss. Okay. Well, then take, take so it to I the boss. So I see the email, and it's just to me. Send it to everybody in the contest. Don't just send it to me. I'm in the lead. Wow. I'm kind of mad. Evan, send it to everybody. I wanted to hit reply all. Do you think this is actually any of it from the Comcast business text line? Of? From the Xfinity mobile text line? Did that just change? Yeah, if you go on Vontae. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, maybe Draymond Green has finally sucked all the energy out of the fans. It okay. was only a matter of time. I can't say that's what I'm experiencing, but that's heavy. Because that's just heavy when somebody says something, they make you think for a second. I'm not there because he can't, but yeah. damn. Stanley, I just think it's the teams. Like, when you yeah. sat down Friday, well, we I were together, we watched the game for a little bit. We assumed the win. It was never, no, I see, and that's I probably don't. half my problem. So yesterday, I assumed the win. Then I'm watching, like, they can't blow this, can they? If you assume a team wins 90% of the time, Aren't you setting up that you're going to be disappointed more than you really should be? I mean, if you would have sat down and said, okay, they got five games on the road. They got Minnesota, Orlando, Miami. No, 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 no. What would be a good trip? You probably would have said, can we go three and two? Can we, three and two? And then you go four and one, and now you haven't played anybody. I'm just, I'm just pointing out. Fans are tough. You make it tough on yourself when you have expectations that are so high. Marvin's in San Francisco. What's up, Marvin? How you doing, man? Oh my God. I'm doing great, man. Uh, and thanks for taking my sure. call. I, I, you know, I keep hearing that the Warriors have roster problems. And, and Steiny, all due respect, if you go back to 2022, count the times on one hand you said the Warriors could win then. The Warriors could win, okay? I think if they get to play only uh, one game to get in the playoffs, like get in the seventh or eighth slot, they have a chance to win the whole thing. If they play three games, then it's going to be a little more difficult. But I don't think the Warriors have a roster problem. Everybody talks about all year long, they're not big enough, they need size, they need this and that. They lead the NBA in rebounding, okay? Total rebounding. Uh, you can't have a bad roster when you are losing home games and winning games on the road. Mm. You can't have a bad roster and a roster problem when you are losing 15-point leads, and I think we've lost 12 of them this year. That is a coaching problem. That is the problem that the other team calls a timeout, makes a change, and our coach doesn't see it. In the, in the Nick game and the Chicago game, I'm screaming at the TV, get a stop, get a stop, and who's on the court? Bajemski, Curry, and Chris Paul. And I'm going, how are you going to get a stop? Well, they didn't. And that's why they lost those games. That's why they lose big leads, because the other team makes an adjustment, and they don't. And I think our biggest problem is we have a coach. It's one of his weakest things. It's why in playoff games in the past, we get we, we lost a game in Memphis the year we won by 40 points or something. We were behind, uh, 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 what do you call Denver without their best team when we won. We were behind, we, lost, we got blown out in one game. Well, the, the next game they come back, and that's because Steve Kerr, his best thing is he's a planner. He can figure out, if he has enough time, what to do to beat the other team, and he has consistently through his career, particularly in the playoffs. That's why seven-game series, six-game series, he has time to figure out the adjustments he has to make. But in the game, he doesn't. And that's why every year the Warriors get beaten by somebody on our home court. Let me ask you a question. It was Denver, it was Boston. Marvin. Yeah. Okay, so the Warriors right now are 40 and 34. What? Give me the top three reasons they're not 45 and 29. Because they didn't win home games. And that's coaching. That's coaching. Okay, Draymond Green suspension going. have anything to do with it? I don't think so. What about Wiggins' season? Well, Wiggins been inconsistent, but what does that tell you? That tells you that the coach stuck with a guy who was having a bad season too long. 
Not that Wiggins isn't trying. He's just inconsistent. But you can't, you got to figure out what changes to make on the spot. And that's sure. what, what has been the Warriors' problem. It's All not right. size. It's, it's clearly. And, and I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, why is you got uh, Pajemski getting 26 minutes right. and scoring six points and you got Moody getting seven points and playing nine minutes? Mm-hmm. Why isn't GP2 well, starting the game against Dallas? He doesn't start the game. He gets nine minutes. What? I all right. All right. I, I love his energy, Stoddy. I just think that's coaching. a bit unfair. It's been coaching. That, that's the yeah. primary thing. You kind of wish that was it. You know what I mean, Stoddy? Come He's on, He's not man. the only one that feels that yeah, way. No, I'm not saying that. We've heard it all year. And Twitter, Toxic Twitter ha- X has a sector of people that think Kerr is not the man. But... I just think of the blowouts against the the New Orleans Pelicans at home. Who else put it on them at home? It was embarrassing. I've, Toronto. Uh, Toronto. That ain't coach. The game was like you got to be ready to play. Now, is there some merit to a couple things he said? Sure, but come on, man. Just to put it at the head coach. But I'll throw this at you, Donnie. Your number one reason why this team, because it wasn't this way last year in regard um, to the splits on the road and home. It was the exact opposite. So could he uh, have made that call last year? couple things with their, their the, believe it or not I don't no big deal I don't think much of their home and road splits because it's been two years now and they were great at home and now they're bad and yeah. like there's we we can so you we'll, still want ninth no matter never, what we're never gonna find no there's never gonna be an there's never gonna be an answer to huh how come they're better on the road this year than a, huh? than they are at home that's interesting there's never gonna right. be an answer we're not gonna figure it out and I don't but I, they have to. You got I Dallas waste, tomorrow. I don't waste any time thinking about it. I'm All more right. concerned with forty and thirty four. Mm. Like that's that's their record, and they're going to play home games and they're going to play road games. But I mean, I don't. When when you ask me why are the Warriors forty and thirty four and not forty five and twenty nine, my first thing is they're not good enough to be forty five and twenty nine. The way the season's played out, to me, they're the biggest reason they're not five games better is because their three veteran players have all ticked down. And then their fourth player, Wiggins, has taken a dramatic step back. And you think that's why they can't close games? Because yes. Yes, when because we look they're, at those they're, blown leads, Their roster is too old on the one end hmm. and too young on the other end, and that naturally will lead to some wins that end up being losses, in my mind. That's the re- why have they? If people think they have a closing issue, I actually don't think they have a closing issue. I think they're closing about like they should be closing with who they have. Like Steph is not he's he's not closed as many games this year. Okay, well when he didn't close in the past, Clay might have. You know, Draymond may have made some plays on defense. That's to me. That's. Their little bit of slippage has been a big reason why. And then the young players, as good as they've been and as much progress as they're making, they're not quite ready to win games against good teams right now. Like, I think the reason, I I think it's mostly a, a Ross, I think this is basically a 40 to 42 win team right now. Forty. Not I don't mean 42 at the end of the year. I mean, I think this is about who they are record wise. I don't, I don't. I don't look at this year like they've dramatically underachieved. Well, they won forty four last year. Yeah, so they're and they could pass that. And aren't they kind of the same team as last year, roster wise? Well, with yeah. a couple young injections and com- see, like, so they won forty four last year. Kaminga's been better. The young guys have chipped in. So how come you haven't improved? Well, Draymond well, Draymond was gone. Okay, if, yeah. If, yeah. If that's on the board, that Draymond's Suspension. Draymond's been gone. Yeah. And hasn't been the player that he's been when he's played as consistently. Like if a guy plays 70 games and 60 were good a year ago and 55 are good this year, you know, you got to figure out what happened in those five games. Um, But I don't, my like the number one reason they're not 45 and 29 to me is not coaching. Mm. But I don't know. Is there a number one reason why they're not 45 and 29? What are some of the reasons? And we've been seeing something with the combo of uh, TJD and Draymond. How are you liking that? To kind of not have Dre at the five. I think Trace Jackson Davis has, has absolutely really... Absolutely incredible. I don't know if he's been absolutely incredible. I'd give him my A-minus, Tiny. Yeah, it's a second-round pick. Man. For sure. 
Uh, let's go to Filmo Mike. Mike, I saw What's him up, on KTVU. How you doing? Yeah, oh, he's a big boy. He ain't called in a while. No, he's a big boy Don't now. change on us, Mike. Don't go corporate. He goes PG on that oh, station, though. Oh, boy. What's up, Mike? He can still be a little bit R on ours. <laughs> no, okay. And then on his podcast, he's, he's X. Uh, <laughs> when I when I go corporate, man, you know I say I say Fillmore Michael. But now, uh, <laughs> I love it. The reason the reason the reason we not uh now the coaching ain't this year. You right, Stiney, but the coaching was last year. Just to harp on that point, should have been playing the youngsters more, so they they was they would have been more advanced at this point than they were last year. But that's why not why I was calling. Whoever the hell texted in and said Draymond Green is is inevitable that uh, no he sapped the you know, energy. He, he was going to. Yeah, he was gonna sap the energy. That's that's that that's crazy. That's hogwash for me. And I hate to say this because this makes you sound like an old person, but that must be a new fan because either you love basketball or you don't love basketball in the Warriors. Mm. And as a as somebody that loved the Warriors, I didn't see Spreewell choke a coach. You think that would have sapped the energy out the season? What is this man talking about? And then well, you either appreciate what he's done or you don't. You got to realize what we were before uh, uh, Joe Lacob, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, a couple of trades, Klay Thompson, Iguodala signing, what we were before that. We were just scratching and hoping to get somewhere. So, like, that perspective is crazy. And then this other point, how can you say – Steph is the most exciting player in basketball, and he he does this and he does that. And when Curry goes on the floor, it's like nobody else in the league. The, the numbers prove it. And then you got Draymond Green. So I don't know what crack or what fentanyl he he didn't he didn't sniffed, but dude need to need who? need to chill with that. And who? then who, who? The last point. What are you talking about, Mike? Whoever whoever said whoever said that the uh, the, the that Draymond sapping energy. Oh, okay. This is my last point, though. This is my last point. The same people say that Draymond lost. Guru said this last week. Draymond. Some people say Draymond lost. You know the series. Well, I, I don't look at it like that. I look at it like Steiny. Steiny. Do you remember when Curry just threw a willy nilly pass? Game seven, two minutes left in the game. Yep. How you know that didn't lose the game? I remember that game seven. Draymond had over thirty points. So. You have to understand. He may make you mad. You have to understand and compartmentalize each player. Curry makes well, you mad when he does those willy nilly passes. The same way uh, Draymond gets me mad when he when he when he does something and he ain't supposed to do to the ref or get kicked off the game. I might, Mike. What, I'm going to ask you one last question though. I do think that there might be a segment of fans that watch a game like yesterday and see Draymond with 21-11. Six and six, and they're kind of just like, I wish somebody else would have been good. I wish it would have been somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do understand what you uh, mean, and that's and that's and that's a problem that Draymond created, and he's gonna have to liberate by great play. The sad part wow. is, like you said, he getting older, and that's not they, that's gonna be few and far between. Uh, Mike, Mike, yeah, no doubt. I was gonna give him a bad analogy, but I could do it on the. Dr like the behind the bass, uh, behind the back passes, or whatever you do in the game, even if it's a turnover, and I'm talking to Mike and you, Stani, and the listeners, that's okay. Because you know what? You didn't get ran. But when you start the game and you're gone in three minutes, it's like you're at the house. We're pre gaming at your house. We go to the club. And before we get in, you get into an altercation and we got to go home. We didn't. And that's what it feels like when Dre gets ran early. That's a letdown. Anything in between the, the 48 minutes, I'll take. But everybody was upset, even Curry and the, and the team, because you, you are great when you're on. And you, you were, you were in the showers three minutes in. That, that's, that's my analogy. And I, it fit, it works for me. That's why it was a big deal. Yeah. And I, I think I'm really trying to. So 510 says it's not anger. It's the reality that Draymond Green will not change. It's disappointment. And you know what? I think that's what, you know, what Mike, Mike was talking about, Phil Mike was talking about what, what Draymond Green has cost himself. And that may be it. That as great as he was last night, he, he sapped himself or the fans of an excitement they should have what? for his game last night because what's going to happen Tuesday against Dallas?
Can he can he play? He's got. We need two things from Draymond. He's got to play well against Dallas, and he's got to stay on the court against Dallas. Like that. That's that what I'm trying be. to gauge. There, there is, like, there is not not. Oh damn! Why Draymond? Why did Draymond have to have that good game? But there's something about great game, Draymond. But what's going to happen next game? It's the experience, and for Tim, yeah. Cal, what and did you I, say? Stakeholders or shareholders? I think, I think that could. Uh, I, I think that takes a toll on a team. But how long? Hey, well, I'll say and this to that: it's taking it. What? It's taking. And it. I know you're going to bring it's up taking the dinner. it on. No doubt about that. But I don't think Tim Calcami was going out on a limb saying, "What was it? Shareholders or stakeholders?" Who uh, say, stakeholders. Stakeholders. Steiner, he just got a new contract. So you put all of the Draymond Green experience right in front of you. Well, you know what? The Warriors signed up. For, they were, I, you know, I, they, I disagree. He didn't just get a new contract. He got one nine months ago, and he's completely been disappointing uh, in those nine I, months. I can't argue that. But Joe Lacob might say, this has been the longest nine months of mm. my career, signing this guy and then having him do what he did. I don't know that, but there is some kind of dynamic at play with Draymond here of, yeah, okay, I, I'm, and I'm with you, Goo. Okay, what's going to happen Tuesday? What happens tomorrow when Doncic comes in here and Dallas is hot? And I'm worried about teams baiting them, good teams baiting them. Yeah. Like, that's a real thing, and on the Xfinity uh, text line, Stoney, question for Goo, was Steve Kerr's extension a mistake by ownership? Hell no. I operate on what have we done, what have you meant, and if you got four rings in, in, in the last decade, how can me giving you a two-year contract be a mistake? I don't know! Well, to me, it'll, I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, we'll ever call it a mistake or not. But, but he deserved, there's nothing to, you know what I mean? Right. Who, who, I, I'm asking you, Stanley, do well, you think people out there were like, Marvin oh, they didn't, in San Francisco okay. would right, say it's a mistake. And so would Twitter, the Twitter trolls. But, listen, if, X. I'm going to tell you right now, if in the last eight games, he relies solely on the veterans, and solely is a strong word. But if he plays the, that's where there. I don't know if there'll be an issue, but that's where he will uh, not split the fan. That's where people will be uh, questioning Steve Kerr if, as the games get more and more important. Yeah. Not that they are not that they're I, in a final series, not that they're in a second round series even, but as the last eight games play out and a play in game is at your doorstep, I do not and I've said this three weeks ago. Don't please don't give me thirty minutes of Chris Paul, thirty four minutes of Curry, thirty five minutes of Draymond, thirty four minutes of Clay Thompson, Looney in there for twenty minutes, Gary Payton in there for seventeen minutes. Like that to me is a recipe to get beat very early by somebody. Like, I don't think those six guys can play heavy minutes. I, I think that is incongruous from making a run. Mm. They don't have the energy. They don't have the stamina. They, they need the young guys to help. That's how I'm going to kind of judge the last eight games of the year, is how much he can incorporate the young guys into this and I'm curious to if see he, if the young guys don't play. That tells me that Steve Kerr still thinks that if they roll the dice and roll four straight snake eyes, that that they can go deep into the postseason. I'm I'm not there. So conventional wisdom throughout the NBA is when the playoffs are upon us, minutes shrink and the rotation shrinks. Yeah. You feel like if the Warriors were somehow to to they're, get there, they're different. They, yeah, they, no, they, this I, is I'm, where I think the Warriors are different. The longer you stretch out their starters. The worse they're going to get. They're not. That's why they're the not a team, They're not a team like Dallas with their two players in their prime, where you can bump up their minutes oh, and then man. maybe they get better. Man. I think that's unrealistic with the Warriors veterans on a game in and game out basis. That's interesting. That's but, that's just me. That's so. That's uh, the way you would go. You absolutely there's a combo. because I, all you got to do is stay solid, and you're going to be the tenth seed. Mm -hmm. So I want these kids to play these last eight games, stay solid, win five of them. Go into the postseason, uh, play in tournament, see what we got. 888-957-9570 is the number. You're listening to 95.7 The Game.
Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. It's the easiest app and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike any other app on Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with this little, get this, it's four correct picks. You could turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and the college basketball entries today on Price Picks. The biggest moments in college basketball are happening now in the tournament, so be a part of the action on prize picks for both men and women's college hoops. Download the app today, and I got your back. Use code GURU957 for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code GURU957 on prize picks for a deposit match up to $100. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entries in less than 60 seconds. Uh, quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and staff types of what make this app awesome tonight i got Derek white and the celtics playing the hornets i got Derek white with over 14 and a half points hit 15 that's a winner right now all you have to do is download the price picks app now and use code guru 957 do it today must be present in certain states visit pricepicks.com for more details attention landowners got big plans for your land tackle all your spring projects
you know, I just realized yeah. it's not that uh, okay. I'm going to work on my approach. Oh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to start everything. But I'm not saying you're wrong. Okay. Uh, Xfinity text line. Business. Xfinity mobile. That thing moves, baby. And not stationary. Let's go. It's not stationary. It's mobile. Xfinity mobile. Text line. Oh, thank you. Uh, and there are, they're, they're going to make stuff happen in the month of April. Um, Okay, so the 925, very definitive statement here. Trace Jackson Davis should have been used sooner. Okay. You, you might be right. He, maybe he should have been used sooner. But I can tell you why he probably wasn't used sooner and the reason behind it. It's because Steve Kerr said for half the year, he felt he owed it to the championship team from two years ago. Mm -hmm. So he went with Looney. And then Trace Jackson Davis, over the first half of the year, began to outplay Kavon Looney. And that's why Trace Jackson Davis is now playing. Bam. But the other thing is, there may have been even a better reason to not play him sooner. And that is, had you played him since the start of the year, I guarantee you he'd be hitting a rookie wall right now, Trace Jackson Davis. But... Because he started playing in January or February, he's probably fresher than 95% of the rookies who are playing right now who are wearing down. So maybe Trace Jackson Davis should have played sooner, but the reality is right now he's fresh, he's playing in their most important games, and he may have something in the tank that other rookies don't have because he wasn't playing the first 40 games when Steve Kerr either owed it to the veterans or didn't think Trace Jackson Davis was ready. Well, I love the fact that if somebody says that to you, you're not mad. Like, you can see it both ways. But I think Kerr, if we take him at his word, he said he, KFC, he went with the old recipe. And maybe that's why TJD was out. But the bottom line is he's a factor. It's down, he looks to have great hands. He rolls to the rim. They got something with him. And he looks right now, to me, he's a part of the future. So it's just like the Kaminga thing. We could sit here all day and talk about, and I was one of them. Oh, he should have been playing. He would have been further. But at the end of the day, he is where he's at now. He's on the court, just like TJD. And you don't know, always talk about how come Looney was MIA, and I've never really doubled back and gave TJD that that credit because that, that's a big part of it. He He's... He's a different player than Loon Dog down there. And Looney's been great. It's been great to see him. Let's go to uh, Ben. Ben is in Oakland. What's going on, Ben? How you doing, man? Benny. Oh, pretty good. Uh, I just got a couple things. Uh, the first one is games, uh, the finals that we lost in Game 7. Bogut was injured. No one ever brings that up. <laughs> he was a huge part of that team. So it wasn't come... just Draymond that oh, lost the oh, game. Oh, Bogut oh. blew his knee out. Um, well, Fetz has had two big is, fouls in that game seven two that we never talk about. But go ahead, right? But if we had Bogut, I mean, it's a close game. We would have won. Um, he was huge. Uh, the other one is uh, Draymond. They say they cost us that championship, but if we didn't lose that championship, we wouldn't have got Kevin Durant, and we might not have won the next two. Um, just something to think about. I'm not right. the biggest Draymond guy. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to say is when they were talking about how Curry doesn't have leadership because he can't control Draymond Green, Draymond Green can't control Draymond Green. So how is Steph Curry supposed to do it? So uh, that that's all I got today. I just don't understand why uh, anyone would put that on Curry, and I can't stand the game six uh, just discounting a bogus presence, which was so important. So uh, you guys have a great day. There, there are a lot. Of, let, me, let me follow up on that, Ben. Let me make myself clear on that. A lot of people think I don't like Draymond. A lot of people, that's, first of all, nobody appreciates Draymond as a player. Like Too I loud, do. my bad. That was a mistake. Uh, so anyway, uh, I have never once ever said or thought Draymond cost him the title that year. It happened in game five. They had a game seven at home. He played. I mean, I'm I'm with the caller. Well, if you don't Festus, miss the game, go ahead. Festus, Festus. Oh man, killed him. Yeah, 
Steph was not good at all in Game 7. Right. Not good at all. So they had a Game 7 at home, and they were fully healthy. Like, and Draymond had 30 yeah. in, the, in a Game 7. The least he could do. Huh? Be, can I present this so to you the lose jury? a game five like that's the well, one thing if you're if you weren't gone game six we might not be playing game seven but game six fair? was in Cleveland right yeah they but lost still, by 40 I understand but without Draymond okay so you blame Draymond oh for there's that. no doubt I don't and if we were in New York Boston or Philly oh my gosh yeah I don't and to me to so to single-handedly blame Draymond for that series yeah. it does what it does it does one of those things that I don't like and that is it takes all the responsibility off the guys who lost the game seven. Draymond, they they both teams were full strength in game seven. They both had their full teams, other than Bogut. Yeah. Like I, I, I totally agree. Bogut may have been the biggest reason they lost that series when he got hurt. Like Draymond cost them game. I mean, when did what game did Bogut get hurt? I forget now. I think game six. But I'm. Huh. But he he didn't play game seven. Yeah. Uh, Craig in San Francisco. What's up, Craig? How you doing? Craig. Craig, what's up, buddy? Uh, let's go to Murillo in Alameda. Hello, Murillo. <laughs> Gentlemen. Petaluma. Petaluma. Oh, Petaluma my bad. Spadoni. Uh, no, Stein. guys, uh, happy that's my Happy mistake. Monday. Not Spadoni's fault. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was just playing. I was just playing. Hey, look, I'll be the first optimistic one here. Um, I was, I was going to the lab, Guru. That's for you. Yeah. Last night after the game, more like the lap, the laptop, and uh, I was checking the schedule of games. And man, I think the Kings and the Suns are gonna slide big here. Their schedule might be the toughest in the NBA. Moving forward, I think the Lakers and the Warriors will play in the play-in, but that will be the seventh and eighth game. I, I am optimistic that the Warriors can slide into the seventh, and I think of the four teams, the Warriors and the Lakers have the easiest schedule moving forward. Easier, uh, quote-unquote. If we can go 3-1 and one in three games here, the two games against Dallas, the game against the Lakers, and the game against the Rockets, I think the Warriors will be on the eighth seed, which means they're probably going to avoid Denver, considering they can win on the road. And uh, you know what I mean? I'm I'm trusting them more on the road right now, given the recent schedule. So I'm still optimistic. Um, I think I think they 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 gave themselves a good they they put themselves in a good position here because the schedule is going to be a little easier moving forward. So I'll be the first optimistic call of the day, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it, Marilla. Yeah. There's three behind Phoenix, Donnie. I don't know the tiebreaker scenario. They lose the, the tiebreaker. Oh man, they lose them all. Yeah, they're basically four behind. With oh eight to man, play. yeah, just, that's a no. That's it's tough. Wow, yeah, no doubt. It's going to be tough with Sack. I know they're down a couple guys, but so let me get to straight Evan and Donnie. If they were to get to seven and eight, they would have. A one game L to play with. It wouldn't be just where to go home, man. But I'm lit three games in eight. That's a lot going your way. The Warriors lost that title in sixteen for a variety of reasons. Anybody? Clay went six for seventeen in Game Seven. He was two for ten from three. They didn't score the last five minutes of the game. Clay Thompson. Cost him in 16. Steph Curry cost him in 16. LeBron's the Bogut out. injury cost him in 16. Barnes not being able to make a shot cost him in 16. Iggy Festus Azili making a dumb foul on LeBron James on a three cost him in that se uh, game seven. Iguodala getting run down cost him. Uh -huh. Like it's funny when we, t when we talk about their game. Clinching loss. Curry didn't use the timeout either in five minutes. Yeah. Draymond had 30. So I, I just, I, it, it was a total team collapse. And you can say that Draymond was the pivot point, but they had plenty yeah. of opportunities to win that series after Draymond got suspended. You know, what, you know what? I'm not even mad at that, but you're a historian. I'll just say, can you remember a player that got suspended in the finals? Like and then I'm just, I'm not being smart. I can't rem off the top of my head. I don't Lakers. I don't remember a player ever getting suspended for a finals game. Yeah, I and now know. we can take that up with the league, and they love LeBron or whatever. Now they're besties. But what are you saying? He shouldn't have been suspended. But remember, that was an accumulation <laughs> yeah, of yeah. points. 
That wasn't one incident. That was <laughs> poor behavior yeah. the entire postseason. But uh, do you yes, remember after one game five? four? Was they Warriors were up three yeah. one, and my boy Handy was on the staff in Cleveland. I had inside knowledge. They were infighting amongst themselves, and I I took that as they're done. And boy, they they did the re- they came back. Uh, that's right, four one five. I'm with you. There's a confluence of factors. Bogut's injury. Remember, that was the year. Okay, here, I'll, I'll make it easy on Warrior and, St- and Steph fans. Steph was hurt in Game 7. Uh, Remember, he couldn't Kevin, go by Kevin Love. He was hurt the whole postseason, Stoney. Yeah, I know. Well, that was... A, and But they were up 3-1. Yeah, and they lost. Because he broke down. Damn. That would have been five! Like, th- can I... Serious, serious question. Five. I, and like, then Toronto would have been six if Clay and, and KD don't yeah, get hurt. Oh I, my God. I, I need saw to be that, Evan, and I'm doing Toronto's the same thing. Nothing. <laughs> How did they know I was going to say that? This is where I've gotten so Boy, much better. Special, man. Rather, than, rather than even rebut, Damn. I just roll my eyes when he <laughs> says it. <laughs> but I feel like chuckle. you understand it. Yeah, I don't. And I feel like you'll never understand they wouldn't have gotten Durant had they won. Yeah. That's all right. The best deodorant of uh, losing a game seven ever is the cologne of Kevin Durant. I got to tell you, like, it just kind of surprises me in a way. Well, I do feel robbed. Go ahead. About what? Honestly, and I told you You feel you this, robbed about a title you didn't win no, nine no, years ago? I feel robbed to see how that team with Harrison Barnes would have responded coming back from that had they not added Durant. And boy... Oh, they had no ch- – please. They were up 3-1, and I know Cleveland ran them down, Stoney, but I would have loved to see that cast remain together. And do they see win they or do they do. lose? I think they could have won. No, do they win that year? So how, oh, no, they, are we changing the fact that they lost the series or are we changing no, the fact they, no, that they lost they the series lost, and got Durant? How the revenge would have happened had they not got Durant. Oh, well, they, they weren't I, – I believe they could have won. Well, they didn't. <laughs> they a, didn't. That's a nine. Maybe right. Durant would have gotten revenge on them. Yeah, yeah. Because they remember that they were. You're right. A lot of three-one blown leads. Remember think, Durant with CYO. And I just OKC? think it's kind of. I don't know. It's well, just this is striking me as weird that the, the teams won four titles and like oh, that one in sixteen. Draymond blew. Draymond well, it went seven and it Draymond was tied. Blow, exactly. So how could it be one guy who blew no. it? Oh, I, I look at the suspension changing everything. That that's how I look at it. Well, and I look—he well, was phenomenal in games. And I look at it as though you were still. So they were up three two. <laughs> You're right. Without him, okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. On the road, yeah. And that game, Kyrie and LeBron were incredible. That game six at Cleveland. I'll bet you their stats aren't as great as you think they were I, for I'm that a, game. Because both teams, the final it was ninety three. For game six, you mean? No, the, whatever the ninety three eighty nine one game six, I think was a seventy point. Yeah, yeah that, that's win. where I was going. Where they yeah, were just they both had forty that night. <laughs> right. That's where I was looking uh, for. Four one five brings up Steph banged his knee before that series. That's what I said. Yeah. 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 Why, yeah. Whoa, man! First yeah. round series actually. And one of the things that I've realized is that he was compromised. You know, Steph was the only. Oh, I think boy. if you go down the list of superstars who have played in NBA Finals, he's the only one to play hurt. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, Michael Jordan just had the luxury of being a hundred percent every single time he uh, ever laced him up in Isaiah the Thomas against the Lakers. Self-inflicted. Yeah, you talk, Nobody's you doing it like about, that. Well, you're adding a lot of... Muscle. I'm adding the text. Steph also <laughs> banged his knee the series before. Uh, Steph's, Steph's knee stopped responding to treatment uh, according to the... Uh, he was playing with basically a torn ACL. Right, right. Right, because he had surgery that offseason, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh... I, here's one. I blame Harrison Barnes. Of course. Let's the Black play. Falcon. Blame the sixth best player on the team. Well, see? Wow. Of course. Yeah. So you hated that when it first started then, blaming Harrison. Listen. Er, Dude, I hated that for him. He wasn't the only one missing and clanking. What's Steph shooting game seven? <laughs> oh, Let's get uh, that box score up. Uh, well, when when you use the curve, you know, for injury, actually, it was like sixty percent. Like if you didn't turn E, I'll tell you what. Oh, boy. if you have that box score, what what was Draymond's line? Oh, he was incredible. Huh? Yeah, he had like six threes. His clutch numbers in that game must have been incredible. But they didn't Rich score ball. collectively for five minutes because Cleveland locked him up. Love locked up Steph. Sammy G on YouTube is saying six for nineteen for Steph. Yeah. So that's so. Steph was six for nineteen. Oh, Clay was six for seventeen. 
That makes them 12 for 37. Ah, yeah, it was Draymond's fault. He blew the series. Now he was phenomenal. He was phenomenal yesterday, man. I think they also had that that situation like in Portland in the women's tournament, right? Because the three point line was a little off, so that's why the Splash Brothers couldn't knock down shots. I got to tell you, wow, you guys, I must be different. Two chains. There is well, no yes. way. There's no way I would I could ever be courtside as a player. I don't care what anybody says. This is where people are going to be like, Stein, you think you soaked it? You're so. There's no way I could be standing courtside as a player, as a coach, as an official. I'm already laughing. As I don't even know fan. where you're going. There is, you do know or don't know? I don't. There is no way, no chance that I could walk onto a court, pace it, and not say, we got a problem with a three-point line down here. Oh, wow. There's just. That's incredible. They showed the one end. That's at the top of the key, and they showed the other end, and I'm like, "Yeah, the one line's about four inches shorter." That person and then they started a job. So apparently, in the last game of the wow. Portland regional, they realized at halftime that the three point lines weren't right. wasn't right at one end. It was shorter. That's amazing. What about this from the four one five? Some adversity, Steiny. Yeah. Good lord, Draymond was fresh for game seven because he didn't play game six. Yeah, exactly. The, not my words. And the other, that. No, and the other, and the other that. guys wore down. Well, first of all, see two now parades we, we could have had. Now here we go. Two more. You, you want to just? No, I'm dying do on that. You want to start your own fantasy show? <laughs> you can nah. just start your own fantasy. show. Well, I got show. one now. In that the world, team's gonna go on a run world, this the year. The Warriors have won six times. I'm, I'm preoccupied in fantasy. Island. By the way, they were all fresh for Game Seven. I guarantee if you look at the minutes in game six, they're not very high. I guarantee, And I haven't looked at those numbers in seven years because I don't live in the past. Uh, eh. But how many minutes did Steph play in game six? And there was probably two days off before game seven, by the way. Uh, yeah, God, they just couldn't get a break. Hey, by the way, here's one, here's one thing I wanted to ask uh, fans out there. And I'll ask you, but I'm not sure if you'll tell me the truth. I've never lied to you. Guru's answer will be, uh, so I was thinking about this weekend. So we had NCAA college men, NCAA college women. We had the hey. Warriors playing twice. We had baseball uh, opening day, opening weekend. What were, your, what were your priorities? If you're going to watch sports this weekend, what was your priorities? What would you watch? What was, the, what was the thing wow. you had to watch? Was it the Warriors? Got to watch the Warriors against Spurs and Wemby. Or, no, 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 got to watch the NCAA tournament. Or got to watch the women. i tell you what. I'm going to watch those two women's games today. Oh, my God. See, Duke, kinda what about here in the me. morning rows? It kind of bothers, kinda bothers me that Guru's just going to, like, like he gets to sit out the whole women's season, and now it's like, oh my God, we got an unbelievable game. How today. many times? Ernie Chavez what are the called games? me today. Who's hold playing? on. Who's I, playing? Hold on. Quit gatekeeping, Steiny. No, what yeah. are you doing? And if you're, you're right. gatekeeping, you're right. I've come in here and said I've enjoyed women's basketball more this season than I ever have. I said Who? the women's are ballers. And here I am. I got uh, a, uh, Ernie Chavez well, good. I got a, I've come up with a trivia. I've had a, I got a women's and trivia contest. And I got contest. one for you, Evan and Spadona. You'll love me Who's for. playing today? Oh my God! Iowa and LSU. Who else? The Hatfields and McCoys. There's another USC. Game. Come on, Stein. I'm not even going to give you the four. I'm not even giving you the. That's the insult. Well, Evan, are you saying you think I don't know who the fourth team? <laughs> Just a question. You sent you the Twitter picture you yesterday yeah, on did. that computer. I'm not on the computer. I don't need it. I'm a gambler. Come on, guys. This is what hurt. You know what? I'm it. You know what? I need a relief. Paige Beckers. Dude, I know you. Oh, you guys hurt me. You didn't get I'm it. cut. No, I'm not going to guess. I know who it is. Next question. Gina. Spadoni's in on it, too. Here's I, a hint. Their nickname, the Huskies. I don't need a hint. I know who's playing. Or pal. You th I have never been hurt like this. I, I just want to this. Let 30 days go by. I can. Evan sent the picture that I was getting ready to send with all four of them. Come on, guys. Four of who? What are their names? So there's four big players who are playing today. 
I'm going to stop. I think he is getting upset. Well, Stoney, yeah. to be I'm fair, just teasing. Stoney, you, you did find out Juju's last name today. Yeah. Schuster. No, uh, because oh. it, it could turn racial at what? some point. That's pretty good because they both went to USC. I can't That's really believe good. you got. I just, that hurts. Yeah. You'll For, get over it. <laughs> oh, boy. You'll get over it. But Evan's absolutely right. And and we can we can spend the people we out can, there that may really think he don't know it. Before. We can, listen, we can spend <laughs> we can spend a segment dissecting. Uh, you know, Guru's going to get into the women's game. No, I'm going to get into who I watch. But we can also, let me answer. We, we can also get yeah. into why it bothers me so much <laughs> that you that I like college. That no that one loves it, man. That, no, that you're saying you like it now. That's oh, that hurts. Yeah, you know. Uh, but Gavin's right. I so have you no don't recall me at that. all this year saying, dude, no. the women's game, it's incredible. I've watched more WNBA than ever. I told you I was betting on that. Like, I'm in. I'm locked in on women's college. I, I don't remember you saying that. Yeah. I feel like you don't this remember is kind of a lot. part of it, though, right? Because there's a lot of sports that people watch, you know, and they're not popular, but when they become popular, they feel like, well, this is my sport. You're right. invading on my turf. Why are you watching my there, sport? There are, I know I'm those like people. That. I'm Same not way. here. <laughs> You don't remember my WNBA takes dibs and I, I when we did the show? No. We, were, we had lines. Those we were mostly on them. Oh, Remember, you would guess and tr- you I, wouldn't know the nicknames of I the gotta team. I got to stop because now I'm getting snotty. Put your glasses back on. I'm getting <laughs> upset now. I actually do think that Goo has watched more oh women's games God. than you have just because he he, he gambles. I'm a homebody, dude. I, the women's hoop, they ball. <laughs> that bothers me. Dude. Minus, well, ask minus me minus what seven. I watched like, for this example, weekend. For example, like the mistake I made this year was bringing oh up gosh, Dalton Spadoni. Connect's name. No, that was the greatest. No, 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 no. He you went know on what? a run. I don't want you even watching him. <laughs> don't watch He's him. He's not your kid. He is, Mom. <laughs> like, oh, it's 90. Now I'm watching Tennessee. You know what? Don't. Don't you, watch Tennessee. See, you don't that's like my this share. That's, You're a, right. that's problem. That's right. I'd be like, hey, this is a great song. That's go right. listen to it. No. Or go here for some drinks. No. Which Evan gave me a restaurant over the weekend. Four stars. But I'm just... T- you don't like to share. No, I don't. That I don't like just, to share. That's just... I mean, it I'm depends shocked. on what. I'm not shocked, but I'm shocked. It depends on what. Anything. I don't like sharing food off Pay my plate. Pay it forward. Well, I, that I don't... Okay. You know, I order well, steak did. and potatoes. And can I have a bite of the steak? No, I hate that. I mean, come yeah. on. No, I ain't that guy. Can you root for LSU? Um, I'm rooting for LSU. I root for their players. That chick's I'm a... Bro- I, oh, oh, that no. chick, hey, I can't... Hey, yeah. whoa. No, my girl from Iowa, who I was hey, rooting for... Caitlin Clark. She's turned into a Clearly, player. you she is followed John her Mac- all year. Yeah, she's John McEnroe. She, yeah, she's not she, even the best she's player bratty. in college. Now, that is the... Who number. do you think is? I'm going to go with my girl at USC. I'm, that's just me. I, th- <sighs> she's a freshman, so... Well, I Take it said, from me, an expert on the women's game. It's Beckers. Now, what makes you an expert? I watched because Cheryl seven Miller's minutes. my favorite. We're not going to past players. <laughs> just, That's she's you, gonna. you know who goes to the past when they don't know the present. You would never invoke Cheryl Miller now if that, you were truly you, a fan of today's. I'm going to help you out. Moody. You need to. You Put need it to. Away. Yeah, you need to run that back. I won't. People that go to the past. That Stani, the past. Come on, man. Paige Beckers is. She's good. The, the, the female version she's of the Dalton best. Connect for you. And wow. She's, all I heard for G- you, Gino Ariama said she's the best player in college basketball, and he's from outside Philadelphia, so no, it counts. Hey, we got Brian Geltziler coming up at one o'clock, BG. and uh, we'll talk to him a little bit uh, about the Warriors. But I- I'm interested, you know, this weekend. No, you're not, because you asked me what I watched this weekend. I couldn't answer, right? Because I knew your answer was going to be everything. Well, because you can't, you didn't prioritize. No. You just. No, just I had it inundated answer. with I'll information you that you side. that you struggle to then uh, nothing. Um, no, but what was your priority this weekend if you're a sports fan? Is it the NCAA men? Was it the Giants? Two and two. They look like they're going to be fine. The San Francisco Giants. You're a sports fan. What'd you watch this weekend? You had you had your run of stuff uh, to watch. That segment was brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. I'm a gambler. I'm what you might call very good.
Guru on 95.7 The Game. Hey, we got Brian Geltzeiler coming up at 1 o'clock, and he is a host on Sirius XM NBA Radio, contributes on NBA TV. I think I've figured it out. I think I've, I've gotten to the, to the heart of something here. And it's, uh, it's one of the things that I've always tried to put my finger on, and it's when do you take a certain side of an argument? When there's, a, when there's an available outlet to be taken. So I remember, I'm going to use me. I'm going to use me. I won't use goo. So when the Warriors were 14-4, and four, I'm out. During that 18-game stretch, you could look at that stretch and be like, wow, you know, 14 and 4, good run for them. But you could say, I mean, they played Philly twice, once without Embiid. They beat Memphis, they beat Brooklyn, they beat Utah twice. They beat the Lakers without LeBron. They won, beat Charlotte, Washington, and Toronto. But we were excited about that. Now they've won four out of five on the road. They beat Miami, they beat Orlando, and they beat uh, uh, Charlotte and San Antonio. How come we're not as excited? Like why? Like why? When do when do we cite? Well, I'm not getting excited because they haven't beaten anybody. When a month or two, a month and a half ago, you could say, well, they still really haven't beaten anybody. When we got excited about them at 14 and four. Well, I can only speak for myself. That Saturday home game at Norm's party that they lost to San Antonio without Wimby and company, that that hurts. That takes away stuff. So I don't know what you want, Stiney. I, I like I'm I think I figured out what it is. You've been consistent with you don't think the Warriors are going on a run, but you like what you've seen from the youngsters. Yes. And I'm with you. But I'm with you to a point. I get off the bus on that doesn't supersede you know, because I think this team, I like to see them go on a run and try to win a chip. I won't be wrong until it's proven. But I don't know what you want in regard or what you're seeing from your vantage point or what you're not seeing or hearing about this four game well, I'm four seeing, one road trip. What if I said I'm and what if I said I'm seeing the same thing? Like I'm I've seen like to like me that would be fair. Well, okay. Well then my question is what happened to the excitement from from when they beat Milwaukee, when they beat Milwaukee, to now. Because it doesn't seem like there's as much excitement. And you know what? Okay. Maybe the answer is right here mm. from the 925. Because of the standings. So is it because the Warriors have not moved up in the standings? But when they were, when they had, so when they beat Milwaukee, I think they were nine. They were up a half game on the Lakers. So at that point, you were thinking, we can make a run. And get to six. And now, even if you make a run, you're probably not getting higher than nine. If like if that's it, I get it. Like that that I understand to some to some extent. Like you have not you've not moved up in the standings despite let's say winning four of your last five games. And you still and have got to be part yeah, of it. And and you've lost to some good teams. Like you said, they played their ass off. Still, you dropped Minnesota on the road. You know what I mean? So maybe that's something to do. That has something to do with it. But for me, they need these wins. I don't dare want to say that's the least you can do against the opponents you went up against. But, Stani, the one game on the road that kind of would have had me feeling a little better is if you could have got that one in Minnesota. But we'll find out tomorrow, and I'll feel a lot better if they can knock off a, you know, a Dallas. Uh, and what about this? My well, last part. Yeah. You let Houston get to a half game. And I think maybe that's done some residual damage to me about where's this thing. Like, I actually went to bed thinking, you know what, they might lose. They might be 11th. And I guess I've gotten up off the okay. map, but it's hard. Okay, you're not going to be 11. You probably won't be 11 if you take, like, I guess here's what I'm saying too, is I was looking at the standings, and I said to Evan, you know, they could, what, they got eight games left? Yeah. And I'm just being honest. Like, they could, if they finish six and two, okay, they still may be in ten. They still might be in ten if they lose one of those oh, games gotcha. to the Lakers. With facts, okay, like I guess what I'm saying is it's impossible to. It's right now it's almost impossible for them to generate 
like some real positivity heading into the postseason, or I should say the play-in, because they're kind of locked into ten. Well, I'll nine at what, the best. I'm gonna give so yeah. So if that like this is where honestly, Goo, if you're two games ahead of the Rockets and you think you can stave them off, but you can't get to eight, like how much time and effort would you invest in these last eight games? Well, that's a that's that's an awesome question. But I'll say this. Let's just fast forward. You mentioned six and two. Stani and, and who they're playing. They got the Lakers in there. They got Dallas a couple of times. If they could go six and two, because regardless of what, if they go two and six, that night of the playing game, uh, you got Daryl L. Johnson the first. One hundred percent of me is going to give you my fandom into that game. But I would feel better because it has nothing to do with what they're going to do on the court. They control that. But if they go, they go six and two, I'm feeling a lot better about whoever they play, where they play. That night of the playing game, like, you know what? They have hit in their stride. But what if they lost to the Lakers and they lost one of the games to the Mavericks? Then I would feel like I'm feeling right now the inevitable is they weren't good enough to get to the playoffs and they'll probably lose that playing game. And then it's about do they run it back or are there some moves? Hmm. So I think what we proved in the first hour and 40 minutes, I'm right. Elizabeth, on the Xfinity Mobile text hey. line. Elizabeth, and I. this is what I sensed, and it's not everybody. I can't get excited again. Damn. I've gotten excited a few times this season, and I've been disappointed. I can't do it again. Like, that. that's Elizabeth from the uh, 510. Yeah. But don't, I'll tell Liz, don't jump off the train yet. Because no, you go are, ahead. I'll no. tell her to. Way this to, thing, what if they win the play-in and get seven games? They're going to need to win two play-ins. Well, you're, you're correct. Okay. But that that's still on the board. See, that's what that's what I'm sensing from some Warrior fans. That sentiment right there. That, like, they can't do anything between now and the play-in to get anybody revved up. I, it, that's well, just no. the way it feels to I, me no, right Stein, now. It, shouldn't and, it be that way, though? No. Because wouldn't that be fools going? I'm just, so like, you go into the playoffs having won 10 of 12, and people are still going to be, well, we got to go down to L.A. and beat the Lakers. I, I do think that's it. It's I think the standings are a big part of it. Mm. I mean, last year, 44 wins got them to the sixth seed. If they were a sixth seed right now, yes, I, I think that's the biggest reason. If they were a sixth seed right now fighting for the sixth seed, and knowing you got seven game series coming, yep. as opposed to hopefully two, not just one playing game. I don't know, but I'll tell you this, Don, and you can be like, whatever, Goo. Tomorrow's a big deal for me. I know they can't stand that they're not playing well at home, but forget where they're playing. Dallas is a top tier, one of the top tier teams. The, the, the Warriors owe them. If 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 that four and one is something, it should manifest tomorrow. Like, and what are we asking? Not to go. There's only one game tomorrow, but if they beat Dallas on a Tuesday night with Steph Curry, Dre, and Clay, that should be that should be. Podjemski, Trace Jackson, Davis, and Moody. This the team youngsters. Needs, this team needs energy. This team needs energy right now. Get it home the last eight games. Did it, you see the boxes? Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. The boss tweeted yesterday. Uh, oh boy. Uh, no, I didn't. Well, you've been off X. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm gonna find out if you own it, but. Yeah, uh, no. Fact, GP2 every, got a technical, okay. and the game was over, and he tweeted out he saw a Kerr, not make GP2 talk to uh, Pop, but they were talking. It was almost as if he was having them apologize, and he was asking, I wonder what GP did, GP2 did to get to Tech. He threw the ball against the stanchion. That's all he did. Well, then, didn't, I, no, didn't see I, that. no, I didn't see that. Yeah, I want, they scored and he threw the ball against so, the stanchion. Well, the question is, what, what could they have been talking about? Because it looked like Kerr. Pop and GP2. I don't know. Mm. There's a lot. To, I don't, but so he got the tech for throwing the ball against the stanchion. Yeah, he took it out of the rim and threw it against the stanchion and it ricocheted, but you can't do that. Although, somebody <laughs> for the Warriors did that this year and they just said, that's fine. <laughs> I have a feeling I know who uh, it was. I don't remember. Uh, Eric's in San Francisco. What's up, Eric? How you doing, man? Hey, guy. Hey. Um, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to talk on... Uh, Two quick points sure. about basically the Warriors 
expectations in the playoffs mm-hmm. and a decision I think that the Warriors are going to have to make in the offseason. The first point is I don't know where fans – I'm a season ticket holder since 2010. I've seen the, the rise of the Warriors. I don't know where fans are thinking they're going to make a run because when you take – if you look over the past four seasons, if you take out the 40 games – of the 15 and 5 stretch to end the 2021 stretch and the 18 and 2 stretch to start the next season, the Warriors are 147 and 123 over the past four seasons. And then other than the three play or the four playoff series they won in their championship run, they haven't, <laughs> they won one playoff series in game seven against the Kings. Then they lost the play in game and they lost the Lakers. So where do people think they're going to go on some mythical run to a championship? Which leads me to my second point, which is I really think the Warriors are going to have to decide at the end of the year, are they Danny Ainge or Jeannie Buss? And what I mean by that is when Ainge decided to blow up the Celtics a year early and recoup draft picks, he shipped off all the big three at Boston, and they rebuilt their team quickly. Jeannie Buss gave Kobe Bryant a two-year $50 million extension, and the Lakers didn't make the playoffs for five consecutive seasons. And if LeBron hadn't thrown them a lifeline, I don't think they win the championship in 20, which means basically they threw away a decade. So I'm cool with the Warriors saying, you know what, we want to give a dignified send-off to the big three. But I, I just don't see where people think that mysteriously, with four seasons of evidence, that this team is going to make any run. And I really think that they really have to decide, are we Danny Ainge or Jeannie Buss at the end of the year? That's just my thoughts. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I'll leave you with this. Everything you said is, I, I don't disagree, but I'm hoping they go on a run. If they were to lose in the plan, I'm being real enough to share with you guys, we saw this coming. And again, Steiny, I, I operate on hope. But I know you're like, goo, they went 4-1 and on that road trip, and I feel like you think well, I, I would be feeling more confident, but I guess I'm not because of who they played. But we'll find out, and... What they tend to do or what they do in regard to Danny Ainge or Jeannie Buss, we'll see. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm just enjoying this while we can. Eight games left. Well, that, I guess there it is. And I, I know you're going to say I'm, I'm picking at you. Yeah. You're not enjoying it. Because they just won four on the road. And I'm not going to get excited. I'm not. That doesn't mean, like, we're, like, we're 74 in, partner. And I'm like Elizabeth, a part of, that hit me. Like, you didn't enjoy, you haven't enjoyed the last two games? Yeah, I've been waiting for a metamorphosis for a while. And it may come, but that five-game road trip after the Draymond debacle and everything that went in there, you know, off the court, took something out of me. But I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I just, I can't tell you right now they're going to beat a good team when they face them next. And that's why tomorrow is interesting for me. And if they lose, somehow lose to Dallas, it still is, okay, if you do play the Lakers in L.A., can you win that game? And you're going to need Jonathan Kaminga to, to win healthy. another game. No doubt, but I'll, we'll take it one step at a time. But I, I guess that's where... So, I, I am with Eric. You going to jump in there, you? I was going to say, it feels like this team is kind of a rerun. Even, mm. like, they've gone 4-5 and five on the road before. They've played well on the road. They've beaten some bad teams. They've beaten a few good teams. But what has changed from now since, I don't know, the turn of the new year? Like, they've dug themselves out of the hole, and that's been impressive, but it feels like you're kind of watching the same movie over and over again. I think that's why people are not as excited about what happened on the road. But and, and Wiggins he, has been playing better, but people laugh at that. Oh, because he, had, he, had, he didn't have a good game yesterday, but... Yeah. Like it to answer Evans' shoot. question. Like, what if that was my answer? It looks like Wiggins is engaged. If you look I, at the totality you know, of the last, I think people. 20, I, I'm going to be honest. Ten with games. You. I think people are hiding behind make a run mm. without being specific about what wow. that means. Wow. To me, making a run means you win a series, at least. But now you got to go through all that to get to that. This is, but this is where I am with Eric. So, if you. Two years ago, the Warriors won a title. Here's my quote. To me, what was a big reason they won it? Their start. Okay? But there's also something that the happened. The year before that they got rest when they lost in the play-in. Well, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to be more specific. 
The reason that Steph Curry was able to have the game four that he had in the NBA Finals was because he missed uh-huh. the last month of the regular season. <sighs> he missed a month and then got into the playoffs after not playing a month and being able to build up, if you're not, if you remember, off the bench in that first game. All right, so Curry has a whole month off, and they make that run. Then they play all of last year, and they win 44 games. Because the league, the records were the records, they were a six seed. They they made a, what they win, six of eight, Evan found out, or eight of ten to finish the year? To get yeah, the they six. finished eight and two. So they made ten. six a goal, if I'm not mistaken. They get to six, favorable matchup, beat the Kings. Take nothing yeah. away from it. Okay, now we bring back the same team again. They're going to win about the same amount of games, but they're coming from the play-in. Like, that is... I get, Eric's. what are we doing? Like, what is a run? You're going to win two road games and knock off the Denver Nuggets? Well, I, I just think... And I think, like, and I think they're playing pretty hard right now. Like, they're... They're going to have to play good down the stretch, play well down the stretch. They're going to have to win two play-in games. Then they're going to have to muster up an incredible series. Well, that's the thing. It's not a successful season if you don't even get past the first round. But in a way, with everything that's happened and how much basketball they have to play, like the final month of the season will be 17 games in 30 days. The last week of this season is eight games in 14 days. Oh, my God. If you win two elimination games in a way, I, I would be impressed. Like it's not a successful year by any means, mm-hmm. but just what they're doing with the amount of games that they have to play, it's pretty ridiculous. It is. It is. And and that's where, like, to me, Steve Kerr has to manage the veterans with the young guys, and it's it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Big Smooth and Hayward. What's up, Big Smooth? Hey, gentlemen, how you guys doing? Hey. Um, I'm gonna tell you. First of all, great question. Let me tell you what. What? Well, I'm. I'm just kind of sitting on the fence, hoping, but not really high expectations. Do you remember when the Warriors lost to uh, the Lakers? Steve Kerr came out and said, and I and I'm uh, paraphrasing. He said the the Lakers overpowered us. They overwhelmed us. Right. Yeah. So you would think if he would say that, that in the off season they would correct that. The Warriors didn't do it. So what's going to be different now when they play the Lakers? If they overwhelmed from last year, what thing can you point to and say, oh, not this year because we did this? There's not one thing I can see that would make a difference in them having to go against the Lakers. And I, and I, I wish I could say, oh, yeah, this year we got, but I don't see any difference. And then what did we do to, over, what did we do to change that we would be able to beat Denver? I, that's, what I, that's what it is. I don't see something that we've done that would be able to overthrow the Lakers or Denver because these are bigger teams, and I don't see us. We TV. I mean, uh, Davis can't do that. Uh, Looney, we already saw what happened last year. So yeah, can they win a couple of games with with them going with Steph going nuclear? Sure, but I don't see them being able to win two or three series. I can't see it, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. It's just, I'm just being realistic. Appreciate it, Smoothie. <laughs> what you got? Four one five with a great one liner. Don't forget, the Lakers don't have Shut Lonnie up. Walker this year. Oh, maybe you can go in there and steal one. Uh here's what uh, this is my this is what Big Smoothie was referring to. This was after the game the Warriors lost to the Lakers last year, Game Six. To be fair, Steve Kerr. To be fair. I think this team ultimately maxed out. We were barely in the playoff picture most of the year. This is not a championship team. Are they better than last year, the Warriors, right now? I would say they are. I will say they are. Because Jonathan Kaminga last year was was a nothing in the in the most important time, which was playoff time. So, Stanley, I'm going to answer that question. Right now, I believe they are. Fully healthy, they are better. And you got the emergence of Pods and TJD. So I would like, and and they're about to surpass that win. Well, yeah, 40, for, they got action. But the, the only reason they're better is because we're all assuming 
that if Draymond plays more, they're better. Pretty much. I don't. I don't like. I don't think. But they're the better. win total is gonna. They got a chance to exceed it. Yeah, it'll be the same. Well, two or three over. Okay. Yeah. But. But I hear what. Yeah. But they're gonna be in a worse spot. Now that yeah man they don't get they don't get the automatic series. Nope. Uh, Big D's at the hospital. He's having lunch. It's the lunch special. Yeah. With Big D at the hospital. What are we having today for lunch, Big D? Give me some salami, baby. Hey, you know what? I had a sandwich, a bag of Fritos, Diet Coke. You know, try to keep it, try to keep it light today. Healthy. No, I'm on my feet. There you go. <laughs> hey, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll be you know, talk about the Warriors. You know, it's like a cliffhanger, man. Where hey, all fans are hanging off the side of a cliff, trying to get up to watch them. But you know what? They're inconsistent. And you know what? The next game they play, they might get blown out, and we were all juiced up getting ready for the play in. It ain't going to happen, man. I'm still locking it in for one round dismiss. But uh, I renamed the three core for you guys. It's called oh. Two Men and a Baby. And you know who the baby is. <laughs> you guys take care. I love you. Bye bye. We love you. Oops. too. But we got to give ones where they're due. Well, that's not it. fair to call Curry a baby. Two men and a baby faced assassin? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just kidding. No. Oh man, what? That is two men and a baby. I like it. <laughs> I get and it. are you worried? Get... Worried about what? 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 Your teeth, teeth look wider. Do they? Did you get the? Let me see. A little bit. And I'm not going to hold the players accountable. <laughs> Where did they? <laughs> it's like all they do is run through the tape. No, but that's, that's, that's more than the, the timing of it is what's incredible. Yeah. Producers and board ops need a 30 for 30. You, like the greatest ones. The, the, just an hour ago, I said something. Evan didn't know I was going to say it before the show. And, just that quick. You give them a lot of stuff to pick through. Well, you do too. I think you give them more. Can I tell you what I watched? Sure. It's 50-50. College basketball. The, Which one? I men or women? everything. Be more specific because you're such a women's fan. The, the, the women's first because they oh, started sure. earlier. Okay. okay, but I've been on it. But yeah, college what, basketball. What do you think this about when, when, when I watched Ari everything? Aime, when UConn drops into that 2 3 zone, Ariane likes to put Beckers on that back baseline. Him him what do you, yeah. Don't you think they, I mean, they're unbeatable? No, I don't. They are beatable. Yeah, I don't know. I watch. What you go ahead? What did you watch? Oh, I just said college basketball, and that's how you're going to end. There's yeah. no elaboration. No, that was I said college basketball. So you didn't watch the Warriors? I said I taped everything. I watch everything, man. Boy, Stoney, it's not all in the family and Archie Bunker with one TV. It ain't the seventies. I got <laughs> all kind. I got a casino going on at the crib. I'm watching. Right. What did what? Steph say? I see everything. Yeah, that's me with my sports. Watch the A's. Everything. Good God, the A's are just, gosh. You, you can stop taking okay. it. <laughs> the Giants, two and two big wins for Tony. Walk off walk, Donnie. Did you know that? Yesterday in the town. Uh, I did. Wonderful. I think the Giants have action. Yeah, yesterday wasn't the best game. They, Yeah, Snell will be back. And it's not I got a problem with their third place. Lamont Wade Jr., he okay. plays hard. He's not a three hitter. Is that something that we can save till yeah, after sure. the break? Of course. Okay. Lamont Wade. Junior. Gotta move him to the two spot, <laughs> I would think. I didn't say that. I either. don't like Solaire at two. I know that. He hey. What? <laughs> he looks like Hercules at the plate. Yeah, that's all you gotta matters. hit the ball though. Uh 888 957 9570 is the number. Warrior fans. Where you at? You calling them out. You you don't feel something. I know. The reason I the, listen. The Warrior fans, there are a lot of Warrior fans out there that say they've kind of given up on this team or say they haven't given up on this team, but they kind of have. And the reason I know they have is because you just won four in a row on the road and and it's it's not enough. S season high, six games over 500. I mean... How come we're not more excited? 888-957-9570 is the number. That segment was brought to you by Safeway. That's really important. Head to Safeway this week for Challenge or Danish Creamery Butter. Selected varieties, $2.97 each. Limit four. Signature select classic ham. Shank half or whole.
Stop hating on Moody. He stinks. No, you stink. Now, back to <laughs> Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Stop asking why Pods was playing ahead of Moody. Who's doing that? People. Well, oh. you need to be able to make a shot. Moody hit two threes finally. yesterday. I was happy for him. He's finally starting to make some shots. Pots That's why I'm making a couple more. Too. Yep. Uh, if the boss is listening, I got his answer as to why. What was even the question? Uh, why GP2, why Kerr had GP2 talking to Pop? The end of the game, the Spurs were up, the Warriors were up four. GP2 closed out on a Wimby three, and I guess Pop had took issue with that, so Kerr grabbed him, was it and a they foul? chopped it up. No foul. Okay, then what's Popovich crying I, about? He's got it good right now anyway, getting he's paid. He's had it good for the last 10 years when they've it. stunk. But he still wanted the best to ever do it. Did it. Oh. Is he doing a great job this year? I believe so. <laughs> you think so? No, that's what I'm oh, doing no, you. they got to get him some help. You, that's how you like, answer Like, when do we put the jacket of winning on Wimby? Three, he, two more years, three more years? Do, do you believe that Clay Thompson is stay, taking a step back? Physically, I do. I believe so. When he sets his feet, watch out, Jack. I got a guy. He'll rename nameless. He, he takes care of me. Player. I'll call him the cameraman. He goes, Goo, Draymond was only suspended one game in the series. I go, no, duh. So I guess I said it like he was duh. It was game five. They right. got blown out with 40 burgers from Kyrie, as Evan said it, and LeBron. Just two great uh, performances in one NBA final history in one game. And then game seven. This is an interesting thing for the 5 one Steiny, I believe they were better in the fourth quarter last year. But this year they're better throughout the games. Well, where does that really get you? Because if you tell the me... the same as you were last year. But the blown leads, they're I mean, they can't sustain team. it. They're a 44-win team. Yeah. Well, they can pass. I know you don't like 46 47, but. So, okay, would you rather have 46 and coming at the 10 spot or 44 from the 6? Well, I'll do the 44 from the 6. Yeah. Well, it benefited you last year now. Yeah. I would love for Sack to fall to nine and then that begging. Playing. Now, why would you this say is that? Begging. No, easier don't mean begging. Now, now the path so of you want the Kings resistance. to lose the bet to me. You want no, the Kings to lose it's the over. bet. Dude, I forgot. It's not over. For me, it, no. This is what, like, why do you do this? Now that can't happen because it'll affect me in my pocket, so it can't be sacked. It's a drink, Goo, that I'll probably never get. First, that, it's a drink that you'll never pay me on anyway. What's first, the big deal? Uh, hold on. It was dinner. <laughs> now it's dinner. Yeah. They both dinner? Both dinner. Okay, so yeah. we'll... 25 we'll road wins. For, dude, it's amazing what the fans remember. I'm getting hit up all day yesterday on Twitter. People talking about the bet. They need two twenty five. Yeah. They got to go. Uh, I don't like what are they now? Dallas. Twenty-two. Yeah, I don't like. They got to win three out of four on the road. And they got L. A. That's a big one. They got the Lakers on the road. Yeah. Dallas on the road. Yeah. Houston on the road. I feel like which they're going to put Houston. Which is the back to back? Is Houston you, the second game of the back to back? Houston's the first. First it's on Thursday. Okay, I could see Dallas mailing that game in yesterday, like Popovich did. They're rolling right they, now, Steiny. Yeah. Here, here. What do you mean he mailed it in? <laughs> Mail it in. They didn't play anybody. So I'll oh, tell I was you, like, who is who what? Played Wendy. The G, first G League's first. <laughs> Stop I can take me. the ball from Wimby, Stiney, if he got it low. Like, you're like, you might be able to. <laughs> Give me that. Oh, my gosh. This guy's <laughs> delusional. <laughs> Stiney, he got to get stronger. I had 40, run. 20, and 9 the other night, and Guru's oh, like, I could strip badass. him. I'm just saying, on his weakest I moments. Would, I'll tell you what I would pay. Like, I'd, I'd, pay viral. I'd pay two weeks' salary to see what? Victor Wembanyama dunk on Daryl the Guru well, Johnson. That would, okay, that what's fun about oh, let me that? Let you try to big boy him like Wiggins oh. tried to big boy him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love the new wig, but he was like, no, no, no. Quietly, Wemby got his revenge on TJD. He, saw nobody's that? talking about it, dude. That two, get because, off me. I remember and had one made the free throw. Well, he's not TJD. He's I'm Victor Wembanyama. I'm gonna give you one. Eat a sandwich. Dude, that boy needs some bricks in his pocket. Eat hot links and Hormel chili. All that in the offseason. You got to add LBSs, man. Um, The Giants and Warriors have the same shot at a title. That's where I'm at, Dylan. Now, who has that thought on a Monday? I mean, if you want me to be completely honest, I don't think anybody in their right mind would say the Warriors right now have a better chance to win the NBA Finals 
than the San Francisco Giants to win the World Series. Now that's funny you say that. And I see it's, the sparkle it's in your eyes. Obvious. I feel like if you let us rewind to it, opening night in the in the NBA well, and I'm what not. we were feeling, right I would now. say the Giants don't have a Steph Curry. Well, no, that's why I'm saying right now. Yeah, well, yeah. The Giants, they look like a they playoff They got no team. doubt about okay. it. Well, yeah. once you're in, in the baseball, it's not like basketball. Well, the uh, the Warriors can the Giants get in have too. a better chance to win it well, all. Well, it's easier to say that now because we've that's seen a lot I'm of saying the Warrior like, That's the only reason I'm saying it. But you don't get any credit. Because it's right. Because yeah. I'm right. Because the Giants look like they have action. Yeah. They look Are you telling me ask you a question? Two and two. I mean, you know, because you're... You, Go ahead. You like to talk <laughs> big. <laughs> you like to talk big at times. Okay, so tomorrow... We gonna come in here. We gonna we gonna come in here and spend time talking about the two women's games. Oh, I swear. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is bird magic. This which is, one's which? Well, there's four of them. The bird magic is uh, our uh, Iowa and and uh, our LSU. Okay. And then I, and who, I just threw who's this bird out. And who's magic? Look, it don't matter. Who gives the f? And you probably ain't even gonna watch it. Uh and then the Hakeem and Pat Ewing, that those were two. That's what I give the last game, UConn and USC. Hey, but so you're going to familiarize yourself with the rosters I've already today. done that. My point is I need the men's game to have this, but you can't, Stoney, because the good dudes leave early. Not not the guy from Tennessee. Now you're claiming He plays six years. Now you're going <laughs> to He got me, his let AARP. How, let me see where he gets drafted. Let me see how his pro career plays out, and I'll tell you if he's my guy. He might be a lottery. I'm going 13th. He might be a he might be a lottery. By the way, you what are the biggest problem the league has right now? Spin on. Did you hear my little rant about this this morning? Did not. And I don't know what there you was did. a few. I don't he was know working. What, I don't know what you do about it, but you got to do something about these gutless teams that trade a draft pick, but protect it. Oh, uh, is this team uh, located in Utah? Yes, it is. Oh, boy. So the Utah Jazz, you, you want to talk about what's wrong, absolutely wrong with the NBA. Here it is. The Utah Jazz are in a draft situation where if they get a top 10 pick, they lose it. They lose it. Oh, my goodness. So... They were 26 and 26 around the trade deadline. This is why you said they Hanging were around 9 or 10. Since then, they're 3 and 26, I believe. Wow, man. Quinn Snyder. They got rid of three rotation He's players. He's not their coach I, it anymore. It was a joke, Donnie. Go ahead. He's Atlanta. So the Utah Jazz were 26 and 26. And they quit. And they've won three games since then. Why? Because they don't want to lose a top 10 Man. pick. Do you blame so them? I blame them for not competing. Well, you said the yes. league, too. The league, this like, is not on the players. This is about yeah. on their owner. Like That, what, it's that so, is weak. It's, it's a joke. And you said they were going to quit. Evan said it first. Did, did Evan say it? Yeah. Well, they traded a starter at the deadline, and they were Thank good. All right, okay. They traded no, like I'll, two of their top eight players. and it, it, It's not like... They traded a, three guys in their top eight, they traded. Yeah, they got rid of Fontecchio. Fontecchio! And I forget the other guy, but... Jerry Lewis? Rookie? Potentially. But basically, they said... It's not like a team at the beginning of the... Like the Spurs. No one thought they were going to win. They're going to tank. They're going to do whatever. The Jazz legitimately had belief that exactly. they could be a postseason team exactly. and the front office said we don't want to be exactly we can't be but i understand i'm not condoning it but well i understand okay. well when okay well then you the understand sacrifice. horse bleep basketball the last month of the season yeah, it's terrible because that's exactly yeah. what we're looking at no doubt about it's a, it it's a joke and you you got well evan and you called it and they've done nothing but master that and let me tell you what's going to happen they're not getting anybody who's going to impact that team Who's going to come right in and impact that? Oh, we got to keep our eighth pick. Necti. I mean, put Mark in. that player. Put, he should be playing high-level basketball. That That's just weak. 880. Oh, here's the other thing. And I got some trivia for you three. Oh, okay. You want to do it now? Yeah. Go ahead. All right, so. Spadoni, listen music, up. Please? Yeah, uh, Evan, listen Jeez. up. This is a doozy. There's, there's some math I involved. Not. I guess not. Well, Wow. The Warriors have played 74 basketball games this season. Can you three name, with one guess only a piece, so we can move on, can you three name how many dunks they have on the season? 
Oh, boy. I got the answer. I just blew me away. Well, there's probably several hundred answers. I don't even consider that All a I need question. is a number, guys. Yeah, I'm not answering. Sorry, he took off his headphones. He can't even hear us. Mr. Math, let me... That's not a trivia. Go, I will go... Go ahead, Spadoni. You and me, no. buddy. And Evan's going to try... A dunk a game gets you 70, 74, you said? Yeah. Give me 74 on the dot. A I gotta okay. go way over. Yeah, oh my, like like one hundred and twenty-five. Oh my god! I got you. And I'll go way this is over that. Right go ahead. All right. Yeah, oh, right. one twenty-six. That is that your answer? Yes. Three hundred and thirty-three. But you went over. Dude, no, I'm I like it that many dunks. I went one hundred and twenty-six. No, but when you before you gave that, you were like, no, that's what well, you got to go way over. I was and like, I he's was. about to guess it. He guessed one twenty-five, and the answer was three hundred and fifty. Three hundred thirty-three. Okay, yeah, no, it was but way I thought over. you were gonna say no, more than one twenty-six. I said one twenty-six. Yeah, that's how you win in the Price Is Right. Oh, I just yes. won. Not my Price Is Right. You well, how do you win get, in yours? You got to get that. further you away. You got to get the actual number. All three prices were wrong. No doubt, Stoney. You don't. You don't win that one, but, buddy. No, you do win the showcase. Then I won the showcase. If you're that far off, but no. you were the closest, you don't win. Did you ever see a person bet one dollar? When they think the other person went over. Yeah, and jock for Right. <laughs> so you bet, no, in the price is right. If the first show, can, Spadone's nodding. Do you want to explain this to him? No, you're going, no, it's right. You never, you can't go over. Like, that's the whole point of price so is Stani right. So Stani would have, you he would have won that. Give me the showcase. Because he was under and he was the yeah. closest to it. Give me the, I'm out. I'm give me the uh, Polestar car. Boy. Give me the uh, Some give me that wine and cheese. give me that hundred and forty eight thousand dollar RV. Don't forget the jet skis. I'll take a jet ski. I'll sell. Well, we don't you know have what? much on the Johnson. Have show. you ever jet skied, Goo? Yeah, come on. I'll I'm, give I'll give you my jet ski. Yeah, Kane has three of them. My guy Kane. He? Kane Carrington met him at the oh. party. The trucker. I guess. Yeah, I was more of a let's make a deal guy. I was Mario. Joker's wild, man. Joker's wild. Was I'm trying Jack to find out there's actually a lot of dunks this year. Jack Riley. Oh, it's 333. <laughs> Look at their Twitter, Warriors Twitter. They put no, out I'm a saying tweet. in comparison to the rest of oh, the league. I don't what? Like give, to me, dunk a lot. give me the <laughs> See, I should have said who has the most. How many dunks do you think Jokic has this year? No. More than Draymond. Now that Evan, you oh Spadoni, seven feet tall, but he does not dunk what? as much as I, you think he does. It's no, like he a doesn't. rarity when he I'd does. Say actually. thirty-five. I'm gonna say. Do we know for sure? Is there a stat on this? I'm gonna Google it. Yeah, it's probably Guru's homepage. I'm gonna say now that's a four. <laughs> I'm gonna say seventy-eight. One a game. About one a yeah. game. Dude, they look good, man. By the way, uh, the morning show. Go I don't ahead. know about dunks, but they are fourth fewest in shots inside the restricted area. Well, then, the morning show uh, brought something up earlier today. Uh, Joey Bart's been released. Night-night. What are they called? Designated for assignment? Now, hold on. Not designated. Oh, I put out, go ahead. Let me, I'm me. i just stepping on you. Well, no, maybe I got something Because my wrong. material was taken this morning by the roast, but go ahead. Okay, why don't you start? Because I know that feeling. I got the dunk number when you guys are ready. Oh, let's hear that first. That's what All right, so guess. How many guests? So, so Nikola Jokic, this season. I'm saying 35. I'm okay. going 27. Uh, I'm right. 12. Here. It's wow. Evan Giddings, right there. One off. He's 13 for 14. He's had 14 Dude, dunk attempts, yes. and he's made 13 of them. Now do Draymond. Why is that incredible to me, dude? Wow. That's how skilled he is. Think about Shaq. Can we ask that? that? That thing would have been up at 190. You wow! Don't even need to dunk, Shaq. They were saying his rookie season, Shaq had like 350 dunks. <laughs> so, more than Draymond, more. six for six on dunks this year. Got him. See, Got I would have thought he had more than six. Seriously, because he when comes he, down the middle a lot. And when he keeps that fake pass and a fake handoff and flood, he still flushes six times. <laughs> but I'm saying, Jokic uh, has twice as many dunks as Draymond. So, the morning show. Uh, today was talking so Joey Bart, the catcher, DFA, that was a, high, a big prospect for the Forty Nine of Forty Nine for the Giants. Uh, he's been designated for assignment. So I heard these guys talking about, you know, I don't think they used the. They were trying to be nice. They're good, good kids there in the morning. They didn't want to use the phrase "bust." I don't think. So they used the word like "mistake" or "who was the," you know, which was the biggest disappointment. And they were talking about Joey Bart, James Wiseman, and Trey Lance. The 49ers drafted Trey Lance. 
the Warriors drafted Wiseman, and the Giants drafted Joey Bart. Like, which of those three was the most disappointing? And of course, because I can't just answer a question simply, I said, well, wait a minute. Is it the biggest mistake for the team, or is it the player who was the most disappointing? Because to me, it's two different things. How would you answer that, Gil? I And I put it on our vine yesterday, and I put bust. But I guess, Donnie, I don't feel like you could separate the two. It's It's got to be all of it. And the reason I want to say James Wiseman and I'm not is you still well, could fall on Steph Curry, the Warriors. Okay, that's going to hurt you. It's hurting you, but it'll hurt greater later. I got to go with Trey Lance. <laughs> I, I, I just do, Stani. You moved up in the draft. You spent capital to get this guy, right. and he gave you three starts. How many? Five starts. And now you could say Brock Purdy people like get you, but that doesn't make the mistake. Like that was a big miss. I'm confused. So, Wiseman, you're saying you? No, he's saying Lance. Oh, I'm saying Lance. Oh, Trey Lance. Saying, yeah. yeah. So you, I put Wiseman. Are you confused because you you yeah, agree? Yeah. Yeah, because we talked about it before, and he said Wiseman, and I thought we were going to get into a conversation about it. But you make everything you and I. Well, I know now we got to agree, man. and now we, no, this will just flame to you, out. Now. The way you just said that, you hit me, and I was like, you know what? I'm. Uh, I didn't know I was on. So I convinced you. Wow. <laughs> I don't. I said, no, it just made some like you know what? It's Trey Lance for me. Yeah, me too. The Warriors earned that and got we'll the... see you next week. The, <laughs> I, I actually, I think I'd take Joey Bart. But why, Evan? Bart. His career's over. I'll try to... I'll like, try Trey to Lance has a chance to be an actual quarterback. James Wiseman is still in the league. I know these guys aren't what you wanted them to be, but... What if I said to that, Evan, all three aren't going to benefit whatever these three individuals go... All three are different locales, so nobody's benefiting from if they're great or later. They didn't work out. True. Well, then true. it becomes bigger a b- bigger mistake. Well, if I, I guess James Wiseman Lance, turns into a player. The Warriors look bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I my mind kind of goes bad. to which. But right now they are so far from which that. pick. Well, they hurt look better the franchise than the, other teams. the most. They like, look better to me than the other two teams. Like which pick hurt the franchise the most? That and wow, I, can't I also say think it's a hard Niners question thing. because I can't say the Niners. Right. Well, and and, and the and but Wiseman they still won a championship <laughs> with him on the roster. So is it Bart? Also, I think they it's won one hundred and seven with him. <laughs> so I you can make a case for all three. I think to me, that's interesting, man. To me, the biggest mistake that the, that that's an organization made it's easy is the Niners. They made it. They made the biggest mistake. They got to clean it up with Brock Purdy, though. Wow. But I, I look at those as two separate things because they paid the most for that. Mistake. They moved up all in right. the draft. All right. They gave up two first round picks. Some say yeah. three. Even though the one was just a swap, and they and the player that they've drafted I, still I, might not be an NFL player. Could, but you could also make the case like, okay, what if I? I know it's a little unfair. No, go ahead. What if one of those three first round picks is the difference in the Super Bowl this year? Oh my God! What do you mean? Like, like what a, if you used one of those picks on? Because they didn't have any draft, you know, on an offensive lineman or on, I don't know, a, a linebacker could make it. You, you, you know or what I'm saying? DD. Like, yeah. So they don't. I actually don't follow. Just repeat. They it. could have redistributed that capital right. and turned it into a player or three right. to help that them win. Might have been the difference in this year's Super Bowl. Yeah, that that's kind of why I think it was a big mistake. Yeah. No, I know, but I'm saying it as far as which pick hurt the franchise the most. Oh. I mean, when I look at James, all I know is when I look at James Wiseman, I don't think he's very good. But right now it's telling us that. He's telling us that. But I also look at the draft that James Wiseman was in. This is James Wiseman. And the bottom line is, there's to me, that's not a good draft. They they un to me even if I could say LaMelo Ball, well, he's played not that he's Magic Johnson, but he's, he's played, played fifty eight games in the last two years. But okay. like, and, 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 and I would and say to that study real quick, at least we got a re okay. You so be, he's injured. But right. when he's not injured, he was an all-star and rookie of the year. Like, you know what I mean? Chain. But but this is where if you go, why didn't the Warriors draft LaMelo Ball? I think because of his dad. And I think because they had Steph Curry, they had Klay Thompson, and they had Jordan Poole who was coming off that. Yeah. Wasn't he coming off the 
nice little play-in game series. But they had three guards. So to me, and and also now we're four years into the guy's career. Who the hell's Lamelo Ball? I don't think he's a okay huge difference maker. And then you what look about at, Halliburton, who you I, brought up. I'm not holding. That. You you can't. This is my. You can't hold it against one team for not drafting a guy at two when he falls all the way to twelve, and he's also a guard. That's why they didn't pick him. That's why to me, you know, the the Wiseman. I'm, you're not looking at. Oh, they could have had Jordan behind him. They could Patrick Patterson yeah. or Patrick Williams, Isaac Okoro. I thought he was going to be good. Killian Hayes, yeah. Obi Toppin. Who's helping the Jaylen? Pacers? He's no helping. Star. It, yeah, like the, uh, they happen to have the number two pick in a terrible draft. Well, you said this, Donnie. That's I not remember their fault. We were a three man show. You know what, Goo? I can't do a Rick Tittle, Donnie. I would draft the best player. And had they done that, maybe that would have been Ball or Halliburton. Would would Ball have dramatically changed their fortunes from where they're at now? Playing 29 games a year for the last two years. Unless you, well, you know what? I actually was thinking about this the other day. What kind of person are you? Not you. What kind? Let me ask you this, Evan. What kind of person are you? Okay, so Lamelo Ball's played. What kind of questions that? You're, you're going to find out. Boy, I was like, you're going to find out because this is this is bigger than sports. I just want to know what pe- how people view this stuff. So the Warriors didn't draft Lamelo Ball. In the last two years, he's played fifty-eight games, twenty-nine. He, you know, doesn't play. He's hurt. Do you believe that in another world, had he been drafted by the Warriors, he'd be healthy? Oh, probably not. But they also had a nice young guard who was pretty good that got hurt a lot early in his career. Talk Turn- to me, Steph Curry. Oh. Okay, and that's how I live my life. That that's my, my alley. Like right. to see if they drafted if they, Lamelo like Ball, his hand wouldn't have got have, broken. Right, right. they would have won yeah. three they titles. Have since then. Yeah, right. like things just. Ch- that's how I look at it. But so it, he has nothing to do with his durability. He he would have been healthy under Rick Celebrini. Well, I'll say this to that. But the Charlotte I, I Hornets when you're trainer sad as they are is a hack. I'll say this, Donnie. I don't know what's going on in 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 Charlotte, but I will say this. I think if they were better. He might have battled back to try. They, you know, it was one of them. Just call the dogs off. What are we doing here? You're you're halfway hurt, or you're seventy percent hurt. You're you're done, finito. But I just he would be a piece to maybe the future. Not saying he's Steph by any means, but my goodness, James Wiseman has gone to another and team, and Gary now he's Payton having another. Pre- yeah, you don't have Gary Payton a second. Well, let me ask a different version of this. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm curious. No, no, no. Who is the most disappointing of the three? Joey Bart's the only one that actually uh, played in college. Oh, oh, oh! You meant okay. okay I, I'm I gonna thought, say this. I thought you meant of the three. I me thought you meant first. like Wiseman or yeah. Ball, who's been more disappointed. Oh, well, I'm gonna say James easily, Wiseman, easily Ball, because Trey Lance yeah, was never seven foot. You can't be seven foot on a football field. I thought James Wiseman was seven foot and could do a little. You know what I'm saying? So to waste that and not be able to use that to your advantage. Or give us some glimpse or hope. But I'm, I'm going to say Wiseman. But I'm Donnie. always fascinated by the idea that James Wiseman maybe never was and never will be an NBA player. He just won't. The Warriors, dra- they may as well have drafted a backup Division wow, Three man. center. Wow. Like, like how c- if James Wiseman were never destined to be any good in the NBA or just just is not an NBA player. How's that his fault? That's all on the way. It's like, who's the guy out of the Cavalier? Anthony Bennett. Oh, boy. Oh, what a bust he was. No, he wasn't. He never was any good. Wow. He never could play in the NBA. But it's the, the, okay, so. That's all on the organization. And they're the candy. one. Yeah, huh? but there you go. The Clippers. He had a couple years. But what about, the shot Stani, again. it doesn't hide the fact that the team still has to endure that pain. And, and they the should. Warriors are about to. And they should oh. because they made the mistake, yeah. not the player. Oh. The player was never any good, James Wiseman. James Wiseman was never a good basketball player. And they drafted him anyway, hoping he would become good. There's a chance that a guy who's not good at basketball will never be good at basketball. And that's the guy that looks like the Warriors drafted. Although he'll be fine. He'll be a fine backup. He's already a half-decent backup. 888-957-9570 is the number. I, I wouldn't mind getting uh, more into this, kind of the ins and outs of Joey Bart with the Giants, 
with James Wiseman, with the Warriors, and with Trey Lance for the 49ers. I mean, how do you look at those three guys and then also look at the way your team drafted them and handled them and how much it's costing your team right now? Uh, 888-957-9570 is the number. Don't forget a reminder, you can catch all four hours of Steiny and Goo on the free Odyssey app. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our QR code on both YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first class money market today. Watch the game again then, Steiny. Business. It's all.
Yeah. With Big D at the hospital. What are we having today for lunch, Big D? Give me some salami, baby. Now, back to Steiny and Guru oh. on 95.7 Ouch. The Game. Oh, I missed that part. I missed that live. Salami and pepperoni at Subway melted with some pepper jack and Swiss. Isn't it the cheese usually what's melted? I missed it. You could cut that. <laughs> I, I missed it. What did I say? There's nothing to miss. Okay. Like, there was nothing. There was nothing. I hear when I go back and listen to this show. I'm telling you right now, there was nothing you really missed. A bad joke? No. Or did I say hey. the meat was... Yeah, I The melt- only thing you've missed on is your assessments over the years of Joey Bart. James Wise and Trey Lance. Those are the line. only thing you've Look, missed. Tomorrow's terrific Tuesday. Tomorrow's Evan. not promised. I that's my yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you this. I don't hey. ever want to disappoint you like I did today. When you felt like a kid, you just you wound me up and you thought I was gonna be, I the look in your eyes was I didn't like, know what to do. Dude, I don't ever want that to happen. I disappointed my guy. I'm tired. I just damn snotty. They got to do something. Tomorrow's big. And even if they win, they're still going to be 10th. Oh. But that'll give us some. Something's changing. Something feels different, it, man. Sam if they, if they can get, thank you. If they can get it tomorrow. Man. And get it tomorrow. Like, see, and that's where. That's where you don't have your finger on the pulse like I do. Mm. <laughs> that's not true. Hey, Grandy. Good seeing you on Friday, by the way. April 4th. Oh, no. It's. We're. D- I we forgot Grady done. got there. Hey, by the way, uh, shout out to uh, all you guys on Friday. It was fun. We had a good time, man. For about an hour. We yeah, need to Irish do that more. Does. Dude, I, I did not. I, I said goodbye. I went to the second spot to see you specific. I said, I don't want to disappoint. I was I'm going. Out. And then you were out like a thief in the night. Yeah. It, you God. know, you couldn't just say, you know what? I'm going to wait on my man, I Goo. No. Where'd you go? I went home. Seriously? Yep. And you know, here's I the other thing. I don't even really care where here's you Here's the other thing I did. And it's happening more and more. They didn't even know it. Evan didn't even know it. Jay didn't know it. Who are the other fools who were there? Lankford. Oh, uh, uh, Lucas. Director of sports. Yeah, yeah. The, the director. Yeah. They were all, me my they were all the getting tournament. loose. All getting loose. Of course, your boy. I, I look it down. Yeah, I don't look down at them, but they're young kids. You know, they're, so you, oh, here they're we struggling go. to make it in this city. And I always try to do everything I can, even though. You know, I'm I'm scraping myself, but I I know how to scrape. Did you look around I've the room scraped. and said I'm the oldest here? Yes, that's just and but just but, pathetic. But, but here's the difference between you and me. When I look at our table and say, you know, I'm the oldest here, I feel a responsibility to buy them drinks. <laughs> when you look at him and say, I'm the oldest, <laughs> hey, nah, we hey, we even <laughs> Steven, baby. Yeah, come so on, man. They all like they look. They all thought their guy Steiny was getting loose, and you know what? You know what? You don't even know. Because I'm doing it more and more. No, you're out and about. Heineken non-alcoholic. Oh, no That's way. Yes, sir. It can't be yes, a no- sir. Heineken if non-alcoholic. You notice, if you notice, I had mine in a glass. I said, can you give me a non-alcoholic beer and put it in a glass? What's that do for you? It Just means get a Sprite. It, I like the taste. Great oh, are you being? I love the taste of beer. Of a non-alcoholic? It's the sa- It tastes exactly the same if it's good. And you know what? Here's the thing. Here's what you get. You're here's like what's a unbelievable. Ninja. What? Here's, here's what's I unreal. missed this. I'm sitting there at, I'll say it, the Golden Gate Tap. Oh my, how have I been out here this long working and we've I've never been there. That was my first time. Yeah, it's because it's not that good. It got a hundred beautiful TVs. Yeah. Yak, whatever yeah. you need. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. I was great. We need to work on stuff. the ra- we need to work on the ratio in that bar. Yeah, there's, oh, yeah. there's, there's few beautiful things. <laughs> oh, uh, it's, it's about conversation. It's, it's kind of like guys. it's kind of like the old uh, Matthew McConaughey in uh, Dazed and Confused. You know, I, they keep getting younger, and I keep staying the same. They, I keep staying. I, I get older, and one. they keep staying the same. It's like, yeah, these guys keep drinking, and I get more sober. Dude, everywhere I looked, it was a 50, 60 inch TV game, 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 game. And yet, you weren't watching a lot of the Warriors. You said I watched all of it, and. W- I'm pathetic. Okay. All right, you, I got to tell well, you something. Well, yeah. Saturday that. night, 1130 or later, I put on the Warrior Hornet game just to listen to Fitz and Let Kalina. me guess, they were only up 17 no, midway through the third. No, it's just this road trip, it was a it was a, a brick fest. The opposing teams couldn't shoot. 
Shot goes up. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, and, brick, and, it don't matter where the guy was at. Brick, brick, brick. Right. And yet the Warriors were down eight. That yesterday. game was Heineken zero. Two, that and, was Chris Mullins said at halftime he didn't even know what that was. And the bottom that line That was Orlando is, game. We've had some texts on the Xfinity Mobile text line that I tried to bring some of this stuff up and nobody wanted to hear it. Warriors might be playing the best defense of the season right now. Now, I ain't mad at you on that, but I would say to that, it's easy when you're playing teams that well, can't shoot. You've got to execute. Yeah. How's the season going to end? If they can see a smile through we the We still radio. think, we still, and, and I'm glad I got to the heart of it. I'm glad I got to the heart of it. What does that mean? Because we got fans here that they're, they're well, we, we can't, we, we're, not, we're, we're not very good anymore, and we're not very good. Well, you just won four or five, and now it's like, well, if you're not very good, you should be excited about that. But I'm seeing through it. You still think you're a championship team. No, that's that, why there's no excitement. No. That's why there's no Win excitement. Win tomorrow right night, Stiney. Watch. Not put Houston <laughs> in their place. I I man, poor Rockets. You, you get hot when it's too late, but oh well. See, this is kind of your bed li- so, lying it now. So the Warriors have been on the so now they're playing what what's the Mavericks record over the last twenty five? Sixteen and nine. And they beat you no, just a couple weeks ago. Like twenty-one and five or something. They've won eleven of twelve, but okay. they've Damn. won sixteen of twenty-five. So they can afford one. But to what? D- d- you would think they'll never go into a game. They want to send a message. Who? But, uh, the Mavericks, but they beat you already. They already. The uh, come on, Stani. That's why I'm like you owe them. But the Mavericks are good, and that's the only problem because the Warriors' record against good teams this year. Especially in the West is not, you know, something you want to write home about. And I when don't get that bothers me. When I think of Joey Bart, I think of the what you know what, Evan? The Bart train. No. You, want take, you know what? You want me to take a day off this week? I'll take a day off. <laughs> I'm legit. I'll shoot curious. for Friday. I'm gonna shoot for Friday. Thursday? Now why would you say that? Because Because you don't see his facial reactions. Oh, yeah. Because you're like, I look at you. You look right, at him more than you look right, at me. Right, and this is the bottom line. Is like I have to be a point guard, so I have to see everything. Oh, I have to see. I have to see a move ahead of a move. Oh. and you can play without the ball and just worry about trying to get twenty two a game. Like you're coming like and I'm that Steph. works for what you're. It's stick, but it's perfect. I know it is. You can just play. A, I know. I it gotta is. see everything. Your day off request has been denied. But you have turnovers though. Okay, well I got vacation <laughs> requests. Let's look at you. My day off has been okay. That's like, uh, it's like my comedian Scott Sice. Oh. What he had a great one. He's like, he asked for a day off, and they're like, what I the... can't remember. He Did goes, he you it? don't get it. I'm not coming in regardless. It's either a vacation day or a sick day. You decide. You think I want to be here? Oh, oh boy! I tried to go to comedy after we left the uh, the Golden Gate. Uh, oh. It was a couple of hours. He had to wait. I. Should we go to Rational Mike in San Jose? We never run from calls. Come on. No, but I'm running. This is one of the first golf rounds I'm running from. Oh, hey, no. what's up, Mike? This How you doing, guy? buddy? Let's <laughs> do it. Hey. Half move Bay. I, 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 I don't know, but the birds are singing. There must be a Santa Claus. The golf courses are green. And if I listen to you two any longer, I'm going to go home and get the pillow out. <laughs> now that hurt me. Wait, to suffocate us or to go to... I can understand Steiny. He's always that way. Dude, where are you, buddy? Yeah, the minute... They're coming. They're playing playing the best they've played all year. And if they lose, you still wake up and go play golf. Yeah, no, you're right. But I'll say this, Mike. I won't steal your thunder, but the playoffs, I'm going Steiny. You're right. The play-ins are coming, not the playoffs. Doesn't matter. It's where you're at. Hey, Mike, you know what we're finding out here? FWF, FWF. That's what I found out this week. We got some fair weather fans. Oh, please, <laughs> plain and simple. Yeah, I mean, come on. You know, Clay's Clay's playing good again. Nice Last question. week, Clay Clay was old and stunk. Thank Wiggins you. was washed. Draymond's no good. Come on, guys. Let's okay, go. all right. If you're that guy, tell me about Kaminga and his two knees. Oh God. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to know my answer to Kaminga because that's where I become rational, Mike. Oh boy, see so, that's real, Mike. So I, I believe, that. as I've said all year, as I've said all year, the only way you get better next year is to trade Kaminga. Oh, I believe he's the second or third best option on the oh, team. Man. That's as far as he'll go. And 
either that or you blow it up and you build around. There's no there's no middle. There's no guy you bring in. Wow. You, you either trade Kaminga for a number two, which he will bring because he's the only guy that will. The other guys are role players. And and you take a shot. And if you don't, that? then you then you sign him because you're going to have to pay him. Free is over. And, and 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 you go from there. But either way, life's okay. No, exactly. what I called to say mainly what I called to say is I will call next Monday, and you two need a date. Oh, we'll you have one, Mike. Play. Yeah, we'll have. I'm one. taking the girl from sales. Yeah, we'll have one. We'll have one, Mike. <laughs> I'm I'll give you, baby. That's April, a, that's a April one. or May, but that's the two best months. It's Summer's going down. Off. Hey, Mike. Let me let me ask you this though, because uh, we hadn't heard we haven't heard from you in a week or two. What'd you think of Draymond last week and all that stuff oh, that yeah. went down? So I'm I'm maybe being 67 makes you look at it different. I, right. I don't know why we would expect him to be who he's not. I, I believe the Warriors are phony when they come out and talk about how Kerr's out there about how he can't. They've never done one thing to him. Why would they do it now? So, Damn. so you know, what have they ever I done? Right. Yeah. Appreciate it, Mike. Well, they haven't uh, been this public, uh, unforgiving. What was it? Unforgivable. Yeah. And uh, Curry's emotion, Mike, I would say that those weren't words, but man. Something I won't forget, and that's that's sad. This season is going to come and go, and you're going to say, Goo, give me your top five moments. I'm being real with you, Stoney. That was one of them, Curry's reaction to Dre getting ran and, and Curry's hand on his back while he was bent over. But Mike, Mike's right on the money. Actions speak louder than words, and they... And the Kaminga thing is not don't a bad do anything. thing. It's, Stoney, if they're going to make some, like you talked about it earlier, we did, big changes, Kaminga has to go. That's just the react. You have what else can you bait? Wiggins ain't getting you nowhere near what where Kaminga's at with his age, and what what we've seen from him. The only thing that can mess with Kaminga is if you're right, if I'm wrong, and this this tendonitis is nothing. But when we get BG on, I'm a, like Steiny twenty one. You're, so you're saying this is just his knee situation is him playing more minutes this longer into the season? I for the life of me just don't. I don't. I never been there's a part of my brain that's just never been able to process you with injuries for as long as I've lived. I just and the how, right, is for okay. Jordan and, and LeBron okay. and Curry. Okay. How, and, 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 and how did their careers go? How did their careers go? <laughs> Incredible. Okay. But I don't remember tendonitis for LeBron to this day with that. I know they ice up, but this came out of nowhere. It probably didn't. Mm. They monitor this stuff game right. after game after game. But could you imagine had this wrote these three games had been what? like better teams and let's just say they went one and th one and four instead of four and one without his services? Then I think we're yeah. talking about okay. something different. And 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 this is where just caution, man. That's this all. is where okay. So the Golden State Warriors. Let's just say they're thirty seven and thirty four without Jonathan Kaminga. All right. If Jonathan Kaminga did not exist. What would their record be? Oh, Stiney, I you're gonna laugh at that. I'm being thirty three and thirty eight. I'd say a four or five game. From what I've seen this season, I would put four. I would put five or six more wins or losses on the table without him. I, I think, really mean that. With Dre being suspended, I think there's a part of the Warriors and their veterans that mm. it's like. So you say it shows up more if he were gone. The, the reason Kaminga is fascinating on the one hand, but the reason that I don't think their season goes south if he's not around on the other is, one, first of all, he's still very young. But they like he's the one guy who's different on their team. Like if you say, though, the Warriors style, what do we say? The Warriors, uh, what's, what do we say? Why can't I think of it? Ph the philosophy. Their offensive. Oh yeah, it's not his yeah. right. the he, system. Yeah. Their yeah. system. Right. He doesn't fit their no system. No doubt at all. Okay. No and now he's floating. When you stuff. take him out of the system, the then these guys can right. just play the system. When you play with Jonathan Kaminga, as good as he is, and as big of a step as he's taken, you've got to spoon feed him. Do you think that's what's? A, I'm not, no excuses. Do you think that's why we've seen more of Wiggins? Because uh, he didn't play in. Uh, Orlando Wiggins was incredible coming downhill, and I know yesterday well, there were fifteen extra shots when Kaminga's uh, not there. Wow. 
But w- what I'm saying is, if you don't have Kaminga, it's just the six guys who have won a title, and they can just play the way they've always played. Mm. When Kaminga plays, like I, I said this jokingly, but I'm, and I guess it's kind of a joke, but is it? How many games did the Warriors kick away this year because they went out of their way to develop commitment? See, now I think that's where you were off base. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a lot, Stoney. I might would not say, be any. Now, how but many the, have they but, won because he was there? Way is more than that on that column. I'm just saying, and I'm, 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 it's tongue in cheek. It's tongue in cheek. <clears throat> but developing Kaminga isn't just all a positive. Because let's be honest, like might, too, right on the table, wins, Stani, wins they didn't do it you. early. They didn't do it early. He was he was he was upset about his playing time, and the record was what it was. Yeah, yep. Uh, Josh is in San Francisco. What's up, Josh? How you doing, man? Howdy. Yeah, I just want to breathe some optimism. Thank you. Into goo. Goo. Thank goo. you. The defense has been a complete okay. shambles I- all year until. Look it up. We held our opponents to under 100 points, three straight road games. The last time that's happened, November 26th. All right, I like it. I like it. But Defense what if I told you the quality of the teams, though? Doesn't that, you it know what I mean? Why didn't it like, matter do to you when they were 14 and 4? Uh, hey, call us, to, call us Wednesday morning, and they do it to <laughs> Dallas, and then I'm, I'll put a ring on it. But it's just like those teams were... You, so what is tomorrow's be, we're game seven of the NBA finals? No, it's gonna that defense is gonna be tested. But go ahead, call her. Go ahead one more time, Josh. Yeah. Our bad. <laughs> we're gonna beat Dallas. We're gonna beat Dallas again. And I got you, Goo. But they've been playing horrible opponents all year, and their defense has been right. awful. I'll give they were that. giving up a hundred thousand points to all terrible right. teams of the whole year. It's they've had by far. It's a low bar. By far their best defense all year. And Steiny, they're rolling like Van Morrison live Winterland '76. <laughs> Goo, look it up. Yeah, I've lost. Uh, but yeah. Last, the bar to Belfast. Steiny, Steiny will uh, educate you, Goo. Uh, and last thought, Evan, God is a Gale. We'll get him next year. Dubs are rolling. I tell you what, well, I shouldn't say. This, I got. I got. This is when people yeah, hurry get, up. Saxon's coming back for a fifth year, Steiny. <laughs> I tell you what, if I were a college coach. I would reserve the right to tell guys you can, you actually can't come back for a fifth year. I'm sorry. Don't be mean. I thought I had the thought. He that made, is one of the most powerful phrases in what? sport. When people you and heaven puts it on the vine, God is a gale. It's like something else is working for us, but yeah, he's never been those more cruel. Are facts. What was working against Grand Canyon? Well, no, I'm just saying it hasn't he hadn't got you to the promised land, but when you say God is a gale, it's awesome. Well, Actually, when you, you say God is a gale, then maybe you realize there might not be a God. <laughs> I said he's never been more cruel. Well, then what kind of a God is that? I just like the phrase, though, that they believe he's looking over them. But he's not. It was like the Cowboys when they played over in the, old Texas Stadium, the hole in the sky. Do you think God so looks God after St. Mary's look more than other teams? No, they have never okay. won. Okay. Have you well, seen their roster? God is a vol. <laughs> Oh, God is a boiler maker. Gene Cady. He is. God is a husky. And let me tell you what God is for sure right now. He's a pack. He's a member of the pack. Yeah. By the way, speaking of godly things. Yes. UConn men's 30 to nothing run. I saw the, the whole thing. Are you kidding That's me? Too many. 30 to nothing. I saw the whole thing. That's unbelievable. It's like 20 straight stops. The war, the Lakers th- did that to Brooklyn in it college. Was, it's it like was seventeen nothing, Spadoni. It was seventeen nothing. I was like, what, what, what? Lakers Brooklyn yesterday. Oh. It got to seventeen zero, and By it felt way. like the thirty zero run. By the way, I mean that how, is a run. Like, and I know you're you're the biggest Curry fan going. I don't. Does it trouble you at all that like LeBron is forty years old and one son like? You, you know, you, He's incredible, you make man. a joke, and it is a joke about Draymond Green <laughs> going to the lab. But is it disconcerting for you at all that that LeBron James can go to the lab for one summer and he comes back and he's a better three-point shooter than Steph? Well, doesn't oh, that... Oh, no. I mean, 
It's pretty amazing. No. What he'll what? never be a better his percentage what? might, but he'll it's, never be. It's better this year. I know. I got you. Yeah, and there's better. probably some other guys. That he's probably, a better three point shooter than Steph right I'm getting now. Getting upset, but you know no, what he I mean. Is. People know who the shooter is. The shooter. But LeBron I, hey, went nine for ten from three yesterday. That was incredible. I yeah. watched them all. And what's he up to now? What's he up to? 40, Tell him Fitz. Forty one point six. Forty one point six. And that ain't taking two what's a Steph's game. Real quick. Forty point three. Ah. He's had a bad month for his standards. He's had Steph. a bad season. Yeah. Just say LeBron's a better three point shooter than Steph. He's not. And we can move on. I can't wait for the play, which is bad for the league if it's Lakers uh, Warriors. I I mean that. I can't stand Both those this guys too. cannot. Why, why is it bad for the league that they, two over the hill superstars can't get their teams higher than nine in the standards? They're, they're, the players, those two, are still factors. That's all I'm saying. They're not good enough. No, oh, stop, Steiny. LeBron still can run. In okay. This is what, no, like, yeah. we, we can joke about this. It's not a shame. It's the way the season played out. Right. LeBron took his team. He was part of the reason they went to the Western Conference Finals last year. Okay. They, he beat Steph. You're right. Yeah. Uh, Steph not working with him. Not a defined number two guy. So, well, last year he didn't have a number two guy either. The Lakers Okay. Stink. Okay. Okay, I didn't know he didn't have one last year either. I thought that was a new phenomenon. So now we're now it's two years. Steph well, doesn't have a running year. mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's kind of. I thought Wiggins was the guy. Well, well we were still going. You need to know. But I'm I'm not sitting here telling you Steph is shooting his best. He'll tell you he's not. It's a stretch. He's had to do more. No, you just said for two years now he hasn't had a no, that's number not two. Feel. I'm looking at the West, and you wonder why they're ten. So when every, did when did Wiggins a combo when every did Wiggins be in a great number two option, able to win a title? Like when did Wiggins? Oh, now he stinks. Oh, uh, when he came back from the uh, last year's uh, ex, when he went to handle. Okay, games. so it's it's the Warriors' fault that Wiggins is falling. Off. I love you, a man of words, but Please. no, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm just saying the chef ain't the problem, Stoney. No, but it's not helping that he's get him some help. They can't get him enough help. I'm gonna go home and get like, the how do you get him enough help? And that, like, that's uh, the you. That's a real oh, and, question. And, and and if I'm Steph, that would be the core. What do they have? The off season meetings. You know how you come me and it's private. I yeah. like, give me some mf and help because this ain't it, Jack. Dude, that's what I would say if I'm Steph. You guys think it's gonna come in? Ain't it gonna make the the unseason training? No, it's go get me some guys that Steph won't make my Steph. my old age okay. rapid. Okay, Steph, that's really gonna be hard. And the reason it's gonna be hard is because you make sixty million dollars <laughs> a year, which is top four player money. I got and you. you're not a top four player anymore. But we got some hot shot young the, guys, right? But what if if Steph's the eighteenth best player? How can you get him enough help to it's, win a title? Yeah, but it's not that drastic. Okay, he what if he's 18. the 12th? No, I'm not even, that's too, that's way too low. Okay. You go get a Paul, I can't even, I'll have some names when no, it's I get, I mean, okay. I mean, Steph Curry, like, Rick, Rick, I always call him Rick. Rick. Jalen Brunson oh, right. can say the same thing that Steph Curry says. I need more help. Oh, they well, he had it. They're just hurt. I'm telling you, New York had action. If Randall were to come back, it looks like he's you're, not. But you're, you're doing. You're just. You're making my point for me. You're make, you make. You've made my point like for that, me, no. and it is that under any circumstances, Steph will never bear his part of the oh, responsibility. No, I'm because saying that now no, for the I'm last two, that. they won a title two years ago, and the minute they stopped winning, then. Steph doesn't have enough help. Like it's, but it's I won't all be in denial to say he is not. There's no slippage. But why did he not like? Why he? If he had help two years ago, he has the same team now. Why does? Why is it now he has no help? You, you're. I'm not the one that constantly references this title from 18 months ago. You well, want to talk like what happened? To the, yeah, it's it's the same team, yeah, but it's a long convo, Stani. I'm, it, Steph it's bears team, as much as responsibility and for the I, last two years as anybody. I'll give you that. I okay. guess what I'm taking on this too is the fact that you f you're not saying he's done, but it feels like he's not done. He's older. He's not done. The I'm not saying he's that. done, but yeah. what I'm saying is it's a joke. I am sick and tired of this. Oh, now he doesn't have a number mm -hmm. two. Well, when the hell did that start? When, when did that start? Let me tell you when it started. It started game one after they won the NBA Finals, when they weren't as good of a team, but we couldn't figure out why. Mm. It's like, I'm not saying Steph's the reason, but 
I'm pushing back yeah. on that. And you're, I, I feel like you're saying real quick. I feel like you're saying I'm a guy that says Steph can do no wrong. You are. Oh no, that hurts. No, you are. Ain't it? Yeah, it's okay. You're you are in the majority. I'm the guy in, that said he should have hit the shot game six against Toronto. You got the goal, my that brother. That doesn't. So you said he should have made a shot in the finals five years ago. And boy, you've been hard on him for 12 years. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, download that Odyssey app. You know why. It's so you can listen to us all the time. You can download the Odyssey app directly now from our QR code on both YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your, your savings dividend. I'm having trouble with this one. Open up a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. Brian Geltzeiler on the other side. Um, we'll find out whether he's uh, still pro-warrior or not. He still thought they could make a run a little while ago. I forget how strongly he was about that. And uh, now I'm going to go to break on 95.7 The Game. He's too old. Americans pay about $5 billion to
Joe Lacob, wake up, man. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All righty, let's get right to it and go out to the phone lines and introduce Brian Geltziler, host of Sirius XM NBA Radio. He also contributes at NBA TV. We talk to Brian once every several weeks, and he's great. Brian, how you doing, man? What's going on? I'm good, guys. How we doing? Well, I think I'm doing a little better than Guru. I have, <laughs> uh, I have realistic expectations of this Warriors team, and I just saw him go on the road and win four out of five, and I'm saying, hey, not bad. And he just doesn't think very much of it because they had bad opponents, and he's still thinking championship, Brian. Well, listen, I think it's hard to not think championship when less than two years they won one. Less than two years ago, they won one. So I can't totally blame him for feeling that way. You know, you look at the opponents, let's be fair, two of the opponents are good opponents in playoff teams. One is Miami. The other, and I'm glad Miami was shorthanded. Yeah. The other is the Orlando Magic. It's a very good basketball team. You know, so like, it's, they won four in a row here. Draymond playing at a high level. Here's the problem. Okay. The schedule for the close is a little bit of the issue. And listen, the 9 10 game is you want to be out of the 9 10 game, ideally. It's very hard to come from the 9 10 game in the play in tournament and be able to make any kind of meaningful run in the playoffs. It really is. What the Heat did last year was so unique, and they even came from the eight and lost their first game. But the problem I see is the schedule. Like, the next three, first of all, you have Dallas in two of the next three, who's been on fire and playing great. Now, Houston just lost a winning streak last night, but they've been playing well. Then, you know, listen, it lightens up a little bit there, but, you know, because you do have the Jazz and the Blazers, Jazz twice and the Blazers. We get the Lakers and the Pelicans sprinkled in there, too. My point being is, I, if you told me they could get to the eight, I'd give them a puncher's chance. There are three games with eight to go out of that eight spot over Phoenix or Sacramento. The eight, the difference between the eight and the nine, and I think as a, a, a media community, we don't do a good enough job explaining this to the fans and the listeners. The reality is the eight spot is so advantageous over the nine because right. if you win one game, you're done. In the nine, if you lose one game, you're done. That's a huge distinction. That's enormous. Mm. So I look at the situation for the Warriors, and I'm like, if you're coming from the nine, it kind of doesn't really matter. And I hate to be defeatist that way because it's been a hard season, and I think they've overcame a lot, and we've seen really in the end more good than bad. And I actually think there's hope for a much better year next year with the young guys and the old guys starting to mesh well. But I do think for what we have here this year, it's you start in this nine or in the ten, and you're dead in the water. No doubt, I hear you, BG. Uh, my partner's put a jacket on me, and he says I'm the warrior of the show. And I got to tell you, you know, a lot's happened in this Warrior season. I know you're not a doctor, but BG, out of nowhere, Jonathan Kaminga has missed the last three games with bilateral tendonitis in both knees. He might be out there tomorrow, but if he's not, you mentioned the schedule. It's go time. When you heard that news about a young 21-year-old phenom with tendonitis in both knees, I'm, I'm worried because I don't know. How do you process that? I don't love it, but I also he's played a lot of games this season. It's the most games he's ever played in his career. He's played the most minutes he's ever played in his entire life this season. And we don't know if this is a larger problem or it's wear and tear. We really don't. It would be natural even for a young guy for it to be wear and tear because he's never gone this far before. Mm. But I'll also, listen, I have to give Steve Kerr a ton of credit. Because he has gone deep into his bench, more out of necessity than choice, but he's had some faith in some guys, they have actually found something without Kaminga that may make me scratch my head and hesitate a little bit about Kaminga back in the starting lineup. As great as Kaminga's been, I may make him a six-man extraordinaire because I like Trace Jackson Davis in the starting mm -hmm. lineup. And one of the biggest problems that the Golden State Warriors have is the lack of size. And Jackson Davis fits so well because he's not only really athletic, he not only does smart things with the ball, he's also, he's big. He's good size, this kid. They need that. So, like, my point being is that it's a Kuminga and, and Draymond are somewhat of a clunky fit together when you're playing against bigger teams. 
you're going to have to probably pick one of them, I think, going into the playoffs. And it may be that Jonathan Kaminga ends up with a bench roll, or you play him at small forward, and it's Draymond Kaminga and Jackson Davis, and it's Wiggins off the bench, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world either. But I do think that Jackson Davis as the starting center is something I would look to, to carry through the playoffs, no matter who's healthy. Brian Geltzahler joining us on 95.7 The Games, a host on Sirius XM NBA Radio, uh, also a contributor at NBA TV. Um, boy, I just, I just I just jump on that a little bit. Um, you know, one, one of my theories on on the Kaminga, uh, you know, I, I get they haven't played three world beaters, but they didn't really skip a beat without Kaminga, is w- without Kaminga, they can kind of go just back and rely on the team they've always been, even if that team's not, a championship team of two years ago, but they can run out Steph, Clay, Dre, Looney. We see plays a little bit now that Kaminga's out. Wiggins was on the championship team. Could it be that you know what they they can just kind of settle into the way they they've done things for three or four years uh, when Kaminga was a sixth man? It's listen. It's absolutely possible that you can do that. Uh, one of the things that I think is so important about this Warriors team is that you can really do a lot as a bench player for this team because you're coming off the bench with Chris Paul. And I looked, I felt like Kaminga would have a good year this year because he'd have a bench role with Chris Paul. And again, I didn't realize that he would get a little bent out of shape for not starting, call Steve Kerr out publicly, and then end up starting and having the best stretch of his career. Uh, I didn't think that would happen, but that certainly happened. But I do think, listen, Curry has not had the best year we've ever seen him have. And granted, he was very good last night. But let's not get crazy last night. That was, you know, it was Victor Wembayama and pretty much nobody for the Spurs last night. Nonetheless, I think there's been a little bit of a transition into relying more on younger guys. And I do think, Matt, to your point, it may be a, a bad trap to move away from those younger guys at this point in the season. Not that you don't want your, you know, your, your veterans to play big roles. You certainly do. But let's not fade these younger guys either. Let's let them emerge in a way because you never know who grows and gets better. By the way, another hat tip to Kerr. I actually, he's handled the Thompson to the bench and off the bench thing as gracefully as you possibly can. Because pretty much what he's let everybody on that roster know is this is about, not about who you are or what you are or what you've done. This is about how you can play now. And Clay has started to play better and has gotten a starting job back when he started to play better. I just think, I think this has been a tough spot this year. I think Curse handled it well. And listen, the, the bigger picture here, is some kind of off-season come-to-Jesus meeting with Draymond Green about how good you are as a basketball player, how vital your diverse skill set is to what we do here and all the success we've had for all these years, but you have to stop getting kicked out of games, period. Because that's, listen, the suspensions this year, go back and look at at what they did without Draymond and the suspensions and how they struggled at times. Draymond fully healthy this year solves a whole lot of the problems that we're fretting about regarding the Golden State Warriors. Brian, that was my next question. We got a lot of fans that, oh, you guys are too hard on him like we enjoy talking about Draymond Green and what happened in Orlando but the coach said this word unforgivable and Steph Curry be overcome with emotion did that feel different to you because it did to us yeah there's what listen what you got there is palpable frustration from the people that has had his back for his entire career so let's go back and review that sentence palpable frustration for us to not only see but hear okay, from the guys who Carr, who has frankly been a Draymond Green apologist for his entire time there. And, and listen, I don't say that as throwing stones. Put me in the same spot, I'd probably be the same way. Because he's done what he's had to do to keep Draymond playing as well as he could possibly play. Curry has supported him 10 times coming and going and sugarcoated it when he wasn't around. We got to do what we got to do. when We still have Dre's back and all this. And by the way, Curry might not be the Hall of Fame player he is. Okay, and the greatest shooter ever to play without the assistance of Draymond Green. He's meant that much to Curry's career. So when you see guys like that give you some tangible frustration, what Draymond's doing, some of that's got to start to be a wake-up call. 
right? I mean, the games Draymond missed this year is is been a huge difference for this team this year. They just haven't overcome it, and you can't expect them to overcome it. And I do think, listen, there's not a lot of time left for this group together. Clay's old; he's a free agent. Do I think they bring Clay back? I do. I think they figure out a way to work that out. Draymond signed for a bunch of time. Curry signed for a bunch of time. That's in the twilights of their career. The amount of pushes they have to get back to the finals, you can count on one hand quite easily. So what are you going to do next year? Well, next year, bottom line is we need our best defensive player, our best facilitator, the guy that defines all of our toughness. Okay, we need him on the floor at all times. We can't have him getting suspended. We can't have him throwing punches at Yusuf Nurkic and choking Rudy Gobert. We just can't have it. We certainly can't have him yelling at refs. Listen, I was—I will say this, guys. I was thrilled with those officials the other night. But I have to tell you, when it comes to Draymond, part of the problem has been refs have not wanted to toss him from games. They've let him get away with anything he wanted to get away with because he never thought he could actually get tossed from games. You want Draymond to stop with some of this stuff? Refs need to toss him from games. Mm. So the other night, that's a step in the right direction for everybody because he is you watch how Draymond yells at certain officials and he smells blood in the water and they don't push back on him and he goes off on him. That's been part of the we, problem. We see as much it. as we say it's him, his teammates, it, 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 it's the officials as well. Yeah. Wow. Hey, hey, Brian, let me ask you this. We're talking to Brian Geltiler, host of uh, C- uh, Sirius XM NBA Radio, contributes on NBA uh, TV. Um, Joe Lacob's on record a couple months ago as saying, you know, we're gonna, we think we... we we can put this thing together. We can still have a great season. Obviously, he said, uh, you know, if we don't finish strong or we don't get into the playoff, there could be big changes. As a, as a guy who isn't in the Bay Area, what's, what would your definition of a big change for the Warriors look like? All right, so what's a big change? Not re-signing Clay Thompson. Yeah. That'd be a big change. Yep. Right? And, that's, and, and listen, I still think they're going to re-sign Clay Thompson. But the bottom line is that we're here at April 1st, 2024. His contract expires June 30th, 2024, and they don't have his name on an extension. So we have to explore that. Again, don't think it's going to happen, but that will be a major change. I think they're going to be out there trying to face, find any taker they possibly can for Andrew Wiggins. I think, and that would be a substantial change. Now, who will that taker be? Will they have to attach draft picks to him to get rid of him? Maybe it's some kind of swap with someone like the Nets to bring in the last year of Simmons' contract to get them out of the last, you know, three years of Wiggins, it could be something like that. But I think that would that would be a substantial change. Listen, right. I think Draymond's going to be there. I think Curry's going to be there, and I think all of the young guys are going to be there. The two guys that we're looking at potentially having spots that could turn over and clear space for younger guys to play more would be Clay and Wiggins. And I don't know how much you're going to bring in for those guys because there is this thought process where if we're going to get rid of the high salaries, we're going to keep some of these guys on rookie-scale deals so we can lower a luxury tax bill. Because as much as Joe Lakeup is talking about, hey, we can make another run, they're not paying what they're paying in luxury tax this year right. to have a road game in the playing tournament lose and go home and not have one home playoff game at Oracle. Wow. BG, I got to ask you one non-Warrior question, and there's a million I can ask you, but the one I'm going to go to is the one in the bayou. If you were my advisor and I said, BG, I'm feeling the Pelicans and Zion, man, he's, what would you advise me? Is, is, is there something there? Cause Zion, I got to give him credit. I bashed him, but he, he's playing his ass off. Do I take them seriously? I, you have to. And I say it for this reason. Listen, the West is so interesting because everything is match, is matchup dependent. And I say that in this way. The Pelicans in the first round of the playoffs are likely to get the LA Clippers really good matchup for New Orleans. New Orleans can, the thing about them is they can match all of that size the Clippers have on the perimeter, match up really well defensively with, with, with those main, with those main guys, and the Clippers don't have a matchup for Zion. And that's going to be the spot for the Pelicans. There are teams out there that have a matchup for Zion. I don't think the Pelicans could ever beat Denver in a playoff series because they're going to put Aaron Gordon on Zion and he can do a decent job on him. Mm. You know, there are teams that have a matchup for him. The Clippers do not not have a matchup for Zion Williamson, and that's going to be tough. Again, do I think in a situation against the Minnesota, I think Minnesota could find their way against Zion and do a decent job. The bigger teams will give the Pelicans a much, much harder time. I think the Pelicans could bludgeon teams that are smaller, teams like the Clippers, teams like the Thunder, a team like the Suns. I think those are the ones that they could really do a good job on. 
I would worry about the Pels against Denver, Minnesota, and even the Lakers with the size that they can bring. Brian Geltziler, you're the man. We appreciate it. Take it easy. Always my pleasure, guys. Talk to you both soon. Take care. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you want to take a victory lap? For what? The Wiggins thing, because you had kind of brought up the Ben Simmons and taking in that. I'm not saying he was an advocate, but he brought his name up, and I was like, oh, my God, Stoney's over here. Like, if he he's listening, but I've heard that from you before. Well, that's because Wiggins has very little value. Brian Geltzahler is a host on Sirius XM NBA Radio, and he's also a contributor at NBA TV. You got me thinking about TJD in the star lineup. He got me thinking about... Ben <laughs> well, Simmons? Well, no, actually. To me, the biggest takeaway was... And you bet you, you want to talk about... You better be careful. <laughs> Maybe Evan knows already. He said bring Kaminga off the bench. No, that was the one. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. That's fraught with issues. It's going into a contract year. And you're going to bring him off the bench the last eight games in the play-in game? Did it to Clay. Wow. In a contract year? He doesn't have a contract. Oh, you mean this year he's down at the Clay. So you wouldn't do it just because how he would react? Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Because I did not part, say that. I'm like, man, he I is a big not, man. I did not say that. And he said clunky with him and Draymond, Kaminga and Dre. Mm. That, you know, just stuck out to me what? a little bit. Can you really... Can can Kaminga so Wiggins missed four games? Three. Oh, it might have been, yeah. Oh, for when he had his personal issue. Can Kaminga really miss three games because of tendonitis and lose his spot? Come on. I mean, I was thinking the guy most likely to lose his spot would be Wiggins, because he's come off the bench at points this year already. But yeah. if Even they're him, redundant, yeah. then No, I it was just a little surprising. I didn't I wasn't thinking that way um Man. about what the Warriors do when Kaminga comes back. And relieving Dre from the five that we talked about. How long can this, can this thing go? That's the beauty of TJD. If you start him, you got well, your big right there, and Dre can go well, do whatever. Well, but the issue becomes you better get points out of Draymond at the four like you did yesterday. Oh, yeah. 21. Well, and More that was against the San Antonio Wiggins. Spurs. Yeah. Yeah. Or you better get offense from Wiggins and Clay. Because Clay's, exactly. still, Clay's still in the starting line. They, yeah, them two together didn't do much yesterday. Uh, well, Clay hit the a big shot <laughs> off of yeah. offensive rebound. Yeah, just, just standing out there, caught it, shot it. Uh, Craig in San Francisco. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Yeah, right place, right time. Good, good. Uh, how you guys doing? Doing hey, well, hey. man. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I've listened to uh, you guys for a while now. Uh, I'm actually uh, from San Francisco, but I live in Austria, Vienna, and oh. uh, I've gone over to play play some ball myself, and oh. I did a little coaching. Yes. And uh, I, you know, when I look at when I look at the team, you know, I, I appreciate what Steve Kerr has done for the Warriors over these years, but nobody wants to really point the finger at him. And and what I want to say with that is, and Curry for that for that re, uh, matter. And what I want to say is that I coached, and uh, I coached guys who I actually played with and played against. And I was in a situation where I had to get these guys re- earn their respect. Uh, but one thing what I learned as a player is you can't. And the referees in Europe are worse than they are here. <laughs> and the one the one thing I remember telling my guys was, look here, here's a situation. My job is to coach you guys. I understand how bad the referees are. Your job is to play your role and do what we need to do to win as a team. So you let me deal with the referees, and you just deal with the basketball side. And I don't think Steve Kerr has really gotten that point across to uh, to, to Draymond Green, that you just shut up, shut the F up on the court when you play. You got to do your job, play with the team. And, 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 and Curry – being the captain of the team, being the leader, also should be a little kind of dog in that way. Say, Green, look, come on, man. You know, we need to do this. We need to do that. You just need to let the referees go, leave them alone, and we play our game, and we play to win. Well, appreciate it, Craig. Uh, aren't we past that? I would tell Craig, Stoney, don't you think they've let it grown to where, and, and again, I'm all over, but I'm going back to B, uh, Gels, Gelshire's call. Stiney, the refs seem scared of Dre. They let him get away with a whole hell of a lot. So that was, he saw what we sees, but nobody's checking Dre at this juncture but Dre. Dre's got to do it himself. Let's go to Devon 
He's in an Uber. What's up, Devon? How you doing, man? Hey, gentlemen, how's it going, man? Going well. I try to contact you guys at least once a week if I can. Um, wanted to talk a little dubs with you guys. Um, it seems, it seems, it seems like the fan base is a little inconsistent along with the dubs. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm see It's like when we're losing and they're good games. Oh, you know what I wanted to think earlier. What is it called, morale, or what is it when you lo- lose a game but you walk away with your head high, like, oh, we did some good things? A moral I victory. Like- a moral victory. Moral victory. There we go. I, I hate these participation trophies. Uh, so the moral victory, right, I feel like we're having the opposite effect. Like, we're winning games and nobody cares. But, but had we been losing these games, it would be chaos because it's like, oh, you guys – don't have a soul. You guys aren't trying to at least get into the playoffs. It's a little, it's a little odd, but it, you know, oh well. But um, so there's that. And then when it comes to the draft bus, if I recall, I wanted La- or Lamelo instead of Wiseman. Um, Lamelo just had, I mean, he just gave us a little more than what Wiseman provided. I also remember that year being, I believe Clay was hurt that year, right, and he was out. And I thought that it would help Steph, you know, with another ball handler, with somebody, um. That, that could score. You know, I thought that, that picking him up would have helped us. So, back in the day, I wanted LaMelo, and I think Wiseman is the bust because of what he represented. He represented the future. He represented a big that could help us. And we see the game is kind of turning back into the big. So, that, that's just some of my points. But I love both of you guys, man. You got, again, you Thanks. guys always keep me going. Thanks, Devon. appreciate it. I Like, what parade did I miss? I agree. Like, he's kind of summed up the way I was feeling today coming in. Like, we we kind of were on the Warriors last week for ostensibly not really caring about the 10. Well, no, And now they've yeah. won four out of five. And we never said they didn't good care enough. about the 10, Stein. Remember, you and I got into that. <clears throat> it was like, do they really? And, and now we find out they do. And okay. And why aren't we celebrating that? Because you're still 10. Right, but but last week I said, who do you think has more uh, incentive to get the 10, the four-time champions or the Houston Rockets who haven't been to the postseason? And there were some answers. Probably the Rockets. Well, you know what? It looks like the Warriors yeah. are playing for something now. And what the caller's saying is, well, that's not good enough now. It, and last week we kind of criticized them because we didn't think they were playing hard enough to get the 10. Yeah, not, I don't know we're up against it. I figured it out for myself. calling you out, I think. No, and you could say this because I'm going to call myself out. Steiny, I just guess I, when I look at these teams they played on this five-game road trip and the one loss was against, you know, Minnesota without Cat, I think that's where I'm operating from. Like, I expect you to go beat San Antonio. I expect Orlando, I was a little nervous, but I don't want to sit here and say it means nothing, but it's sad that tomorrow is a big game to me. And it's a big game, just like San Antonio was yesterday, as far as implication on the well, standings. It's not, but that's what but I'm to saying. To get exci- excited, go beat a good team. Right. And, and I it, think that's asking well, too Well, that's much. fair. And what I'm uh, saying is, they've done a week of good. If they don't win tomorrow night, like it doesn't mean anything. And I, like, I'm not saying that's wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying that's wrong. But I'm saying those are the expectations that we have for teams that we think are championship teams. And that's why I mm. think some sometimes. We hold this team in a higher regard than they've shown us it should be held at least this season. 888-957-9570 is the number. What's coming up next is brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time...
He's wonderful. <laughs> Marvelous. I'm going to go home and get the pillow out. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Get the rope, too. Simmer. Seriously. Oh, boy. You're just an announcer. He's You're an not icon. Part of, no, he's not. John no, Sterling Steiny. Nobody knows who he is outside of New York. Well, East Coast they do. No, they don't. I bet some Westies no, Philly, No Philadelphia Philly fan knows who John Sterling is. I need some fatherly advice. I know it's the too short sex. Well, I didn't tell you. Daryl got kicked out of school. I was going to call you last night. If I told you why, you would be like, I swear I called you, hung the phone up, and I'm saying it on air because now I'm going to talk to my brother, Law Obama. But April Fool's. <laughs> I got him. Oh, my God. I got him, Evan. It's not him. I want to hug you because you, you were really concerned. You didn't get You had to look like, Yes, oh he God. did. Stoddy, I had to stop it because my, you was gripping on. You do love we're, me. We're even. Hey, we're even. We're even for the last Evan, nine years. I had to years. stop it the way you look. I said, my man, really, what the hell happened, Goo? Wow. That felt good. My first April Fool's. Yeah. I don't know if that's the one I'd lean on. I don't, I, I don't know either, with, but if he wants to, he can. I just dropped him off this okay, morning. So now do I you say. You got me too. Evan, I didn't even look because oh, you would have started. You are my dog. Just know out. that look you gave me for 11 seconds. I I'm had to out. pull the cord. It's called, it's called acting. <laughs> You were flabbergasted, dude. I was like, I, I was mo more, I was far more flabbergasted. Not that Dar little Daryl had been kicked out of school. <laughs> oh. I was more flabbergasted that that's what he brought to the air. <laughs> oh, you know. I saw you hey, looking at the clock. Yeah, Basically, no, no. you know what? And now I was going to turn a more conciliatory <laughs> tone to this segment. <laughs> but uh, here, here's the bottom line: this is why I can't stand fans uh, like go you. Ahead. Is the Golden State Warriors? Uh -oh. uh, they beat Milwaukee, and oh, now they can make a run. Now they can make a run. But they just won four in a row, and now they haven't played anybody. What, they hadn't beaten anybody after Milwaukee either. But like, you, yeah, no, I, my, no, point, I, my point is I, this: I got nothing for you. My there. point is this: I do. They're zero and three against Minnesota. They're zero and two against Dallas. Damn. They're zero and four against Denver. They're one and three against OKC. Wow. They're one and three against Phoenix. They're they're one and three against the Clippers, but for some reason, three weeks ago we thought they could make a run, but now just three weeks later, well they haven't beaten anybody. Well they haven't beaten anybody all year long. Wow. So why the change? Why now are you saying well Stein they just they didn't beat anybody, but when I said three weeks ago, well they haven't really beat any good team. That didn't matter. Now it's just the it's just I like to point out. How fickle fans are and how inconsistent they are. Well, I'll That's say all. this to that because mm -hmm. I had your back and you didn't need me to have it when you pointed when you out. Just stuck it to me there, dude. They, they love my joke, but I just <laughs> got to tell you, Stoney, at that juncture when they beat Milwaukee, it felt like there was a lot there, and this is a fact. There were more games. There was okay. This is the start of something. Now. You're at the end. Houston's ran you down for whatever. They're taking well, they care of their business. No, they haven't. But they put some pressure on Good. you. There. No, I, but, Good. Maybe that's why but, the Warriors won four in a row. I'm trying to get you to the inside of a fan. But give me this. You and I had a conversation where Houston, when I brought that possibility up, was like there's not enough time. Houston's irrelevant to the way the Warriors are playing. But to the fan psyche, I think it's a lot. The fact that they were up on your right. bumper. The now they faded, right. so we think. And you're looking well, why good. Don't, why, 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 why can't they run? Make every bit of a run now. Like every everybody, everybody had them winning a series or two after M Milwaukee. They hadn't beaten anybody. Well, I'll why? tell you what, what. If you go three and zero against Houston, and you just, let's just say you sweep Dallas or Stani, it's a two on one. Maybe you'll get that. That'll return. But I'm just, I've been so hurt, and I know you you, you got my back on this. The Not San anymore. Antonio home game, oh, where you dropped that one. Like, man, every close game against a good team, there's woulda, coulda, so, shoulda. I don't okay, I, that's fine. all. You're holding you're holding it, you're holding games from weeks ago against them. Right. Okay. You lose something. Right. Okay. And I again, I know it's not their fault, Stoney. They play who they play. 
But yesterday, I don't think that was a – it well, was a I, big I, win in regard just, to standings. Right. But the way that thing ended, right. it was sour to me. I, I just don't like one day – well, you can only play who's on the schedule. And then the next day, oh, well, San Antonio stinks, and Charlotte's the worst team in the league, and Miami was under man, and Orlando was nervous. You know, that's all. I, I just don't think it's as down as you think it's down. Like – you know what I'm saying? Like the four and one road trip. What and about the it? fact they're still tenth because that supersedes how anybody's feeling. And, I'm saying and the bottom you, line is they're not gaining any traction. The bottom line is we came in today and I said they just won four out of five, and by and large, most people are like it's a big deal. They haven't played anybody. They still aren't this. They still aren't that. They're still in tenth. They haven't climbed the standings, and all those things are right. And all I'm saying is, well, if we're not going to get excited or we're not going to feel optimistic when the Warriors win four or five on the road, guess what? The whole rest of the year is probably going to be a downer because chances are they're not going to make that run. Mm. So the thing that the thing that I think has been unfair to this particular team the last two years is that we still think they're a championship team. And when they don't play to they, or we don't, not even when that. They don't Maybe play, you can win a series or two. Well, they did last year. Or get to now. We're talking about even getting to a series. We're talking about big changes on the one hand, but are they? But they're, they're not underachieving on the other. Like I don't. Like they go hand in hand. The big changes, and you didn't do what diddly squat in the play in. Like if they get if they're one and done, and the owner said it. Well, that's the other thing too. And I'll, I'll just put the route on the table. I don't. If they if they're tenth and the Lakers beat them by twenty. And they get into the play-in and somehow win two games and Denver beats them in five? What's the difference? Man. What's the difference? Like, that's the other thing no, I'll be that is to totally camouflaged. Like, yeah. if you want to be realistic, like, Geltziler's right. You ain't doing anything from the nine or ten. They Here's what they're going well, to maybe that's where it's Here's what they're going to It ain't happened to me, but maybe the fans are realizing that. I don't know, but maybe Stanley. What if they're do, they're going to your side? Like there there is no run. Well, that's why we're celebrating the four out of five at uh -huh. home or on the road. But I, for the life of me, I don't understand what the expectations are for this team sometimes. Because one day, one day we say they stink and they need big changes. The other day, maybe they can make a run. And I'm just trying to figure it all out. I'm not even yeah. Station. Uh, who we got coming in next? We got FP? Donnie, this show is so damn good. I hope oh, it never goes away. Thanks. Best parent on the radio. Wait Tell for it. Ever don't change. Yeah. Heva from Danville. Yeah. For you mean Mia from Union City. She did us a solid. And that's the April Fool's joke, Chief. Oh, don't you get it? Boy, yeah. I think you're still shook up, Steiny. Dude, well, that, dude, I love you, man. You don't even know right that's now. That's the kind of April Fool's joke that will... That, <laughs> It's the worst kind of April Fool. Like you were looking for a fastball and got an O2 curve. Into it, you know? like, it would be <laughs> like it would be like my sister calling and saying, "Oh hey, hey up. Maddie, mom just got into a car accident." <laughs> what? Oh my god! Ah, I'm just kidding. April Fools. Like that's not nah, the spirit that, I don't of like April that Fools. One, right? No well, doubt. Very Daddy, mine was education yeah, related. Very based. similar. No, no, <laughs> that was that was complete. wasn't well being involved. I that saw was my man. I said, I funny. gotta stop. And this is the same guy who tells Draymond Greed to read the room. <laughs> Daryl the Guru oh, Johnson, the boy. same guy who tells Draymond to read the room, is going to tell me on air oh, that Daryl got kicked out of school. Okay. April Fools. Hey, I April think our Fools, relationship no just took a step back. No, I grew on ninety-five-seven. The game. That segment was brought to you by Robert Half. That's on me! Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Our recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, we know talent. Visit roberthalf.com.
Of them. Don't rat me out. I'm going to rat you out. Oh, boy. You guys hear gurus? <laughs> Don't just. Yeah, oh, be. my gosh. I know Willard loves me, so even if he disappointed, it's still love. Well, he I loves did you. April Fool's joke on Steiny. Somebody texted NFP. We hadn't been having fun with that. And I told him my kid got kicked out of college. That's yeah, real funny. And he, yeah. <laughs> no, that's funny. Yeah. That's real funny. But I love and his reaction. I, I, he was really, con <laughs> and I had to pull the joke. I had to stop it. Yeah. I should have hey, went there. Hey, not gonna, April Fool's yeah. is kind of, <laughs> I don't know. Is it, it feels like it got played out somewhere along Thank the you. road. Where, well, no, but it, not it, me. No, but it makes people mad. You? No. It makes people mad now. And well, I, it makes a man. Well, I, I think it's bullying. I don't know do? why. No. Now, I, I, don't should, know why I, I, I sort I just, of feel like you should know by now. I, like if, if somebody, I, it's April 1st. I wish I would have done <laughs> I don't what anything. I normally do and been like, nah, that's a shame. That's you a shame about Little Daryl. Yeah. Like the, oh, Little Daryl got kicked out? Like that's, that's all right. Like a lot of dropouts end up succeeding. Oh, like that oh, Seinfeld yeah. gif? <laughs> so, oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. My man was really concerned. It moved me, though, Willard. I'm like, that's my boy. Yeah. That's my dog over there. Who left there. their eyeliner over here? Not me. Is that you, Guru? <laughs> that was Caleb Williams was in studio. Oh, all right. And, Is uh, he rocking that, too? No, didn't you yeah. see all that stuff last week? It's like a uh, felt tip eyeliner he's, right here in my seat. Wet and wild. He's, got a, he's got a pink uh, phone and uh, pink oh, yeah, lip gloss. That, yeah, which is fine. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's, it's fine. fine. Nothing to see here. No, it's fine. Um, yeah. That's that's for me too much pub before the draft okay. for Caleb Williams. Yeah, that's I'm with that's you. just this is too much. There's too many things. I'd be worried. I am worried for the Bears. He can sling it though. He can sling it. Yeah, there's a lot of backyard stuff that yeah. I don't think is going to work yeah. on Sundays. Agreed. I'm just yeah. I'm saying. Agreed. Agreed. I'm just saying. I agree with you. You still mad at me? Yeah, you okay? Not really. I'm I'm not mad. I'm not mad. It's <laughs> just it's just so. You're just disappointed. Yes, that's what I am, Mark. FP. That's what I am. I heard that's you guys talking yeah. about that. It's still, for me, it's the funniest thing you could say to a person if they're not your own child. If they're your own child, you can do that. Wait, but if, I'm not mad. Weren't you guys just hugging I'm in the boss's yeah, office no, last yeah, week? Yeah, do we got to go hug again in the yeah. office? Yeah. Work no, things we, out? We, we had cafeteria Guru, day Friday. We're Guru right. has uh, <laughs> he spent the last week talking about how Draymond Green can't read the room. You know, how he just he does the night-night, and it's like, not now. And he just totally didn't read the room as it relates to an April I got a Fool's lot of Day laughs. Prank. Yeah. Yeah, it's not funny. All right. It's not funny saying your son <laughs> dropped out of college. <laughs> I Why said he, he got kicked out. Here's what would have been I another one. I said he got one. kicked out. Oh, oh, my God, Steiny. Little Daryl's eloping. <laughs> you know, that, that that may be that's, that's a better yeah. joke. I, I, mean, I messed up. I did you wrong. I haven't heard of somebody eloping in about fifteen <laughs> this years. Dude, I people still elope. Our, our audience, audience just said, "What does yeah. that mean?" Was, yeah, do people still elope? Does that happen? That's a good. I don't question. know. That's a good question. If Man, you elope, yeah. If you're or if you're just drunk in Vegas and you do that, is that does that count as eloping? I think that's just loping. That's just loping. Yeah. I think it's a good call. <laughs> All right. Hey, let me ask you this. I was going to start out. Hi, everybody. This is what I yeah, Willard and uh, P. Santangelo in uh, in today. Uh, I was you know I was going to start out talking about the weekend and a bunch, bunch of sports, but Guru just hijacked the show with yeah. with how oh, the Warriors right. don't mean anything anymore. Um, no, seriously, uh, a lot of sports. So we had the Giants playing the Padres three, NCAA men, NCAA women, yeah. war like Warriors two games. Uh, like, what did you guys watch? What's your oh, like, priority kind of? What, a good question. What'd you spend the most time watching? What'd you spend the least time watching? So Friday was Friday was the day because we left here and immediately the Warriors played. Was that Charlotte? Charlotte. Okay, oh, boy, yeah. I can't even keep track of which bad team they played on which day. <laughs> but anyway, so that was Charlotte. Plus, you had March Madness games. Kind of getting started somewhere in the just before dinner time right. or whatever's going on there, and then looming was was Giants Padres at six forty five. Is that right? Yes, Am sir. I remembering Friday correctly? Yep. You got it. Yeah. Don't ask me. I mean, I watched. I watched it all. It became a little bit of a fight in our house. Not a fight. I wanted to watch the Giants game, and Christy was over, and she was still in first place in the oh, in man. the pool. So there were also, and my sons are into March Madness. So we turned on March Madness. 
I just opened a bottle of wine and was happy that everybody was sitting in the same room for what felt like the first time in three months. Love it. Yeah. So what did you end up watching? All of it. All of it. It's a stupid answer, but we like we flipped around to everything. We flipped. If you're asking what I cared about the most, I mean, oddly, probably the Giants game. The the Warriors was not in doubt. March Madness is like as soon as your pool is, if your bracket's ripped up, it's whatever. Yeah, but it's still it's still fun. Yeah, yeah. it's like pure basketball. No, it was great. I I would rank the Warriors third on those this weekend. I would go Giants, March Madness, yeah, and then the the Warriors. The Giants, well, and the Warriors was kind of over by the time the other stuff was starting, so you could do both. But we 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 went out Friday, and the Warriors were on. At a sports bar, but nobody was really watching them. They were watching Purdue. Were we watching Purdue? School was in session. Purdue on versus uh, Gonzaga. Yes. Yeah. Zach Purdue. Eady. See, but yeah. Purdue and UConn games aren't fun. They're fun for the first half, yeah. but in the second half, the other team go bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, so they're school, bored. School was. By the way, uh, I'm not going to charge you tuition for Friday, uh, Lucas. Thanks, Danny. Uh, I spent a lot of Friday talking to Lucas and explaining to him why oh Zach God. Eady is not Yao Ming. Is the NBA even interested in Zach Eady? Oh, uh, good he, question. If I were running that's something that question. size and how he looks, I, we're going to give you a look, son. Yeah. yeah. At, at, how what, high? At, at what pick are yeah. we going to give you a look? The yeah. third pick? Not the, that high. Seventh like, pick? You know what's yeah. funny? It, you know what's funny is he stinks. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, he doesn't stink. But it's it is it just shows you that a guy like Edie, man, hurts himself by not being James Wiseman. You know what I mean? By, by not showing having that look. Exactly. By, right. by, what was my man? What was my man's name in Gonzaga last year? Drew. Uh, oh man, Tim. Timmy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Not a yeah. bad player. He's in the G League. Oh no, I'm thinking of Kispert. My bad. Yeah. He's in the G League. <laughs> He's in Wisconsin playing in the G League. So that guy that like. Runs college, um, runs March Madness for a year, but doesn't have that look. Ah, you know, I don't know. I yeah. think that Zach Eady might be might be the next installment of that. I wouldn't touch him with a ten foot pole. Yeah, he scares me. But you won't Re- be shocked that somebody will. They're going to give him a shot. That's too much size. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I mean, would you take right now Zach Eady or James Wiseman? <laughs> I would take Wiseman. You would? Yeah. Oh, I so would. I, I would yeah. take Edie I'd just because I know what yeah. James yeah. Wiseman I know for sure James Wiseman's not a good NBA player. But what I'm getting at is Edie might be the this ninth pick Wiseman. in the draft. I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen a mock draft. What's he? What do you got him for? Uh, top 10, I think. Top 10. And then he that, looks humongous like, on the He is humongous. Like the Warriors get to take James Wiseman and, oh, it's a, man, look at this guy out of high school. And, man, the team that drafts Edie is going to be like, oh, boy, let's see what this guy can do. You know, you get penalized for playing in college too long, basically. NBA.com's current uh, mock yeah, draft yeah, yeah. Give for me, the NBA. Give us some names I'm here of guys we've never heard I'm of. scrolling. There is no Zach Eady in the top 10. <laughs> huh? Not 11, not 12. Hey, Lucas. Not 13, not 14, up, not 15, not 16. Is he even in the first round? I'm at 19, yeah, he'll go 20, is he 21. Seven five or not, seven, seven four or 7 5 or 7-5? Yeah. What, is it? what is it? Something like that. <laughs> and NBA.com's, NBA.com's mock draft, which was just wow. released a week ago, does not... Oh, there he is. To the Spurs at number 33. They also have Connecty at 16, but he's going to be With a Webin Yama? Pick, right? like, just, think of him. Oh, my God. Wow. God those two. Hey, can you do me a favor? You got the Eiffel Tower. Dude, he's so good. Favor? That's yeah. the first time I watched him play, like, Play play last night. He's so and he's good. a baby. Student. He was dunk. He was dunking from like five Luke, feet out last night. Lucas, did you just call him Connecty? That's what Stiney calls him. Yeah, I call, him, I call him seven yeah. things. It's Connect. I call him Necty. We have nicknames. Um, yeah, yeah, but we, if we've Lucas, known him so long. To Stiney, no, but if he's gonna if he's gonna run the pool and he's not gonna get your bracket in, we won't. And then he's oh gonna God, say Zach Eady's top ten when he's thirty three. That's true. And then he's gonna call Let's Dalton see. Connect ah. Connecty. Ah. That's that's three strikes, dude. Wow. You're out. You're not running the pool next the year. The director Throw under can fire. You yeah. Yeah. Can you just give me the names of ten guys? Oh God, who, you've heard of none dude, of them. Seriously, because I think you're ready to be a show host. Being that inaccurate, like come on in here. <laughs> how many, you just make crap point? up, dude. You're that's ready. How Call him up. He's ready. Fill in for me today. <laughs> I got stuff to do. How many non-college players? 
How about how about this for fun? I got three sports radio hosts in the room with yeah, me. This is, okay. Can right, any of you right. right now name who the supposed number one pick? And in the we're draft being is? honest. Okay. Yeah. yeah, hit me. I'm looking at it. Uh, who, who, who is it? It's not the kid who's going to Duke, is it? Flag. That's a no. Uh, FP, would no you like idea. to try? It? Nor okay. do I care. Yeah, I have nothing. Okay, Alexandre Saar. Yep, from the Perth Wildcats. All right. Okay. Center, seven foot one, two hundred sixteen pounds, eighteen years old from France. Wow. Okay. So he ain't France even playing. Is, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of good there's, basketball. There's there's no he's overseas. He ain't even in the uh, NCAA. I think he smokes okay. though. He smokes I, like, cigarettes. I'm not even going to be able to pronounce these names. <laughs> I don't know who these people who, are. Give me. Just wow. Skip Zachary Risacher is number two. From where? He, France. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's from France. He is, and they all smoke. NBA.com says his nationality is 18. Can I you, think they might have mixed up his age with his nationality. But let's, anyway, let's make it also more fair. O- overseas. This skip is over, incredible. Skip over yeah. the international guys. Okay. But that gives you a... Um, number three. Doesn't give us anything. Why? No, it's telling us we're not missing anything. Num- number three, Reed Shepard. Oh, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. Reed Shepard, freshman uh, guard from Kentucky. One and done this year. Unbelievable. Both as a team and a player. Um, <laughs> yeah. But wow. Charlotte Hornets at number four will go with Ron Holland. From G Paris. League Ignite. This? No, he's American. Who are you? He's American, but he's on the G League Ignite. Rest in peace. No, this is... Go ahead. <laughs> no longer a when thing we, this year. He number five, hasn't died, though. The uh, team has. Cody Williams, the freshman mm. wing player from Colorado. Oh, wow. Yeah, Cody Williams. Well, where's the NBA now? Is, it, is it two or three does behind any, football? Where does the NBA rank? As far as what? Like fans and interest. In, in general, um, everything's behind prob- football. Yeah. Everything's behind it's football, but it's two, two. It's two or it's three. Probably yeah, number two. two. I would two. say, I would yeah. say yeah. two. When you say fan, by interest. the way, it depends. On, uh, yeah, I mean, specifically, you're talking this country. Yeah, yeah. Because soccer. Yeah, you know, I'm talking. Yeah, in the United States. Yeah. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGM ZFM, and HD1 what? San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Uh, you know, I have to do this at two o'clock every day. Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. I almost want to say I feel sorry for the college game that there are no Patrick Ewings or Steph. Cur- like you just went over this whole tournament and you got two guys overseas and one in G League. Right, Kentucky. That- Kentucky apparently has two players that are both going to go in the top seven. Give me their names. Oh, the other one is Rob Dillingham. Okay. Yeah, but nobody got to know him this week because they lost their first game. Oh, that's wow. Right. I do have a, co- a question because the morning show was talking about three oh, guys: this is, Trey I was about Lance. To get it. Uh, James Wiseman and Joey Bart. So when was Bart? When was Bart select? What? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. <laughs> when was Joey three. Bart Man. selected? Number two. Number two. What do you mean what year? No, I meant yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what number pick? two. Tell Baseball's got to be the biggest crapshoot when it comes to the draft, even more so than basketball. Or no? Baseball to me is the most. I, I, I think one. so. Yeah. It I depends so. if you're drafting a college kid or a high school kid. Mm. I think a high school kid's a crapshoot because you just don't know, like, from a maturity standpoint. Like, growing up in the minor leagues as an 18-year-old is always a crapshoot. But the NBA is sticking those 18-year-olds straight, well, straight into the league. And you have a chance for a baseball guy to develop. But in, like in, in basketball and football, you're going straight to the wow. show, man. Wow, like, man. right out of college. So, I don't know. I, 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 I just, yeah. Like I like we talk about. I agree with you though, just because baseball, the players are further, the, they're the furthest away from actually oh, playing in the right. professional league that they're being drafted to, and so, the draft itself is not as high profile, which I gotta believe plays into it mm-hmm. as the NBA and the football draft. Well, that's changing, is it? Well, I mean, they're, they're doing, doing their stuff. No, now. they're doing yeah. stuff with it, but yeah, yeah. no, it's nowhere near as high profile. To ask, tell them why. Yeah, you brought that up. They were talking about you know which who made the biggest mistake of the three teams and who's I'm the biggest to get your two opinions on. My quarterbacks in the NFL are a crapshoot in the first round. Well, especially I think. one that goes to North Dakota State. We're just just quarterbacks in general are a crapshoot when you look at Fields and yeah, you look at Lance. Well, that whole group. The, there were five QBs in the first fifteen picks, and there was supposed to be a generational draft, and it is one for five, maybe. Yeah. But what if I told FP Troy Aikman on line one this years ago, Peyton Manning? John Elway, those type of dude, you know, they were the, supposed to be the guy, and they delivered. Yeah, 
Dan Marino. Yeah. But here, you're right. That draft is just, oh, my goodness. Like, we already know it's bad. Trey Lance was the biggest mistake in my mind and because that, of what it took to go get him. That, the that's 49ers that's, that's, gave up three years of stuff to go get him. James Wiseman felt like an intuitive thing to do based on what size. You know, yeah. It felt like it's like you got a championship roster and what does it need? Well, oh, big guy, right? And then, so that felt like nobody blinked at that. And and the Joey Bart thing, um, I, I think made sense at the time too, but I also blow that off the most because that wasn't even the regime that's currently. Well, well, like that was, that I mean, when I thought, and a lot of us thought, it was pretty big eyebrow raiser right away. Farhan comes in and the first first round draft pick he makes Catcher. Is another catcher yeah. right. right after they had just picked Bart, and that was Patrick Bailey. That's got to be the worst. And he was right. You know what gets me right upset so. is, is when you look on Twitter, you talk to people, and they blame the organization or they blame the way it was handled. To me, it's on the athlete. If you, if you get a chance, you got a you day in the sun, you got to shine, man. When you're a first round draft pick, you get so many other opportunities that other draft picks don't get. So you get. would tell Joey Bart, you can't be mad you didn't get your shot. Be, I'm not blaming it. I mean, where's your accountability? I don't think Joey Bart would blame it on the organization. He's handled this like it's better than professional wow, if there's totally, something like that. Totally. But it's on the player. Like He's had chances. He had a long runway. What? Like Some of us only Damn. get a real short runway, and there's foam on it. And then all of a sudden, you got to take advantage of that. But he, he, you get he, first round draft picks get a lot of chances. Uh, he, he, That's I, why Brock Purdy, if he threw three interceptions the first game and two the second game, he's Mister Irrelevant. See you later. We got to go in a different yep. direction. And he got his chance as oh, two sixty two, and he got his day in the sun. And look at him now. Uh, Joey uh, Bart gets afforded all these opportunities that maybe a Brock Purdy wouldn't get afforded. Man. And so Joey Bart, in my mind. It's on him because he had his chance, and it just didn't click for whatever reason here. I think he's a good big league catcher. I don't know that he'll ever be an all-star, and he'll do well with a change of scenery because there was always that Buster Posey thing and filling those I mean, shoes. Except for that should have been an advantage at some point, no? Like, they, he, he didn't just get a runway. He also got to learn under Buster Posey. Mm. No? Yeah, that, I, I just don't think if he had the kind of a – a, a, a Bosa type boater that ran from like whistle to whistle. Joey Bart just looks like if you run a big league game, you got to have that motor running. And I know Patrick Bailey's calm, but inside Patrick Bailey's got that motor running. He's yep. always thinking. Then Joey Bart's body language. It's you run the game as a catcher. You're the king back there. And it's just never the pace of play and the, just the way he threw it back to the pitcher and the way he walked back to the dugout after mm. a strikeout. See, I, You're the leader, man. Like Everyone's following your cue. Mm. And there has to be, even though Buster Posey wasn't a rah-rah guy, or Patrick Bailey's not a rah-rah guy, they run the game with a certain energy and a certain crispness that it just goes. And it all starts with the guy behind So do you guys think Bart won't ever resurface to an all-star catcher? Like, I think J if Stiney asked me what, that about James he, Wiseman. Was he one? I'm, no, I'm saying, will he ever get there? No. Because if you ask me that about Wiseman and Lance... No. You know, Lance is still kind of out there for me, but I would say I doubt it. But I Bart, mean, you don't I mean, see him to me, going somewhere. It would have happened by now. Yeah, you, wow, can't, you can't hide talent It would have like happened. That. He's 27 going on 28. I know the Cowboys acquired Trey Lance, and so we're like, oh, we Some still have. Some days I'm like, what? Let's see. No, right. you, you can't. You can't. <laughs> like, I'm a big believer. I know fans, we do this a lot, and I get it because it's the only eyes we have, which is to say we, we, we only judge a player by when he gets that shot. And I'm like, like what FP just said. There's yeah. a reason he hasn't gotten the shot. If he hasn't gotten the shot, this is the argument I had about Trey Lance the whole time. Dude. When people were like, "Come on, man, we haven't Do seen you think him." He got it, Willard, because he got hurt. Yes, he got a shot, and 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 like in practice and and oh, everywhere, yeah. they did not like what they were seeing. That's not he can't say. They that, didn't like bottom. what they were seeing. You know the, the shot is behind the scenes, there too. It's not yes. just what we yeah. see. The shot okay. is how you're handling yourself in the huddle. It's how you're handling yourself Stiney in the room and meetings that, and bottom. how you're handling yourself with your teammates. Wow. They like, know. How did, how did I look today? Like, was my arm a little bit low? Like, how did I look? And you're sitting there just doubting yourself. Like, there's, there's things that go on behind the scenes that we never are privy to about how they handle themselves. And so your shot is... Like things behind the scenes that we don't know. Like this guy, like everyone's like Brock. The the 49ers were unsolicitedly saying great things about Brock Purdy. They, the question wasn't even asked about Brock. Right. And, then, and they would all say like, he commands a huddle. He's confident. Boy, when he ran the scout teams, he was a pain. Kyle in the, you told know the what? owner we might they, have they just, yeah. the best He's our best quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Just randomly. I mean, look, yeah, I, if, if, sorry, Stani. If yeah. Wiseman goes to Detroit and gets into a positional battle with Bagley, 
And Detroit has no interest right. in trying to even right. win. Oh, that's a great And point. they still won't put them in yeah. the game. All right. That's it's an like, indication. I mean, this is where, and I I hear what FP's saying about, you know, it's on the player. But I do believe there's some players that, guess what? This team drafted a player who's incapable of playing professional sports. Like, there's a chance Joey Bart may reach his potential and still not be good enough. Like, that's not his fault. Somebody saw something in him that was kind of unfair to him. He was a beast at Georgia Tech. Like, how He's do you the best catcher how, in the country. How do you know? Like, James Wiseman. Damn. Like, the Warriors may have drafted a guy who can't play in the league. Like, I, I think there's a chance that if James Wiseman would have just never been drafted, same player he is now, might not be in the league because he wasn't the number two pick overall. Like, he's still on his rookie deal. You're you're kind of hoping and seeing if he can play. He might not be able to. No, the, like, well, he may just be waived it's at just some like, point. It's like anything that any of us have experienced in life. Like, you know, the timing and circumstances around it matter and there are lucky breaks and not lucky breaks i was listening to bonte and joe talk about this this morning bonte said something i thought was interesting i didn't fully agree with how far he went with it but he was basically saying the longer i've looked at this and been around the games um most of it comes down to where you got drafted and the circumstances that 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 await you and which is kind of the whole like 49er quarterback point it's like oh you got drafted into the perfect scenario but I don't. It's like yes, that is part of it. You could be drafted and have a great coach. You could be drafted into what Trevor Lawrence had to deal with with the Jags. But and, Mac and, Jones didn't. He didn't have chopped liver. He, well, on the offensive side, I'd argue he did. Joe like, Burrow. Was, Joe Burrow didn't go to a good team, and he made them better. Not well, sure. No, I'm. 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 I'm sort of saying like, Bonte went to a spot where I wouldn't go that far. I'm with you. I like yes. This is. You get opportunities and you've got to go play. And I don't think you can hide talent at the professional level. Like they, these people want you to be so good so badly. They invest so much in you. If they think that you're, you're just laying in the weeds and you've got a ton of talent, they're going to put you out there. So it Are is you all, it's absolute, with Justin Fields like if, being a good quarterback. No. If Brock okay, Purdy no. had not, and it, like if the, the Niners the, hadn't drafted him <laughs> seven. Or he goes somewhere else. Are you telling me, and I'm not saying you're wrong, let's, let's say he's a top 10 quarterback. Let's just say. I don't want to get into it, but he's, top, he's in the top 10. You mean to tell me, had the situation not worked out, that Brock Purdy would not be in the NFL? He would not be in the NFL, or would he have somehow been found in one of the various leagues he would have if played? You know what I mean? Draft, if he was a top 10 pick? No, no, no. If... If he doesn't get drafted, is he just never in the NFL? Oh, he would have gone. I mean, he like, would have. What would have happened to him? Would he have eventually risen to some player mm. where everybody says, no. you know, I don't know how good he is. Little, no. Little circumstantial. No. He, yeah. he had a sponsor. He had a sponsor. And, what do you and mean? Kyle liked him. What do you mean? He he, did, did they just saw him and they liked what they saw and he can fit into our system and let's draft this guy. And then all of a sudden they got him there and they saw the intangibles. And they saw how hard he worked between his last game at Iowa State and the draft and how he redeveloped himself. He was a little too thick in the lower half. He was a little too slow with his foot speed. He trained with pitchers to get his arm strength stronger. And his velocity went up. And, and, and he, be, he made himself into somebody that would work for our system. That's interesting. And, 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 and I, mean, I, don't I, think if, I, I don't think that if he was just on the side of the road and 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 he and he went like Kurt Warner and that well he would have been he would he had a line of teams sitting there to to the offer him an league. Un, undrafted free agent contract okay. he would have gone into a camp right if he had not been that last pick he would have gone into someone's camp mm. and then there are circumstances as yeah. to then I kind of would he, would he have ever gotten a shot would then he grab someone else's eye with someone in front of him and gotten hurt yeah. Would two people in front of him have gotten hurt man I mean the crazy thing about the question you're asking is the 49ers were, they drafted him. He did all those things you just mentioned, FP. The, he he played his butt off to the point where they thought he was the best QB in camp. And he still, because of politics, didn't get in the game until two injuries happened. Wow. He wasn't like I don't know if he was going to get in that year. And don't forget the Trent Williams in uh, '54 saying, "Oh, this kid can yeah. play in practice." Can, can yeah. you can you imagine this scenario if it's it's Jimmy G and Trey Lance, and all of a sudden the 49ers come out and say, "Well." 
our starting quarterback against the Bears is going to be Brock Purdy. <laughs> oh, it could. <laughs> Can you imagine you that? Could. Can you imagine? The politics Man. wouldn't allow that. Oh God, yeah. Kyle would have gotten right? just skewered, skewered. So yeah, no, he said that. He's yeah, like, but we if, couldn't. if he did play that game with the rain in that game with his hands oh, and his grip, can you imagine he throwing seven interceptions and be like, "You are Mr. He Irrelevant." You might have. All right, gents. Well, we got we'll some be uh, man. women's college hoops. We may take yeah, a look this at. Game, yeah, I mean, what this game starts at four? Is yeah, that four, right? Let's go. 15, Duke four. UNLV vibe to it yeah. back in the day. I'm mean, except for oh, those boy. were those were teams. This is like <laughs> this is like Kobe versus LeBron or on Larry Christmas. Larry Magic, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark. I like Let's her. go. But unfortunately, cool. the coach has injected herself Man. into becoming the third individual people are talking yeah. about. Kim but Mulkey. They did. They did her a solid on that uh, that right, right. report in the big the paper. Post. Yeah, they wasn't bad. Oh, you read it? Yeah. Oh, I thought. We I talked know you about it tonight. That's, that's by the way. That's like Exhibit A as to why you don't have a press conference screaming Thank about you. it before uh, it even uh, comes uh, out. It's not it was bad. like it became a big deal because she did that. Not and because, there was nothing. There was nothing in it. It's Kim Mulkey, golly! Another press conference <laughs> to say this is all about the kids. Yep, she can't stop good grandstanding. It's a good line in there. What she wears it? feathers and she ruffles feathers no, that's on ninety-five-seven. The game. game, yeah. That should be your sign-off. <laughs> <laughs> that, should, that, should, that should be your sign-off every day. <laughs> They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first-time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be bright days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you stink. It's Willard and Dibs <laughs> on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, but it's uh, but it's FP in for Dibs on uh, on a Monday. And um, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? Giants look pretty good. I'm doing great. Giants it's good to be good. back here yeah. with you talking some sports yeah. for four hours today. Let's rock and roll, baby. Let's go. I want to talk about Draymond Green right now. Let's go. Bring I it. To, I want to talk about Draymond Green right bring, now. Bring it. I want to hear this. This is the most classic. Like, you remember, no matter if you're if you're a man, you say women. If you're a woman, a woman, you say man. Like, you know, the whole, like, uh, women can't live with them, can't live without them. Draymond Green. Can't live with them, can't live without them. So, you choose. You want to live, you want to live with them, or you want to live without them? With him, 100%. 100%. 100%. Okay. Why? Because what I saw last night in the second half of that game was two guys in Steph Curry and Draymond Green that threw everything out of the window about the off-the-court stuff and were playing the purest form of basketball I've seen them play in a long time where they were like kids again, where they didn't have all the drama and all the, the money and all the rings and all the off-court stuff. They just started playing like the most purest form of three-on-three -three basketball at the playground, even though it was just those two, with what they did in the second half and how Draymond was aggressive and inserted himself and went to the rack and him and Steph were playing their own little game together. That was beautiful, man. And and that that they went back to some place they were six, seven, eight, nine years ago when they were hungry to get the contracts and to get the championships. And I don't know what inspired that. I would love to have been a fly on the wall in the locker room at halftime. I don't know what happened because they were kind of sleepwalking the first half. But whatever Draymond and Steph did in the second half was literally the most beautiful thing I've seen with that team all season. I tell you what, um, it was this pure. Is, it was it was great. And uh, Steve Kerr went from the word that got everybody going late last week on our show, calling it unforgivable on a Wednesday, and then the word after last night was genius. Kept calling him a genius. All right, so what do you do? You know, I, I like the, the whole thing is this is another to me. This is why there's that old adage of don't make decisions based on emotion. You know, when, when you're mad at your boss, go home. Don't go to the boss's office. Go home. I need to work on that. Get food, get sleep, come back the next day. You still feel it? Now we can have a conversation. Yeah, but you guys get paid to react and have your opinions real time. No, no, no. I'm not saying we. No, I'm not saying don't react and and all of that. What I'm saying is anybody who spent Thursday and Friday screaming about how 
Draymond Green is no longer welcome on the Warriors, and the big changes that Joe Lacob has talked about, and Steph was crying, and Steve Kerr called it unforgivable, and we all believe that they have made a decision today in the offseason to move on from Draymond Green. And then you see this on a Sunday, and it's like, okay, now what? Do you still feel that way? Because, like, it may not make any sense. It, it, it may not even be possible. It Very likely, if you were to make a deal in the offseason, because he still does have games like that in him, like, does he have value around the league? Probably. But if you made a deal, it's probably going to be a bad one. But, like, what you would get back, it's probably going to be a bad deal. So, I really wonder, and Tim Kawakami is going to join us here in a couple hours, and he's got an article about this very, very thing uh, today in The Athletic. And we've been thinking about it, too, all morning. Like, you got to be very, very careful with this idea of acting on your emotion. Can you actually make the point? Forget your emotion. Forget, I'm so done with Draymond Green. Forget your emotion. Can you make the basketball and team organization opinion make sense? to me, that the Warriors should move on from Draymond Green and they will be a better organization for it. If he does what he did last night or yesterday, whatever, on a consistent basis and plays like that on a consistent basis, I don't know if he was oh, going to play the last 10 games of the year and make them think about it um, and I'm going to atone for all my sins. I have no idea. But if he plays like that consistently, I, I, need, I need him. I need him on this team. It's like I had this thing. I texted you, April Fools or April <laughs> Facts. Was that was yesterday April Fools with him or was that Facts? Like what was it yesterday? Well, he's always had games like that. Not all the time. Not like That's that. That's always that was a di different like finishing. Okay, he, so he has you... clear layups and he passes to somebody all the time. But he was like going to. I'm I'm scoring right, and I'm going to change the whole dynamic of this game by myself in the third quarter. And he got on a roll, and it was beautiful. Okay, so Grandy brought this up. Yo, do you guys believe that that effort was in some way speaking directly to what had happened earlier in the week? No, I think for some reason they found they found something they haven't had in a long time. And they played basketball at its simplest form with the pick and roll and the give and go and two guys playing for the love of the game all of a sudden. They're just playing because they loved it. It looked like they loved it. Yeah, when at times this year, yeah, we're playing, yeah, we're that, pros, we're going to give you good effort. But we have, we have so much. We have four rings. We have all the money. We have the big house, beautiful family. We've got everything. Like, Where do you go to get motivated on a daily basis when you have everything? You, you sign the big contract. Human nature is to take a deep breath and be like, I've arrived. And when you have all the accolades, all the accomplishments of these guys, where do they go on a Tuesday night against... Or on Sunday against the San Antonio Spurs in the first half, they were sleepwalking. They're like, wait a minute. They can't lose this game. Webanyama was having his way. He was dunking from five feet out. He's making he's, three pointers. He's insane. He's like slender man. I he's mean, it's insane. unbelievable. Like that, that guy's amazing. Hey, he's twenty gonna, years old. He's and just turned twenty. Yeah, and Fitz loves him. He has a crush on him, oh, like a gonna, man crush on yeah, him. Like yeah, he talked about. Well, I mean, but, but, I, I, I can see why. I, of I course, get it. I get I it. Get I kind of get it. He's dunking from the free throw line without jumping. Yeah. So, but but uh, getting back to my point, and it just hit me today when I was rewatching the game. That all of a sudden those two guys were just playing basketball, like on the, on, on a playground somewhere. It wasn't it, uh, those two yeah, went why, back to being twenty two years old all of a but, sudden. But why last night? I don't know. Maybe because it was the opponent. Maybe somebody said like, "Look, it's the Spurs. They're eighteen and fifty six, and they're they're hanging around. Like, what are we doing? Do we want this? Do we not want this? Like, what are we doing? Was it Steve? I don't know. Hmm. Did somebody jump on him at halftime? Because the way they came out of the locker room in the third quarter, I mean, they've done it a couple times this year, but Draymond specifically was like, whoa. And if he's that guy, they need him. Um, we'll take your calls, 888-957-9570. Grandy, you do think that was like directly because of what had happened earlier in the week? Well, it popped in, into my mind. Yeah. It was one of his best games, and I can remember, in a handful a of years now. It was incredible. And all the conversation late last week after Steve Kerr told you and Dibs that what Draymond did in Orlando was unforgivable, and all the conversation was, well, what does his future hold now with the Warriors? Maybe he was, like, internally motivating himself by saying, I'm going to remind you why you guys need me here still. Yeah. And last night was that. But, that right. I, but at the same time, that's why he is so infuriating like 
I'm not calling it this. So this is a big word. Don't like, this is an analogy. This is not, I am not saying this about Draymond Green. The sports, very light. It's fun. Yay, sports. <laughs> sports version of an abusive relationship. It, that's what it is. I, that's I, like I, you've I, all, yeah. right? In your life, someone near you or you, you've experienced this, that can't live with them, can't live without them sort of thing. And, and, and whatever that abusive thing is that they're doing, then as soon as you're like, all right, that's it. It's unforgivable. I'm out of here. Boom. They pull the, you can't live without me, and here's why. Or I'm sorry, and that'll never happen again. Right. And you're like, oh. Only to have the oh. cycle start over again. And so. But then in that relationship, they have a really good game in the third quarter. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and they pull you back. And this is why people don't leave. It's why people don't leave an abusive relationship because there's something there that's holding them there. So I would just say this in the whole like Draymond Green, can you live with him? Can you live without him? I would argue that everything we've experienced over the last week does not lead to Draymond Green being in a different uniform next year. I think he's yeah. still a warrior. However, however, if I were the Warriors, this is what I would do. I would stop letting this discipline or whatever that big brother is to Draymond Green, I would stop letting that person be the league. I would stop letting that person be the refs. And you need to start having it be you. The Warriors have played this the same way every time. The league suspends him. The refs give him a tech. And we sit there and we go, this can't happen. This is unforgivable. And now let's announce our starting lineup for tomorrow night's game. Number 23, Draymond Green. All right, he's a genius. Did you see what he did out there? And it's just this cycle of you misbehave. We say stop misbehaving. And then the very next day, there's no punishment whatsoever. The Warriors need to be in ultimatumville with Draymond Green going forward and let him know that the next time this stuff, the next time you make Steph Curry cry, we are suspending you. We are not letting you come on the court. That was my exact take when that happened. Yeah. I just didn't have a show to say it's that. A, I mean, it's on Steve Kerr you, and the Warriors to the finally whole organization, the organization. You can't to, just put it on Steve. That puts Steve in a terrible spot. It was such a different level because of Steph's reaction the other night. Like, yeah, Draymond got totally. kicked out again three minutes left, four minutes into the first quarter, whatever it was. And you're just like, uncle, uncle on all this. And then you saw Steph's reaction, and that took us all to a different level. And I think more importantly, Mark, than can we live with him or live without him? It's the people in that room. Can they live with him? And I think that's what's, that's the biggest question you got to answer. It's like, is, is he, are they scared of him? Is he that, that much of a presence where if you go address him, he's going to snap on you and he's kind of, a, you got to tiptoe around him. And then the, the worst thing you can have as a teammate is you don't know what you're getting on a certain day. Like, or even like if you're going to work with somebody, like, are they going to be in a good mood today? Right. Are they going to be in a bad mood today? Can I go up to them and approach them? They had a good game yesterday and they're going to be happy. They had a bad game yesterday. I got to be careful because that sucks the energy out of the room. And if you're tiptoeing around somebody and you're worried how they're going to react to how I talk to them, how I react to what they did last night, sometimes you get to a place where you're, you're almost untouchable. Like he can do whatever he wants. I'm scared to go up to him because if I do go up to him, he's going to snap on me. So we're all just going to stay back and lay back and let him do his thing. I'm sure there's been air quote interventions with him. Like we need you. We need you on the court. No if doubt. we're going to do this again, we need you. You can't do this. You have to control your emotions. He went away for 16 games or whatever it was, came back, and then it happened again. And you could see it building. You, you could, could see. see I couldn't believe how, exactly how demonstrative right. he was with refs before that game. I'm just like, dude, you haven't learned your lesson. Like this is going to happen again. You are screaming and yelling, and you're not walking away. And one of these refs is going to have enough, and you're going to be gone. Yeah, except for I would argue he is not as powerful as he used to be. And it has nothing to do with him changing. It has to do with the circumstances around the Warriors changing. The power of, I'm going to suspend you during the KD interaction, and he gets mad at the organization, or the power when he punches Jordan Poole when you're literally months removed from a parade. The difference is now, what do you got to lose, Warriors? You're the 10 seed, for God's sakes. What's going to happen if you suspend Draymond Green? 
what? What are you going to do? Fall to 11? Ooh, that's terrifying. There's not nearly as much on the line, right? And so that gives, in my opinion, that gives power to staff. That gives power to the organization because the, the only hope can be that um, it lands differently with him when it comes from inside the building. And I think if they have this play-in thing and they keep the 10 seed or wherever they end up, what are they, a game and a half behind the Lakers yeah, and two, and two, two off in front of the Houston. Rockets, yeah. that, that you'll see what you saw yesterday with Draymond the rest of the season and into the playoffs. You'd think. If they get into the playoffs, April Fool's or April Fact, like, can they make a run? Um, 888-957-9570. Let's get into it. On the dubs, we got a lot of giant stuff today too, but uh, Draymond Green, there it is after last night. Can't live with him, can't live without him. Which is it? Which would you choose? We're sponsored by Safeway and FP's in for dibs. It's Willard and Dibs. Head to Safeway this week for Challenge or Danish Creamery Butter, selected varieties, two ninety seven dollars each, limit four. Signature select classic ham, shank half or whole bone in.
man, Draymond was incredible tonight. That was a uh, defensive masterpiece. The offensive board at the end with the clay three, probably play of the game. But you can see, I mean, you watch that game. Draymond is a, he's a genius defensively. Bay Area is Draymond Green. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, but Dibs is out. We'll get uh, a Dibs sighting on uh, Wednesday. He'll be back. But uh, FP's here, everybody. I'm excited about it. The Giants are playing the Dodgers tonight. I almost pulled something blue out of the closet today. And then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, Dude, no, no. you look at this. Oh, you did? Sick. Look, I got a blue sweatshirt on. Dude, what are you thinking? I don't know. What's well, I was with you? I don't know. What's the matter with you? You want me to wear my like Dodgers lifting. jersey? I'll wear it tomorrow. Sit in the closet. It's the only one I don't have framed. All right, enough of that. But anyways. <laughs> no, not enough. Now, now, now I'm upset. Now I'm upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wore blue. How dare you still have that? Yeah, I no, know. actually, I guess that's a, uh, that's a, that, that's a, you get a waiver for that one. Yeah. You, you play, <laughs> you, you put the damn, the you put the damn, you, well, but you put the uniform <laughs> on. How many ABs did you get with the Dodgers? Uh, probably just... Uh, Hang on, I need to go to baseball, baseball reference. I don't even know if it was 100. Really? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Baseball reference, FP Santangelo. All right, 6.7 career war player. Look at that. You won almost seven games by let's yourself. Let's get back to Draymond. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get back to Draymond. You won almost seven games. You had 21 home runs in your career? Enough. enough. Good Stop. Lord. I get embarrassed. Let's go. You do? Yeah. Um, you had 177 plate appearances, 142 ABs as a Dodger. <laughs> That's all. That's all. <laughs> That's it. Let's get back to basketball. I won't, I won't. I'm excited about the did game. You, homer to- it? you did. You homered as a Dodger one time. Yeah. <laughs> pinch it. Pinch where, where, it. Where was it? Miami. Okay. So you never homered at Dodger Stadium it, as I a Dodger? I called it for five innings on the bench. I go, if I get in there tonight, I'm going deep. <laughs> and then I did it. Did you really? Yeah. Or did you just say that every day? No, I did. I every just time you're on the bench, I had like, a feeling my swing was locked in. <laughs> Joe Boo, it's like, I'm gonna hit a home. <laughs> Davy Johnson put me in. <laughs> nice. Ugh. My daughter one year played. She played one year of youth baseball, and she got put on the Dodgers, and the gear was all over the house. And I could not deal. Do they have Dodgers in the league in the Bay Area? Because I, I well, heard no, it's like traumatic is, for the kids. Yeah, we, right? we lived. We lived down. We oh, lived or, down there. But they don't have Dodgers around here, do they? Not, I, I have not encountered them in the leagues where my kids play. Yeah, no Dodgers. We're playing the Giants tomorrow night, though. My kid got drafted on the Dodgers, <laughs> and I am not going to stand for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, we're not. We're not showing up. Yeah. We're boycotting, and I support that. Same. If, yeah, if your kid gets drafted on the Dodgers, don't go. Yep. Don't go. Ask for your money back. Yep. Or go to the snack shack and protest. Do something obnoxious. Yeah. If your kid gets drafted to the Dodgers in the Bay Area, shouldn't exist. I agree. All right. Let's go to Elena in Alameda. This is back to the uh, Draymond situation. Hi, Elena. What's going on? What are you doing? Hi. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just listening to you guys, and I love what you're saying. But I just have a thought about this. I think what we're doing with the kids playing uh, the Warriors and the kids around basketball, we are teaching them to allow codependency. We are not helping them with this kind of aggressive uh, relationship they're having. And this is ruining the kids, the new, the Rockies, to move on because they are playing with all their heart and Draymond Green is winning everything at the moment he decided to. This so is I think yeah. we need to okay. stop. We need to stop Draymond Green from doing this. He shouldn't be allowed to do that just because. It's a fascinating point. It really is. Elena, thank you very much. She used the word codependency. And that's building on what we were talking about. Again, the sports version of what sometimes can be an abusive relationship, which is the Warriors have repeatedly been put in a position of, okay, this person is acting out. Are you going to do something about it? Well, no, because it doesn't benefit us to do anything about it. But that's kind of my contention is this is where the Warriors have newfound power because they're hanging out in the 10 seed. You now have newfound power. Before you were stuck. You can't do anything about Draymond Green. You're trying to win a ring. Well, now what are you trying to do? 
and go to go go, go to the crypto arena in a in, in a week and a half for a game. Like, what do you got? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you got to lose? And I'm not saying trade him. I'm really not. I'd like Draymond to stay, but I think there needs to be an ultimatum from the team, which is that, and 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 you got to do it the same way you do it when you got a kid or kids, and you put a little like you frame your little list and you put it on the wall. If your chores aren't done, you don't you don't eat or you don't get dessert or you don't get video games. Draymond, there's we're gonna make a list. You get two T's and you get thrown out of a game. That that leads to this punishment. You you punch somebody else. That's this punishment. Um, make a list. Dude, just go out and play like you did last night. But, Simple. No, but but just go do that. It's not like there's six months left in the season. Give but, it a finish. But you can't and do be that quiet. Every night. Just, but just, you can't do that every night. Play with intensity, but it, direct your intensity toward us. Direct your intensity toward winning a game, not toward the officials and every single call they make or don't make. Just like focus on the things we need to focus on right now. And then we'll address everything in the offseason. Like, he's not going to change. And it's sports. I mean, there's been, I mean, there's Rodman. There's all kinds of guys. Rodman left the season to go be in Vegas and gamble for two weeks with Carmen Electra. Right. I mean, so. But a, but a team that was trying to win a ring. A team was trying to win a ring. I, I don't, I, it, it's weird. My whole take on him has changed throughout the course of the season. And I was of the camp early that, like, if you're not available for me as a teammate, then, then I can't have you if you're not reliable. If you're not going to be there for me and I'm out there diving for loose balls and and I'm playing hard trying to get to the playoffs and you're sitting at home watching the games on TV because your lack of self-discipline and your agenda to yell at an official was more important than our agenda to win a game, then you're not useful to me. And then now seeing you know what he did the other night, that's just... <laughs> It's it's unacceptable. It's unforgivable, like Steve said. And I think the reason that we all are are done with it finally, or most fans are done with it finally, is because how it affected Steph. And we saw how it affected Steph. There visibly. you go. We yes. saw Steph, who we love more than any athlete, maybe in the history of the Bay Area, and it, 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 as sports fans, a guy that's everything that's good with sports and good about sports, and and, and as a person, and we saw how it finally affected him, and that shot of him getting choked up, and like. I'm so over this. I'm done with this. I can't take this anymore. That's huge. I've tried everything possible yeah. as a human being. And then on a national basis, for me to turn on ESPN and other channels and say them saying, questioning Steph's leadership skills, like it's not his job. It's not his job to control somebody else's temper. His job is to go out there and lead by example every night and play the, the Hall of Fame type of basketball that he pl he's played his t entire career his job is not to babysit Draymond Green. Well, That's I, not his I, job. Not only that, I would argue that controlling other people's emotions is not leadership. I don't even I think. You, yeah, I don't think you could do that. But even if you could, that's 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 dictatorship. That doesn't work. That doesn't that, that like that does not in the NBA. But 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 it doesn't work. But for us to sit here and go, do they keep him? Do they not keep him? That's an internal decision they have to make, and it's fun for us to talk about. But just go out and play like you played yesterday in the third quarter. Just yeah, but do that for ten games. But that's, I don't care how old you are. I don't care what's hurting. I don't care about what happened in the past. It's all you can control is being in the present, and, and go out there and do what you did for your teammates. Direct all that energy that's been going all over the place all year. Which if I'm gonna like speculate usually in in my in, in my uh, experiences there's something else going on somewhere else to, to for that to be directed somewhere if i'm going to get deep but like just go out there for 10 games what do they got nine games left what is it yeah not even i mean just go out there and, and play your ass off like you did in the third quarter and, and just be a good teammate um, and then see where this whole thing lands and ends up yeah, they got eight games left. And by the way, Brandon Pajemski played a great game last night. And I know we're talking about Draymond, but yeah. I, I love I, I he's he's slowly becoming he gets zero zero well, Fs and just plays no, hard. Pajemski does have something to do with Draymond because it's the same fan experience where if you want to go box score diving after, you're not going to understand why he's good. You're not going to understand why he's good if you just let you know Brandon Pajemski and Draymond Green are cut from the same cloth that way yeah. there's so many things they do on the floor that are not going to show up in the box score and if you watch the game you understand their value but to your point like there's a very high likelihood they're not even even if i can include the postseason there's a li high likelihood that the warriors have 10 games or less this year total right so even if Draymond is 
perfect. Perfect. Perfectly behaved. Full inc scope. Incredibly effective. You still got something to sit down and address in the offseason. So you're talking about right now, and I agree with you, but the bigger issue with Draymond is trust. That's why Steph was crying, I believe, is that, that like the frustration is overwhelming in those moments where you realize everything that you're doing, everything that you're talking about, everything that you're asking, everything that you think is agreed upon, every single agreement and contract, verbal and beyond, that has been made between brothers, between uh, teammates in a locker room, with coaches, with leaders, managers, whatever, everything, didn't work. Didn't work. And, and I don't know what will, if anything. The, the one thing I would say to him is, is like, you're tainting your legacy. Like, you're a Hall of Famer. But now, what are people going to remember you as? Are they going to re remember as you winning four championships? Or are they going to remember you as a guy that couldn't control your temper, gets thrown out of games, and leave your teammates hanging? I mean, we're already a, at both, don't you think? Yeah. We're already at both. Th that's, that's, that would hit home for me. If you said, like, dude, your legacy and how people are thinking about you and how people are going to remember you. But that's my question. The what guy you, in the, we saw in the parade right here on Market Street a couple years ago that was in the front of the bus with the yeah. big boom box and yep. he had the Celtics green shirt on, <laughs> whatever, I forget what it said. In the parade, he had a green shirt on because they just beat the, It was sick. And I was like, I love that guy. Is that the guy we're going to remember or is it going to be the guy that punches people, gets thrown out of games, and gets suspended indefinitely? You just said it. You said that's what would hit for me. That would, big time. I think that Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors are still searching for the thing that will actually hit with Draymond. And that's, what, that's what's so damn difficult and I think so frustrating because the league came in with an indefinite suspension and then he came back and behaved so well for eight or nine games or 15 or whatever it was. But you could see it trickling toward, it, it, toward the other night. In the last few games, you could. Yep. But prior to that, Steve Kerr, had fawned over him. I fawned over him. Impressed. You were the one I was sitting here talking to. How impressed I was when he didn't flip his lid against Memphis when yeah. there was an opportunity to do so. Uh, Steve Kerr said he had been perfect. He'd been absolutely. And I think that the team, the reason that Steph Curry cried the other night, they thought they had finally gotten to him after all these years. They thought they finally had his attention. And he finally had turned a corner. And that moment, three minutes into a 6-4 basketball game in Orlando in the middle of the week, they realized, nope, we haven't gotten to him. Nobody's gotten to him. And we probably feel like we've tried everything we can think of. And I'm, I'm here to offer the one thing that, yes, you've probably thought of, but you haven't done, which is you need to tell him, we're now the judge and the jury. And... These things we find to be counterproductive for our team. And if you continue to do them, we will not have your back. I, I, I take it. I, I think you're making great points. And, and neither one of us, as it says on the tech sign, are certified psychologists. Nope. But, but. Boy, I'm getting, I'm getting I, You're closer. getting deep in the weeds. And I love it. I, dude, this is like my wheelhouse. I, I love, I love getting deep in the weeds. How many, I think it's as simple I, as like, have you ever been to a point with anybody in your life where like, I just can't take it anymore? And you break down. I think that's what Steph did. Just like I'm over this. I can't take this. Anymore. Well, right, but that's why people thought what well, right. And he and put you, the jersey over his head. There doing it, and he's like, should get to I YouTube and CFP cry through I his hoodie. I can't take this anymore. Right, but but I just I, can't. I agree with you, but isn't that that's what people were reading last week? And that means he likes him and he cares about him. Of course. If he had washed his hands with him, he would he wouldn't have reacted like that. I agree. Because they're brothers. And they've wanted, they've done a lot of great things together. But if you if Steph Curry says I can't take this anymore, then that's it. That's it. But then that little the third quarter spurt happened yesterday, and there it was just go. like beautiful, dude. It was like it was like they were eighteen again and, and trying to get to the NBA, and they were playing for the love of the game. And you throw out the the contracts, the money, the rings, the parades, and all the drama behind the scenes, and the Jordan Pool thing, and the suspensions, and they just played basketball. And it was beautiful, dude. And that's why it mimics an abusive relationship. Because you can't quit him. Because, it's, <laughs> because he's got that. Can't quit you. Yeah. I wish I knew. I wish I knew how I to quit you. I wish I knew you. how to quit you. <laughs> they should, oh. NBC Sports Bay Area should do a commercial with oh. the two of them doing that. That would actually be funny. 
for a minute. It would. And then it would frustrate I'm people. I'm sure it would offend people, too. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt it would offend people. Um, Charles in Berkeley is here, and I have to admit that out of the corner of my eye, when you put that, Lucas, you put that up on the call screen, and I thought for a minute that Charles Barkley was on the phone. Because out of the corner of my eye, all I can see is Charles Berkeley. So it's not Charles Barkley, it's Charles Berkeley. All right, Charles and Berkeley. Hi, Charles and Berkeley, what are you doing? Terrible. Hey, well, I just listened to this, and that game last night was incredible. And it was so much fun to watch. But, you know, I don't know what you do. Draymond is going to go the other way. I mean, he has gone sideways more times than I can count. And he has been so frustrating to uh, hang on to. And he can be so brilliant at times. And, you know, I think it's devastating for the team overall over a period of time. And, you know, the Warriors are all getting old. And it's just you're going to have to make changes going into next year. You cannot trot out the same team. They kind of trotted out the same team this year and didn't get anywhere, you know, kind of comparable to last year. And that's just not going to cut the mustard. Thanks, Charles. Where'd you get cut the mustard, saying? Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. How do you? How did you get that? Uh, like well, for for your this segment sponsored by Adderall. Like, it, it, <laughs> how, how do you? Where did that? Where did that? Like, who cuts mustard? Well, there's you know, I had a buddy one time that wanted to do a book of sayings that don't make sense, like the 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 different things that we say that don't make sense, and that is absolutely one of them. Um, I would argue, uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I've never understood that. What do you think having your cake means? You gotta eat it. It's eating it. Yeah. So what the hell does that mean? Have your cake and eat it too. Cut the mustard. Who the hell has ever cut mustard? You shouldn't even be eating it, let alone cutting it. You're a mustard guy. Barely mustard. Yeah. Just a tad, a little bit of mustard. Now, Not a big a, mustard guy. <laughs> that's a big part of this. A big part of it, I think. I think the opportunity lies in the fact that the Warriors aren't that good anymore. Cutting down mustard plants is where it came from. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why you were distracted. You were Sorry. actually looking it up. I wasn't listening to what you're saying. <laughs> I, could, I could tell. I'm like, you're not listening to me. Right, I'm looking. That's okay. I'm listening. No, no, no. I have three kids. Start I, over I'm again. I'm totally go. used to the whole they're not listening to me <laughs> thing. I'm totally used to it. It's fine. Um, let's go to Dale. In Palo Alto. Hi, Dale. What are you doing? Well, driving around the highways here and enjoying your guys' shows. Thanks, Dale. Um, so, personally, um, I think I have a solution for Draymond, but I want to give a little history first. If you look at last year and this year, and especially this year, Kaminga and Moody really came on strong, and Wiggins found his game again when, when Draymond was gone. But as soon as Draymond was sitting on the bench... Uh, doing his coaching of these young players, they fell apart again. And, you know, this is last year teaching about the punch, but I think I have the solution. I think someone like Lake has to sit down and dream on and say, you know, we want to retire your number someday, but if you keep doing this, we're not going to just get rid of it. Your, your retirement number will not happen. And maybe even walk in with a pool jersey with number 23. On. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can stop you right there, Dale. Like, that's... That's kind of what I'm getting at. You have don't you don't you think you got to walk a fine line here? Because what you're suggesting would offend the living hell out of him, and maybe you won't care. But if you're going to say what you just suggested, I'd rather just walk in there and be like, "Dude, we're trading you." I mean, I've been around a lot of uh, people who had issues of different sorts, and at some point, you just got to really whap them upside the head one last time and see if it works. Yeah. And uh, I don't mean physically, I mean mentally. No, I know, but you're like you're you're erasing and disrespecting history by what you just suggested. Which I don't I don't think you do that. I think you just keep your eyes pointing forward. The whole like threatening your your legacy, your 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 statue, your uniform retirement, whatever. Thanks, Dale. I, I like I don't look, I don't know Draymond Green. Like that's a Bob Myers question. What works with Draymond? I would suggest not that. Like that's 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 a bleep you kind of a move. Yeah, maybe they, I don't think he cares about a statue. And what would the statue be? <laughs> Draymond yelling at a ref. Yeah, or just reaching back. You'd have to have a statue reaching of a back ref for like also. a Rocky. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> or like maybe they could uh, retire Rudy Gobert's number two and have him getting choked. There's options. There's options. It, 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 no. I hate. 
like I said, I'm going back to what I saw last night, and if he plays like that, I'm good. Just like it's all about focusing your energy in the right places. But he's not going to play like that every night. Why? He was more aggressive last night. Right, but he's not. He looked not, to shoot more. He's always looking to pass. Like, be that guy. But you're not going to get 21 points from Draymond Green most nights. You're not going to get that. Like, you know this. You're not going to get the same thing from athletes, even if the effort is the same. But even the, the defensive stuff. Yeah. With Webb and Yama. No, he was, was fantastic. Was awesome. You know, last week we had a lot of talks about Andrew Wiggins. And people were feeling Wiggins right now because they're like, oh, he's on a good little run. Well, last night he went two for 12. Scored four points. You're not going to get the same thing every night. You're not even going to get the same thing from Steph every night. Yeah, that's why my takes are all over the place with this guy. Because that's, that's Warrior basketball this year. I think he's all over the place. We as fans are all, all over the place with what he's done, what he hasn't done. And then one day you're coming in here going, that was beautiful. And then one day you come in here and go, like, what was he doing? But, but that's like, but that's also what it's like rooting for a 500 team. I know they're a couple games over, what, yeah. four or five over. But, like, you have one night where you're like, these guys can go deep into the playoffs. And you have another night where you're like, they're going nowhere. They're terrible. Right. And, right. And why are we getting – you had the the best take of all the last – whenever we just did the shows together when you said, like, why are we getting excited about a 10 seed? Like, is this fool's goal? Like, and then I said, well, they have resume. And they're going to – there's a different level they're going to reach when they get to the playoffs because now these games really, really matter. And then where do you go as a, as a player that's won four championships until you get to these games that you're used to playing that matter? And I thought because of the resume, if they do get in, who knows? And 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 you're not wrong. But you're you wrong. had a great point saying, well, hey, t t a 10 seed's a 10 seed, and your record is your record, and where you're at is where you're at. And why should we get excited about these guys? This is, this is what we've done all year long with the Warriors, which is our takes change on the daily based on what we saw last night. And so today is yay Draymond day. Talk to us again on Wednesday. See how we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Goes out there and punches Luca in the face. Right? I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't know. I to me, you got to do something different. But that's but trading him is not the different thing. I th I think there needs to be a new agreement between the team and and the player in this particular case. We're presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. And um, FP is in for dibs. We'll keep taking your phone calls. Uh, yeah, Joey Bart has been DFA'd. I think both of us are pretty excited about some of the things we saw from the Giants over the weekend. Tim Kawakami is going to join us in a little bit over an hour. It's Weathered and Dibs. I'm what you might call very good.
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. What'd you say, Lucas? Do we have a starting lineup for tonight's game uh, between the Giants and the Dodgers? What do we got? What's happening? Uh, hold on. Let me pull it up. The big news is that Austin Slater will be hitting two playing right field today. Oh. I have it. You ready? Yeah. Lee me. in center. Okay. Slater in right. Slates. Solar power in the DH. Chapman third. Right, Murphy. Right. Catcher. Estrada second. Conforto left. Nick Ahmed short. Fitzgerald first. Keep going oh. on the mound. Oh. Dude, I love that Fitzgerald's playing again today. Who? <laughs> Tyler Fitzgerald. Tyler Fitzgerald. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, Lucas. Tough, tough day yesterday. You sit on that for a week. Then... That I marinates. What, I didn't even see what he happened. He made an error first play of the game at shortstop oh, yesterday, okay, and okay, he yeah, struck yeah. out three times. I, I was a little late to the game, and by the time I got there, it was 10 nothing. I'm like, I'm going to skip this one. I like that he's playing tonight. And then he got in and pitched yesterday. And you could, yeah, and you can, you can, you can, you can flip the, flip it easier this way. This is, this is a nice move by Melvin. Who needs back Shohei? We have Tyler Fitzgerald. Why you say stuff like that? I mean, I know you're kidding, but like, come on. Now's not the time to do that. You can't do that. Stop stop this this inferiority complex. It's got to go away. Like, honestly, for real, I wouldn't even plan to talk about this, but can I borrow 30 seconds? Sure. Giants fans, 2024, stop the inferiority complex. Stop. Stop it. Just stop it. I don't have that. I know you don't. You're the only one here, though. So I think I they're, a good, to you. they're a good. Pl- they're a good team. They are a good team. They're playing the game the right way, all of a sudden. I, like I don't even. But like they're two and two. We'll see where this all goes. But you, we got to stop this inferiority complex, especially when it comes to the, playing the Dodgers. Oh well, we can't. The, nobody's got that lineup. Nobody does. The Braves do. Okay, fine. The, the Braves, Braves have a better lineup. Okay, the, Bra- the, the okay, the Braves do. It's a great point. <laughs> But the Arizona Diamondbacks swagger into your building. They don't have that lineup. Phillies is pretty good, too. <laughs> it's not the Dodgers. No, it's I'm, not the Dodgers. I know. I'm just... just you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Being an idiot over uh, Yeah, like, but, but... So what? Okay. Let's play. Bring it on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what you got. I just want... If you're a Giants fan and you feel that way, what would happen if you lived in Cincinnati or Pittsburgh or Washington, D.C.? Or whatever. Like, what? what is this? What is this whole... In fact, on some level, I even think it's permeated. We were talking about it a week ago. Yeah. It's actually permeated into the whole organization. When Farhan was like, we didn't think we'd get up a chance at Blake's now. There were a lot of other teams that wanted him. What? So what if there are other teams that want him? Why don't you walk into the room... And slap your you-know-what on the table and let everybody know that the Giants are here. Let's go. Where where, where did that go? Stick your you-know-what in the dirt and fight. Let's go. And that's what's going to happen. What happened? Wait, I'll tell you this. I know it's only four games, so you don't want to overreact. And yesterday, you just throw that out the window. That, that experiment did not work. So, whatever yesterday. But just the way they've played the first three games. The things I haven't seen in the last two years... Guys busting it out of the box. Patrick Bailey with a hustle double on a bobble to Tatis. They're playing hard. The defense they're playing. Nick Ahmed at short. Tyro. Chapman at third base. Dude. Jung, Jung-Hoo in center with his routes are very clean. Jung-Hoo Lee looks funny. He li- Dude, it's only so, been four games. It's only oh four games, God. so that, not, not no, overreact. No, but, but, but you're kind of exciting, right? If you're the, the, the trained eye can see that this is baseball all of a sudden, yeah. and it's Giants baseball, and it's what we're used to with good starting pitching minus yesterday. Like throw, Just throw well, yesterday they, they out. Put, they put Dalton Johnson from NBC Sports Bay Area on the mound, and they got what they got. So he's not going to be a starter for much more time this year. Blake Snell is coming. Alex Cobb is coming. I found that very easy to blow off. I'm with you. Defense. I thought, I thought they looked great. Pitching. They're playing hard. They can hit. They, the lineup is going to make you work. There's some thump in the lineup. They went out and signed really good players that are playing really well. It's four games. So this may be a little bit of overreact, but like just to the trained eye, I'm seeing accountability. If they don't run a ball out, guess what? They're going to sit next to the manager. Yep. If they're all running hard to first base, little things. They're diving for balls. They're playing defense. They're excited to play. It's baseball. It's Giants baseball. And if I'm being honest, and I know this is on and there's a red light and people are listening, the last couple of years haven't been what we're all used to 
if you say Giants baseball, like what's Giants baseball to you? It's a team that grinds. When the Giants come to town, it's bye bye baby. That's what Giants baseball is to me. <laughs> it's playing hard and it's fighting and it's scrapping and it's clawing. It's pitching the heck out of it. It's catching the heck out of it. It's refusing to give in at the plate and getting a clutch hit the other way with two strikes and finding a way to beat people with your hard hat and your lunch pail, which is representative of this city. Yeah, pitching and defense. It, like, and and, just, and yeah, I've seen play. that in a short period of time. Like, we'll see how it plays out over right. a lot more games in six months, but... Early returns are that they have they have there's accountability in the room right now, and I don't know that that was the case. Speaking of Jung Hoo Lee, really quick, did you guys happen to hear the Korean call of his first career no, home run? No, you no, want to hear it? but yes. I think I'd like to. Yes. It's a Saturday, okay. Jung Hoo Lee's first homer. Let's Here's roll. the Korean call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is when the guy is just he's out of breath and he just goes <laughs> apparently that's amazing uh, the analyst stepping on the play by play guy is encouraged in Korea <laughs> wow it was an exciting moment is there any translation that we can get? Like, what's that thing that would play the beginning again? Yeah, I want to hear the beginning. Because there's something they said like four times in a row while the ball was in the air. <laughs> okay, does anyone know what that is? If anybody knows what I that means, or I know you don't, Grandy. <laughs> if anybody knows what that is, Text us or call us or tweet us. I wonder. I don't know what that. I, I don't know what that means. But that's very fun to listen to. And my God, his family up there in the stands. How great was that, dude? I was bummed that Kipe didn't have the call on the TV my side. My son was, said the exact same thing. But I, I don't know who the play-by-play -play guy was on the Fox broadcast. But he nailed it. He said something like the 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 uh, Adam Amin, the son yeah. of the wind, and they showed the son, of, yeah, the grandson of the wind. They showed yeah. the, the, his dad up there, and they right. said the son of the wind or the in the grandson of the wind, and it was it was a really good call. I think Grandy's got it. Let's uh, let's hear that. Lee can crank him deep to right field. Back goes Tatis, long gone, and there is the first major league home run for Jung Hoo Lee, and there is the son of the wind watching the grand. It's a good okay. call. That's preparation. That's a solid call. That, and that's preparation. I liked it. That's a national broadcast. He was ready. He was ready. He was ready for and that. And they had a shot of his dad yeah. in the stands, oh, the and they family. were going crazy. And I was getting so emotional, good. dude. Totally. It was great. I mean, you know what the funny thing was? <laughs> so I'm at dinner with the fam, and uh, he hits this thing. And what was that game three? Was it Saturday? It's the third game. And uh, and my son goes, oh, wow, like the, the family's still here. And I go, well, I don't think you come all the way for Korea and just go to one game. I think they might stay for the weekend. Yeah. That's just my thought. But that was Izzy's like, I can't believe they're still here. I'm like, yeah, they might be. I, I would imagine they're going to go to L.A. too. Yeah, they didn't just drive yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just hop in the family now, truckster. Saw the first hit on the first day, and they're like, all right, honey, let's go back home. Somebody on the YouTube text line uh, Leela Wang is saying that they were saying right, right, right. Uh, maybe. I don't know. That's the other thing I have no way of confirming. Isn't it cool, though, that it doesn't matter if you understood what they said, but the the emotion was conveyed perfectly? Completely. I think that's awesome. No. That's I a good call. I don't even know Foreign language broadcasts, especially in a moment like that, like that obviously was a really big deal to that country. Like, players have come from Asia before, but very few, as we talked about. The KBO is not like there are not a lot of position players who have come over and hit. And uh, I know it's only been one series, but all the things that he was advertised to be, you saw them already. The bat-to-ball skills look really, really good. I know you thought he looked like a rook in his first game. He was a little nervous. Okay, I'm Understandable cool with that. who yeah. who wasn't in there. Um, like yeah. you got a whole nation on your shoulders. 
I, I get it. The one thing I want to see, Mark, now is the league will adjust to him way quicker than the KBO league adjusted. For and, sure. And they'll be able to execute those adjustments. And how does he readjust to how they adjust? And I already saw they're going to start pounding him in. Of and course. He, he's got to get to that fastball in. Yeah. The, the turn whole, and burn, baby. The whole thing was whether or not he can turn on a on a, on a major league fastball. He can. And he can. And he can. But they're going to live in there. And, and, well, and, and, and yes. Here's what I want to know. Because uh, Larry Kruger's Brock Purdy victory lap is now over. Just, it's great, but time's up. Like, that's been fun. It's been now, uh, you know, we're coming up. We're going to come up. Yeah, we're going to come up here on two years. So, great call, Larry. You were right. How many games in if Jung-Hoo Lee is looking good until Larry has to call this show and apologize? Because he's been poo pooing the hell out of that signing the whole off season. Man, that's between you and Larry. <laughs> it's, it's, would, it's too early now. No, I would love your like your input on how oh. like how many games till till we can be like that looks like a good signing. I'll, I'll defer to the great Felipe Alou, and he always said, "You know what your team is after the forty game mark." Okay, forty games. Yeah, so a, right. a month and a half. So we're ten percent of the way there already. A month and a half. Fantastic. See what he's doing. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll get back to your phone calls. Ooh, Jim says Draymond Green is an addict. I think I'd like to hear that. Jim, stay right where you are. 888-957-9570. FP's in for dibs. Weathered in dibs. Hey, Dan Dibley here for Fremont Bank. It's
Now, back to Willard and Dibs <laughs> on 95.7 The Game. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> He's overwhelmed. He's absolutely over overwhelmed with the greatness of Jung Hoo Lee. Whoa. This year's front runner for National League Rookie of the Year. Hey, what's the over under on how many times <laughs> on the broadcast this year I say who's on first? I'm, I'm going to say it. <laughs> Just out of nowhere, like, who's on first? Who's on first? Well, who's on first? Only when he's on first, Who's hopefully. on first? Yeah. I watched the whole Abbott and Costello thing. It's funny. You I just watched this no, now? I, I rewatched. I've seen oh, it a hundred times. Okay. And then when you think of Jung Hoo in there, it's kind of, you know, it's, it, yeah. I'm a big fan. I think he's, a, he's, he's more of a presence at the plate than I thought he would be. He's big. When you go to your first game, I think I told you this on air the other day or off air. I can't remember. When you go to the game, he's bigger than you he's think. Bigger, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's put no, he's together. got a little presence out there. He got a little presence. He's got a little presence. He got a little yeah. swagger. The way he throws the ball into the infield, like on a routine ground ball, he got, he does the closed shoulder shuffle, shuffle, and it looks like Ichiro. No, the Giants dead on Ichiro. The he, Giants. He emulates Ichiro a lot. The best thing you could say about the Giants after this weekend: forget two and two, they can hit. Now they're, now they're playing Giants baseball. All these things. We'll see how sustainable they are. The Giants have a little flavor. They've got a little flavor. They do. They've got Jung Hoo Lee. They've got, and I know it wasn't a great weekend for Jorge Soler, but Soler has got has got a little swag to him. Chapman absolutely has a presence. Wait till you see Blake Snell, and then I'd even argue someone like Kyle Harrison and Jordan Hicks for that matter. I, that was fun. I don't know if y'all watched that on uh, on Saturday, but but Kyle Harrison pitches with flair and swag, and my God, thank you. Like Jesus, they needed that. Wow, they needed that. Harrison's like, got he got a little like hop to his step yeah, when he, he strikes does. somebody out. Yes, he does. Hanging out with Webby all when off he, season when he froze Tatis yeah. and hopped off the mound. Yep, I was like, I would like uh, one more of those, please. <laughs> please inject that into my arm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know? It's early, but we'll see. I, I like what I've I, from just a baseball standpoint and the way they're playing the game and approaching it all. I, I'm I'm very pleased with even though they split in San Diego. I'm very pleased. Yeah, yeah. And I again, I thought yesterday was easy to blow off. Yeah, like that's that's not who now. If they lose thirteen to nothing tonight or something like that, that'd I, be less than ideal. They're not going to. Who's uh, Paxson? That's who's starting for the Dodgers. Did I, did I just read your mind? A you little? did. Yeah, James Paxson. And well, I knew it was a lefty. Lefty. Or else slates wouldn't have been in the lineup. Okay. All right. Let's go. We're ready. Send the Dodgers a message tonight. Let's go. So they weren't going to play Wade, but Flores is hurt. So that's why Fitzgerald is bat is playing. Wilmer first. flipped over the dugout yesterday, yeah. and no Padres helped him. And he, it, what'd you think about that, by the way? I know Mike was real outspoken on the broadcast. Yeah, Kirk was. It, a lot of times, though, is a, is a player in the dugout when that ball's coming towards your head and trust me I've spent more time in the dugout than flipping <laughs> over the dugout you want to get out of the way because you don't want to get hit in the head with the yeah. foul ball and then you, you're kind of looking up at the ball and you're not looking at the guy Wilmer is also a humongous human being he's huge I do not want Wilmer Flores in my lap either at the bottom of the staircase I thought they could have made a little better effort but yeah, I, yeah that's just I'm one of those gonna, things where I just I don't want to get hit in the head not gonna get I'm looking at the ball that. not the player usually I hear you uh, let's go to Jim and Woodacre uh, Jim, you're on with Willard and FP. What's going on? Oh, man, thanks for taking my call, but uh, you switched to baseball. I was call commenting on uh, Draymond. That's all right, no, let's talk Draymond. Yeah, listen, here's the deal. Uh, here's how I look at it. I'm a bit of an older guy, so I've seen a lot of foibles in life. You know what? Draymond is hes almost into anger like uh, like people are addicted to alcohol it's like his he's got to learn he's learning to get beyond his uh, his bad habit you know and uh, you know steph's uh action was apparent in the sense that oh my god you you've been straight for a year and now you fell back you know what i mean it's not a you know he 
I think, I believe in Draymond. I think he's learning. Uh, the only thing I felt bad was he didn't seem to really own up to how he blew it. And But what can we say? That's part of denial. <laughs> well, to me, actually, Jim, that's a big part of the issue. And that's what would concern me. Because if you are talking about whether it's an addict, I don't even know if that's exactly the right word. Can you be addicted to being angry? Yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't say it that way. You can have an anger management problem. I guess you could call it a, an addiction, but I don't think Draymond's like, man, I need another shot of anger. I need a fix. Like, I yeah, need a fix. I need a fix. I need a fix. Hey, man. Oh, that felt so good. You got any more of that anger uh, in there? Yeah! <laughs> Screw you! <laughs> You got some anger under that jacket. Oh, God, I feel so much better. I'll give you it's a like, hundred bucks. Give me some anger. Doing a shot of tequila. That yeah. felt just like it. I don't I don't think it's an addiction. Um, hey, man, you got some angry on you? I be, need some. It, right. Do you, have can, a, do you have an angry dealer on speed dial? <laughs> it could be an affliction, not an addiction. Is Remember what, affliction shirts? Those were so bad. I don't. They were terrible. Anyway. Yeah, I'd like I, anger management. Um, it's hard. I was a snapper. Sure. I had anger issues back in the day playing. Well, it's a frustra it's so, frustrating yeah. to I mean, fail eight out of ten times. But this is that's why I think the conversation is appropriate right now. When you go back to that argument that he's having with the ref, that is the visual of someone who can't control his emotion because it's not like anybody said you're not allowed to get mad. It was, you're not allowed to stay mad. Like, Draymond, you said it. And then you said it four times. And then you said it ten times. And now Steph Curry's tapping you on the chest. Like, okay, big fella, you got it out? You got it out? Let's move on now. Let's move on. Do you remember, this is a viral, repeated clip. Some people will say that this is the greatest mic'd up moment in all of sports. Do you, and I, I, I'm, Grandy or Lucas, maybe you guys could find the name of the umpire. This thing gets replayed on the internet every year. Terry Collins, I think it was Terry Collins, was the manager of the Mets. Yep. Is that right? TC. Do you know which which clip I'm talking about? Was it the playoffs? Um, I don't know if it was the playoffs, but I, Noah Syndergaard. I think it was. Yeah, throws at someone. From the Royals, I believe. And gets hucked out of the game right away. Right away. Uh, like He threw behind him. And there had been stuff going on between the two teams, and they had been given pregame or pre-inning warnings or whatever. And so the guy gets thrown out, and the umpire just like he starts with Syndergaard, and then he runs over to Terry, and he tells the other umpire, he says, you take him, I'll take him. And clearly he's got a history with Terry Collins, and he's talking him through this whole thing, and Collins is losing his mind. You got to give us a shot. What about what they did? And they're talking about the league. They're like, the league didn't do anything. And the ump's like, there's nothing I can do about that. We're on the line if we don't do it. Like, it was the greatest conversation. The reason I bring it up is the whole thing ends. Terry's not okay. And he's had it. And he's screaming and his hat sideways and saliva's flying in every direction. And the ump, instead of following him, and instead of screaming his own point, Goes, okay, Terry, did you get it out? Did you get it out? That's good umpiring. Okay, good. You got it out. And Terry's walking away by then. And the ump doesn't follow him. Just, okay. And I felt like that's what Steph was doing to Draymond Wednesday night. Tapping him on the chest. Okay, did you get it out? Did you get it out? Good. Now let's get back to the game. Didn't stop. Didn't stop. And in fact, threw something out that he knew was going to get him kicked out and never even broke stride and left the floor. And that's when you know you have someone who's like, it's not just an anger problem. It, it Like, he went to that place. When he goes to that place, he can't come back. And and, and that's why there's a lack of trust, I think. Well, that, that place and walking that fine line is what makes him so great and gets him fired up for games that you have trouble getting fired up for based on all that you've accomplished. So that place, that fine line he walks, is how he gets motivated. And he'll argue with the ref every now and then. And it's almost like when, I don't know, I thought Steve got a great technical foul. Was it last night that to fire up the troops a little bit because they were flat in the first half? It's almost like he has to flirt with that, that line of managing my anger to get myself going, to get myself fired up for this game when I'm just, I'm just not into it yet. And then 
when you that's it's a dangerous place to be, right? Because yep. if you cross that line, you're see you later and two ne- technicals and you're out of the game and now your teammates are really disappointed with you. But I mean, that's the issue. You say that's the fine line that he walks. I would argue he doesn't walk the fine line. It zigzags all over it and crosses it a lot. And that's so that's that's different. By the way, uh, one of our YouTubers, uh, Gut Thinker, says that that was Tom Hallion. Is that maybe right? Was it Tom? H- yeah. yeah, it was Tom. Tom Hallion. Hallion. Yep. Did you ever you ever have any interactions with Tom Hallion? Tom Hallion's the guy that does the sprinkler strike three call like that. <laughs> I know that's terrible radio. He does the. Tr- yeah, like, like you're, you're he doing, punches up to the You're sky. doing kind of like what Tiger Woods did when he won the Masters. He did Steven Strasburg's first game when he struck out 14. And it's oh, just wow. Like, oh. Yeah, punch it to the sky. <laughs> yeah, I you're call giving, it the sprinkler head. It's a little bit of an Eric Gregg thing that you got going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like Tom Hallion? Yeah, good dude. Good umpire. That's okay. the way you handle arguments. He, he was fantastic. The best way to diffuse an argument is say, like, did you get it out? Or I was wrong. Umpires say I was wrong. That's the end of the argument. But Tom, was, I screwed that call up. But FP, that, but, I'm like, but, okay. But Tom, that, wasn't this wrong. argument's over. Yeah, exactly. I was. I, I joke with Dibs about this all the time. It's three most powerful words in the English language. I mean, I did it. I did it with my daughter over the weekend. Yeah. She. I mean, we're just dude. Extreme then, accountability. Yeah. A book written by a Navy SEAL is one of the best books I've read in a long time. And she's waiting for my response, and I just looked at her and I paused and I went, "You're right." I'm I'm completely wrong. That's here. the end of the argument. And she just goes, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> what generally happens Man, we when went you inside of popcorn. What generally happens when you admit you're wrong, the other person will go, Oh, I was too. Yep. And then that's the end of yep. it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that Terry Collins did not in this <laughs> in this particular case. He just went play you. And then he walked off of the field. But uh anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There are way too many swears. It's going to take me a while. I'll turn it around for you eventually. It's the best. But Tom Halley, the line of the whole thing is, our ass is in the jackpot. Our ass is in the jackpot. That, Terry, the our one. ass is in the jackpot. If we don't do that on the league, it, our ass is in the jackpot. Meaning he's going to get fined? <laughs> well, he's basically like, we can't, we can't, like, if Noah Syndergaard throws the ball behind someone's head and we let him stay in the game, and then the other team is going to come out and huck someone off somebody's temple. What do you think is going to happen to the umpires? Who've already nothing. issued a warning? <laughs> nothing. Well, yeah. Just like <laughs> usual, nothing. Their ass is well, in the jackpot. We never know, by the way. They get suspended. They disappear for a series. They get fined. You just, we just don't hear about it. You don't it. know. Yeah. yeah. They're just home. Although there is still Angel Hernandez. Yeah. <laughs> I never seen <laughs> I mean, where do you think Dibs is this way? By the way, good dude. I'm kidding, by just, the way. Who, Angel? Oh, yeah. Great guy. I disagree. No, he's a nice guy. If he was sitting right here doing this show, you'd be like, oh, no, you're a nice guy. I'm all, yeah, God, that just makes me uncomfortable. Oh, he's a good dude. He's terrible. I mean, maybe, but he's just, he's, he's a awful nice. awful at his job. He's, yeah, but it's, it's a very it. unattractive quality to be terrible at your job, don't you think? Uh, maybe he's not a nice guy in the heat of battle, but you see him off the field or you have a beer with him. He just, he's a nice guy. Oh, I'm sure. I'm not, I'm, it's not personal. I just don't want him to umpire games anymore in the big leagues. I know. That's all. I don't want bad things to happen, you know, like off the, I don't, I I don't want, you know, I don't want death to happen to his family and things like this. Do you think, I don't know what the referee's name was that threw Draymond out the other night. Oh, I don't know his name either. Who was that, Grandy? Do you think he, do you think he could have diffused that? No, I thought he did a great job. I thought he did diffuse that. He gave him a pretty long. He gave him a long leash and then he attempted to walk away. Yeah. He attempted to walk away and Draymond yelled as loud as he could, bleepity boppity boop. And that was the end of that. Well, the official's most, name is Ray Acosta. Oh, yeah, Acosta. Yeah, yeah, Ray Acosta. He, yeah. I thought he did a great job. I did too. And 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 I do not usually feel that way. When players get thrown out for two technicals without physically assaulting anyone, I normally will say there's no reason to throw them out. But this was this was one of those circumstances. And if you're a lip reader, you know what Draymond said. Yes, you do. At and the it, very end, it's there. a big old no no. Yeah, it's a big old no no. It's a big old no no. So anyway. I don't even know. How the hell did we get to Tom Hallion? Oh. Okay. You got it off your chest? You got it off your chest? Okay, good. Go back to the dugout. I thought that's what Steph was trying to say to Draymond. So I just, you got to try something different if you're the Warriors. But that can't be, um, I don't believe it can be trading him. I don't think you can do that. I think you're going to get a bad deal. Do you think they're scared of him? Do you think that's one of those guys that if you approach and we've already tried everything and if we keep trying, 
these things that we've threatened to suspend him ourselves eventually next year, you can't do this, that they're scared of his reaction, that it could go so far south that he could be such a distraction that they're kind of tiptoeing this fine line of not being scared of him, but scared of the ramifications if we like lay down the ultimate ultimatum? I think that you could make that case in the past. I don't think so anymore. I think in the past you can make the case. There's two things going on here. One, the only reason you'd be scared of him now is that Bob Myers isn't in the organization anymore. And he was always the one who knew what to do with Draymond Green. And he's not they, there anymore. Do you so, think they still talk, though? Doesn't, it, just because he's not there doesn't mean they don't talk. Probably, but is he doing it on behalf of the Warriors? I don't know if he's doing that anymore. As Draymond's friend, like, look. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what, what's Bob's motivation to continue to counsel Draymond Green on the behalf of the Warriors. Because they're friends. Maybe. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he does. So that would be a little bit unsettling if I were the current Warriors. But, no, I, I, I think that you can make the case that in the past there probably have been times where they were because he wielded so much power. This guy essentially ran Kevin Durant out of town, one of the best players in the entire NBA. And his relationship helped run Kevin Durant out of town, and the organization one time was like, all right, you have to sit one game. But other than that, they just let him. They let him, and he did, and then they won another championship anyway. So they, like, there was such power in the fact that Draymond, it felt like he held the key to the Warriors' championship hopes every year, as much as Steph Curry did. But now he holds the key to the play-in tournament. That is not as powerful. I don't know what the Warriors would have to be scared of anymore. So you're saying the juice isn't worth the squeeze right now? Well, no, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm saying that um, if you have arrived at a spot where you feel this is now tilted in that counterproductive direction, in other words, I guess kind of what you're saying, this the behavior is not worth the output. Used to be because we would be like the one seed or the two seed or the three seed. Now you're the 10 seed and you're still getting the same behavior and you're getting suspensions and everything. So if, if you feel like that has tilted in maybe your favor, then that gives you the opportunity to go handle it a different way now. There's nothing to be scared of because you don't have nearly as much to lose. The Warriors had so much to lose every year. Now they're the 10 seed. What do you got to lose? Man, I'm so old school, Mark. Like, I, I, if somebody's a constant distraction and it's costing us wins, and maybe it would be a seventh seed or a sixth seed had he been there longer, I just go back and forth. And, and there's some days where I'm like, you got to get rid of them. And then what I saw last night, and I'm sure they're doing the same thing. There, there, there was. I've, I've been around players that are such big superstars, and they're in the clubhouse, and you have to tiptoe around them. And you have to be careful on what you say to them on a given day. And you got to be careful if you suspend them because they're doing this, because then you lose them or they become an even bigger energy vampire in the locker room where they're just sucking the life out of the place. So then it's everybody's just kind of tiptoeing around like, I don't know what he's going to be on this day. I don't know if he's going to get thrown out of the game. I don't know if he's going to get the umpires upset. Now I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get bad calls against me because he's saying things. Or is he going to be available? Is he going to get suspended again? How many games are you going to miss? And all of these things are taking energy away from what I need to do to focus to win a game and what I need to do to be successful and what we need to do to win. And that becomes tiresome. Do you think that, that becomes old? That becomes like, oh my God, I'm sick of this. And I think that the Warriors are getting to that point, but then we see what happened last night. So I guess the question that I'm having trouble with, and who cares what I think, but like what I'm having trouble with is 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 is, the, is there enough in the tank with him to put up with all of this? And last night, for a, a glimpse, yes, absolutely. But then, like you said, what's going to happen tomorrow night? And then what can you expect? And you have to be on pins and needles with like what you're going to get from somebody. Like One, one of the, the greatest qualities you can have as somebody you work with or a teammate is that you know you're, what you're going to get from that guy every day as a person. When you walk into that locker room, you know who he's going to be super consistent. You hear this, he's the same guy every day, whether he's 0 for 4 or 4 for 4. Like, that's that's something. That's a lot. Because if you have to tiptoe around people and you never know what you're going to get and you're always on pins and needles and you just don't know what kind of person they're going to be and they're not a consistent person, then 
that takes away from what I need to do to be successful, what we need to do to be successful. And if I have to answer questions on your behalf every day, mm -hmm. and I got to stand up in front of the media and talk about you instead of us and the game, that gets old, man. That gets old in a hurry. It does. So I, I would imagine on the inside, there's a lot of, there's a lot of text messaging going on and a lot of guys talking about like X, Y, and Z. But then you look at the body language last night and you look at how much they were celebrating and they were hugging and, yeah, and, and it's just like, okay, maybe you check all that at the door in the heat of battle. But I guarantee you there's a lot of guys in that locker room that are just over all of it. There's a lot of guys that are just done with it. And we'll never know publicly. They're not going to say it publicly. I'm sure. But you're, you're also, again, this was a Sunday night in San Antonio. And you won your 40th game. Like, the power is going to tilt at the end of the year based on how it finishes. You get out of the playing tournament, even if you scare Denver. Let's say you take Denver to six or seven games. You know, you somehow get out of the playing tournament and do, do that. It's going to make people feel like, ooh, can't do this without Draymond. You whimper into the 10 seed and lose to the Lakers in the first game of the playing tournament. Draymond, you, you got no juice. What are we worried about? What are we freaking out about to hold on to you for what? So that we can play one extra game at the end of the regular season? Do you think there's teams out there that would say, like, we'll take them? I do. You do? I do. I think he holds a lot of value for some of those, like, young up-and-coming playoff teams that don't have a lot of, like, attitude or energy or playoff experience. An Oklahoma City, an Orlando, a Cleveland, teams like that, I think Draymond would hold a ton of value. The Kings? Sacramento Kings need a Draymond Green. Um, oh, okay, here. This is Tom Howian and Terry Collins. Oh, let's go. Yeah, here it is. That, that I, I can't God control that. It. Terry, you know where I stand on the whole situation. It, that, but that's, but, but that's you're better than that, Tommy. No, you no, know that. Terry, listen, I'm telling you, our ass is in the jackpot now. Okay? Okay, that's what I'm just telling you. You know what? That, that, that's, you got it. You got it. Okay, get it. You got everything out? Okay. There it is. Okay. You got everything out? All right, back to the dugout. Terry Collins. <laughs> so that was the 2015 NLDS. Brother. You'll never see when, someone more angry. Like, listen to Terry in there. He can't even breathe. He can't. <laughs> he's gonna give us a shot. He's so mad. It's because you remember uh, Ruben Tejada. That's the Chase Utley rule. He he broke his leg sliding a second, and yep. that 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 was yep. thrown behind Utley. Yep. Yep. And that's Short. why you got to give us a shot. You gotta like you shot. broke our shortstop's leg. Yep. And he knew it was coming. Utley yeah. knew. Yeah. I Nobody think was, was surprised. The Syndergaard missed the guy by five feet. He threw it behind his head. I think there's some Utley story in there. Where like, <laughs> if he doesn't hit me right now, tell him he's a P-word or something like that. And just make sure it's low or something. Dude, like, he's telling the catcher that. If you'd like to listen to the whole thing without beeps, uh, go to a YouTube near you, and you should look it up. because it. And, and by the way, it's longer than just that. Like, the guys cut the, the, the piece that we were talking about. The, the whole thing is a good three-minute experience. People are s switching off umpires. It's hysterical, and it's amazing. And Tom Howian comes out of it looking like an absolute G. Like, what a great job. There's a quote here in this article I'm looking at. I know we got to go. I was just trying to let Terry vent his frustration, and I've got enough respect for Terry to do and say whatever he wanted to say. But I also want him to know that we were doing our job and in that situation. Uh, we have to throw Syndergaard out our asses in the jackpot. Our asses in the jackpot. <laughs> I also have a piece of breaking news. Well, I gotta steal that. You do? It's twofold. Number one, Terry Collins has a YouTube show, apparently. He does? That's the one part of it. The other part is that Tom Hellion will be going on that show next week. You're kidding me. How about that? Let's get Tom on. Great timing. Wow. I didn't even know that when I brought it up. That's amazing. I'd love to hear that. Will they yell at each other like that on the pod? I'm going to go no. I think the name of the podcast is Ass in the Jackpot. 
<laughs> I'd, I'd listen to that every day, wouldn't you? Let's if go. If you hit the Powerball tomorrow night, do you get Tom Hallion's ass? Does that happen? Is that in there? You get a billion dollars in Tom Hallion's ass. I'm in. Let's go. All right. Uh, we're presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. Um, Tim Kawakami's uh, ass is on the show. Uh, that's coming up <laughs> in about a half hour. Uh, but until then, we'll, we'll keep taking your calls. What do, what do you think? Can't live with him? Can't live without him? Which would you choose? FP's in for dibs. Well, it in dibs. I'm what you might call very good.
Bay Area, it's Draymond Green. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Tim Calcom is going to join us in a half hour. I'm distracted by what you just told me during the break. Wait, what? We talked about a lot of things. Asterio Ruiz. Oh, yeah, he got sent to AAA today, hitting 429 for the A's. It's everywhere. He led the big leagues in stolen bases last year. Yeah. Set a rookie record for the most stolen bases ever. Had a great spring and is hitting 429 in the opening series. So they sent him down. It's a tough team to make, Mark. <laughs> Was he playing too good? Listen, I don't want to talk A's baseball. That would no, be stupid. That's it, dumb. I have one question, and then we can move on. When, when does baseball step in, and why haven't they already? There's, there's so for everything you know. This is what I'll say. For everything you know, there's a million more things. For everything I know, there's nine hundred fifty thousand more things. As far as what the A's have done, both on the field and off, as an organization, as a structure, in Oakland, in Vegas, in Sacramento, anywhere, anywhere. It, for everything you know, there's a million more. And I'm trying to figure out if, if, if the Oakland A's are no different than a subway. It's a franchise that, that you buy the name and you get to run it. And Subway sends Jared down? If Subway s suddenly goes, okay, here's what we're doing. No more turkey sandwiches. We're going, new motto, liverwurst only. That's it. That's all we're serving. At a certain point, Joe Subway is going to show up and go, you don't get to do this anymore. There are rules here. You must run your franchise within the rules of what the greater organization does. You are not allowed to do this. You cannot lose on purpose. You cannot put possums in the, in the clubhouse and in the press box. You cannot disenfranchise your fans. You cannot make them want to stay outside. You cannot, you cannot do this. You can't do this. This is Major League Baseball, and you're not allowed to behave this way. Why has that not happened yet? You remember Major League, the first one? Yes. Where the plane was all uh, broken down. And she were, was losing on purpose. And then she was losing on... The, yes. And we, we said, the, yeah, the, uh, come on. I mean, you watch that movie and you're like, come on. This, yeah, does, this was, doesn't it, happen. It's a character It's movie. a great yeah. movie. I love it, but this doesn't happen. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, it's Whatever's happening. happening, it's worse, though. It's happening. It's way worse. They didn't send Willie Mays Hayes down in Major League. This kid is an electric player. And like you said, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but you're hitting 429 on a team that's just getting bad press left and right, deservedly so, for how they've handled this whole situation. And now you send what looks to be like one of your best players down? <laughs> is it an arbitration clock thing? Then he should have made the team out of spring training, but then now you got a guy hitting 429 and you're sending him down the minor leagues. I'm commenting to, on this. I haven't seen him play one game, or have I seen the A's play one game this year? So... I don't know, but I know it's a big story right now on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. GM David Forst, among the things he said, quote, we saw some better at bats, but the reality is to use his skills needs to get on base. He's hitting 429. I think he meant every single time, <laughs> which is asking a lot from a young player. Go, to, go down to Vegas and learn how to get on base every time. Or maybe they're just using him as an advanced scout. Go to Vegas. We'll we'll meet you there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think, and I don't know if the Players Association can step in. I don't think they can. I mean, they, they'll they try. You're probably right. It's probably not written somewhere. Like if you're hitting over 400, you can't get sent down. No. Like, <laughs> like, like, do we have enough evidence that you're losing on purpose? Do we have enough evidence that, that, that you are not acting in good faith, both business-wise and baseball-wise. You know, I like, you probably could get somewhere in what is listed in, in writing somewhere, you probably could get to a point where there would be an argument. But it's not going to happen. Of course it's not going to happen. Dude, having a team that's drawing 3,000 people is not good for the league, period. Period. It's just like, 
It's bad business. It's bad for Major League Baseball. And this is. is not this is not going anywhere anytime soon. And Oakland's about to offer them a lease extension. Yeah, it would it would Fisher would have to sign a check for ninety seven million dollars to the city. So just a prediction here, he won't. Just a wild prediction. I I just I don't know, man. It's sad. It's it's sad. It, it really is. It's sad for the fans, and and, and it, it was a proud organization. It, it, it was the greatest time I ever had playing baseball. Yeah, unbelievable that it's this now. Um, all right, let's get back to Draymond and set up uh, Tim Kalkami, who's coming on here in just about twenty minutes or so. And the basis of his article is exactly what I woke up thinking today, which is last week in it, in its entirety is the entire Draymond Green experience. You you win a game on Tuesday. You start ramping up the, necess- the necessity of more wins. You show up in Orlando on a Wednesday when the score is 6-4. to four, Draymond Green talks himself right off the floor. You spend 48 hours bleepity bleeping Draymond Green. Steve Kerr calls it unforgivable. Steph Curry cries and tweets that he will never take games like that for granted. And we spend two days on the radio taking phone calls of people who now believe and the national media, ESPN, puts our logo on their screen for an hour and talks about how the Warriors are ready to move on from Draymond Green. And then he comes out on a Sunday night (laughs) and is brilliant and and wins a game that you have to win, and Steve Kerr spends the entire postgame talking about the brilliance of Draymond Green. So you tell me, what the hell do you do? What do you do? The guy you have to move on from, you can't move on from. So what do you do? I don't know. And I, I know I get paid for my opinion, but it goes back and forth. It's like stock up, stock down. It's like if you, you check your investments every single day, you're going to go crazy. And I think you just got to look at the long haul here. If, if you check like how your stocks, how your investments are doing, one day you, you make money, one day you lose money, and you're all over the map. And I think fans with Draymond are all over the map like Draymond's all over the map. Do you see yesterday and... And it's just the most pure form of basketball I've seen Steph and Draymond play together in a long, long time. They they reverted back to being 18 years old on the playground. It was us two against you five, and we're going to do this for about an eight or nine minute spurt. And it was pure basketball. It was incredible. It but- was awesome. It was simple. It was it was just it was throw everything out the window that's happened in our whole careers and the contracts and how much money we've made and how many rings we have and all the drama off the court and let's just play, dude. Yeah, but let's but, do but, this. But let me throw a sweet. scenario at you. No, you're you're 100 percent right. But let me throw a scenario at you. Um, tomorrow night, the Warriors lose by 12 in their own building against the Dallas Mavericks, and Draymond has six points and gets a technical foul, and there's a chest bump with Luca, and the and the Warriors lose. And the Rockets move back within one game. Stock down, and now you get mad again. That's like that's the. Do you think you do, are you? Let me ask you this: Are you done I, with them? Do no. they need to cut ties with them? No. That's it. No, they no. I am not that. But they need to do it in a different way. Their relationship needs to evolve. It, I believe it has become toxic. the 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 relationship itself, the process, has become toxic which is this cycle just continues and you get the good game and then you get the good behavior because you shine a light on it and he knows you got to behave, you got to behave and we're going to do that. And then as soon as you get comfortable with, okay, that's seven straight games and we had no technical fouls and then there's one and then there's the, and then there's a chest bump and then there's a Jersey grab and then there's two technicals and then there's an ejection and then there's a podcast. That can't happen. I can't do that. Boy, I shouldn't have done that. Can't happen. Can't do that to Steph. Okay? Rinse, repeat, cycle starts again. And the Warriors the whole time are sitting there doing nothing. And I get why. I don't even know come Thursday with a game coming the next night what the Warriors were supposed to do. Nothing. Play the, Put them out there and start them Friday night and win the game. But that 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 cycle is wearing people out. Well, then you got to move in a different direction. No, they, I, I, I like, think, but life will continue without Draymond Green. It will. The, the guy hitting right here on the screen, yeah, on the little screen to the left, was uh, in D.C. Bryce Harper. That's Bryce Harper. He got traded. 
Or he got he signed he, as a free agent, free excuse agent. me, to Philadelphia. Yeah. And he got offered sort of a deferred deal to the Nationals. The Nationals won the World Series that year that he went to Philadelphia. He, it, it, I know. There was talk about the, the clubhouse and that you didn't know which guy was going to show up, whether he was hitting well or not. And that, it, that it, <sighs> some guys are just lightning rods. Let's put it that way. Not of their own fault. Maybe Draymond has brought a lot of this on himself, but he's a lightning rod figure. And if they get rid of him and they go in a different direction and they trade him, it doesn't mean that life stops and they will never win another championship again. No, of course and that's, it doesn't. That's, those I, are the hard questions you got to answer. But like I'm talking about real time, last couple games of the season, just let it rip and put all this aside and address this when things calm down. But I just think put all of it aside is not something he's capable of doing. You know, you know, just put it aside and we're going to do this. Well, we'll see. Unless somebody says or does something wrong on the court at the wrong time and he gets triggered and off we go. And that's the other thing about this. Draymond, at least in that game, behaved in such a way where all he did was get tossed. But how close was he to doing something where you miss five games? But all he did... All, or the rest of the year. But you can't say all he did was get tossed. That's huge. It's huge. But my point is, is you... There's no doubt that he was an inch away from doing something that w would have cost him the rest of the year. Cost him the rest of the year. If he touches someone in the wrong way, if he bumps someone the wrong way, after where we've been this year, he is out for the season. He might be out for next season. We've been told by the league that it is that shaky, the ground on which he stands. So, I, to me, he is still such an effective player. You're not going to get a good trade. I still want Draymond Green on the team, but it, it needs to be under a different umbrella. So I've heard a lot of people talk that the, the organization needs to step in and they need to t discipline and suspend him. But look, if you suspend him after what he did the other night no. and we're making a run, now I got to sit here and answer questions and it's a bigger firestorm than if we just be like, hey, we'll address this in the offseason. Well, then you're and you're, 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 now you're handing him the ultimate power. So that's the kid. You think they should have suspended him the rest of the season? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying and you got to do this from ahead instead of from behind. Stop being reactive and be proactive. There needs to be a new agreement in place, written down, written down on a piece of paper. You do this, then we do that, and we will follow it. Because if not, what the Warriors have done with Draymond Green is the same thing all of us have done with our kids. When they're throwing a tantrum, and you, but if you don't stop, we're leaving Disneyland and, and and the kids at a certain point know damn well, you're not leaving Disneyland. You just spent $1,000 to get in. You're not leaving Disneyland. So I'm gonna just going to keep screaming, and I'm going to lay here on the ground until you get me my churro. And you're going to get him a churro, so he shuts up. And then you're going to go on Space Mountain. And that's it. And you're teaching the whole process to continue over and over again. And, and so if you have reached a point and for me, it's watching Steph Curry cry. That's, I mean, that's significant to me here. If you've reached that point of frustration, you got to do this from ahead and stop like trying to react the right way after the fact because that's impossible. You're right. You, they don't want to suspend him. But if he knows and believes that it's not Adam Silver or anyone else, it's not a referee, it's Steph and Steve. Like, if you do this, <laughs> we're, we're going to send you home. Don't, you don't think that's already been discussed? I don't know. I, I would bet that it has, big time. But it hasn't been done. It hasn't been followed. If it's been discussed, they haven't followed through, you know? Yeah, and, and the unforgivable word was huge. Big. I can't wait to ask him about that on, uh, on Wednesday. You know, because unforgivable was followed by genius. <laughs> that was the word he chose last night. And he's right. He's totally right. I think he's right on both accounts. But I think, so what What are you saying, though, about the Disneyland analogy? Because I like it. You, you think that he there should have been some ramifications on this last one? Like you're missing a game or you're sitting on the bench for a game or we're not playing you for a game. And if this happens again, you're done. You're out of here. First, let me say that you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGM, ZFM, and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal. Credit Union upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal. First class money market today. Tim Kawakami in 13 minutes. Because you're making great points, but but I, I want to know like like hardcore. What did you say when you came on the air the next day? 
What was your take on Draymond when he got kicked out? Um, that we've we've reached critical mass, and that does not necessarily mean that you have to be gone. But you know, we're still processing it. Remember the day after. It happens. We have not had Steve Kerr on yet for the first three hours of the show. He has not used the word unforgivable yet. That was that next day. So that came at, you know, well, actually, he came on early that day. So that was an hour into the show. He uses the word unforgivable. We're largely focused, though, on Steph Curry crying and 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 the podcast that did not feel satisfying to the fan. And yeah, would, something about if he turned his shoulder, yeah, turned my shoulder, shoulder or something. Yeah. Turned my shoulder, then he wouldn't have heard me. I wouldn't have gotten kicked. There out. was no accountability. Yeah, you know, but that can't happen. He just kept it light. It's like this doesn't feel light. Like Steph Curry's crying. So again, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not saying the Warriors should have done, should have suspended him for Friday night. I'm saying that you got to stop doing this from behind, because from behind keeps putting the Warriors in a terrible spot. You keep having the same thing happen. It's no different than punching Jordan Poole. Well, what do we do? Well, we could spend him. Uh Uh-oh, it's ring night. We're not going to have him there for ring night? Oh, boy. You're in this terrible spot. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. But if you've got an agreement ahead of time, I find in my life it's a lot easier to hold it. If you're like, we agreed to this, and we told you that if you don't do it, X is going to happen. And that's the Warriors, to my knowledge, have never done that. Now, maybe they have. I'm not there, but to my knowledge, they've never done that. It's always been, let's let the league handle it. Let's let the refs handle it. Let's let the teammates handle it. We're going to self-police. We got a game tomorrow. Kind of a reaction. If you're truly in tears and you're truly using the word unforgivable, that feels to me like a new agreement needs to be made. You get thrown out in the first quarter of a big basketball game, understand that's that's the next five, or we're gonna, or, or you owe us half a million dollars, or, or or whatever. I'm not in charge of what that punishment is. That will actually, like, I'd ask Bob Myers. We're taking your podcast away, <laughs> right? Right? You're gonna have to wear number seventy eight. Dude, to your your Disneyland analogy, I told my son <laughs> when he was in little league. Gather around, gather around, everybody. T- turn your radios up on, on uh, Horrible Parenting 101. <laughs> I told my son in Little League, I don't care how many hits you get. I don't care if you win or lose, but we're going to play the game hard every day. Okay. We're going to run out to our position. We're going to run in. I like We're going to sprint to first base. We're going to sprint everywhere. We're going to play like this is the greatest place on earth, and we're going to have a blast. And I said, I've been looking and watching the last couple of games, and you're kind of walking out to your position. You're walking in after the third out. You're not hustling down the line. I said, I'm just not going to sit here and watch this if I see it again. Like, if I see this again, I'm just I'm just going to leave the game. Dude, I walked home two miles from the game. You left. In the second inning. He did it again. I didn't say a word. And he saw me. I just walked home. And guess what? He hustled the rest of the season. But I just laid down the law. And I said, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to watch. I don't want to see this. I can't watch this. I don't care if you go 0 for 4 with 4 strikeouts. I don't care if you give me 10 to nothing. We're going to play the game hard. We're going to play it the right way. We're going to respect the game of baseball. And if we don't, I'm not going to watch. Now, why do you call that bad parenting? I don't know. I don't, know. I just, I don't think that's bad parenting I got, at all. I got in trouble for that. <laughs> you did? With the ex-wife. Yeah, yes. well. I got in trouble. I walked well, home. I walked two miles home. <laughs> but but but, but, <laughs> but you, guess what? He played hard the rest of the year and the rest go. of his life. And, and he was you, like 10 or 11, I And think. did you see what you did? It was a pre-agreement. Yeah. You didn't wait until he was like crying on his way to first and stomping and rolling around in the dirt and then you're going to run out to the field and what do you do? You're too hard on him. I'm like, no, I just, what, I'm right. trying to set, I'm trying to What do you do? Set, set Discipline him, kick him out of the game, take him to the snack shack. Like you have no, there's no good answer there. <laughs> but you had a pre-agreement, you stuck to it, you got a result. Draymond loves Steph Curry. He respects Steve Kerr. Something's got to come from those guys. Ideally, Steph. I know everyone gets mad at Steve. He's the coach. You really want someone who will like, dude, get your attention. It's Steph. And I'm not agreeing with Jay Williams and the whole like Steph's a bad leader thing. I think that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's horrible take. It's terrible. It's not his job. It's not his job. But I think it could be damn effective if he kind of built that agreement because he's the one with the juice. 
He's got everything. He's got everything in his hand. He's the reason all of them are all going to the Hall of Fame. M most importantly, he's got the respect. Yes. Than all that stuff. And I just think what I saw, what I read into that, and I, is, is when he pulled the jersey over his head, he just was like, I, I'm, I'm done. I can't do anymore, and I'm over this. You had a different take, but I just I thought he was just done. He was at his wit's end. That was the the straw that broke the camel's back, and he was just, I'm over this. And and you know what? That may be. But then last night, they played like they were best buddies on the planet, and it, just those two in the third quarter was unbelievable. Yeah, but, but, but great athletes can compartmentalize really, really well. Oh, yeah. He may still be done, or, or not. Or he's having the same inner conflict that we're sitting here having right now. God dang, I'm so mad at him, but he's really good. What I've found over the years, or whatever we're thinking, whatever the fans are thinking in their cars right now, what, what is going on behind the scenes. For sure. These guys are all having these same discussions in private, on the plane, texting each other, whatever. Maybe private discussions with Steve and Steph. Like, I mean, how much more can we take? Like, this, I'm over this. Like, this has got to change. We have to go in a different direction. And then I... The, the one thing I keep going back to is is I want to know what ha I would love to know. I well, maybe we'll ask him on Wednesday. Appar apparently, I'm ask Steve on Wednesday. Like, what happened in the locker room at halftime? I'm not. He's not going to sit here and go. Well, are you? Yeah. There? But like, I would love to be a fly on the wall in the locker room last night at halftime. That'd be awesome. Just to know what happened and why they came out and played with such urgency. Yeah. And passion. Uh, let's go to Austin in San Jose. Hey, Austin, what's up? Oh my God, how you doing, Mark? It's always good to talk to you, even though we we don't always agree. Oh, I, uh, I, listen, I um, love our I love our clashes, Austin. That's why we clicked on you, brother. Think, it's good, man. It's good. Uh, listen, uh, just a quick. Uh, I, I'm not feeling the. I, I always get a little bit uncomfortable with and the FP. You in the locker room, so I, I respect your opinion, but I get a little bit and, and Mark as well. But I, I just get <laughs> a little ups, a little bit a uh, little bit. Uh, Queer, queasy about guys from the outside trying to interpret what guys on the inside are thinking. Um, you know, uh, Pajinski came out last night and made a point of saying how much uh, Draymond means to him um, and the young guys. So, regardless of all the antics, and I know people want to project their, the, the analogy of the kids and all that stuff, which I don't think is really valid. Um, I think these are professionals. They, these guys get paid a lot of money. Um, there's going to be situations that come up throughout the season that are going to maybe impact how things end up playing out on the court, but I don't. I don't think we should overreact to Draymond being uh, thrown out, and this is some cr stuff crying. And I, I, I guess I don't see it that way, guys. Um, these are grown men, and I think that we shouldn't. We shouldn't get. We shouldn't overinterpret what we think we know. We should let the players tell us what what the impact is. Well, That's kind of what I'm where I'm going. I yeah. agree or disagree on that. Well, Mark. Austin, here's what I'd argue. I'd argue that Steph's tears are telling you where their emotions are. Like, in other words, you took Brandon Pajemski's words. I would rather watch their actions. Um, and and Steph Curry's tears were his, were his actions. All of them are going to go to a press conference and support their teammates. It's what they're all trained to do. They know better than that. They're not going to go to the... This isn't the G League. They're not going to go find a microphone and be like, that guy sucks. We would have won if he hadn't hit that shot. Like, they're not going to do that. They're going to they're gonna support each other. And they've been through thick and thin and... So I'm sure they're like any other coworkers. There's positives and there's negatives. But you can listen to their words or you can look at their actions. You know, you said they're grown men. Well, he made a grown man cry. I think that's pretty freaking significant. That speaks volumes to me. That was stunning. That shook our trees. That's Steph Curry. We've been watching him for over a decade. I've never seen him cry on the court before. And it happened when the score was 6-4 to four on a Wednesday. A pretty big deal, I think. Yeah, but I agree with the caller. Like, it's all that matters is what's going on in that locker room and what those guys think about it. And we're speculating because we get paid to speculate and have opinions on this. But it, 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 it's, it's how, how they feel. And I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that the, that's a, it's a divided group on how they feel about well, him. But then that's a big deal that if, it's a, big if it's a divided group. Uh, Captain Clay report brought to you by City Cruises. By the way, plan a birthday anniversary or company party on a spectacular dining cruise at citycruises.com. Clay started again yesterday against the Spurs, 13 points, 5 of 13 from the field, dagger three-pointer at the end uh, with the kickout as well in the final minute to push the Warrior 
lead to five. There is your Captain Clay report. We're brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. We'll continue with your calls, but also the great TK, Tim Kawakami, The Athletic, dialed in like no other. We'll get to it with him within Draymond Green, the future, the DFA of Joey Bart, and everything else in between. Coming up next, FPN for Dibs, Willard and Dibs. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. All right, TK time. FP's in for Dibs. Um, Tim Kalkami, The Athletic. The TK Pod, which is part of the Odyssey family. You can find it on our YouTube page. And I find it to be some of the most uh, in-depth stuff going on uh, throughout Bay Area sports. So when we've got stuff where, like, we're sitting here on sports radio and, 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 and we're throwing stuff against the wall to see if it sticks... I'd love to have TK on to be like, okay, where, where's this actually going? So, uh, first off, thanks for coming on, Tim. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice introduction. Appreciate that, Mark. Yeah, man, and I actually mean it. That's the other thing about it. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. I yeah, could, I could feel the feel the uh, the integrity there. Okay, good. All good. <laughs> there's, there's always stuff going. There's always stuff going on. There's always stuff to talk about. That's what I appreciate. Well, there's no doubt about it. And in this particular case. We'd love to, to to sort of feel what you think about where the Draymond Green experience is going, not so much over the next eight games, but in the offseason, because as you know, a lot of people last week watched Steph Tears and Steve's word unforgivable and thought maybe we were at a crossroads with Draymond's future in the Bay. You know, they're always in, in somewhat of a crossroads because Draymond puts them there. Uh, he punched a teammate. He's been suspended for playoff games multiple times. He's, you know, the, crossed a lot of lines. But, I mean, what I kept saying, and I, you know, I, I hear this from the Warriors stakeholders as I wrote, not just the last few days, but over the last few weeks, last few months, even last few years, is that he's worth it. Like, you know, they make that decision every time. Uh, and, and at some point, he probably won't be worth it. And that might be in a year. It might be in two years. If there's some great trade offer for him, it might be this offseason, but I don't think that's coming. And a game like last night is why they make these decisions. Uh, I'll tell the honest truth is I was going to write a column on Draymond is very similar to the one that turned out even before that game happened, just presuming he was going to have a really good game because that's the way it goes with Draymond. Some con- something controversial happens. Something that pushes the you know the warriors and the fans and the nation to wonder is, is this guy should he still be around? And he usually pull, pulls out a great game or two or three or five. I think there's less of them you know as he gets older. I think that's what happens. But they make these decisions. You know they made they gave him the contract last off season, and that was after he punched Jordan Poole, and that was after. Uh, they only, you know, they got to the second round of playoffs. So that was, as this dynasty has kind of, you know, twisted and turned and maybe it's at an end and maybe they have one more run in them. They just make this decision on a case by case, on a day to day, on a month to month. And they're not going to get anybody better than Draymond Green. <laughs> they just not. They And there will be a point where they can. There will be a point where he, he's not as good a player that you have to deal with all these things. They are not there, and they continuously evaluate it, but I think they're pretty far from there, actually. So they're, they're not there publicly, or you know Tim SFP, there, by the way. There. They're not there privately yet. They're not there. They're not there. They're not even close to there. Is there frustration? Sure. Is there, you know, are they momentarily? And, you know, again, it's multiple people, so I don't want to just say it's a universal thing, but I think they kind of come to an agreement on these things. Yeah. Do they not want him to get ejected from a really important game when Jonathan Kamingo's already out four minutes into it? Absolutely. <clears throat> do they not want him to get suspended indefinitely? Absolutely. But it's also part of who Draymond is and they don't, you know, it, it would be great if they could expect him to be a perfect citizen from now on. He's not going to. Be. And there's some practicality in that. And yeah, I mean, he does this, three or four more times, or if he gets suspended one more time, that might be it. But it ha- none of that has happened. And in actually, I, I felt the same thing just because I know them so well and I've dealt with this and I've talked to them. One ejection wasn't going to be the thing that is the flashpoint. He's gotten ejected before many times. It's not great. Other players have gotten ejected. It's not great. It wasn't going to be the one thing. He knocks somebody around and gets a seven-game suspension, that would be different, but that has not happened since he's had the indefinite suspension. I just don't, what I keep saying, and what I, I know because I ask the questions, you don't just judge it based on the last thing you saw and then because Sports Center's talking about. And because, yes, the Steph 
you know, images were very stark. He was near tears. He was, but it was not because, in my opinion, the way I've interpreted and the way I've talked to people, the warriors, it wasn't, this is over. I'm sick of it. It was, doesn't he understand we need him on the floor? That's what it was. That he isn't, they're not mad because they're done with him. They're mad because they want him on the floor. And it's the frustration of, let's get him on the floor. Now, they won that game. It has been, you know, I think, you know, you could theorize that they lost that game. And because Draymond got got thrown out, there might be some even harsher emotions. But I still don't think that would have been the end of it. It's, this is a big picture. This is a long-running thing. It's not just one thing. And, oh, my God, that's it. It's over. That's not how they played it. It's Draymond Green's ups and it's downs and it's high values and low values. And you have to count the good stuff too. And they do count the good stuff. And if you subtract Draymond Green from this team, guess what? They're not even close to where they are now. They might have fewer headaches and they might have, you know, a lot less controversy, but they're not the same team. And we saw it last night and we've seen it other times this season. And we've seen it you know, a ton over four championships, you know, in, in, in a decade. So they're, they're not a 10 seed without Draymond. Is that what you're saying? They're not even close. They're not even close. Yeah. It's not even, but, but he's missed, he's missed like 20 games though. Like you could make the argument that if he played those 20 games, they'd be a six seed. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the plus. You can't just look at this as only good and only bad. You just can't, uh, is the basketball team that they put on the floor to have a chance in the playing tournament or whatever, has to include Jamal Green on it. And he, that is also the guy who gets suspended. That's also the guy that puts them through headaches. But the person, the people who decide this are Steph Curry, Steve Kerr, Joe Lacob, Mike Dunleavy Jr., and there's others, but those are the main guys. And their belief is that, and I agree with them on this, and you know, there's times I thought, you know, maybe they should be done with Draymond, but they don't, they don't win 35 games without Draymond. I believe that, you know, 37, whatever you want to put it, they're out of the playoffs. And if Draymond can put together a full season at some point, he hasn't been able to do that, then there might be a very good team. We shall see, or they might not be, you know, he might be too old and he can't do this consistently, but they have nothing to trace Jackson Davis. Can't do that. Maybe he can in a year or two. He can't do it now. Kevon Looney certainly can't do it anymore. There aren't guys who can do what he does, specifically team with, with Steph Curry. Again, there might become a point when, if he gets suspended again, that's a different conversation. He has not got suspended again. And it's just that because of, I understand it's, it's loaded. It's, he's had the suspension twice this season already. He's done the things he's done. Then it's one more time. That's it over because we're all tired of it. That's not where they are. You know, the viewers are a different thing than the Golden State Warriors. And viewers can just say, just dump them. What do you dump them for? How do you move that contract? Who are they getting to replace them? How good are they going to be if they have to replace them? Those are the practical questions. They're the ones dealing with it. And it's not just, oh, my God, I just got, I saw him get it thrown out. I'm tired of it, so he's done. That's not where they are, and that's not how you actually run a real franchise. Yeah, I totally get that, and, and I buy a lot of what you're saying. However, I still have another question about last week. Tim Kawakami, the athletic, joining us here, Willard and Dibs, FP's in for Dibs. So I get all that. You're sort of painting the picture of like, oh, you're not going to just willy-nilly make this decision because you didn't like a Wednesday in Orlando. But Steph Curry was in tears. Why the tears, and why does Steve Kerr, with 24 hours to think about it, Choose the word unforgivable. And I think uh, these are moments. These are emotions. They were not happy he got thrown out. Uh, I don't want to ever claim to say that they were, but it's also because they dealt with it. They do. They deal with Draymond. It was not forgivable for him to punch Jordan Poole either. It was not forgivable for him to do many other things. They deal with it, and they're a better team when he's on it than they are if he's not on it. And I just, I, I always say this on Twitter or whatever they call it now. Don't just focus on the thing you saw. That's not the only thing. Don't just focus on the word you hear. That's not the only thing said. It's a bigger picture. Again, it's context. I get it. 
I, again, I've been in this place before. When he when he choked Rudy Gobert, I thought that might be it for him. Like it's just too much. But then he comes back from the indefinite suspension and he plays great. And he, the only way that Wiggins and Kaminga make sense together is if Draymond's on the court with him. You pull Draymond off the court with him, it does not make sense. It, it, that's got to be greater than oh, I'm tired of this. Oh, I know this is you know, this is. And I think that the Steph moment again. Not reading into it, I've not talked to Steph about this, but I know that he's. Like he gave him a hug after the game, by the way. We all saw that video. Yep. Um, it's not that it's he's done with him. That's not what it is, in my opinion. It's that I'm mad at him and he's got to realize that he's more valuable than this. That's well, the point. So I, I just I again yeah. cameras catch a lot of things. They don't catch everything, and we can't just say, Okay, that was it, Steph's done with him. You don't know that. I don't know that. I not again, I'm not trying to read too much into the other thing too. They want to be the best basketball team they can be. I keep saying that. It's it's so easy on you know TV and me and you guys to just say, okay, that's over. It's all over because I'm tired of it. You're not them. You're not trying to win basketball games. And you're not saying, okay, if we don't have them, what do we do? That's the decision they, they make every time with Draymond. They've had to make it a lot, like I wrote. Like, they wish they didn't have to make this decision on him every time. They wish it was like, okay, he's just great. We, you know, he's another Steph Curry. You don't have to worry about it. That's not Draymond. He's never made, he makes a lot of money. He's never made close to the max. There's a reason for this. As great a player as he has been and he continues to be, it's because he goes through this stuff. But you just can't look at one picture and go, that's it. I'm tired of it. So Steph must be tired of it. That ain't it. That is not what this moment is. No, that's totally fair. But Tim, is there something different the Warriors can do about the way they handle all of this so it's not the same cycle over and over? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a fair question. Uh, I think they could have suspended Draymond uh, for the Jordan pull punch for sure. I've asked them about that, and they just didn't think it was. I mean, they did suspend him for when he yelled at Kevin Durant. Uh, I think they could have been tougher on him. I think they didn't need to, you know, I don't know if it goals is the right word, that they could have just said this is not happening again, and, and we will be the disciplinarian if, the, if no one else will be. They have not chosen to do it that way, and uh, they – believe this is gets him the best with Draymond and that Draymond always has an explanation. He does always have an explanation. He does always go out and play hard again. Um, like it's not like he doesn't go play hard. It's not like he doesn't play winning basketball when he's out there. So that question is a whole other thing. Uh, I think they will say is, listen, we've signed him for less than the max. We've, you know, we got, we, Steve Kerr didn't play him for seven minutes in the fourth quarter game whatever that game four in Boston, that's a pretty big moment in the final. Like this stuff happens, but you know, they do not react to what talk show hosts and columnists and ESPN talking heads want them to do. They just don't. And some of that I appreciate like, like just because it's an emergency on, you know, first take doesn't mean it's an emergency for the Warriors. <laughs> What's the best thing they have? on the basketball court to win games. They really, I can't say it enough. They really do think like that. That's what they think. Like what wins them basketball games? And if Steph Curry did not, does not want Draymond on the court, do you think Draymond would be on the court with him right now? Of course not. He wouldn't be. Yeah. So he clearly is okay with it. He gets frustrated. No question. He gets frustrated. I can understand why anybody would be frustrated with this. They're not the ones who are debating on first take, though. They are not. They're just trying to win basketball games. What do you think happened at halftime last night? I mean, the way they came out in the third quarter, especially Steph and Draymond, that's the best I've seen those two play together uh, all season long. Yeah, I, I think, again, this is just reading into it. My sense was that Draymond looked around and go, uh, some other guys don't have it tonight. Wiggins didn't have it. Clay didn't have his legs. There was no Kaminga, so I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to go do it. And, you know, not a great team. Spurs are not a great team, but Warriors were down by eight, and somebody needed to do something. And Draymond, whether he said it in, in the locker room or Draymond just said it himself, maybe he and Steph talked about it, said, I'm going to go, well, my is not going to be dominating me. And if you notice, he did not. He scored a lot of points. It was a lot of them was against TJD. It was not against Draymond. Uh, or if it came against Ramon, it was tough. It wasn't easy. And I'm going to strip the ball, and I'm going to run a court, and I'm going to hit shots, and I'm going to take it to Lembanyana. And that's something. Now, sometimes Draymond says that, and it doesn't work out because 
You know, his sometimes his passes go a little offline and his shot isn't in. But in this game, I think Draymond did notice that Wiggins and Clay in particular just didn't have it. And it wasn't an A-plus Steph game either. It was it was a good Steph game and certainly finished great, but it wasn't at that moment an A-plus Steph game. So Tim? Draymond took it on upon himself, which he can do. All right, Tim Kalkami, The Athletic, with us here. Willard and Dibbs, FP, is in for Dibbs. Tim, they have said, Joe Lacob has said, he has said it to you, uh, that if this is just kind of goes out with a whimper, 10 seed and a one one game out, that there would be big changes. What could those even be? What's available to them this offseason? Yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a, they always have stuff. They always have plans. I mean, I, I think Chris Paul coming back is now uh, the very dwindling chances of that happening. That's a contract that would just disappear. Uh, Clay Thompson will, they will, will not be signing for $40 million. I'll tell you that. Uh, and if he does, it will not be with Warriors. Uh, and, and it might be half of that. Uh, I think those are two easy things for them. Think that's a, those are two big changes, right? You know, to not bring back those two players would be large or to bring back Clay at a low number. I think Yvonne Looney, you know, may probably at this point, I would not draw him uh, down as being on the roster. So just those three things. Uh, would be interesting, you, or they could possibly use the Chris Paul contract. It's non guaranteed. If the other team, if you trade him to a team that guarantees it, you can use it to try to acquire co- money back. Those are the easy things, or uh, maybe not easy. Those are the kind of the, the the workable things. There's other things they could try. They could try to trade Wiggins. Uh, they could see what Kaminga's worth. Although I think actually he's the guy you keep. Uh, but I think. There will be changes. I mean, let's say let's say play in game. Even they win the play in, uh, you know, from where they're at, they'd have to win two games and end up as the eight seed playing the number one. They're going to lose, uh, whether it's four games, five games, whatever. I think there would be changes. There's going to be changes. Uh, they need to get a couple more players. I don't know exactly who's available. I know they always like to have plans. And you know what? Sometimes it's like, let's go sign Kevin Durant. And it doesn't sound like they can do it. And they go ahead and they do it. Sometimes they have plans that they never come close to. But they, they I mean, Lake of the told me, they not only plan to get out of second apron, which would be a cut of about $10 million, but they plan to get it under luxury tax, which is a cut of about $30 million, more than that. Like, that's significant. And that's like, I just don't think they're going to, I don't think Chris Paul's going to be back on this team next season. I don't think Clay Thompson's going to get anything close to what uh, some numbers have been thrown out about him. And then, then they figure it out from there. Uh, then they figure out who's available. I, I would have thought they would have traded Wiggins this trade deadline just because he wasn't playing very well, uh, just to take that money off the, off the table so they might have money for Chris Paul or, or more money for Clay, but they, didn't, they chose not to do it because he was playing well. And again, a very practical decision. They were mad <laughs> that they weren't happy. I'll put it this way: they weren't happy with, with clearly with Andrew Wiggins at the start of the season. There were there was certainly some thought they could just trade him for nothing just to get rid of the contract. He started. Guess what? He started playing well, so he was better for them, and they kept him. Like these are all practical decisions. These are decisions made in the moment. Maybe they can revisit that one in the off season, but it, it's just based on. Where they're, you know, where they think the players are, where the value is, and that one they they might want to be considered. Uh, Tim, before you run, how do you look back on the entire Joey Bart experience with the Giants? <laughs> yeah. uh, nice guy. I always I always enjoy talking to him, uh, but just a big hole in a swing, right? I mean, FP knows more than me, but like, like pitchers know how to get him out. Have just have always known how to get him out, and. Uh, I, I just thought that, you know, when I saw him, like he seems to have all the tools to be a regular every day, at least a regular every day, major league catcher, but has not happened better for him to get a shot somewhere else. Me, you know, I think everyone kind of like looked up when far on he drafts Patrick Bailey with his first round pick, uh, not long after Joey Bart was drafted by a previous administration. Uh, maybe that was the hint early on, uh, but I like Joey. I thought there were some good moments for him. I remember the home run and the home opener a couple of years ago. Yep. Uh, but it wasn't there for him. He just didn't produce. And too many swings and misses. And then some defensive issues, too. And, again, I thought he had all the tools. But uh, what I remember is uh, there's a guy that you looked at, and you go, that guy's a major leaguer, and it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen for him. No, he's not for the time. 
Tim, great to have you today, man. Thank you so much for hopping on. You got it, guys. Anytime. Okay. Tim Kalkami, The Athletic, TK Pod, part of the Odyssey family, available on our YouTube page. How do you look back on the Joey Bart experience? Well, I mean, I've only been back a couple of years, so I, d I didn't get to see, like, the first part of his career, but... I mean, like Tim said, he's a great guy. He's a guy you want to root for, but Gosh. I just, I just didn't think, I didn't think the the energy level was where it needed to be. It's literally, the worst thing you can say about an athlete. The first thing both of you said, like, he's a great guy. <laughs> it's like, I mean, that's awesome. I like great guys. You know, that's great. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you, I mean, we're talking about maybe one guy that doesn't appear to be a great guy that gets suspended a lot and thrown out of games that oh, helps you oh. win. And as Tim was saying, I guess that's first and foremost with the Warriors is winning games. And I'm thinking here while he's talking, like, when do you sacrifice what you stand for as an organization for winning? Like, w when do you sacrifice oh, like, gosh. Wh what what you believe in? Or is that just pro sports now? Like, if I, you can I help know. me win, I don't care what you I, do. I, I sort of wanted to answer that by going every day. Yeah. When do, when do you sacrifice what you stand for? What do organizations stand for? Winning. Okay. Yeah, but... Well, then you, you sacrifice... Got, if you like, got a guy that's, that's, like, a lot and is, is not helping you win and is not there for you, then you have to address that at some time. Right. He's right, though. I mean, we can we can whittle this down to a different portion of the conversation. I, I still firmly believe the Warriors are a way better team with him. So everyone who wants to dump him, to me, needs to answer that question. Okay, dump him. How do you at least stay as good in the process of dumping him? And I know a lot of you have got your take where you go, oh, but did you see those three and a half quarters when they put Right, that's three and a half quarters. Give me the metrics over the whole year. Give me the metrics over his whole career. There's no debating this. Give me Steph Curry's opinion. He knows more about this than we do. Steve Kerr's opinion. The Warriors are not better without Draymond Green as a basketball team. They're less annoying. They're a little bit easier to stomach. They, they, they don't get under everybody's skin nearly as much. Do you I, do you I think, get all that, but they're a worse basketball team when he's not there. Do you think if it was the 90s that there would be this overreaction no. to the way Draymond goes about it? That, uh, that as a society right now, we're so sensitive. Like, you know when somebody throws up and in and the whole crowd goes, oh, <laughs> and it knocks a guy down? If it was like the 70s, nobody in the crowd would go, oh. No. But if you almost hit a guy now, people freak out. Well, but I mean, but I'm just saying, like this, the, the stuff that he does. If it were a different era, I think we're more sensitive as a society to be like, oh my gosh, that was horrible. But oh my gosh, there's no question that you're right. But I accept that you're going back to the same time where if two football players went over the middle and crowned their helmets against one another, we put it on TV and went, that guy got jacked up. Well, I don't want to go back to that. Okay, I like I'm I'm negative on CTE. Right? So, like, <laughs> I'm against it. <laughs> so am I. I think I have what, it. What do you stand for as an organization? We're against CTE. Yeah. That's what we stand for. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, anyway, we get some more calls on this. Uh, we do want to uh, we do want to dive in on some Giants things as they get their series started against the Dodgers tonight as well. I think we were both impressed over the weekend. Um we're presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. FP's here for dibs. It's Weathering Dibs. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time, my parents had to round up the whole neighborhood to track me down.
What's available to them this off season? Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a. They always have stuff. They always have plans. Now back to Willard and Dibs <laughs> on ninety five seven. The game. Oh gosh, Granny and Lucas are trolling me because it really felt. You know, I think you know on this show if a guest says that's a great question, um, and, and I'm I'm pretty sure no one in listening land gives a rat's you know what about this. But we have music go off in our ears. We run victory laps. Uh, it's kind of a dibs thing more than more than me. He really um, gets into it, but I've 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 built off of that, and it really felt, it really felt like Tim was about to give me one. It re- and he's oh that's a and then he completely paused and went a different way. It's very disappointing. You almost got one. Yeah, you got half a. It's an almost. It's like hitting a line point. shot down the left field line, but then the third baseman snares it, and and you get nothing. But a lot of times I'll tell somebody it's a good question because they locked me up with a question like a 3-2 changeup, and I'm trying to think of the answer, and it gives me a pause to figure out what I'm going to say. No doubt. It like, doesn't actually mean that it's it, yeah. a great question. Sometimes it does. It could mean, but boo, that's, I'm befuddled. I like that's a really good question. <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me that before. Right. Then I do victory lap. By the way, I used to uh, I used to do that over at uh, you know the other place. Yeah, I used to do something uh, called the big finish, where we would complete the interviews um, by asking questions that they're not used to answering. That was always like I I I, tr- I if you have more time, I go for that because I feel like, and you know this, when you're in the bigs, you're pro athlete. It's the same questions. It's the same questions over and over and over yeah. and over again. You guys get exhausted answering them. And so I like to, uh, I think you get better answers if you ask something that people are not used to answering. Now, there's only one way to do that, though, because you you kind of got to ask the questions you're supposed to ask also. But I, I, I like to do that. And so, like, we just built something around it where we're like, let's ask all the regular questions, but then at the end, let's get sideways and do something different. Did I ever do it with you? You came on my show once. I did? Well, your my producer was your son. I had an in. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was at the very beginning, though. It was at the beginning. Give me an example. I, you and I didn't know each other. What's like a random question you'd ask? Okay. Well, we, no, we would play a game. We had categories. Um, fun with food. Your money matters. Mistakes were made. Um, glory days. We'd have categories, and I'd give two categories, and you had to pick one. And then within that category, I'd give you three questions. And it would, like, I found out that, uh, was it Looney? What warrior? No, it wasn't Looney. It was Marquis Chris. Remember when he was on the Warriors for, for a little while? Mm-hmm. He hates tomatoes. And we just went on a whole thing about tomatoes. They'll not like them. And I like tomatoes diced in things. But I largely don't like a big slice of tomato on your turkey sandwich. You know them little green uh, seeds? Yeah. And that, that oozy stuff in the middle? You don't like that. Gross. It's so gross. I'm Italian. You better be careful right now. <laughs> I love. We love tomatoes. No, but you like the, the, the tomato. That's <laughs> you don't have to tomato. make that thing with no, your hand. But, uh, ah. <laughs> you dice that thing up, put that in your uh, marinara or whatever, like it were good. I don't want that goopy tomato stuff all over the place, and I have had a conversation with Marquise Chris about it. It was fun. So you found Thank out you. something about somebody that you probably would have never known, well, and it's refreshing. Guys like to hear different and they, questions, and they like to right. Like you get, you got. We ended up into some very fun conversations about all kinds of Why stuff. Why don't you still do that? Um, You're all serious and pro now. Yeah. It's like your drive time? No. You don't want to do that drive time? We actually started out doing it. It's a little bit difficult when it's two of us, though. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. And, uh, yeah, there was a bunch of circumstances. We could bring it back. I think you should. We could bring it back. I'd like to hear that. Yeah. We had a whole thing, you know. This is the big finish, and purely music would play, and everything would go sideways. You did it every interview, or just like... One per, one per show. One per show. Whoever was the featured interview. Ah, Nice. The big interview. I say bring it back. Well, we could, but Lucas would then have to start booking guests. (laughs) So we have a problem. Shots shots fired. (laughs) Shots fired. Especially interesting ones where you want to hear their take on tomatoes. No, that's the the thing. That's tough. 
Like, what if we had gotten to the end of Tim Kaukami and we're like, okay, Tim, wah, 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 wah. that was fun. Thanks for talking to us about Draymond Green. Now, do you want to talk about food or money? And then, like, music played. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great. And Tim Kaukami was telling you if he likes tomatoes, bacon on a turkey sandwich or not. Or, like, what, like what's your favorite aisle in the grocery store? Chip aisle. <laughs> Hundred percent. Why? Because I, no matter what, I'm trying to eat healthy. The chip aisle is like Disneyland to me. Yeah. I'm like, oh, look at those flaming hot somethings. Or Doritos go. has got another flavor. Or Mrs. Vicky's jalapeno chips. See, which I can never walk by. This is the a, greatest chip ever made. Th- wait, say it again. What's Mrs. It? Vicky's jalapeno chips. I don't potato even know chips. what the hell that is. Yeah, What's Mrs. Vicky's? Yeah, if you're if you're a chip connoisseur, what are you? Why are you looking delicious. at me like that? They Lucas? are delicious. I don't delicious. even know what that is. Chips rookie over here. The chips rookie. rookie. You obviously don't like the chip no, style, which I, is the best I'm style. Not a Let's rookie. I'm a up. traditionalist. Let's step your game up. No, I'm like, give me a bag of ruffles. Mrs. Vicky's. Boy. It sounds like something you're eating at Whole Are you shopping at Whole Foods? No. No. These Careful. are these are well what? known chips. You can get them at Safeway. Can that's you? That's the only place we shop. I'm Super at Safeway every day. Mm-hmm. Super crunchy. Open up your eyes then. You okay. could do damage to the roof of your mouth if you don't eat them right because they're so crunchy. I have been accused of not noticing things before. Like that, like Christy gets on me about that all the time. We're like driving around town and she's like I'm behind you. Do you not know? Like, we've been, be- I've been behind you for four blocks. Do you not see me? You got to lock in. I'm like, I'm like, no, I am locked in. That's the problem. I'm chipped. What's like, your favorite aisle? I'm like, locked in. Like, What's your on. favorite aisle? It's a great Hang question. Hang on. It's a great question. Oh, Thank you. Bags. Ding, ding, ding. Great, great question. question. Okay, those bags. I know that. I've just never read that. I didn't know that it was Mrs. Vicky's. Come on. I man. know those bags. Does yeah, it, I didn't. What's your favorite aisle? My favorite aisle? Yeah. Oh, gosh. They're all so great. Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Is the bakery an aisle? No. Yeah. I, and that's a great question. Yeah. That's a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> I stumped him, dude. Like, that's not that hard a question. What's your favorite aisle? It is Mark. to me. It is to me. Is it wow, the, is it, did you call me Mark? I did. Wow, that was, like with authority, too. Yeah, that was like when the, your mom... Is it the beer aisle? When your mom uses your middle name. Is it the toilet paper aisle? <sighs> Yeah, that was sophomoric. I mean, it's Thank a good. You. It's a good question. It's not this good a good, question. I thought it was a good guess. <laughs> yeah, thanks. no, thanks, no. Lucas. It's the back wall where the meat is. All right, it's the back wall where the meat. <laughs> the meat aisle is my Randy. favorite aisle. <laughs> Grady, Grady's like I'm just. I'm just the giving him. Aisle. I'm giving him too much content now. The meat this aisle. is just too easy. I like yeah, the meat aisle. I like the protein. What's like wrong with nothing? That? Just I like the meat. You know aisle. what I mean? I like go back there and I'm like, is it chicken apple sausage this week? Are we doing bacon? Are we doing salami? Are we doing meat the balls? Like what are we doing? Because like that's my jam. Breakfast. The breakfast protein. Really? Yeah. Give me like two fried eggs and some side protein to mix with it, meatballs, bacon, something. And then we might mix in some bread, maybe not. We'll get some vegetables in there, some sautéed spinach, and then we move on with our day. I think that's Draymond's favorite aisle, too. You know why? (laughs) Beef. (laughs) (laughs) Do do you guys agree? Uh, Number three. (laughs) That was Lucas's way of entering into the conversation, but also that was called a redirect. That was oh. Lucas saying, I would like you to get back to Draymond. That went way over my head. Yeah, no, that was Lucas's way of producing right there. All right. He doesn't want Put us. Put the to, wheels back on the bus. He doesn't want us to talk about the Capicola anymore, okay? I, I didn't expect you to lock up for four minutes on the question. <laughs> Me neither. I mean, it was simple. We were getting back to Draymond. Really I asked you a simple question. You know what you I should have like, said? Couldn't even answer. I should have said, that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the remember. egg. I, I like, that's a great question. Thank you. I like the egg aisle. <laughs> <laughs> I do eat a lot of eggs. I eat a lot of eggs. Tortillas, a lot. All right. Yeah. Breakfast burritos most mornings of the week. Most mornings. All right. All right. Get back to Draymond. Is this guy's name really? Peon in Oakland? Hey, Peon, what are you doing? Am I pronouncing that right? Are you even there? No, oh boy. Do you exist? He's a peon. Why would he answer? <laughs> Gone. Let's try Janice in Berkeley. Hi, Janice. What are you doing? Janice? Janice, what's your favorite aisle? Lucas, you're... No, this is on you guys. It's not on... 
What do you mean it's on us? What do you mean it's on us? Talking Draymond. Oh, you left them too long. Why? Why are there? They're still connected, or else the the, the little their name would go away. Let's see if they call back. I didn't realize Gosh. what your favorite aisle was an SAT question to Mark. I didn't realize it was that tough. Look, that matters to me. I wanted to take my time and answer it correctly. Okay? It's your favorite aisle. The meat aisle he came up with after five the minutes. The meat aisle. I like the meat. All right. Yeah. It's also really good at Costco. Costco's got good bakery, and they've got good steak. Good meat. Good meat. Yep. Yeah. All right. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Um, all right. Yeah, a lot about uh, a lot about Draymond, the Warriors. Um, this will be interesting. The schedule, they've got their two-game lead now, uh, but uh, the schedule is suddenly, like we were told for – Three weeks, we're all talking, oh, the schedule's in their favor. They've got the easiest schedule. The easiest. Well, they didn't really take advantage of it, and now now it gets hard. The four-on-one trip, they didn't take advantage of it. That's a great um, trip, no? This trip, yes. I'm talking about go back two, three weeks ago when they kind of lost. Like, if you go back three, four weeks ago, you would look at the schedule, and you're like, the Warriors are going to end up as the six or the seven. That's where they should have ended up. And they didn't. They went through that stretch where they lost a lot of games that they should not have lost at home. Remember when, who, Grandy, what were the back-to-back games? The Bulls were in town. They lost that one. And then, After they beat the Bucks, they lost to the Bulls and then the Spurs without Wembenyama. Right. Although without staff also. Correct. He got hurt at the end of that Bulls And game. I tweeted, I think, after they beat the Bucks. I'm not sure about when, that this team's good. <laughs> No, I, I, the point I want to make is like yeah. <laughs> I've gone back and forth. Like I sent that tweet out, and I'm like, yeah, that's a good tweet. And everyone's like, yeah, they are good. And then a day later, I'm like, God, they suck. And then they're good, and then they're bad, and they're yeah. good, and they're bad. And that's what you get with a 500 team. They're a little over 500. But do you think, and we've played this game a bunch of times, if they get in, they go anywhere? Or you think we're, it's just fool's gold, 10 Pro- seed? Probably not. I know, but the way the season has gone, probably well, right, because what? Because they're on the road? Because you just don't expect yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, these are also, these are going to be good teams. You know, like, that's this is a nice road trip, and Orlando is fine. Miami was totally hampered by injury. Charlotte is not even an NBA team, and San Antonio was a struggle and is also not a very good team. So that's who they beat. The, the Warriors bugaboo, and I've said this before, and gosh, there was a show where I said it, and it got people really, really mad because things go out on the internet without context, and they're just snackable in a 45-second piece, and people were mad that I was comparing the Warriors to the Dallas Cowboys. But if you just get the context of the whole thing, what I'm saying, I still very much believe. The Warriors are likely to end this year, not the last 10, this year's Warriors, feel to me very much like this year's Dallas Cowboys. You have big names, you have big glitz, you 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 will make it. You will make it to some form of the postseason, but in the final analysis, you are good enough to beat the bad teams and not good enough to beat the good teams. That's who the Cowboys were this year. It's why when they got to the playoffs, they just bowed the heck out right away. And the Warriors are probably going to do the same thing. They have not been good against good teams this year. No, I, I think that's fair to say. But I keep going back to they've been there and done that, and if they get to the playoffs, there's they, I, I'm not usually a fan of flip the switch. Yeah, I feel like your record is who you are. That's your resume for the year. But when you have a bunch of guys that have been there and done that, I feel like they know how to flip that switch. If any team knows how to flip that switch in the playoffs, maybe Lakers. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, don't, maybe when, Lakers. When, when you say that about the teams they're going to be playing also. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are the Lakers going to flip a switch? Are the Suns going to flip a switch? You they, know? Yeah, they got to get Kaminga back. It looks like the, the, the Mavericks maybe have, have already flipped a switch. They've moved all the way up to the five seed. So we're starting to get a little definition. Not, not sure, but we're probably looking at, at the four play in teams Kings, Suns, Lakers, Warriors. Kings are not going to flip a switch. That's, that's, they're still learning how to do this. The other three teams all have champion, champion players on them. So, I don't know. Are the Warriors going to be the only one to flip it? Are the Warriors even going to get in it? 
I know. Well, they're two games up on Houston and a game and a half back of the Lakers, correct? Correct. correct. Um, Should we be this excited about a 10 seed? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I mean, should like, we? Probably not. I mean, they gave but us I, plenty to talk about all year. Yeah, I get it. I get it. The playing tournament, I'm a big believer in it. It's incredibly dramatic. But yeah, this whole thing could end up just being about one night. And I think it's, is it, uh, is it a, a week and a half or two and a half weeks away? It's on a Wednesday, right? So it must be two and a half weeks away. The playing game, right? It's two and a half weeks. It's it's 16 days from today. That might be it. That might be all of this. Go to LA two Wednesdays from now. You score fewer points than the other team. That's it. <laughs> That might be it. That might be it. And then you got to make adjustments and figure it out for next year. I don't know. I, I'm holding out hope. I'm, a, I'm that guy. Until there's an X no. by your name and you're out of it, let's see what happens. And Why if they play, you? I know it was the Spurs. I know it wasn't a good team, but they did what they had to do yesterday. It was fun to watch. There's some games where I just see the old guys coming out and, and playing like champions that they are, and you're like, there's championship resume there. They're going to figure it out in the playoffs. And then there's other games like, they, 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 they're, they're not even going anywhere. But that's 500. That's what you did with the Giants the last couple of years. Like, oh, look, at they, they won 10 games in a row, and then they lose games they shouldn't lose late in the season against the Diamondbacks they should have won. That's 500. 500 will drive you nuts as a fan, oh, especially when there's expectations. Completely. If there's no expectations, 500 could be a fun place to live. When there's expectations and it's a good team, or you're thinking it's going to be a good team, that's a tough place to live as a fan. Well, it's, it, it's very like a hit and miss, and oh my God, I'm all over the place. Totally. I, I feel like to this point, and again, only to this point, because I'm with you. And they're not, not 500. Gonna, they're over. But I you know, know but I mean. I'm not going to blow off their chances for the rest of the year because why? I never understand why that's even a thing for people. They're not going to do this. Well, b b maybe they will. Like sports is filled with things that you didn't think were going to happen that do. And so there's no point. There's no win in blowing everything off, uh, which is why I think everyone was so upset at Draymond last week because it felt like that's what he was doing. It felt like he was blowing it all off. I mean, whatever, right? 10 seed, Orlando, Wednesday, I'm out. Like, that's what it felt like, and it feels very, very offensive. Um, so I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, like totally. Let, let's do this. But what you're saying right now, for me, to this point, defines this year, which is that the Warriors have played basketball in such a way that all of us, whether it's fan or media, we show up three times a week with different opinions than we had the day before. And, and it's a weird roller coaster. The Warriors have forced that up upon us to where there are days, and maybe today is one of them, four and one trip. I don't care who you're playing. Four and one, and Draymond's going to look like that. Let's Come on. It, it's Monster Monday. They're going to do this. <laughs> right. And then watch, watch what happens tomorrow night when they're back in their own personal house of horrors, which is called home. Watch. Watch what happens if the Mavericks win that game by 15. Dude, I, I've been... They're, you, be, they're better with Draymond. They're better without Draymond. They're better with Draymond. They're better without Draymond. They're better... I mean, I've said right. it I said it on our air. that When he got suspended, definitely, maybe they're better without him because you don't have to worry about the distraction and you don't have to worry about whether he's going to be there or not. And then you watch last night and you watch what he's done lately and they are better with him. And they're, they're not better with him. I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's okay. It's okay to have your, your, your takes change based on what we do. And fans do this all the time. I mean, we're just, we're fans. I'm a fan of the Warriors. Oh, I'm I've been not, a fan of the yeah. Warriors for a long time. And, and, the, and there's some days where I'm like, oh, that's the Draymond I remember. Like, like I love what he brings, the passion, the defense, like the the rebounding, the occasional three-pointer. Like his shoot, he shoots too many for me, but whatever. I mean, it, it's just, I'm all over the place with this, this team this year I, I, and especially Draymond. I don't think there's anywhere else to be. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not even railing on it. Like, I don't know any other way to be. The emotions this year of being a Warrior fan force you to disagree with yourself twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> they disagree point. That's, that's all this is. And, and, and we've all been there, which is why I sort of made, I just drew a line in the sand like two weeks ago and I said, I'm just not, like I'm not doing it. I'm not looking ahead. Like well, It's Monday. The Mavericks are on their way. The Warriors have a game tomorrow night. We'll go from there. You know, I like the idea of this is going to happen, and I think that the Warriors in two weeks are going to be the 10 seed and have a shot, whatever. I mean, they're playing the Mavericks tomorrow night, and on Thursday they go to Houston. 
the Warriors could literally be actually. Ed, granted, do you know off the top of the head what's the tiebreaker thing with Houston? Where have they been so far this year? Do the Warriors? The Warriors have, already have the tiebreaker. They already have it. They've right? played twice. The Warriors have won, both, won both, and they have one matchup left. Yeah, so no which matter is what Thursday happens. night. Okay, yeah. all right. So by Thursday night, they will still be the ten seed, but they could be tied. They could be tied with Houston by Thursday night. That's completely plausible. Or, and, and Draymond or, could do something crazy or, again by Thursday night. Or the Warriors could win tomorrow night and then go win in Houston, and then that's pretty much a wrap. Yep. <laughs> you tell me which the one you think. I don't happen. know. I'm all yeah. over the place. I, 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 my, my opinion changes. Like, like, there's some nights I can't wait to turn on the game, and there's other nights where I'm like, oh, ah, uh, yeah, I'll pay attention, half attention, I'll have it yeah. on the background. Last night was the that was a night I wanted to lock in. Totally. I, I, I wanted to see what Draymond brought to the party last night. Well, especially with the way they started the second half. That's yeah. the thing. The Warriors still have these moments that inspire you. You still see it. Yeah. It's less consistent, but it still happens. And when you see it, you're like, God, if you could just bottle this up, this thing's not over yet. But usually too fleeting. Um, they do have an opportunity this week. I know that they're they're just not that good at Chase Center, and the, and the Mavericks are super hot. They're a really, really good team right now. But if the Warriors can win tomorrow night, it stands to reason that the Rockets will lose tomorrow night. They're in Minnesota. Then if if they could pull that, you have a three-game lead and an opportunity Thursday night to push it to four. You do that, it's, it's done. It's done. And who knows? You, maybe it brings the Lakers back into focus. You know? Although, do you even want that? You want to play the Lakers at Chase Center or you want to play them down in L.A.? Either way. <laughs> L.A. probably. You're better, you're, exactly. The way they're playing on the road. You're better You're better on the road. Um, and they play the Lakers uh, next week in L.A. So, yeah, that's not done yet. Um, let's go to Joe at Oyster Point. FP in for Dibs, Willard and Dibs. Glad you're with us. Hey, Joe, what's going on? Hey, oh, not much. I just had a quick question uh, regarding Draymond. And, you know, um, I, someone said earlier that uh, he, the Warriors do play better with him which I agree. However, with uh, the fact that he's getting technicals now and because of his past, I'm wondering if the referees are going to be hot on him, you know, not to take any of his stuff and, and just, you know, give him a technical whenever he deserves it. I mean, I, I, I sort of, Joe, I don't know about you. I feel like that's the way it's been always for a long time now. Draymond Green has been, I don't want to use the word targeted by You refs. get a reputation. Sure. <laughs> well earned. Well earned. In any sport, you get a reputation. I mean, if, if you're a headhunter in football, they're looking to throw that 15-yard unnecessary roughness penalty on you because they have meetings before. If you're a jerk in baseball, all, all the umpires talk. Like, oh, this Willard guy, he's got a hot temper. Sometimes he'll show you up. Sometimes it's body language. Sometimes he'll argue every call. Just be careful. He'll show you up. Yep. And you get a reputation. And Draymond's got a reputation, and he's earned it. So <laughs> they, are they are they picking on him? No, but like you, you earned that. So... It, they'll see him do something and he's going to get a technical quicker than anybody else based on body of work. That's just how it goes. They're human beings. Yeah, uh, and by the way, that is less organic, I think, than than you're saying. I, I can remember, gosh, as a little kid, and um, I don't know if I, you know this, like, it comes up on the show from time to time, but my cousin was an NBA ref. He passed away a number of years ago, but he is an NBA ref. And um, when I was a kid and he would come do the warrior game i don't know how referee scheduling works or if this was just the way he operated maybe he didn't know if he was going to have tickets or whatnot but we would some we'd get a call at like two o'clock in the afternoon like can you come to the warrior game tonight we, you can sit on the floor if you if, if you're available and i would just pray that my parents were like available because it's like the greatest thing ever you're a little kid and you're sitting in the second row and um one year he must have had a real open schedule and we didn't just go to the game but he came over he's like i'm gonna come over and spent like had lunch with us at the house and and spent the day with us and uh, and i sat there and maybe this was the interviewer and in me starting to grow but i was just like i had so many questions about life as a referee in the nba and how they go about doing what they're doing and it's one of those memories of childhood that's still in my brain about what he said in terms of what refs get together and do before an NBA game. And what you're talking about is exactly what they do. It's not, hey, 
I know Draymond is a hothead, and here I am suddenly in this moment, and he's yelling at me, I'm going to tee him up. This is literally something that the group, the three refs, will sit down and have a conversation about every player on the court, what their tendencies are, and what they're supposed to go out there and look for. And I remember what he said to me on that day. This is when Manute Bowl was still on the Warriors. And he goes, I'll give you an example. Tonight, we will sit down and talk about Manute Bowl and three in the key. Because Manute wants to guard the rim because he is seven and a half feet tall. And so he will stand in there, and we as refs need to watch for that and keep him honest and keep him within the rules because that's his tendency, and we've got to be ready for that. Same thing happens in a conversation about Draymond Green's attitude, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They they go over that stuff and, and and they talk about it. I wonder I wonder if they talk about Steph Curry. You know how Steph never gets a call? I wonder if they sit in those meetings and go, hey, Steph Curry, greatest shooter ever, but when he drives, he falls down every single time on every layup and, and he, he's trying to get a call. So just just so you know, watch. He falls down. Have you seen him every time he goes through the lane and does a layup? He falls. I mean, he falls. And if you watch the, the documentary on him, when he was at Davidson and when he was in high school and they showed all the video, he did the same thing. Yeah. He's trying to draw a foul, but he does it every time. And everyone's like, well, Steph can't get a call. He's never on the free throw line. He falls every, I don't think they're buying what he's selling on all those falls when he goes to the rim. And maybe they have meetings where, like, watch, he'll fall watch. every lane. Yeah. He's well, trying I mean, to draw a call. Why wouldn't you? M- meanwhile, he does He does get fouled, but I think because he falls every time, they're just like, we're not buying it. Well, yeah, there's tendencies, I think, based on NBA players' size and what you think is happening around them. So Steph falling, you, like the ref's looking at it at full speed, and it's like, well, right, you're, you're half the size of the person you're going up against. And so either are you trying to fool me or are you just kind of overwhelmed by being in here by, by the rim? The opposite would happen to Shaq, right? Bodies would fly off of him, and, and there would be no foul call or sometimes an offensive foul call. Shaq's like, I didn't even do anything. I didn't even move. Bodies are flying off of him because they're half his size. One little hip shake from Shaq and a body like, I mean, not even Steph. Give me Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> Flying five feet across the lane. Foul. Jack's like, I didn't even move. And so there's the, the, those tendencies. I think you're absolutely right. Those tendencies lead to the way you're calling it. Because you're just a human being. That's all they are. So um, how about Brian and Hayward? Uh, hey, Brian. You're on with Willard and FP. What's cooking? What's up, guys? Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, man. I've been uh, listening for a little while now. And um. I heard something brought up earlier, and I can't remember what it was. But my point being is, <laughs> after watching Draymond play last night, um, I think this is the one that we constantly hope for, you know? Because um, when the guy is playing like that, man, it's tough to beat us. Um, I think that it's really, really unfair for a guy like Steph Curry to even get remotely blamed for Draymond Green's attitude. Because despite being the leader of our team, he's not Draymond's big brother. And he's a nice guy. Uh, Let's go top three of all time on most people's list, MJ, Kobe, and LeBron, right? Uh, It's been very well documented that in their playing days, MJ and Kobe were not nice guys. They They were, you know, you know what, to their teammates because they were driven to win. And they're, 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 the way they came off to their teammates who were not in it to win it kind of rubbed them the wrong way. Maybe they were sensitive. It doesn't matter. It's the past now. But when you look at a guy like Steph, you're not expecting that from him. You're not expecting him to bark at his teammates and, and put them in check with his words and his body language. Um, same thing with LeBron. Um, I didn't ever hear about LeBron being as tough of a teammate to be around as MJ and Kobe but he is an all-time great. I feel like Steph is kind of in the same category as LeBron in terms of personality and play style with other teammates. They make others around them better on court, not better people. That's, that's not why the NBA is formed to make upstanding citizens out of their NBA players. They're generating revenue guys. Well, no, <laughs> but, yeah. as long as go ahead, as long as we, 
never forget that the NBA's sole purpose, not sole purpose, but their main purpose is to generate revenue, then everything else makes sense. And I'll leave it at that, guys. Yeah, Brian, thanks. thanks. Yeah, I, I, I don't, LeBron would not treat you like MJ and Kobe did, but LeBron will just trade you. That, that, that's what, the, if LeBron didn't feel what was going on with you as a teammate, he would, uh, he'd make a trade. It's a different time. It's and it's a different time. You, you can't you true. you can't be a leader of a team now in sports and treat guys poorly or be a jerk to them because you lose them. They'll go they'll go pout in the corner mm -hmm. and you lose them. For, as coaches, you can't do that. And as a veteran player, you accept guys. That's why Pajemski's playing so well. You take a young kid like that and you make him feel welcome now because if you do the whole I'm the I'm the old veteran guy yeah. here and you got to earn your stripes, then they're 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 not contributing as well as they possibly could. And I've talked to baseball players about this, and if you're in our clubhouse and you're in our locker room and you're part of the team, I don't care if you got no time or 10 years, we're all in this to win. But back in the day with Kobe and Michael and even Larry Bird and who knows how the Lakers hierarchy worked. I remember seeing the show on HBO that I didn't know if it was true or not about the Lakers where Kareem was that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, th that doesn't fly anymore. Like, you, t you just, you, you're part of us. Let's go. That that whole and and the tough love with well, coaches doesn't work no, anymore I, either. I agreed, but I also think that sometimes we let our perceptions of who these players are based on the way they look, the way they act, the way they talk, kind of shade who we think they are as players. You've heard a lot of people. Steve Kerr said it last week on this show with regard to the competitive fire of Steph Curry. You watch Steph and you don't think, oh, that's not. Like he's just so nice, and he's just like he's little, and he's right, and he's cute, and okay, <laughs> right, and and you're like that's not MJ or Kobe energy, but it is. It is. They're maniacal. They're all completely crazy. Do you know where I see this a lot? The perception of the way a player looks and the opinion that it shapes. I think this is hilarious. Hilarious. Go out in the street and ask people about Brock Purdy and money. And I swear to God, everybody's cruising around right now thinking that Brock Purdy will like, t if you just offered him, if you're even allowed to, hey, Brock, we'll offer you $20 million a year for the next four years. Oh, I bet Brock would take that. Why? Because he's, he's nice. a little farm boy with a backpack. <laughs> I, and I keep telling people, I'm like, Brock's got an agent too. And so when Jed York comes out last week and goes, oh, he's going to ask for $40 million, and everyone's like, what? I bet you could get, he, right, the Niners in the seventh round, and yeah, get ready. It's going to be north of $40 million. I really hate to tell y'all. There's zero choice. There's zero chance that it's not. It's going to be all of that. And, and But people look at Brock and the story, and they're just like, yeah. I mean, he's not going to command $45 million. <laughs> yes, he is. Oh, yeah, he is. And if you want an example, he sounds and looks exactly like Kirk Cousins. They talk the exact same way. Oh, yeah. And Kirk was the one, the first one who walked into the room and was like, so here's the deal. You're going to guarantee my entire contract, actually. Yeah, because it's all it takes is one blind side <laughs> and my career is over. You're not just going to give me the money. You're going to guarantee the whole thing. I'm probably not going to be able to talk in complete sentences when I'm in my mid-50s, so you're going to pay me right <laughs> you're now. You're going to do all of it. Yes. Yeah. And the team, I, I keep saying it, in football, the team usually ends up with a lot of leverage, but not with quarterbacks. The answer when Brock Purdy says, I want whatever it is, call it 45, 50 million a year, the answer will be, okay. That's the only choice you got. What are you going to do? let him walk and go draft someone. Well, so what are you saying though? Like if he had a goatee and earrings that he would be like, like looked at differently, but because he looks like the, the, the kid next door that people just think he's going to take whatever because Completely. he came from yes. nothing. Seventh rounder from Iowa. This is a fierce competitor. Who is on, it was on Instagram getting married with a backpack. <laughs> and I'm like, you all don't understand. Like this is, yeah, this is a nut job. He's a nut job. When he gets in, in between the lines, he yeah. plays football and he's smaller than me. Like Hassan Reddick removed his arm and he went schedule the surgery. <laughs> I'll be ready for week one. They're nuts, all of them. They're crazy people. 
They are fierce, fierce competitors. <laughs> and, and you're not going to take them for a ride. So I, I sometimes I think that gets involved in the conversation. Like Steph Curry is a crazy person, crazy competitor. Why does this matter so much to him? He's got four rings and and a first first trip into the Hall of Fame is already done. And he's crying on a Wednesday? Kick the chairs after the Kick game. Kick the chairs so that they could maybe get the 10 seed? That's maniacal behavior. But you have to have that to be great. There has to be a dark side to every great athlete. You can't just go out there and try to be Mr. Popular. Agreed. And try to make friends throughout the course of a game. You have to have that killer instinct, that dark side that just wants to beat you and beat your will to win the next time I face you. You have to have that to be great. And that's what makes you tick. Whether you have a beard, whether you have tattoos, whether you look fierce, whether you don't, that doesn't matter. It's just like what makes you tick. And when people talk about Brock Purdy and how he commands a huddle and how cocky he was talking smack to Fred Warner when he was running the <laughs> scout team. Like, right. that's all you got. Like, that's what I want. I want, I don't, hey, off the field, do your thing. Get married, just you know, drink milk and cookie. I don't care. But, right. but when you come to play, like, let's go. I want to see that dark side. I want to see that fierce competitor. I want you to do whatever it takes to win a ball game, to win a game. Like, I want those players around me. I don't want the guy that's out there being Mr. Nice Guy and chatting with his buddies before the game. I want somebody to go out there and find a way to beat you any way they can and to have that that inner dark side that I'm just going to kick your ass yeah. no matter how I can. It's funny, man, because our, our like our city, um, there are current and very recent like superstars, star players, future Hall of Famers um, who have this energy about them where they're just like, hi. You know, or like you've got nothing on them for their whole career. Like Draymond has had, we might be in the triple digits of incidents where you're just like, oh gosh, like Draymond, please calm it down or whatever. Steph Curry is zero. There was one time he threw a mouthpiece. There was another time that he kicked a chair. He's out of control. Right. He's nuts. <laughs> right. But Buster, but Buster, Buster Posey. Bosa's Buster Posey. Bosa's a, like, a good example. Yeah. He's well, just super chill. Well, yeah, his yeah. motor, his 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 vocal motor is slow. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Mm. And then he just So I'm ecstatic mm. about that. Yeah. <laughs> we have great energy. Oh, we have great energy. And he just energy. goes out and rips your head off on Sunday. Totally. Buster Posey, great example. Buster Posey. Brock, Fierce competitor. Brock Purdy. Saint like has that same energy about him where you just would not guess that this person will go out there and compete like that at this level against those people. Based on his looks? Partially. He's profiling guys? <laughs> no, but <laughs> what, do you not think I have a point? You like, do. I mean... You do. Right? Well, hey, hey, and then the other side of that is if you have, like, a really long beard and long flowing hair out of the back of your hat and you throw 84, I'm still going to rip a double off you just because you look mean. You know, oh, for you, sure. It doesn't like look. I, I, talking, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but I'm talking even about like what the, the kind of of a teammate we think people are, or what how they may negotiate. Like, there's this all wow, they're really nice. Did you watch quarterbacks that yeah. thing on Netflix? One of my favorites. So it, it, didn't it? Did yeah. it change your perception of Mahomes at all? Love him. Did it? Did it change your perception? At I all? It, Yes. I in I, what way? Because I, he's a champion in every sense of the word. That what he says and how he leads. And I did the when I did the pregame show for the Super Bowl, sitting in your chair right here. I said, "But there's Patrick Mahomes." And watching that quarterback show, I referred to it. I said, "This guy is on a different level from everybody else." And how he talks to his teammates, yep. how he works the sidelines, how he works the huddle, what he says. It's not just it's just not it's not lip service. He walks the talk, and he's a champion in every sense of the word on how he carries himself with his teammates on and off the field. Like that show got me fired up. And if you, I know a lot of people out there don't want to hear it because they beat us in the Super Bowl. But Patrick Mahomes is everything what a leader should be. He is he is the perfect like take all the sidearm throws and the scrambling and all the talent out of it. Whatever he's got, the intangibles and the fierce competitor and the killer instinct and how he goes about it and how he leads. To me, that show showed me everything. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, huge fan. He's got more dog in him than I realized. Yeah. Is kind of what I got out of it. Hey, but what's the what's the defensive end for the Raiders? I always draw a blank on his name, and he was talking crap. Oh, Crosby? Remember? He's like, Not "Oh, you woke, oh you, woke, you, you woke me up. Oh, you woke you you woke me up." Oh, they're crazy people. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, even though this is a bad example because he ended up sort of, I, people feel like he tapped out on his career. 
But like, do you remember the mic'd up moments of Andrew Luck? Like this guy was a complete sociopath. I mean, like a 320 pound animal would just tattoo your ribs to the ground. And while he's on his back, slap you on the helmet and be like, good hit. You're crazy. Like, what? <laughs> and he doesn't look like that and talk like that. He would be, the people would call him the neck beard. He looked, you know what I mean? Yeah. That Twitter feed. What was that Twitter feed that, that was like the general, whatever? The parody of Andrew Luck. Lieutenant something, something, the Civil War, <laughs> dear mother. Right, exactly. That was my favorite Twitter follow ever, by the way. So I'm just, these people are different than the way they look. I'm and sound. Home feeding the chickens on the porch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, we have encountered a battlefield really? of epic proportions. Um, you know, Tim Tebow is the opposite of that. Like, I know he's a competitor. He had a great career at Florida in college, but I watched him mic'd up once, and he was just like, great hit. <laughs> like, he would tell, him, like, he'd tell the linebacker, like, great hit. And then he'd go back to the huddle. And he was just, I'm just like, no. no. It's one thing to go like, oh, that was a good hit, man. Let's do that again. But he was just like, great hit. And he'd get up and go back to the huddle. Like, I'm going to go back here and throw another ball into the ground now. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Rich in Fremont. Hi, Rich. What are you doing? What's up, guys? Thanks for taking my call. I'm on the Dunbar Bridge, so this may cut out. Um, we'll do our I, best. I agree with FC. I think, okay, good. I agree with FC. I think that when you have any type of stiff, tough competitor, um, for the most part, they're, they're going to always be overly competitive. That, that's what that's their motor. That's their gas. That's, that's what causes them to want to go out there. And, and, and be the best at what they be. In other words, I, I, I can see things from Steph's perspective. Okay, yeah, it's the play-in, and yeah, it doesn't seem like much. But to him, it's everything. It's a window of an opportunity for them to get into the playoffs and make some noise. So, you know, him kicking the chair, if I'm Joe Lacob, I'm liking that. Because you know what that tells me? That tells me even though he's been in there as long as he has, even though he's got all those, those accolades, he still wants more. And that's what you want out of an NBA player. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Rich, thank you. I mean, I, I don't know how you couldn't totally agree with that. I don't know how that night couldn't fire you up in a lot of different directions. Like, Steph's, Steph's, I don't even say his performance. He didn't play that well. But, like, Steph's reaction to all of this, um, a negative fire up in terms of Draymond's inability to make good decisions, the way Wiggins played that night, like, there are a lot of things. That's that's so part of the Warriors' experience. You come out of certain games so fired up, and you'll come out of the next game so deflated. So like, oh gosh, there's no hope. And then 48 hours later, you'd be like, I think they've got a shot to win the championship. But those guys just want to play <laughs> basketball, man. They just want to play basketball. They just want to go out and play basketball. And they want to win games. And they don't want to have to deal with all the other stuff. What's the other stuff? Draymond. And, and all the drama they've dealt with the last two years from punchy Jordan Poole. Like that, what I read from Steph, and I could be wrong, is that when he pulled the, the shirt over his head, he was just done with all of it. I've done everything I can. I'm just exhausted, and I just want to play basketball, and I just want to win again, and I don't want to go out like this. And then when he kicked the chair, it's just like, you know, we, we did it despite all that happened tonight and I just want to play basketball and I guarantee you I will be firm on this I guarantee you if you could just talk to all those guys off the record over a beer and they were your friend and they knew you weren't going to go to the media they would all say I'm over this I just want to play basketball I just want to do what Draymond and Steph did in the third quarter yesterday I just want to play basketball I don't want all this other stuff sometimes success is harder to deal with than failure For and sure. when you've had so much success with fame comes problems, more money, more problems, more fame, more problems, all this podcast stuff and me. Go just play basketball. I think what you saw in the third quarter last night was them just saying, let's play basketball, man. Let's just play basketball. Let's just go out and do what we used to love to do before all this other BS. Let's just go play in the simplest form. And then all of a sudden they started to do it. And I'm like, this is fun. Yeah, but you this can't, is fun. But you can't bottle fun. that up. This is fun. Let's keep doing this. This is fun. It's you and I. We're just playing two two guys against five right now. Draymond's playing defense. He's rebounding. He's getting the ball to me. And then there goes Draymond. I'll get it back to him. And it was just two two guys 
that seemed like they were 20 years old again playing basketball. Right. And that was cool to see. Right. But you can't just summon that whenever you want. Just play basketball. I know. But the, it's um, again, the, the classic Draymond experience is what we were talking to TK about, which is you can say, oh, we just don't want to deal with this anymore. We just want to play basketball. But th they're not mutually exclusive. They cannot play basketball the way they want to play basketball without him. So what they were mad about that night is the fact that he refused to, to stay on the floor. And I would also gather that the emotion, whatever you want to call it from Steph Curry, comes from, and this is where I found the whole thing really relatable. Anytime you're dealing with another person and trying to help them or trying to get them where they need to be or where you need them to be, and you just feel like you can't do it. I've tried everything. But they, they're, and it just doesn't work. That I mean, is really, really frustrating. If I'm pulling the curtain back maybe a little too much, there was a feeling on the corner of Third and King with Barry Lamar. Really? For a while. That, Tell like, me about that. They just want to play baseball. And they had to answer questions about all the off-field stuff. Who's they? The other players. Teammates. Yeah, teammates. Yeah. They just want to play baseball. And there was so much other BS going on with all that stuff and the home run chase and then all the media there. And then them having to answer questions sometimes that it got to the point where I would hear from players that were just like, we just want to play, man. We just want to play baseball. We just want to play. We want to have to answer questions about the home run chase or the this or the that or all the other stuff that was good. They just want to play baseball. And I would imagine, and I could be wrong, that the Warriors just want to play basketball. Like enough of all this. Let's just play basketball. Well, the Warriors, it's, it's, I mean, it's different. The Warriors have become uh, a traveling road show. Well, the Giants were too with Barry. Right, but not a champion. True. So, I think it's different. The The Warriors were iconic as a team. Barry was iconic as an individual. Sideshow. Sideshow. Yeah. The Warriors were the main show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I so like it it's interesting what you're saying because I I sort of feel like they've become they've had to become experts on how to deal with that for a long time now. I mean, this team would swagger into Madison Square Garden with Steph, Clay, Dre, and Kevin Durant at the height of everything that was going on. They would walk in and handle that like they were the top road ticket. They were and still remain the top rated team in terms of television for a decade now. Like, they're the show. They're the guys. And they've learned how to deal with that. And that's an unbelievable characteristic, I find. To be in a fishbowl like that and learn how to handle that, learn how to blow, like, I can't imagine. Take tomorrow night, okay? Tomorrow night. It's 6.45 or or even earlier. Let's do right now. It's 5.35 tomorrow night. We'll be here doing this. All right. And Where am I here? You're here. I'm not. No, no, no. We're but, not playing like I'm in the locker room no, game? But, but, I want to play that but one. But pretend you're Steph. Oh, yeah. Okay. What kind of car am I driving to the... Uh, I would hope that someone's driving you. Oh, yeah. You know? No. Anyway, I don't even know what kind of car stuff drives. What's a, drive? I'm just going to drive a Bugatti. Okay, fine. You got a Bugatti. Thanks. All right. If we're playing this game. So you're underneath Chase Center there, and then you're doing that walk-in where the cameras are just following you so that they can put up an Instagram video about what you're wearing. I didn't like his Easter sweater yesterday. You didn't? No. Well, maybe He I... usually dresses sharper than no. that. So I'm not going to wear my Easter sweater again. Maybe he wanted to get your attention. Well, I don't he know. got it. Okay. So you get the walk-up video. Now you're getting into your mode. You're going to do your, your pregame routine. You're going to do your tunnel shot. Look at I'm dribbling right now with a ball in each I, hand. You, Are you watching? I'm watching. Look at this. And that I'm going to throw a shot from the tunnel all the way to the other side over my head. That whole and I'm going to make it. The whole city, the traffic patterns, everything that's going on in this city is for you. It's for you. The Warriors will pay you. I kind of think that anyway. <laughs> right. The Warriors will pay you over a half million dollars sure. just just for your performance tonight. Really? Absolutely. I I need that right now. Okay. You ready for that? You've got this little rectangle where you're going to go do your work. Everybody's there to see you and their time and their experience is based on whether or not you can put the ball in the hole. I'm getting nervous. And there are 12 trees, millionaire trees, 
trained to stop you. This is scary. Running around out there. Sc you're scaring me now. That's just one game on a Tuesday night. That's this guy's reality. That's this guy's reality. Yeah, but you don't think of it that way. You of just, course you don't, you because just, you learn how to block it all out. You just get into a routine. You get into a rhythm. You have a routine. You do it every single day. So, like, a, 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 an NBA Finals Game 7 is the same as Game 2 of the season because you do the same thing every day. But that's what's crazy. Like, go back to Game 4 in Boston two years ago. Holy <laughs> hell. How do you do that? We used to joke, like, look up, and there's people in the stand. <laughs> and there's cameras here. And guess what? We're on TV. Did you know we're on TV? Like, you just don't even think about that stuff. And it, I, I can't speak to Steph Curry. I mean, oh, my goodness. But, like, he's just he just, he just doing his thing, man. He's in a routine. He does it every night. And it's about going out there and winning. I guarantee you it's about the process for him. And I've told you this on air, that I've talked to certain players at the highest level that say, we don't care if we win tonight. Because if we if we play the game the right way and we do the things we're supposed to do, when we look up at the end, we'll have won way more games than we lost. But if we go out there tonight and think about winning, then we lose focus on what we need to do to be successful. I guarantee you Steph never says, like, I'm going for 30 tonight. I think Steph just wants to win a basketball game. He wants to go 1-0 and every single time he steps on the court. And whatever happens in the course of that game with the rhythm and the flow – and maybe tonight I'm a distributor and I'm going to get 15 assists. Or tonight I am going to go for 30. I'm going to start shooting because I'm feeling it. Like it's just, it's just, it's just a, a vibe that that changes nightly. But the one constant is the process, and that he's not trying to win a basketball game. He's not. He's not trying to win a game every night. He's trying to go out there and do what it takes to be successful. And if he's successful, they will win. But I guarantee, I had never heard this before, and this was like six years ago. And it was a it was a real prominent athlete, and he was just like, I don't care if we win tonight. It's not about it's not about winning. It's about doing things the right way. And guess what? We'll win. John Wooden coached that way. John Wooden used to talk about that all the time. Don't worry about the score. Don't worry about the, your process is what matters. Yeah, and and you do that. Don't worry about Stick it. Stick to it. Though. Watch what the score will be if you just handle the process. Trust it. Yeah, scores out of your control. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Withered and Dibs on the free Odyssey app or wherever you find your podcast. While you're there, you can do that for the morning roast and Steiny and Goo as well. They all reacted to Draymond Green's great performance in San Antonio and the opening weekend for the Giants season, which we would like to talk about next. And included in all that is a little bit of a breaking news with regard to the Giants lineup tonight, which has changed. So we'll tell you about that in just a second. FP's in for Dibs, and this is Withered and Dibs. Cash in on basketball's biggest moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code Guru957 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less.
Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, FP's here. He'll be here again tomorrow. Shout out to one of our faithful YouTubers, uh, Mr. Irrelevance MC. And he just said, with my tease of the change in the starting lineup, he said, Luis Matos better be starting. Uh-oh. He's not well, going to be happy. He, well, yeah. he is starting. Boy, he, yeah, he, he is, is starting. He's starting tonight. He's starting he's for starting sure. for the Sacramento River Cats. <laughs> Uh, Luis Matos has been sent back down um, to make room for Mike Yastrzemski, who has been activated off the paternity list. The Giants also selected the contract of right-handed pitcher Nick Avila. Um, they have designated Otto Lopez for assignment, and they have also sent Dalton Jeffries of NBC Sports Bay Area back down to Sacramento and uh, AAA. So uh, that was a one-day experience for him, and uh, and that's the end of that. But um, Yaz is not in the starting lineup. Austin Slater is out there. The change in the lineup is that Tyler Fitzgerald starting at first base has been scratched. Wilmer, <laughs> Wilmer Flores apparently feels good enough to go. Wilmer is in the lineup and will be batting fifth and playing first base. All right. So there you go. Wilmer's a gamer. Let's go, Wilmer. That was a big assignment for Tyler Fitzgerald at Dodger Stadium, playing first base. Um, I feel better with Wilmer there. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be a big assignment. Where's your interest level on Giants Dodgers? Is it are people there yet? I don't I don't think people are there yet. No, they're not like I mean, we're just like sort of, you know, sleepwalking into the season. That's kind of where we're at. People are, you know, it was Easter yesterday and what's going on. I don't know. People I feel like are in a little bit of a hazy spot. I, I think it's gonna ramp up though, because Friday. you know, I don't know to what level people yeah, part of it is that, that they, they haven't played a game here yet. Yeah. Um, but if you didn't watch any Giants baseball over the weekend, y you will be struck by how different the energy is around the team. I mean, and 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 you can you can micro that conversation by spotlighting different things. Jung Hoo Lee's energy, the left side of the infield defense is incredible. I think they've got some starting pitchers who really pop. The two games they won to watch Kyle Harrison and Jordan Hicks go back and ba uh, back to back and just make Padres hitters dance was was fantastic. You've sort of outlined it by saying they're they're it looks more like baseball, like the baseball that we know. Like check tonight. The Dodgers are throwing a lefty. You know who's starting in left field? Michael Conforto. Wow. Michael Conforto. Wait, he's playing against a lefty? Exactly. He's playing every day. That guy can hit. That's an everyday player now and he should be. He should be. I bet he is just feeling like he's walking two feet above the ground today. Because if Gabe Kapler's managing this team, Michael Conforto is not in left field tonight. The things I just said about Steph and putting your head down and being a routine, like if you're a baseball player and you're playing 162, that's even more important. And I would make the argument without talking to these guys and not knowing that none of them could get in a routine the past two years. Like how do you get in a routine where if you walk in and your name's on the card and you're in the starting lineup, you're thinking I might only play five innings tonight. Like, where's the routine in that? But like, if if you know you're playing every day, there's a certain comfort level and a relaxation that you get to the best out of your ability based on if I go 0 for 4 tonight, I know I'm back in there tomorrow. Or if they bring in a tough lefty that I'm going to get that at bat in the eighth inning with a chance to win a game for me and my teammates. But like, if you don't know that and there's always this uncertainty, am I playing? Am I playing the whole game? Am I starting? Am I relieving? Like, then there's no routine. And the theory was, like, y y your value is in your versatility and your value is in your attitude to be open to all this. And if you're not open to all this, then you're not a team guy. And, when, and, and I would push back a little bit that, like, Bob Melvin is old school and these guys are going to get into a routine and there's going to be a rhythm to the lineup hmm. and a flow to the lineup where I know that if Tyro's hitting behind me, I'm going to get these pitches. I know if Soler's hitting behind me, I'm going to get these pitches. And you get that rhythm within a lineup and you get that comfort level of knowing that you, you don't have to look over your shoulder all the time. You don't have to wonder if I'm getting pinch hit for. You don't see that guy with a helmet on at the end of the bench and go, is he pinch hitting for me? Am I hitting right now? Do you know how much like focus you lose on just something as little as that? Totally. When you're trying to hit a round ball with a round bat that's going 100 miles an hour oh. and you're just thinking, am I hitting right here? Am I not hitting right here? And you would see guys walking to the plate and get called back in past years. Like that, that takes you out of routine. That takes you out of comfort. If you let Michael Conforto play and get 500 at bats this year, you're going to have a good season if he stays healthy. Yep. I always got to say that. 
Um, so, yeah, what I saw in the first four games was guys running to first base hard, which I haven't seen from everybody the last couple of years. And something little like that shows the other team that I'm ready to play. And this is how we're going about it. And running the bases hard. Patrick Bailey out of the box the other night. They shot an ISO on him. He put his head down on a ball in the gap that Tatis bobbled, and he just kept rolling from first for a hustle double. Patrick Bailey, like the catcher. Mm-hmm. And that, that I mean, and I watched in spring training, they were all running hard to first base. And there's been an emphasis on accountability. And if you don't do this, you're going to sit next to the manager. And I love it. I, I love what I've seen. The first, and am I saying there's going to be a parade on Market Street? Am I going to say they're going to the playoffs? I don't. Yes. Know, I don't know. You've after already four. said that the Dodgers will not win this division. I did. I and I just don't. That was before the the, the showy stuff. <laughs> showy. showy, hey showy, can you strike out three times for me tonight, showy? Well, it got quiet, uh, and I still have questions. And they've been, like reporters have been to his locker room now, and they've asked them. You notice the, the am I making too much out of this? I find this fishy. They go to Shohei and they go, because remember, we've launched an investigation into the interpreter because he stole money from me. Okay. Okay, Shohei and your attorneys. Who did you file the complaint with? Who Who's doing the, right? Who's, who's investigating this? Oh, no. We're not going to tell you that. Okay. Then the reporters have gone to sort of what intuitively those organizations who would be investigating something in Los Angeles at a financial level, and all of those places have not been able to confirm that there's an investigation. Now, maybe they're not allowed to speak on it publicly, or like my conspiracy mind goes to, maybe you haven't launched an investigation because you don't want an investigation launched. You're just screaming into the wind that there's going to be an investigation because you want all of the accusation to go toward the interpreter. But you don't want to investigate it because maybe you did know that you were transferring millions of dollars on his behalf. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, oh, wow. Trust me, I love. I'm up for it, every conspiracy theory ever. It got quiet, but I'm like, none of the questions got answered. I just saw a thing where JFK got shot from the front, not the back, on, on Netflix. All for crying out loud. So I'm all for the conspiracy theories. Is it too soon to talk about that? No, okay. I think you did last week. I did. Yeah. You so I'm all for that. the conspiracy this, this theory. This just show really affected you. It did. <laughs> I want to know. I want the truth. I want the truth. I actually think you can handle can't, the truth. I can. I, I really do. I think I, you I can handle I it. I don't know what happened I with Showy. Don't have I don't know what happened with Showy. Yeah. We'll see. That, yeah, it, the whole thing's fishy. But well, who knows? And, and I, if the feds are in on it, we're going to find out everything. Uh, we're going we're to get text messages. It depends. It depends on what they're investigating. They're investigating the bookmaker. Getting a text message that they're says, not, hey, 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 Ipe, hammer the over. <laughs> I don't know that anybody's <laughs> actually investigating Shohei or, oh, come on. Or, the, or the interpreter for the theft of $4.5 million. They're investigating the bookmaker. So I don't know. It doesn't feel like any, like, I feel like everybody lost their oomph. He had a, a press conference, but he didn't take any questions. We got no answers to the questions we actually have. And then everyone went, okay, let's move on. I believe him. <laughs> the news cycle is over. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait till he goes on the road, though. He's had the, the, the pleasure of playing at Dodger Stadium so far. Well, it's clear it, it, it it's clearly distracting him. He's at twenty six at bats and he's not homered yet. What's up with that? He's hitting second. Maybe they got to drop him down the order. Oh. Put Freddie hitting second. OPS is six fifty six. Hey, Showy, that's with a whimper. Don't hit any homers this year, Showy. Teoscar Hernandez OPS is almost twice what Shohei is. Got the under on the homers. I can't. You can't be hitting homers this year, Showy. God, we'll make it all go away, Shoei. A, 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 buddy, a, a buddy of mine that bets a lot told me this the other day, and it's not Burns. It's somebody else back in Sacramento when I was home this weekend. <laughs> Just want to preface it, it's not Eric Burns. Uh, he told me, and, and I we didn't think of this on the air the other day, that like the 400, the, the, what, what's, what, what does it pay out? Four million? Four and a half. Four and a half million? Yeah. Nine that if, if, if you're yeah. losing, the, the worst gamblers in the world lose 30% of the time. Right. So if, if if that was no, the no, no. payout, no, the worst. You said the worst, the that worst. Be, that'd be the best. No, the worst. The worst would lose seventy percent of the time. That's what I meant. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. 
So, sorry. Thanks for tightening <laughs> like, that up. That's the rule. I'm going to start gambling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start gambling. That so feels like pretty profitable. We didn't talk about this on the air, and I thought it was a great point. That okay. If there's a $4.5 uh, $4. million payout, right? how much was actually gambled? Correct. How much even, was gambled? Because even if you were awful, you would have to add probably another two to two and a half million mm -hmm. th that was on the way in. Maybe There's more. There's no way that you lost four and a half million without winning a bet. There was tens of millions of dollars, was this guy's point, this is, gambled if there was yes. 4.5 loss. So that absolutely this is one of the questions. Were there any deposits? I'm just saying, like, if and, you and, lose $4.5 million, you're gambling 10, 15, maybe $20 million. And how do you do that making 180 k a year? Yeah, and I was talk like, to me. He told, he told me I was like, oh, talk to me. I was like, damn, question. I, I did, thank you, Buster. I did four radio shows last week, and this did not come up. I didn't think of it because I'm not a big gambler, dude. Like, it, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not gonna let it go. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And and you doing a press conference where you won't allow questions. I'm sorry, that doesn't satisfy me. He did look smooth though. Yeah, of course he did. He didn't have to face any questions. There was no facial embolisms based on my FBI experiences do, with Geidel Salai, and he was not looking up and to the left. When do, I, he, do you know he, he how was smooth, smooth I could be if you wrote something on a paper and wanted me to read it for you? He was smooth. <sighs> I, a, I believed him. In a language that's not even native to where I'm speaking? Hey, Showy, you still owe me <laughs> 6.5 more, Showy. You're going to blame it on Ipe again, Showy? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to strike out three times uh, against the Giants tonight, Showy. You should do tomorrow's show. I know where you live, Showy. I want you to do tomorrow's show in the mob voice. The, I'll do whole, the show. whole show in the mob uh, voice. The whole show. Hey, Showy. If the Giants win, you do this at least one hour in the mob I'd voice. I'd ask you to drop a fly ball, but you don't have a glove, Showy. You're a DH, so I need you to strike out three times tonight, Showy. Um, you coming back tomorrow? Yeah. All right. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Uh, coming up, though, which is brought to you by... Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Best of the game, full hour with Grandy. What are we doing? What are you leading off with? We're going to hear uh, Bonte and Shasky talk about uh, Trey Lance, James Wiseman, and Joey Bart. Oh, yeah. 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 Trey Lance was the bigger mistake of the three, um, in my humble opinion. But uh, let's hear what Bonte and Joe had to say about it. That's what's uh, coming up next. Thanks for being here. We'll talk again tomorrow for FP, for Grandy, for Lucas. I'm Mark. Shoot your shot. It's all you got. I'm what you might call very good at hide-and-seek. This one time, 